just give us a sec and we'll spoil I'm it for excited. you. Jeez. I'm excited. Just do it. Um. Yeah. Uh, oh. we, we, uh, we'll do Black Widow third out of those three. But which would you guys want to do first? You know, just just. Uh, Mario. We should get Midnight. Great. Well, let's do the Mario thing because it's yeah. probably going to be quick. Midnight Mass will probably <laughs> take a little bit longer, and plus we need to just get that out of our systems. Yes. Um, okay. So, well, um, we, we, we're almost public, so, you know, d d how, d how, you know, Fringy, I feel like you should take the reins on this. You should, you should give what, the exposition. On, on Mario? Hey, you saw it live. I didn't even see it live. I did, I did see it live. Um, oh, Nintendo Direct. Well. There was Nintendo Direct the other day, and it, it was really cool. There's like a 3D Kirby open world game that mm, looks really cool. Yeah. Bayonetta 3, oh. finally. It's been like four years since that got announced. Yeah. It looks awesome. Well, Lots of like fun. Years uh, that... Splatoon 3 looks really cool. So there was a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> and then Shigeru Miyamoto comes in. And it's like, oh, hey, I've been like over in America, like working on this Mario movie. It's coming out <laughs> next year. And, um, and then it's like, oh, we're about to announce the English voice cast for Mario. Now, the preamble, I had I had heard about this movie, and I wasn't super optimistic because it's Illumination. Um, yeah. They don't really make good movies. But... What, what is I the stuff? Just, are, they, are they the despicable they made minions. people? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Sing, Secret Life of Pets, that kind of shit. Basically, they're, they're messing up. Uh, no, that's DreamWorks. Oh, that's the A-Team. I got you. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So, uh, funnily enough, I had just assumed that the avo uh, oh, sorry, assumed I had assumed that Charles Martinet would hang just on, be the on. voice of Mario. What, R Fringy? What's wrong with saying assumed? Oh, that's a whole it's story. Not correct, there. I, I, got oh, a, I got a comment. No, no. I'm gonna part from the Say fact it's fucking wrong. wrong. Um, we're we're Australians. We can butcher language I, as much as we freaking want. Yeah, that, that was that was my initial. No, we can tell you can <laughs> on, that, on that topic. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I had just assumed that the original voice actors would be involved. I just, I just assumed, I, <laughs> I thought that's what they were going to do. I never even thought that they would be getting other voices because like, I don't know that, I don't know that I was ready to ever learn that there would be other people who were playing Mario and Luigi and Toad and stuff. <laughs> but then you just get that image on screen, Chris Pratt, Mario. <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. I don't yeah. know what I'm meant to do with that. Well, like, I have no idea. There are some great takes, too. Uh, the fact that everybody, uh, all the headshots that they used for the actors were in color, except for Chris Pratt. Yeah, uh, that suggest, was so weird. Like, kind of suggested that, like, he, like he died during the <laughs> 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 <It's like, laughs> Mario movie in memory of Chris Pratt. It's what he would have wanted. I, um... <laughs> dedicated to Chris Pratt. The Mario uh, movie. Is is he gonna try and do the accent? I don't mm. know. Oh. I don't know. I don't okay. know. So, we talked about this before. I, I was thinking it would be really cringe to do it, but now I'm thinking like it probably would be he can't he can't do it, right? Because it'd be too offensive nowadays. Oh you can it mock Italians. It's, it's, you can mock Italians. Italian. They're okay. Well, yeah. well Italians well, are I mean, white ish, so it depends, well, maybe. It's 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 funny you say that because there's like a defamation case going on in Australia where a comedian made fun of an Italian. Um, oh god! Oh no! Not a comedian like, making fun of an Italian. Too. Well, he oh. called him Super Barilaro. <laughs> Super Barilaro. You know, that's offensive. <laughs> um, but I, I guess he could still. Well, if Mario is okay, if you're allowed to do Mario anyway, then surely you can still do Mario, like with the Italian voice. Chris Pratt said on his Instagram that they're working on the accent. Oh my god. So oh, no. it is going to be a voice. Oh my it's god. It's going to be a voice, I guess. You know what? At least I think Jack Jack Black will be entertaining. I'm not sure about the He does not voice. seem like Bowser to me at all. I just cannot well, see him as Bowser. That's kind of the whole thing here is like... None of these I, people seem was, like... Know, How I, is Keegan-Michael Key toad? <laughs> what? Yeah, like, yeah if Keegan-Michael Key makes you go, oh, what? See, I, no, I Toad, the guy who constantly them... has a really high pitched, kind of whiny sort of voice. <laughs> yeah. Better, I and... think. <laughs> well, I guess the thing is Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Like, what is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is <laughs> that? I don't know what that is. I I can't I can't picture this film. Like, it doesn't exist <laughs> in my head. I don't know what yeah. it is. Yeah. 
I don't know I don't what know. it is. I, it's so I, bizarre, I, I can't even formulate black. my imagination of I could uh, maybe like a fictional Jack version black, of it. I guess, I guess the problem yeah, is I see here in it. Hmm. I can see it. Yeah. I can also see Charlie Day as Luigi, kind of. Kind of. Miscast. There should have like, been Willem Dafoe. Everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> no way, sorry. Willem Dafoe as Waluigi would be the most su suitable. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Or I'm yeah, something yeah. of a wham myself. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to have Wario and Waluigi. In a... No, he's it's going to be like a Marvel Cinematic Universe cut in at the end where we got Danny DeVito going nah, 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 at the end. Join oh, I figured me. you were going to say, like, we're going to have Link or something and they'll be a Super Smash Brothers oh, movie. No. The funny thing is, oh, that's something that I would have thought would have been cool, but not Tom anymore. I don't want it anymore. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that, I mean, you know, that could... <laughs> I, guess, I don't know. Look at this cast. Look at them on screen. Well, I don't... I, don't, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I think Jack Black could put on a bit of a Bowser voice if he if he tries yeah. not to play Jack Black but tries to do the. Why hire voice? Jack Black to not play off. Jack Black? But that's like... all. But Jack, all Jack Black can do is Jack Black. He usually just does yeah, Jack he, Black. Yeah. He, he has that's that all he game does. Where it's Jack Black but macho. What, what game is that? Like something legend, brutal legend, right? He's still kind of just Jack Black, Black in that game, though. Yeah, yeah, He's exactly. Jack Black. So, that's all he is. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I reckon they should have rehired Bob Hoskins to just do the voice of Mario, like little, in the original yeah. film. A little bit dead. <laughs> it's me, <laughs> yeah. Mario! 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 Wars oh, of CGI. Dead? Oh, the rip, power yeah. of CGI. Oh, yeah. man, oh man. So uh, the rip, elephant rip. in the room, of course, is why the fuck aren't they doing the the original VAs the original for this? Voices. But yeah, yeah uh, they even have Charles Martinet in the cast, but he's not playing yeah. Mario, Luigi, well, Wario, or Waluigi, which he's done for me, decades now. <laughs> I, I don't know. To me, that just... It's like how it was recently talked about Space Jam 2. Like, none of the voice actors who did all of the other Looney Tunes got credited. Zendaya got a credit for Lola Bunny, but nobody else got a credit. Oh and the Ratchet <laughs> yeah. and Clank movie where Ratchet, Clank, and Quark, the three main characters of that movie, which was shit, but like... In any case, they're like the three main characters. They weren't on the poster. Their name wasn't top billing. Like they weren't even on the poster, but they were playing the main characters. It just well, feels credit, like that. Yeah, it's it's a, the problem with modern movies is credits aren't. Uh, they're not to credit the creators who helped make a film. It's advertising. It's for marketing. Oh well, I mean, it's always so, been advertising. That's always been yeah. contract. I guess it's just like really lame that the guy who is kind of almost solely. I, Maybe well, not solely responsible because it was obviously creative influence, right? But like the Mario that everybody knows is like that's him. He, he and, made yeah. that, and we all know it is for marketing. But at the same time, they are called credits, and it's like we like to Even, believe in our mystical world that credits are designed to credit the people who have brought this yeah. to life, sort of thing. And it's like, mm -hmm. why can't we credit the fucking people involved? Because usually that's just what happens along with marketing. Uh, this time, though, or a lot of times recently. Like, so, like to put it to you know, put it to perspective, uh, Charles Martinet's been playing Mario since 1992. Yeah, like, he's been literally. A long time. Yeah, That's literally as long as than, I've been alive. Right. <laughs> so you think the guy he'd be like he'd be a great a great pick? Right, I mean, I understand if they're going to do. I, I understand, like for example, they're not using uh, James Hader or sorry, uh, David Hader for the Metal Gear Solid movie because it's a it's a live action movie. I understand that you got to have the physicality and the voice. But mm -hmm. in animation, you can use whomever you want. You don't really mm -hmm. need to pick celebrities because you don't see them. It's all about the voice. So, yeah. Well, I, I think it just kind of... I kind of... Because it's, it's, this is like a meme, but they, they could make a Mario movie that could be really wholesome and fun. That's, yeah. that, I feel like that's entirely possible. Yeah. Um, you could have a Mario film where there's actually not a lot of dialogue at all. You you could have a lot of it just be communicated through visual cues. I mean, it's animation. Like that's that's the place to do it. Um, but yeah. we don't want to do that. We want like Donkey Kong needs to sound like Seth Rogen, probably. We <laughs> we need like the celebrity voices yeah. to sell. I don't it. get that Donkey Kong. Get like he's <laughs> just gonna be <laughs> <laughs> weed. Weird. Donkey Kong doesn't talk though. I guess that's what it means. It's like they tried Bowser talking and then they made it subtitles again for a reason. <laughs> like it's, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear these people talking. I don't want to hear Mario talking in full conversations. I just want Let's Go. Yeah. Woohoo! That's that's all I want. Maybe I've got Who's uh, directing Guardian? this? 
I have no idea. <laughs> Martin Scorsese, I don't know. Martin Scorsese. <laughs> Platformers Choose are cinema. real cinema. Oh, you know what? I'll check. I'll check. Super Mario movie director. Went. We might not know yet. Uh, um, oh, it's the Bob Hoskins one. 2022. <laughs> yeah, that's coming out next year. <laughs> no, <laughs> Bob Hoskins one's not coming out next year. <laughs> Oh wait, no! Uh, whops. That one's already is Chris out. Pratt, uh, is Chris Pratt Italian? I mean, are I we at the I point where we're like he's culturally are we appropriate to be crying in there, yeah. racist? That yeah, that is not Italian. I've seen people complaining about that on Twitter person. already. They're like, uh, the chance to oh, have really? Italian representation, you give it to an American, or it's like, oh my god, it's Mario. Uh, um, it's Mario. It's Mario. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I actually, do I want a gorilla to play Donkey Kong? Like, <laughs> yes! Get a gorilla into the recording booth to just make sound. Might be better just than Seth Rogen. That would be he probably... Oh. It's, okay. It's a, okay. Batman Begins. Raven the Bold. Oh, they did cartoons at least, so at least they know what they're doing. Well, I mean, of course they did cartoons. It's not often that you get live-action directors making oh, yeah, animated like things. That's true, also. But again, it's Illumination. But again, Shigeru Miyamoto has apparently been advising on it, and he's highly protective of Mario as an IP, so what are they doing? Like, what what are they allowed <laughs> to do? Apparently not. You know? <laughs> well, apparently not, yeah. But he doesn't let people make Paper Mario games for, like, this, he's letting this happen, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I think that they'll basically probably uh, police the tone. And not make another Mar uh, Super Mario Brothers 1993 because that was like you pick it apart. It wasn't a terrible, completely terrible movie, but it was just the tone was so wrong for a Mar for a Mario Brothers movie. Mm -hmm. I saw that in theaters, I think, as a kid. That was <laughs> one of my biggest disappointments in cinema. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of bored when I was watching it. Actually, like, yeah, I've been learning about it a lot. Actually, last uh, the last couple of days, apparently they got like the same production designer who did like Max Headroom. Uh, Blade Runner and stuff like that. So they got a lot of like really like talented people because like you look at the sets, you got like these uh, miniaturized cities that have like all these neon signs like you know Ko Koopa and, and you know Bullet Bill's Bar or whatever and all these things. So like they obviously put a lot of work into it. But I think it was like a husband and wife director uh, duo, and they were getting in like personal fights on on set and stuff like that. So the production was a complete mess. But there was like some talented people working on it. It just was not the right, not the right fit for that that story. Um, <laughs> I mean, was, we'll get it. some good memes out of all of this, I guess. Oh, well, probably. You know what? I'm, yeah. I'm willing to be surprised <laughs> by the movie. You know? yeah. I mean, it could be yeah. good. Yeah, it could but... be good. Yeah, we, we haven't. It's not like in the Sony in the Sonic trailer where we actually see Sonic looking like you know, and and everyone. We we haven't seen anything yet. Well, I mean, yeah. I get the impression right. that yeah. it. Go ahead. I'm reserving judgment when, until I hear like Seth Rogen speak, talk as Donkey Kong. So, so uh, hot take. I'm not a fan of Mario or the universe he exists in. It's wow. All oh. He doesn't you know, exist in the universe. As... He exists in a galaxy. Yeah. In a galaxy. <laughs> there. Okay. But it, it it all strikes me as very random, incongruent, mess. Not too much of a consistent through line in its uh, thematic style or execution and stuff. And it's just like a uh, uh, vomiting of random things thrown together that they just combine into a video game. Um, and hey, I, I'm not experienced in the lore. And so there's probably heaps of fanboys going to be coming out saying, well, oh, you I'm, just need to know all the background and all that stuff. Funny, because I'm sitting here, it's like, well, Yoshi saved Mario as a little baby, and then later on Mario <laughs> grows up to live in the Mushroom Kingdom and help mm -hmm. Princess Peach and save her. And she, they go to all these different kingdoms, and they have their own names. There's like the Mushroom Kingdom, then there's the kingdom that they go to in um in 3D World, where they've got like the little pixie princesses that they have to save. Let's there's not forget the, the island resort of Isle Delfino. You know? uh, yes, Isle Delfino, and then of course the observatory when they go to Super Mario Galaxy, going on adventures with Rosalina. In fact, Super Mario Galaxy had like a story, like it had an actual story, and it was, it was kind of well, cool. I, I will be interested to see how they translate it into a film 
uh, in this new attempt because it was an interesting yeah. execution the last time. So, uh, I mean, because I, I think it could obviously work for video games because it's just random combination of all these different elements that, okay, in the background, if it's explained, uh, just on the surface, it looks very, you know, out of place with all these different elements thrown together. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll see if they can pull it off in the film. I disagree. I think it's very coherent. You've got a Mexican plumber who's also Italian, made by a Japanese development company, who lists, uh, with the soundtrack is Caribbean uh, music, with the Caribbean drums, who eats mushrooms to get the power to defeat dragons while also riding a dinosaur. I think that's perfectly I think, sensible. I guess, it's, I guess that is the funny thing, right, is it was... They just wanted to figure out mechanics. And like, I'm not sure how concerned they were with like the story when they first made it, but then Mario became like the biggest thing ever. So it's like, all right, let's let's like actually figure out what this is. Like, it like completely exactly embraces the random, and and I think even it does embrace the random. Yeah, yeah, it, and it got even weirder because um, the original uh, I got the there's the original NES game, and then the sequel actually was never released in the States. Instead, they took right. a diff completely different game with Birdo and all those other weird creatures and stuff, and then they reskinned it and released it as Mario 2. So what we know in the States as Mario 2 was actually a completely different game. So you're basically merging these two very, very different universes together, and then that all became canon, and then they did whatever. Basically, they did whatever, and anything anything stuck. So, <laughs> Well, I mean, I, uh, I actually, I, I like, I, I, I kind of like the inconsistency because, yeah, there, 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 like, there is no canon that seems no. to make much sense. Um, yeah. But I do like the inconsistency in the sense that um, it feels like there's a lot of variety, even though you kind of have this idea in your head of like, oh yeah, Mario, Mushroom Kingdom, and like the hills have smiles on their faces and things like that. It's but very it feels charming. like there are all these yeah. different places. Well, <laughs> both horrifying and charming. I actually, I think when I when I saw this announcement. What I realized is, like, I actually do really love Mario. Like, I, I really like these Mario games. Um, mm -hmm. You're just friends. And I, I would be... Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I'd just be really sad if they they fucked Fuck it, it up, up. which yeah. they probably are going to. Um, the, the main yeah. thing that, that I don't know if it'll hold up in movie form is that despite all the wacky, completely nonsensical stuff that's happened in the, in the probably 50 to 100 plus Mario games, over the past you know 30 plus years uh what's always held them up uh is really solid gameplay like who cares what what you're playing and what you're doing if the gameplay is solid like there's yeah. very there's very few mario games that are actually bad they're all really have a really solid foundation like even uh, one of my least favorite ones is yoshi's island not because the gameplay of the game is actually great but i despise the little <laughs> crying baby mechanic oh sure yeah but i, I but it's a great I game mean, I, yeah <laughs> Oh, Yoshi's Island is like, oh, so. yeah, that's a great game. Well, see, that's been my kind of impression that, you know, there's been a lot of Mario games I've enjoyed over the past, like the really old school, you know, ones. And um, mm -hmm. even Mario Kart, I enjoyed heaps because the gameplay has always been solid and entertaining. But the background story, <laughs> like, I've always thought it's just utter complete garbage. And it's like, it, I'm not I, I really interested in Mario as a character. I like the fact is um, a plumber and, and like that's. And so to me, trying to make a film out of that is basically trying to take the worst, Plumber's weakest parts of the franchise please. into um, a, a film that's reliant on those weakest uh, elements of the we franchise. Don't, we don't know if that's Ooh. what it's relying on. Well, well, that's well the problem, you know, we a know film is. technically is, you know, predominantly a story, and the story element well, oh, of the sure, Mario but, things is. But it could be bad. hyper adaptation, right? Like this, this could be hyper yeah. different from, uh, from from. Mar I don't expect it to be because I don't think they would do that. But like, it could be hyper different from Mario. But then again, like when it comes to the story thing, it's like, yeah, I agree. Like, um, I, I mean, I find the story is totally fine in in terms of the context of the games. It's like, yep, uh, your princess is not another castle. Go get her. Like that. That's totally fine. It just pushes you forward. But I mean, if we're gonna pick like a Nintendo IP and make a movie out of it, I feel like you could have picked anything else, and it would have been a better option, like Star Fox, Metroid, Zelda. Yeah, Star Fox. Uh, oh, Kirby, Metroid would be great. You could have yeah. done Kirby. Yeah. Well, those are the thing when you go Wait, Mario Metroid movie, film. I'm just like, what? Hmm, what is that gonna yeah. be like? Of all of them, 
make a Fire Emblem movie. You can make a fun, you can make like a movie about basically any other Nintendo IP. You can make a freaking like you can make a knockout movie. You can just do that. But like like Mario, that's it was like the weirdest choice of them all. You can make a Luigi's Mansion they movie. Could... You could have made a Luigi's so Mansion much. movie, yeah. Like... They could do so much with like Zelda as well, bringing in Link into yep. live action and Absolutely stuff like they could. full on epic fantasy treatment. Um, well, maybe yeah. we'll be getting them if this is a success, which it probably would be right if they market it right. Yeah, uh, it's, it's well, it's Illumination. All their films make money, and they're probably gonna. It's probably gonna make. Money. It's probably. I'm assuming a lot of money. this got started up because of Sonic. I, I would assume. Um, no, probably, I guess yeah. with, uh I think this was on the cards several years ago. Like it's it's been known about for mm. a while that this project's been happening. Um, it might have been Warcraft, even. Like I'm not sure. if There's just more video game movies now. Oh, I mean, well, if if we're going that far back, I mean, everything would have encouraged it, right? In the same way that um, probably yeah, maybe Logan was being tooled with for a while, and then Deadpool made it, so they were like, all right, let's do it. You know, it's funny. Yeah, there was maybe. actually a, there was a leaked poster, uh, early pre-release poster for the Sonic movie. That had Chris Pratt instead of James Marsden, so really? uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't hundred percent verify the veracity of it, but I saw the picture and it looked pretty legit. And I'm a Photoshop, you know, do Photoshop for a day job, so looked pretty legit to me. But if that's if that's true, you're going to get a real they... job, <laughs> yeah, real job. Uh, but if that's true, then Chris Pratt was rejected by Sega to then work for Nintendo. <laughs> oh my God, um, what kind of world is that? So yeah, uh, plenty to be worried about. <laughs> we'll yeah. see how it all goes. Uh, it was It'll probably be a meme riot. I was gonna say it was, oh, yeah. it was quite the, the 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 meme in general for the internet. Seeing Chris Pratt as Mario was just like, wow, that's um, hmm, okay. <laughs> that Everyone thought it was Yoshi. a joke. <laughs> yeah, but, but memes are great, regardless. Yeah, yeah. I have to like say. that one on screen. Look at him. Look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, My prediction is that uh, it's going to be absolute garbage. I'd hope it yeah. it wouldn't be, but uh, not only am I just more cynical these days because of the just slop being made, because I'm already a bit, you know, skeptical on the franchise being adapted into a story format like this. Is oh, what I'm thinking is mm. going to be horrible. They could do one thing that would make the movie 100% consistent and perfect. After everything, all the illumination, 3D, hijinks, Bowser, you know, Seth Rogen, whatever. Uh, at the very end, there's like an after credit scene where you, you just see Chris Pratt, IRL, wake up covered in mushrooms. And he's like, what the hell happened? That could be really <laughs> what the fuck fun. did that dude give me? <laughs> yeah. People are already making jokes about like a, a Nick Fury equivalent turning up to tell Mario it's part of a greater universe. Yeah, oh and then they make Super Smash team. Brothers, Super Smash Brothers movie by Illumination. Oh my god, oh my god they're going to do it! Oh my god, Fringy, they're going to do it now. I no, sounds I crazy, don't, but don't in a world, there's, there's no way. World, yeah, there's no way that that's not been discussed, if not been the yeah. focus. That's probably yeah, like what? the main thing they want to do. Why put in Donkey Kong in a fucking yeah? Like like okay, Donkey Kong is like the old nemesis of Mario, right? And and way back, but. Just including him in the middle of the fucking credits, it's it's like they're they're already like toying with the idea. Maybe if this works, we'll have a Donkey Kong movie. I, I can see them like talking about it behind the scenes. Like, well, I think Cranky Kong is in this movie. Which um, is that? Yeah, more distant Kong. Crank, cranky Kong. Cranky Kong is the original. So the, here's here's your, here's your Mario law. So like. The Donkey Kong that is in like all the Mario Kart games, the Happy One, the Donkey Kong Country One. He's he's the grandson of the original Donkey Kong who Mario fought in the first game. Yeah. That's Cranky Kong. He's angry. Okay. So Donkey Kong that you're familiar with is like the happy, friendly. It's hero Jumpman, Donkey right? Kong, is the first basically. one. Yeah, Jumpman was oh. originally named for Mario back in the day with like the original Donkey Kong arcade game and, yeah, that's and right. uh, Wrecking cool Crew, Jumpman. Wrecking Crew, and, and stuff like that. But Pauline's yeah. back now uh, after Odyssey, and she's sticking around. She's really cool. What's so cool about Pauline, Ringy? She's yeah, a great Ringy. singer. She's the mayor of a town. She's doing a bang-up job trying to help out her citizens. She's got, like, a very smooth voice. Um, she, she gets she's, captured by apes? Wow, well, but not anymore. She's she's the mayor of New Donk City, all right? <laughs> she's she's revitalizing <laughs> that town. She, she cool. broke up with Mario? Um, 
Well, you know, they, they Mario's moved on to Peach. Mario, so. Mario yeah. was flopping. And, and she he was a princess in the city. <laughs> well, that's that, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. Super Mario. Super Mario. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. Which I suppose leads us to the second event of, of this intro. Oh, yeah. uh, this is going to be less funny. Uh, yeah, so, all right, we're done with that topic, okay? <laughs> Next. All, it's all down here from here, guys. So, well, I think you're referring to Black Widow. So, so t topic oh, number oh, two. Oh. Good old, good old Haunting of Hill House is something that we often praised and people really liked. And then Blind Manor came out, as everyone remembers, we loved it, a lot of people didn't like it at all. And then Midnight Mass was this new show coming out. Same creator, same, a lot of the same cast, yeah. and same sort of, I guess I could say, just style, same approach. And, uh, you yep. know, we, we, were all, we were all excited. It released yesterday, and um, because we're totally normal people, we spent nine hours just watching the entire season. All the way through. Oh god damn. Oh damn. Um, That's what we spent our yesterday doing. Yep. At least was half uh, uh, was it yes, and uh, it was a triumph, an absolute wonderful thing. Uh what was it called again? Wait, Midnight, midnight Mass? Mass? Midnight, midnight yes, Mass. The, I, the, I thought the Midnights were exceptionally done. The You've not even were seen excellent. it. You're a liar. Uh, what? No. What? I don't know what you're <laughs> doing. You're a liar. You're a liar. The, you're a liar. the, the Masses is, is good. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I don't know how, I, um, uh, hey Rags, what did you think of Midnight Mass? So, Mahler, I'm mm -hmm. glad you asked. Mm -hmm. So, for those of us who remember when we talked about Hill House, that was ten episodes long. Yes. And we thought the first nine episodes were super great. We really loved, there's a lot of really good stuff in there. Nine solid episodes of crazy good TV. And then episode 10 happened and it kind of did a lot of damage to everything. It was a really, really, really bad. Oh, for reference. Catastrophic 10th episode. Uh, we will remain spoiler free until we say that we won't be. Exactly. Like every show, I had the same experience with Hill House and Blind Manor. I loved everything up in, up until episode 10. So oh, well, see, just like her. Well, there was no 10th episode uh, of Blind Manor. Because Oh, okay. Well, there, there was no 10th episode, but also the Bly Manor, like, the finale is pretty good. It's really good. It's really good. It doesn't, pretty, pretty it, we'll, good, we'll yeah. you know, we'll, we'll get to that, but rags continue, and yeah, like I said, we will, we will mm -hmm. signpost when we get to spoilers chat, and you'll know to leave, don't worry. Yeah, so Mike Flanagan, he's the guy who does these three shows, right? He has a track record, he has, sort of has a track record of starting something, not even so, getting to the finish line and tripping horribly. Um... And unfortunately, Midnight Mass had us on the edge of our seats with excitement for the first six out of the seven episodes. It was full of incredibly good dialogue, well-constructed character conversations. It had great tone, uh, shot compositions. It had a great setting. Um, it was very interesting to see, you know, what it was about and how things were explained and what was happening in, with all the characters. And we were very, very, very pleased with this show. And then episode seven happened. And it kind of ruined basically everything. And we in we we were not happy campers. I woke up today we and I saw in not a, happy you know, a group chat. I just saw Mel saying I'm still sad. I was like, yeah. <laughs> It is one of the worst endings to a TV show I've ever seen in my life. It is unfortunately kind it of is incredible. Catastrophically bad. Six amazing episodes that I highly recommend. Six stellar, wonderfully crafted pieces of media, all capped off with a giant turd. And like oh, people, people might I'll be like, it. "Wow, again!" It's like it's worse than Hill House this time. The drop off was. Worse than Hill House. I, think, I think it's worse than Hill House. It's cliff levels. Yeah. You just go wee. And you're like, oh. Wait, wait, why? Why was the last episode so bad? Well, well so I'm oh. thinking now, like, if we want to get a little bit more specific, this is your warning, people in chat and uh, people in the cast. If you want to uh, mute, I'm good. Uh, uh, Spoil me. I suppose I will signal that we're back to non-spoilers by showing the cast of the new Mario movie. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so I might mute it because I've not seen it yet. So All right. I'd rather experience it, even if oh. it's going to be disappointing. All right. I I have no intention of watching it. I'm not a fan of horrors. So go go ahead and spoil me. Very well. It's, All right. It's not even that. It's like the other ones. It's not really horror-y in a more in a traditional yeah. sense. Um, it has some spooky moments, but they are they're spaced out fairly well. They sort of sneak up on you. It's not like a um, it's not like a conjuring or anything like that. Um, so if you generally don't watch horror stuff, I think this still might interest you. I I would definitely recommend these shows because um, um, I I wouldn't say that the horror is really their strength per se, but it's a great tonal addition. It. It, it they it's used really really well of the horror that's there i liked it it's just not um it's yeah, not yeah. it's not all the time it's not really highly focused it's much more based on the characters and uh, yeah so last chance people in chat run away like i said i'll signal you by changing the screen to the cast of the mario movie coming uh, next year or whatever so uh this show is 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 mainly about a little island town that um, our our protagonist is returning to after having served, I think, ten years in prison, something like that. Four. Oh, is it? Well, four to, is four to ten. Okay, it's four. I think four years, something. I think he got four. Um, and he comes back, and uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of how fast I should explain this. I guess it's just uh, it's weird things going on, and 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 uh, the local main monsignor uh, is mysteriously kind of missing, and a new guy is replacing him. And uh, Mass starts to get more and more popular over the course of the episodes. And the town starts experiencing miracles. Different people getting healed for different ailments. Uh, meanwhile, we're learning a lot about all the people who are there and why they're there. And, um, I mean, there's also sightings of a hideous person slash creature on the island. And weird things are happening, like cats are getting killed on Mass. And, uh... uh I guess that's about all you could say before progressing to the halfway in the season where we start to discover that the, um, again, this is just spoilers, so why not? Because I want to get to that last episode and explain quickly how horrible it is. So the, the, the Monsignor is a man who, when losing his, like, mind, he stumbled in the desert uh, on, while on a pilgrimage and, and discovered a vampire in a cave. Um, they never oh. use the word vampire in the show, but I mean, I don't yes. understand why you wouldn't refer to this thing as a vampire. Uh, so we have to assume there are no vampires in their world because none of them refer to any of this as vampiric in any way, shape, or form. But it's a good old uh, pale, winged, monstery humanoid, and uh, yeah, sucks blood. You know, flies a whole nine yards. Doesn't go out in day time. Yeah, okay. and, it's, and we, yeah. we were like, we were like, oh, neat vampires. That's, you know, why not? Fun. Let's let's see where this mm -hmm. goes. Um, and the Monsignor interprets all of it as nice reveal. I'll add the whole because you don't really know what's happening, and then they reveal it that oh, it's like a vampire thing, yeah. but in a very good yeah. way. We were like, ooh, this is a vampire thing. All right. Um, yeah, we had no idea that was coming. It was it was uh, cool. Um, and then the the Monsignor interprets this all very much to be religious. That the vampire is actually an angel. That the the uh, youth and uh, healing faculties and stuff that are uh, given to him are all through like God's Blessings. divine plan, yeah. and so yeah. he wants to spread it to the town to look after everyone, but to also warn them of the fact that when you get this amazing benefit, you're unable to go out in the sun and you get a thirst for blood. Um, oh, we are vampires. Yeah, it, and and. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, there's a couple subversions here and there, a couple of twists and turns. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. I can probably avoid. I don't want to explain too much because you know there. Are, the, the thing about this is when we get to the point of saying, "Do we recommend this?" It's gonna be a really fucking hard answer. So it'll be mm -hmm. like Hill House. Again, avoiding more so the journey. I'll just get to the ending so that we can talk about why. Like, there's a main stupid thing we have to get to. So, the 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 town gets fully infected, if you will almost during a midnight mass and uh, the, the remaining citizens who are either non-religious or refused to take communion, which is how they were uh, giving vampire blood off to people a lot of the time um, but also they just do it by the classic sort of you suck their blood and then you give them your blood and it turns them into a vampire our, our, our heroes escape and a lot of the town is just getting slaughtered and the vampire team 
try and attack, um... <laughs> they try and attack our heroes by throwing some Molotovs into a house, and then they realize that that house is set on fire now, and it's gonna spread, and then they're like, that's fine, because, uh, Bible verse about fire. And then our heroes start setting the remaining houses on fire, as well as the boats on the island. So because our hero's plan is, if we get rid of all the abilities to leave the island and all of the cover on the island, the sun will kill all the vampires. And we were, we were like, watching this episode, that was like the halfway point, I think that became clear. And we were like, mm. huh? Mm -hmm. Like, now why would... That's kind of baffling. <laughs> Why would More burning likely. all the buildings mean they can't take cover from the sun? Um, they can't find yeah. a tree, or dig a hole, or, or just a any a number of things, or a bridge, or any, any number of things objects. that human beings Get stacks did, and like, tin cans in a wall. <laughs> like, yeah, a or just hide. Well, the, they're like, oh, but the houses are burning down, so there'll be no... It's like, you could still hide underneath the rubble, that's, you know, if, if your choice is that or die, like, what's... You know, what are you going to do? Basically, the show tells us to accept a completely ridiculous, implausible, logically it, nonsensical premise. Yeah, well, we have to accept something impossible because they kind of want an Ultron ending where it's like, nah, all of them are dead, see? It's all good. They they stopped them. They're all dead. Yeah, there's, it's okay. there's a portion in the show where a crowd of vampires are heading toward the last building that's not on fire. And that building gets set on fire because um, one of the vampires has a change of heart. And uh, does it. Mm -hmm. But then all of the vampires are basically like, well, we're fucked. Nothing we can do. Let's yep. just stand in the open and, and get burned by the sun. Um, mm -hmm. It is a garbage fucking ending that makes no sense at all. And, and thematically, a show that I thought was leading to a certain place now feels like it's all over the place and it kind of doesn't know what it is thematically. Which oh yeah, this show's thematics were very skewed and confused and weird. Yeah. And I don't think they were until the ending, um, until that last episode, because now I'm not sure what I'm meant to think. It, it just feels like um, I don't have a clear through line to identify. Um, I think it was safe to conclude that the show was about addiction, but I don't know that the ending makes sense anymore with that in mind. Yeah, there's um, a... We were very confused as to what the show was make sense. trying yeah. to say. I don't think, it, well, um, yeah, because I think the show kind of keeps changing its mind on, like, what it means, like, if you're a vampire, it's like, how lucid are you? Because it seems like all the main character vampires are incredibly lucid, but everybody else is just insane. I don't, like, that's, why? Uh, and, and if so, what does that say about them in terms of moral culpability or anything like that? It had a lot to say on death uh, that seemed pretty good. Yeah. Like, that that seemed fine. Yeah. It, was, it was relatively un undamaged, but the the addiction stuff was all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, we, we talk about Bly Manor and how great it is to have mechanics explored and explained for the establishment of <clears throat> stakes and understanding what's happening and the rules. And this... This kind of was a failure in that regard in a lot of senses where yeah. up until the end, they did a pretty good job explaining a lot of the mechanics of vampirism and whatnot. And then at the end, it all just sort of falls apart yeah, would, and they I, don't. I would go as far as saying they spent like half an hour teaching someone exactly what it means to be a vampire. And then in the last episode, they kind of just fuck with it all over the place in terms of what it means for you as a person. Mm -hmm. And it was very confusing to watch. People, like, become vampires and they're ravenous. They just want to eat and drink, you know, blood and stuff. But then, near the end, they're like, you know what? We're bad people. We should die. And you're like, oh. I don't, I think um, that's what, I don't even know if that's what they were going for. That's the thing. It's so just open and unexplained and weird and unbelievable. I don't even know what they were trying to say. Did Mola say that Haunting of Blind Manor was some of the best television he's ever seen? Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, it is. This Blind is Manor not... is insanely good. Um, I, yeah. We, we, needless to say, oh, we were very disappointed. Are, yeah, the, the um... characters get hurt significantly. A lot of the characters uh, yeah, are damaged is... in the final uh, well, finale. There is, well, I guess that's because we did really like this show up until that point. There is a character in this show who was in it for uh, not until the end and his story is complete from beginning to end it's done and it's it's really fantastic and he mm -hmm. is safe he's safe that yeah. character is safe from the finale um so so but but he's kind of the only one when i think about everybody else their ending was really disappointing 
confusing. Um, the, the, there was one character who we were all super happy about. Like he was, he was just a cool dude, and he got a really unceremonious ending. And it's not it kind of like everyone almost. I was gonna say Everybody two, got, yeah. two of the best characters. There's no need to really. This is the spoilers. So like, it's it's a guy who. Is, is fighting to get his place on this island. Everyone's always hated him, and he's only ever done the best he can for the people of the island and his son. And um, in the finale, he's trying to burn down the last house. And for some reason, because he's a fucking moron, he ends his journey of piling the uh, the, the petrol or whatever on, on the building right in front of the group of vampires. Like, he, he yeah. circles around the whole house and ends up right next to this giant group as if, like, he's like, huh, okay. And then he gets shot, because, of course... And he's shot well, because, by the most reprehensible the character in the whole series. Well, well, wait, hold on. So he got shot because two characters made the smart decision to get some guns, but then dropped oh. them after they were getting chased by some vampires. They dropped the guns, and then that guy they used just left gun. them. Yeah, yeah, they uh, left that gun there for them to use against our protagonists. Two of them, which two ends of them got up killed with that gun. Yeah, yeah like, it's yeah. bizarre. Um, but we we get some moments of insane plot stupidity here in this show. Yeah, where characters uh, just yeah. do insanely stupid moronic things. To explain that yeah, a little because... bit more cleanly, right? Like the the two characters running away from monsters. They have a gun. It's a good gun. It's a useful fucking gun. And then they slip for reasons we don't need to go over that. And the gun is obviously dropped right next to them. And then they see three more people coming at them, many 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 meters away. And they decide to sprint off and leave the gun on the floor. Which is just, yeah, just leave the it. last thing just I think you would do when you're desperate to survive. You have a gun. You you don't leave the gun. And that would be bad enough, except that gun is then picked up by a bad guy. Who then uh, ends who is up... A, yeah, who is a bad guy who, despite the show wanting to tell us he gets redeemed, is not at all redeemed. <laughs> no. Well, and, um, well, the problem... Yeah. Two of the best characters are casually killed by that gun. Just, just, oh. just dudzo. Yeah. Um, and their endings are shite. <laughs> Well, and 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 their endings being crap ties into other characters' endings being <clears throat> like the first character who gets shot hard. There was a moment in the finale where there was something really cool that happened, where it was basically the all, all of the people were there, and um the the guy who was kind of responsible for causing all of this realized that he made a mistake, and then he like opened the doors to the church and was like, "Everybody's welcome here." And we were like, "Ooh, are they going to do a thing where it's like they split up? Who wants to be in the more like?" The, the good guy side versus the, the really evil side. Um, but then the person gets shot and then they just burn down the church. It's like, oh, I guess you just give it up. Like, that's yeah, it. that was yeah. that was give weird up. how they started to set up that good, bad vampire thing. And then in, in like 10 seconds it's later, it's just done and nothing becomes yeah, of it. Exactly. Uh, very. It's just like I, I know we're just sort of casually sort of explaining things and you might. Yeah, you are going to lack a lot of context if you haven't mm. seen the show for why a lot of this stuff is frustrating and doesn't make sense and is horrible but like everyone in that call was just so deflated after six great episodes you get to the end and you just uh what a apart. load of crap um i mean a clear example of, like this this is kind of the the, the worst character not the what like she's basically the villainous character right at the end when all of the vampires are like yeah i guess i'll die now um, she goes to the beach to watch the sunrise, and then she's like, "Oh no, I got to dig a hole." If I could dig a <laughs> hole, I could survive. And and it's just like, what do we? <laughs> did no? Nobody... <laughs> Why didn't you think of this earlier? You did it now and then. And then when the sun rises, she's screaming in agony, and it's like, so she's screaming, and everybody else is just calmly burning to death yeah like, what is going on they basically want well, to like, everyone, give you the satisfaction yeah. that the villain character screams as the sun burns her as a vampire but all of the other vampires on the island just they're standing they're singing or they're sitting they're and they them. peacefully yeah. they perish yeah. yeah they peace they just don't, yeah. meanwhile she's like Bleh! and her whole face just they're burns up and it's just like yeah everyone died like that show don't convince me yeah, otherwise including including the kids on the island yeah like there's no attention paid to them at all. Yeah. They're, yeah, if you were looking for a show where the bad characters get punished and the good characters are, like, at least the die heroically or they're spared a terrible fate, this ain't the show for you. It's insanely unsatisfying. Everyone, good and evil, they all get the same fucking death. And it's shit. And it's confusing. <laughs> it's very confusing.
and then en Thanks. oh the ending the specific ending line man i i don't know i don't get it yeah we, we the ending yeah <laughs> Should we explain that? Or, like, the, oh. the healing properties of the vampire stuff make it so that a lot of people on the island are uh, fixed of their blue well, vision uh, or um, bad backs. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, unbeknownst to most, unbeknownst to basically everybody on the island, inside of the communion wine, there's vampire blood, which is. Um, which is given to them Kinds in trace amounts during every mass. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, there's a Catholic mass on the church. And so slowly everyone starts to get healed and everyone starts to, um, you know, get better, get younger. And so one of the, the there's a character, oh, go ahead. A, a, there's a girl who is crippled. And she, because she has been attending mass constantly, she goes to mass every day and been drinking the blood every day, unbeknownst to her. She is cured of her uh, crippledness, cripality, mm -hmm. and she can now walk. And everyone's amazed. This is the big, amazing miracle that really starts to get people to go, whoa, that's crazy. And for most, I would say half the show, she can now walk. Uh, she walks around and is a character, you know, moving around. Uh, no ramps needed. It's a big deal. And then in the very final line of the entire, after the vampires are defeated, quote unquote defeated um, after everything's on fire after you feel like shit that it's all kind of over um, our two survivors that's right our two survivors um, they're on a boat no overlooking oars. the burning remnants of the island and she turns to this other character and says I can't feel my legs and end and she smiles credits and she smiles. And she smiles, yeah. which is bizarre, because I would not be thrilled about that. That means she's not a vampire, right? That's why. So, she's so I think that's what I they're think. going for: is that the curse is done, that the vampire's influence is over, that blah blah blah. But it's just like I can't use my legs anymore. Woohoo! You're like, okay. <laughs> uh, because it seems like, as far as we know, in trace amounts, it seems like the vampire stuff is kind of great. Yeah, there's no. They don't really explain a drawback to it. Um, this yeah, there is no drawback even... if you just take a little at a time here and there. Like I was, even her, she had a little sip, a little, a little taste every day at communion, at mass, and she, her paralysis was cured. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any negatives whatsoever to trace amounts of vampire blood another huge problem so, it was like yeah. almost the uh the thematic element right in, in moderation a lot of the things that are incredibly addictive but also dangerous they're fine yeah that they have they, like... they have the lines about alcohol isn't good or evil and you know things like that mm -hmm. it's it's you and what you do with it and um stuff like that so that's that's hard enough to to square away. That like, why couldn't you just regularly drink bits of vampire blood? What is what is the show telling us? I would us want that, to. Yeah. But then you've also got you, you might you'd be thinking to yourself like, yeah, okay, but at least, you know at least we know being a vampire is bad. And it's like, well, not really. Uh, we have several vampires in this show. Many of them refuse to eat people. They're like, no, I won't. I can't do that. That's fucked up. And then you're like, oh, yeah, they. St so what's yeah, wrong? Yeah, they set up like, the idea of an ethical vampire. And, and so what is um, what is wrong with, with being a vampire at that point? And you're like, well, it's gross. I don't know. <laughs> you're a vampire. Fucked up. And uh, yeah, the, there's a line at yeah. one point from one of the main characters toward the end saying, like, you know, when our time is done, it's done. As if to imply, like, you shouldn't be trying to get more time by being a vampire. You should accept death. And I'm just like, but you haven't really... Fuck that. You haven't really... Hmm. <laughs> Uh, someone said, I think they're just saying the main vampire dies and the vampire blood stops working. It's like, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. It's such I a, if it's a, atmospherically, you just sit there and she's like, my legs don't, don't I don't feel my legs anymore. You're like, okay. Not a happy moment. If, it, that's what I mean, I don't think they, if we knew yeah. that having any vampire blood in your system was horrifically bad and it'll lead to horrible things, I could maybe understand it, but I'm just sitting here like, it wasn't that bad. It seems to be nothing but a positive. Like I said, if I was in that universe, man, I'll take a sip every day. Thanks. So, um... Wait, so, so, ingesting, the, so ingesting the blood doesn't corrupt you? Like, if you have a little bit at a time, the, yeah, and well, trace amount, unless, yeah. You, unless you die, in which case, then you would turn into a vampire. So that, that's probably okay. the concern, right? If you die... Well, that, I guess at that point... Idea. 
I'd still rather be you, a vampire than die. I'd still I rather think. be a vampire than dead. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, I'd just be an ethical vampire. It's like I don't want to kill anyone or eat anyone. Drink. I'll the, just go buy blood bags or drink ex animal exactly. blood. Exactly, pigs' blood, cows' blood. They make it clear you can survive on that as a vampire in this universe. So I don't know, man. And they didn't explore that at all. They were just like, "No, nah, all the vampires killed themselves. It's fine. Shut up." You're like, okay. Everyone on the island, a hundred people, as far as over a hundred people, as far as we know. They're just like, yeah, I'll die. Or not just, I'll just die. I will die horribly. Yeah. Despite the fact that some of us made the conscious decision to become vampires anyway, basically. And some of us like, didn't, so yeah. Really and some of them were super well, devout, but apparently only the, yeah. the evil lady was the only one who wanted to find a way to survive, but none of them came up with a way of just digging. <laughs> like, nobody thought of that. It is, uh... We didn't have a oh, shovel guys. on the island, I'm afraid. Hmm. It ain't good. Wait, so if I if if I am also getting it from what you guys are saying, everyone acted intelligently until the last episode. Am I getting that right? Pretty That's much, yeah. Impression. For the most part, yeah. I'd say for the most part. Um, most there's some bits and bobs throughout the show. Please, that are yeah, I was pretty pleased, yeah. But um, oh, you get some great like conversations throughout the season. Loads of awesome stories oh, yeah. and histories. Um, a particular character's whole story is worth seeing. That'll be episodes one through five, is five. it? Five. Yeah. Yeah, five. Um, and episode and five's ending that. is haunting, to say the least. Oh, they, yeah. They did it quite well, as they often do with episode five. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so so this is the thing. Uh, we, we come to the end of all of this. Uh, Fringy, Rags, do you recommend the show? Uh, I'm not sure. That's the thing. As good as those first six episodes were, and don't let that be understated, those are some they were, they were really good, amazing yeah. episodes. Though that was some good shit. Lovely slow burn. Not time isn't wasted, but Mike Mike certainly takes his time to establish everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but man, that's the thing. If the ending is the payoff to all this stuff, oh. It's tough. It is really. It is a sour taste when you complete it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I if I said to somebody, "Yes, yeah, stop after five, but they'd probably say, "No, I want to see how it ends because that's what we wanted to do." I think I would recommend it. It does just slip over. I think it's worth seeing because the craft is top notch for a lot of aspects. Just yeah. that. F just be warned that last episode is coming. Coming to get you. Yeah. Um stop yeah. If you if you're the person who could stop, stop at the end of six and just sort of imagine it turned out how you wanted it. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> well, that's that I guess. Yeah. I, I got it I got it I got it. yeah, okay. So a head cannon new episode for episode six. Blade seven? comes no, and kills them all. Six is great, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh sorry, okay, <laughs> episode seven. But Blade comes, kills them all the end. Done. I would have preferred that. No. I'll, I'll take it over the canon ending. <laughs> I mean, is it better than the canon ending? I guess. Yeah, right. I think you could do better. I think you can do better than that. How would you change the ending, Rex? If it was you, if it was me, I would. I mean, I fuck it, I would go with something safe that plays better into the thematics. It 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 really can't be understated how how fucky the thematics are at, after the end of that last episode. Like it's really bizarre. Like, what do you mean mm. by thematics? I, I, the, theme the theme of the show. The theme of the, of the show. Okay, so what what do you what do you get from the theme of the show then? After the seventh episode, um, I don't know. That's no, the I thing. Mean before, okay, let's ignore the. What was it? What was your impression for the first six episodes then? What, what, no, what in the first six think? episodes, I think Fringy sort of alluded to it, but it's kind of like addiction in a sense. That there's mm -hmm. a bad part of you that you need to control and you can't let take over you. And so addiction plays into that where you can't let things kind of ruin you. Like there's an, in there's an internal battle inside of you that you have to fight for and, and win, essentially. Which so is really, really that... good and would play wonderful. Mm -hmm. it, that's the thing. It's, it's, it, it seems as if it was set up perfectly. For like a vampire, yeah, vampire idea stories and concept lend themselves where you have the good and bad vampires. Yeah, absolutely. The bad vampires succumb to their bloodlust, and they do the easy thing, and they just hunt and go on the prowl for blood. And the good vampires are like, nope, 
it's not the right thing to do. If people, you know, suffer and I'm not going to do that to other people. So I'm going to be a good vampire and there you go. And so maybe the good vampires, they're the ones who survive because the bad ones get burnt up um, uh, because of something they do or they get to live on the island uh, as a vampire place and you get to have the priest uh, Monsignor who gets to keep yeah you know, he gets to be like the vamp the guy in charge of the vampires or he gets to be their their he pastor. can lead them to salvation yes. especially because he kind of changes his tune at the end because he yeah, sees the, what's along with the AA his, meetings you know? like this it's all set you, you you're all good to go and um because Funnily enough, in this vampire thing, they, they don't do um, the garlic stuff, crosses, fangs even. They just sort of uh, bite. We don't have uh, reflections or invitations. They leave out a lot of, um, you know, which is fine, by the way. It's to be very blood-related, yeah. They try to keep they it don't pretty even grounded have, um, in terms of it's all about blood stuff. They have boosted healing, but they don't have any kind of boosted strength. Everyone, all the vampires are of the same strength they had previously, which uh, I thought was interesting as well. It's just like, okay. They're basically just people with bloodlust, and that's why you're like, oh, I, I see you stripped away a lot of the vampire stuff to make it very much about addiction, then. Like, that's clearly the point. Yeah, like, uh, nothing about garlic or crosses stuff. It's stuff you could believe, really. Yeah. It's very blood-related stuff. The kind of thing where if you had, like, special weird tism blood, you could believe that that would be a result. Kind of sounds like they ran out of Thanks. money and the show was supposed to go for another t one or two episodes. I, I, we, we are pretty sure the last episode was rushed as fuck. I, I, I don't understand how it could have ended up so shit. So I think, like, it, if the addiction thing was their angle, maybe, like, them realizing that they they were doing a bad thing and they, and they all killed themselves, maybe that was the guy was going for, but it was executed. Maybe poorly. that's what he was going for, but it just doesn't work. None of it works. Because there are good vampires who, who moderate themselves. There, yeah, there's clearly good vampires. Some of them feel remorse for bad things that they've done. Some of them are just... They're just... Like, basically, none of them kind of deserve death. Mm -hmm. It's very... There, there's some a of few, them, like, downright evil ones. Yeah, some of them were attacked and killed and turned into a vampire to then decide, I will not feed on people. Just there's, They've done oh. nothing possibly wrong. And then they just like, well, time to die. You're like, oh... Okay. That is weird. It's like there's no nuance. Like, it's I'm cursed, so I have to kill myself. It became something like that. I think that's what they're going for, but... But I think that's, that's the problem really when it comes to the theme of addiction. Yeah, what, yeah, like what, what Ring like, said. And what Rex said. Yeah. yeah, I have an addiction, if, if kill myself? Yeah, well, exactly. I, not I, I gotta assume it. that's not what they actually mean, but the problem is, yeah. it's like, well, if killing the addiction means destroying you, d like, is that... Is that meant to be, well, no, see, like, because the speech at the end, it's like, well, see, that there is no self, right? So you can get rid of that. It's like, yeah, but you are ceasing to exist, like, at that point. Like, the collective that you represents are, you is now gone. And yeah, that's, gone, yeah. that's the thing that you could have had if you balanced it a bit better, because now we've made it so that they became a vampire, they needed to die. Um, and is being a vampire giving into addiction, or is that just... Because I thought it was so we're not to just... being the vampire. Because you can become a vampire. I guess that plays into addiction, where it, it might not be of your choice in a sense, but it's still kind of wonky in that regard. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we, it'll be out whenever our recordings and stuff on it. It'll be a while. <laughs> we gotta do Bly first. Uh, but like I've not got a lot of passion for Midnight Mass. I think it was murdered in that last episode. Yeah. Um, because it was, yeah, all of the it vampire was... stuff, it just permeates back through all the older episodes where I know that if I rewatch them, I'm going to be frustrated about thinking about what kind of message they're trying to go for. And then knowing where all of the characters I was starting to like are going to end up. Oops. My god, man, I hate watching people I really enjoy just get randomly shot, and you're like, well, they're out. You're like, okay. Mm. No ending for their story, really. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's that, I suppose. Is, is that, uh, we, we... Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I care to... That's all, that's all that I care to really say, honestly. I think I've just, I'm, I'm just kind of over it in a, in a way. As a... It's just kind of going, what a shame.
Theo's in chat as well, and you just said like there's there's a lot of stuff throughout the show of how to healthily and unhealthily engage with like faith and religious institutions and how they can manipulate oh, the yeah, people or huge religious angle you know, to this, yeah. Yeah, and um, I've seen different people say, I, I checked fine. the subreddit saying, like, they loved it because of how anti-religion the show is, and I honestly didn't get that myself. Uh, yeah, I didn't get an anti-religious vibe. Just don't be a... It's 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 pretty basic stuff, really. It's just, like, don't be a religious zealot. It, the show basically says, like, having faith in God and stuff doesn't make you a good person. Uh, that seems to be the, the message I got, and that... You can have like the crazy evil ones and then the the genuinely good people who are trying to do the best they can and they find a lot of you know path and and meaning through god and stuff which i'm fine with i uh i, I thought a lot of it was respectful for, and as we had with rags kept like pointing out different things that how they work with different like ceremonies oh and yeah stuff. they and, do a really good job with the um because i used to be catholic when i was young and they do a, a lot of work to make sure that a lot of the catholic ceremonies and things are accurate with the terminology and the liturgical times of the year and stuff like that. So it was like, like three... you could tell what's going to happen next by, Oh, it's Ash Wednesday. That means that Lent is coming. Oh, okay. That's done. Okay. It's going to be Easter. Like, okay. You know, then you could, you could tell. There, there, there were like three or four times where rags would say a word and then they would say it in the show. It was uncanny. Like you'd be like, Oh, this celebration is this, or this event is this, they're wearing this. And then the character in the show would say, it, and we're like, <gasps> So, um, yeah, the, as far as I know, they paid some decent respect to how everything works. They just also said that there are fucking crazy people out there who are also religious, and then there are ways to engage in faith that are really toxic and horrible and stuff. And it's just like, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, that was, that, that was part of the show that I, I really enjoyed was the characters, you know, some characters treating that differently and how the priest who's, or the Monsignor who's a central character is a really likable guy, and he's a very... You know, he's very approachable, very down to earth, and I enjoy his. I guess we can talk about. I guess we can say it, it almost goes without saying because it's a Mike Flanagan production, but like the acting was across the board stellar. Yeah, there was some um, scenes that everyone was yeah. fantastic. To say we were silent would be an understatement. We were just staring and listening. Very impressive cast once again. So I don't know what's next. Uh, I don't know what the reviews will be over the next week or so as people watch it and finish it up but my hopes are not high yeah I'm, I obviously know, we I'm, hope people uh, criticize it for how it folds back on itself or it does this that the other but like i have a feeling that we're going to see a lot of it was boring which would be like oh, oh well <laughs> that's yeah. fine i guess um but yeah is, is that that i suppose because the, the thing is we're probably not going to talk about midnight mass again other than in passing nah. um yeah it'll be in passing um What's interesting is that by the time our recording of it comes out, it's possible that we we've referred to by then the ending of Midnight Mass many, many, many times. And you'll, you'll, you'll see you us do it in real time. Yeah. That'd be weird for for an audience to know exactly how we feel about the show and then to watch it all happen when it first happened. <laughs> we were quiet most of it. It was only until the end that we were like, right, okay, yeah, we have things to say. Um, will you do a mini for Midnight Mass? Yes, but it won't be out for a long time. We got loads of other stuff coming, like the Resident Evil arc. That's on the way. Did you guys see the trailer? I did. I yeah, I like that trailer. That was really cool. Weekend Warrior, did you see the trailer? Not yet. Useless. Shad, did you see the trailer? <laughs> uh, yes, it was a triumph, and okay, I right, fine, particularly guys. liked the. The, the Resident Evil in the trailer, uh, and the reactions, that amazing. Um, Great. Also, yeah, I, I was just going to say, like, uh, flash, we'll, we'll, uh, I've got the Mario stuff back on, so no more Midnight Mass spoilers, everybody, okay? Go check it out for yourselves. Have fun, hopefully. Uh, Alright, so I guess that brings us to the main event. <laughs> Which, is the reason why you all trailer? showed up. Yes. Wait, what was that, Shan? Let's, let's watch the trailer. Let's watch the trailer. That, that's the main event, right? I mean, we, we could watch the trailer for, for EFAB. It's 11 minutes, though, so that's quite long. You know? Oh, 11 minutes? Yeah, that's quite Is long. Is it better than what we're going to watch, actually? Oh, I'm, I'm excited to watch whatever we're watching today. Oh, that's, that's a no from Freeney. Yeah, me too. That's a no from Rags. That's Sorry, a no guys. from me. 
That is a okay. no from me. I would like to carry on with our EFAP stuff. However, maybe we could end with that. We could wrap up with it and we could uh, I am put the links in that. there. And it is also on Mueller. So because it is a really nice trailer. I'm I'm quite excited to see the Resident Evil EFAP movies come out. All right, all right, I'll watch it on my own time. But you know what this means, Mola? I expect a, uh, I don't know what we call our arc, the historical... No, do we call it War Movies movie? arc, even though... War, war Movies, yeah, War Movies arc. I expect a trailer for that, then. Oh, I'm waiting. Well, we, we've got to record another, is it... We're on nine? We've got to record another three? Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Don't we have, like, another 20 planned? No, no, How we've got to record hundred? another three to complete this arc, and then we will start a new one, and we can all decide on exactly what we want it to be in, because 12 movies means a year's arc, you know? Okay, okay. One per month. And then we'll have them go in and record another 12 within the year, and it'll just be a constant arc. It'll be wonderful. So, uh, yeah. That's gonna be fun when that comes out, too. Anyway, you know, we, we talked about Black Widow all those years ago. And uh, we never. It, was, it has been many years now. It's correct. Yes. Yeah. We never Feels covered like any that. like videos talking about how great Black Widow was. And you know, mm -hmm. videos were made, guys. It's excellent. Videos were made about how good it is. And so you're thinking to yourselves, like, what, why, why would they do that? Why would why would why would anyone do that? And you're like, because, because they're bad at their jobs. No, because Mahler. opinions are okay, rags. You racist. Jesus. Hitler was fine. Did Hitler like Black Widow? Hitler had opinions, and if all opinions are valid. About movies, rags, not about all things. Gosh, idiot. Um, well, I guess we can watch this watch together here. I've provided a link. On it. Well, you can jump right in. How oh, very just, exciting. So it's, a, it's an old friend. Part one! It's an old friend of the channel. Cinema wins, everybody. Ugh. Part one! And they're gonna tell us about all of the victories, cinematic victories, in Black Widow. And yeah, he made two parts. That's how thorough two he had to parts. be. Yes. Yes. Wow. It wasn't because uh, it, it like is better for the algorithm and thus will get him more clicks, views, and money and stuff. It's because he couldn't possibly fit 30 minutes into one video. It had to be 15 apiece. That's how it works. Oh, that's yeah. fucking lame. I, I don't know about you, but technically it's illegal to have any videos longer than 15 minutes, so I've heard. I mean... Oh. Yeah. Oh. No I was gonna say it. this guy is this this guy's brevity is a soul of wit in the form of a person because like the movie is like two hours or some shit and he's he's managed to do this in just the thirty minutes that's way less than the movie. Nice, amazing. It's it's okay Very as long impressive. as it's less than the runtime of the of the thing you're you're covering. As yeah, that's as, the as important as it's, thing. Yeah, if it's one minute over, then it's then it's horrible. But if it's like you know thirty seconds under the runtime, then it's fine. Mm hmm. Um. So I'm hoping everyone has seen Black Widow in chat. You guys love that movie, I've, I've heard. We are going to give a different perspective on it. We, th we think it's less good. Like, not great. It's one of the best MCU movies, of course, but it's just not, you know, it's, it's wibbly wobbly. Up there, not up there. true. That that accolade is reserved for Shang-Chi. I wasn't even concluding that, because that, that's the Triumph movie. That's top tier, like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Triumph. Well, well, I mean, Black Widow is a triumph of its own kind. Plus the first, bad. first movie with uh, a female lead, which is pretty cool. That's right. She's the first, the first. I think it's the first movie female with a superhero. woman in it. Yeah, I, I yeah. just woman yes, flat. Uh, yeah, I agree. Isn't I it? Think, isn't uh, isn't Black Widow like the any... first woman? She might be the yeah. first woman. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. She might be the first woman. That's very true. I don't recall ever seeing one before Black Widow. Mm -hmm. And I will say, as the first woman, Scarlett Johansson. It's a, quite a start. It's so a great you really start. set the <laughs> ladies. I just want to say the bar has been set really high. I don't know if a well, lot of I don't know if most of you can live up to that, but well, you know, I mean, do your best. Yeah, just just to trying. play devil's advocate here, I have to say I don't think she has looked uh, as good as she did in Iron Man Two. Like that was her peak. Right That's because that was I, like uh, fucking eleven years ago. Okay, she's. She's had, yeah. I think she's had two kids since then or something. I'm not sure. So she's gone through a divorce. Oh, no, not even, nice. no, no, like, no, I, no, that means you know she's her hairstyle. No, even her hairstyle. Like, like she had the best hair hairstyle out of all the incarnations of Black Widow in the first Iron Man. And then they do some weird things. Like the, I reckon the worst haircut she had was the one where she was in. Uh, uh, I think it was Winter Soldier. It was the flat one that was just straight wow. down the side. It's like, man, that, uh, that, that's a that hot style, take right there. Yeah, that style is not doing anything for you, Scar. I'm sorry. I, I actually I like disagree. Wait, what's your, fa was your favorite? Was your favorite one Winter Soldier? You're objectively frame? wrong. Um, I, I honestly, it could be, it could be a toss up between like, I think, I think for me, the toss up is Iron Man Two Winter 
to Soldier and Civil War, I think. That's the yeah, I, I really like her Iron Man 2 here. I'm not a fan of either of the Avengers here. It's just not the style. No, I'm not. Yeah, I, I, I think that Iron Man 2 was her best iteration, at least physically. Obviously, she gets better character moments later on, but I like the kind of... <laughs> well, yeah, the I mean, ring we're list. talking about the character. She's yeah. much yeah. better later on. Probably, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing Avengers is probably your best... Uh, I mean, she's really, really good on-point character in the uh, first Avengers. Both Avengers movies uh, do a lot of work for her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Winter Soldier is probably good for her, too. Civil War. Yeah. yeah. Do, do we agree that the blonde Black Widow is the worst hair for her? Or... Mm. Well, do you mean the Elena? Or... Oh, oh, you're, oh the, you're talking about Infinity War. Yeah, I thought that's what he meant, too. The blonde Black Widow, yeah, she Yelena. she was blonde there for a bit. And then she had, she had, there's that one time where she had, like, dark roots, and then that went blonde halfway down. I forget what that was for. That was Endgame. That was yeah. Endgame. Endgame, okay. Well, not all of Endgame, but yeah. Um, what an interesting start to this conversation. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, you know, all the comments Air. are going to be about how all we do is we objectify here and we talk about the best one must just be the one with... Um, the, like the one that's who's the prettiest. We objectify hair. But even though we literally just said that Iron Man 2, she's like not a character at all. <laughs> hey, she's the femme fatale. That's yeah, about well, yeah. it. Um. Alrighty. Well, you know what? Let's. Um, I, I guess, is everyone ready? I mean, anything else we should say? Just. Just. We also learned that Fringy has terrible taste in hairstyles. Damn. Damn. Fringy, you gonna defend yourself? Or are you just gonna leave that there? I. Well, what does it matter? Who cares? <laughs> I care for you. That's I, what I someone care. says when they know they're wrong. Oof. Oof. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Is we'll dead. just we'll just continue. It's okay. All right. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Fringy. Don't worry, Fringy. I still love you, but hairstyle. Yeah. Hey, look. All right. I I just I just think it. I think I I think it's neat. That's all. <laughs> A passionate more. defense. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, Cinema Sins, what have you got for us? What'd you bring Let's do me? It. Let's see what's up. Everything Great About Black Widow is sponsored by the Curiosity Stream Nebula Bundle. And if you want to see both part one and part two right now, go to the link in the description and sign up for Curiosity Stream I'm and get good. Nebula for free. <laughs> well, we, we, we got them because we're in the future. <laughs> we didn't need no Curiosity Stream. Uh, everything great about Black Widow. What no, just the like, just the normal the holy noises and then it's like yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> this is like worship this movie. Yeah, that's the implication Gosh. with with the upper with the. What the hell? Like I no, that's what he. No, the, the the funny part is he does that for every single thing, but this one is so unsuitable because that title card plays behind the sound on top of the, the sound of the children screaming at the beginning of the film you remember yeah human trafficking so like this doesn't work at all watch that again that Children's is funny as fuck is music my ear is the stock choir music <laughs> oh yeah uh, i did the screaming what were you thinking <laughs> you That's didn't have to use the audio thing. from the film you could have put any any no audio, yeah, just, just have the yeah, no, yeah. wire thing yeah. So take the soundtrack, there would have been a beat in there you could have used, you just kept the children screaming, why did you do that? You know you can like, okay. I, I think it's a, is it you in, in Premiere where you just like, you ungroup the, the track from the, yeah, the music? You, and you yeah, just, like, we just click you, yeah, yeah you, you just click and you and then, and then, then control and X the to make it go away. <laughs> Man. Which is so obviously what continue. you do instead of having screaming children over your choir music <laughs> in your intro. That's Before great. we continue, um, I just want to have a, I don't know, a, a macro kind of observation on the Cinema Wins style. I don't get to comment too much on him. And uh, and look, you know, of course, you know, critiquing his videos, nothing against him personally. He's probably a really nice guy in person, stuff like that. I just, I find it interesting his, uh, his kind of approach to, uh, you know, um, uh, looking at, at films because... I can kind of get the the idea of trying to be positive about stuff, and you can you can still find good things in terrible films and and give it credit where it does good you know actual good things. But what Cinema Win seems to do is he really reaches and he picks bizarre. He is a mega reacher. Just, he's just like Cinema yeah, Sense. He's just like, the reverse. Yeah, it's he's, like it's the like compensation. It's like it's like he feels like there's too much negativity, so he just overcompensates positivity. And which I is there's okay. something that grabs that. It's called toxic positivity. It's when you pretend yeah. that everything's awesome when it it's is. Called being wrong. <laughs> well, I I I just prefer to think of it as like 
you know there are things that aren't like good right and that's that's fine like it's not it, like it, it actually shouldn't up because it, it feels like um it feels like we're going very roundabout for just you know like you don't have to listen to people when they say that they hate it and that it sucks like you can just go into your own little bubble and then and then watch it and enjoy it and have fun and you can totally do that and you don't have to make videos where like you you kind of just make these really bizarre points to defend something it's okay to like things there's, well there's no, and, nobody's coming to, I, I, nobody's coming to and i would have yeah and i'd have no issue yeah. with someone who who wants to approach things and look for the legitimately good elements of even even in terrible films and so if he points out legitimately good parts of black widow i'm sure would have no objection at all it's just when he points out things that are wrong or just reaches and just bizarre things like that's that's rather odd. I, I I guess, a safe place guess, to start for all these is usually the acting for these sorts of movies. You're like the acting's probably going to be yeah, something you can praise. Mm -hmm. um, cinematography might be something. Uh, soundtrack might be something. Story's yeah. going to get tough to praise because, like Black Widow, especially this is a movie mm -hmm. where basically everything falls apart. Um, but, but I, I understand like the, the the idea of you. Maybe we could try. I, I've done it for TFA. Those TFA videos, like, there's lots of sections about the things I thought that JJ did well, especially in uh, when Ray is first introduced. There's like a lot of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. like, huh. Yeah. Yeah, like at the end of your actually at the end of your Black Widow video, I actually it kind of flew over my head. But that after credit scene with the the whistling, I was like, oh shit, that was really good. Too bad it wasn't a terrible movie. But the the call back to the whistling I, at the end where it's over the grave. That's like, that was really well done, actually. I th I felt something, actually, myself. Yeah. Um, I saw in the live chat when that was premiering, a lot of people saying cringe, lame, like, uh, about that. I was like, so, like, having this whistle where it, the, the, they go, I think it's like a one tone and then two tones from, um, like, um, yeah, Natasha. Like and, you know, they do it to each other as kids, they do it to each other as adults, and then you only hear the half of it at the grave site because it's you know it's only Yelena's half left and I was like that's kind of huh kind of sad the movie sucks <laughs> but like it's you know I think that's worth yeah. you could yeah. probably compliment that little yeah. good things can be in bad movies people yep yeah, and but I guess the, I guess the problem is though is that this attitude doesn't exactly foster any desire to improve at your craft but, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, if it's I've... all good, if our, if all art it, art is of equal value, and there's it's all just great, then uh, what an admission well, what of you, horrific. Well, yeah, because well, I think that's the problem. Is it's like a lot of people. It's it's a really great example of cognitive dissonance where you like you you will accept that you need to practice writing to get good at writing. You will accept that you need to read books on writing to learn about writing. You accept authorities and, like, on writing as well. And try to, yeah, and, and that there are these rules that you have to follow, but all that matters is expression, and it doesn't really matter, like, how it turns out. You've expressed yourself, and you've done that, and so it's all, it's all, it's all great and good. It's weird. It's kind of this bizarre state of, like, I recognize that, that there is some level of this works and this doesn't, and that there's a way to improve, but also everything that everybody does has, like, value that is somewhat equivalent um, and, and, and there is no such thing as like good or bad, uh, when it comes to story weird. And, it's all. and I, I think that it can directly in, uh, influence better movies. Like, uh, I, after your whole uh, DC arc, uh, um, we saw a, a, an extreme, extremely valid, uh, um, example of that between Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman. I mean, Batman versus Superman still has a ton of problems, but I think the fact that they were, that people responded so drastically about the uh just the collateral damage and and the destruction in the first film and that became basically the inciting incident of the of men uh batman versus superman where yeah. batman was directly the effect of superman's carnage and that actually made for a, a much more interesting film than if they just had came with something else they actually mm -hmm. respond you know criticism in, inspired a new story so i, well, I think I, that's that uh, was pretty cool actually to see that that uh that responsiveness from, uh, you know, audience critique. I think you've raised something that's interesting that's kind of like an important caveat is you can always ignore people's criticism. Like, they might yeah. be wrong. They, they might actually just be totally wrong and what, what you did works and their criticism is bad. Um, the, criticism can be bad. Oh, yeah. Like, it can just be wrong or the priorities are off or it's just something they didn't like and they can't really substantiate it with something that's in the film. 
Well, clearly um, even Zack was like, oh yeah, there should be a lot of people dying, actually, in that opening. Oh well, hmm. yeah, that... Well, yeah, that's that's the thing, right? If a lot of people are responding a certain way, then something's happening there that's probably worth thinking about. Um, but like cr criticism can be super valuable. I I don't I don't like the idea of just saying, well, no, it's like criticism is bad. You know, having positive opinions is cool, but if you have negative opinions, you're opinionated, you're an asshole, you're a prick. Let people Again, like things, but it always comes back to the, like, it's good that it happened so early i guess in this whole the the efaps history and stuff but that conversation was just right where a point of praise was the um that holdo had good reason not to tell poe the plan and when you like discuss it down to the nuts and bolts and you finally get him in a position where he's like oh actually yeah that didn't make sense it's like so now that it, it was a point of praise now that the references aren't the same as you thought they were what is it is it a point of mm -hmm. uh, flaw and and you you can see like the the dot 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 like mm. and um I feel the same way for someone like Cinema Sins if if he were in the call and whatever he's gonna say in this video I'm sh I'm sure he's gonna praise a piece of the writing in some way that will lack a key piece of, of information that will shatter that through line and I just wonder how he'd reconcile it and is it as simple as oh, you don't like ignore that part that's yeah. That's... Well, I, and, and at that point, it's like, if I have to ignore components of the story to like the story, then maybe there's a problem here. And at that but point, so, everything is on the same yeah. level, because you can just take whatever you want from anything. It doesn't matter right. what's actually there. Point, you can take whatever you want from any story. That's that's totally fine. Because, um, of course, whatever you get out of a story, up to you. And, and there are certain stories that can have something that means more to you because of history or anything like that. That's totally fine. Um, but then you make a video called Everything Great About Black Widow, you know? <laughs> Part one, <laughs> even. That's, that's Children screaming plane. at the beginning. Oh, it, it's, it's just a different plane. There's a, I remember YMS said something along the... I, I just remember it, because it's like, yeah, it's kind of epitomizes it. Um, it was something like, if, if you know, you, you don't like that piece of criticism, then, like, maybe... Or, or something like, you should change your response from, no, this movie's actually really good to, well, I liked it. It's like there is a difference between these two statements. Um, I yeah. think everybody can appreciate that there's a difference between the two statements. Like, how many times have you had a conversation where someone says, I know it's not good, but I like it? Like, people people are absolutely aware of that, of like, yeah, it has merit, but... When not, you say like, oh, oh. something you like versus something is good, it feels like the difference between saying something I see and something we see. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa you just included yeah. me now. I don't, I don't agree. I guess, I think that... yeah, maybe. I think that as uh, YouTube creators, uh, we, we could all agree that have we not gotten uh, criticism and any critical comments over the past however many years we've been doing all this, we would have been worse off. Like, I've, I've definitely improved due to some very, very harsh criticism I've gotten over the years, um, whether it's like, you know, audio quality or editing or not making something clear enough or having, you know, jarring, uh, you know, audio cues or something like that, or just you know, writing or noticing mistakes. I've, I've definitely improved because of some criticism. Some criticism is just like trash and I throw it, throw it away, but other criticism, uh -huh. if it has a grain of truth, it, I definitely take it to heart and try to improve next time. Identifying the difference between those two is also difficult sometimes because, uh, yeah. yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten criticism before that's like 99% bullshit, but that 1% is like, Oh God, he's kind of right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And those are the worst. Yeah. Those are the, those are so painful, but at the same time, you just, you just got to kind of, okay, well, I'll do better next time, you know? Well, it's the whole thing of, is it detrimental to you? Like, if, if somebody very harshly says something that's true, you are detrimenting yourself if you are like, well, you were harsh, so go away, I'm not listening to that. Especially if you recognize it to be true. Yeah. You benefit from taking advice that is correct, even if it's harsh, and then improving the work. Like, that's beneficial. Um, I guess it would be preferable if everybody was nicer about it, but... I don't know, where humans were emotional and stupid. <laughs> well, you, yeah. you, you know, you just said it would be preferable if everyone was nice about it. I think that just explains the origin of this channel. Like, um, the Cinema Wins, mm -hmm. I mean. Like, isn't it nice when people are positive? Like, and it's just like, I feel like... It's like, no, <sighs> it, it should be nice when pe people can just be honest and nice. That's entirely possible. Um, and I don't... Well, I don't this, know is, this is the interesting yeah. point about this, because some people 
take any type of criticism, regardless of how it's delivered, even if it's delivered constructively in good faith, as meanness. You, that's just mm. cruelty in pointing out the negative things in my work and stuff. Because, uh, yeah, people can get super defensive, especially about, you know, their own works and stuff. At that point, it's like, why are you sharing it with me? You just want me to say that it's great, <laughs> awesome, good job, yeah. fantastic, yeah. <laughs> good for you? Or do you actually care what I think? Um, cause it, it actually is more of an indictment on you if in response to criticism, you get really pissed off, like then it is to just be like, yeah, okay, that's, that's, I'll take that into account. And of course you can disregard it cause it might just be shit criticism. Power is in your hands. All right. How you yeah. respond to criticism is more important than how the criticism is delivered to you. This is true, but l let's expand a little bit on it because sure. there's some more nuance to this discussion that I think is worth um, acknowledging. Uh, when I was young, I wanted to be a comic book artist and I uh, would uh, draw all the time. That was like my thing. If I, you saw me in school sitting at a desk, I was drawing. Like when I was supposed no. to be doing work in school, I was drawing. Yeah, and I yeah, was I drawing relate. superheroes. I and, and I'm a storyteller. I'm an author now, right? But the way I express my stories when I was younger is I would draw them instead of write them because I was actually really bad at English um, and so I didn't read a lot but so I would draw and I, I actually started to get pretty good but I mean compared to a professional when I was young there was a large difference I eventually got to a professional standard but okay so when I was uh, uh, trying to get better at drawing I actually put a lot of my own self-worth in my this talent this is like uh, it was a large identifying feature about who I was uh, being young I took criticism of my art very personally and yeah. uh, and I would get really, really depressed when people pointed out the legitimate flaws. And I think it was because I kind of knew the flaws. I was always comparing my artwork to the comic books I was reading and I could see the difference. And so no one really needed to point it out for me to be able to know that I still have a long way to go. But praise of my work, even though it was still very imperfect, was the biggest motivational boost for me that that would get me enthused it would get me to want to you know draw more and get better at it uh but when people would just be an a-hole well this is the thing that like because i would perceive criticism as beingness because i was young and immature that was my own failing but that was the reality of how i responded um and so where sometimes when people pointed out um uh, flaws in my work that would depress me and it would have the negative effect on me getting better at it because it would make me not want to do it. Um, and so it's a difficult balance because where I was, I was too immature to be able to take criticism properly. Again, that was my own failing because I was young, but it kind of depends on uh, what you want to achieve when you're trying to give feedback and also who you're dealing with as well. Like for instance, professional YouTube creators, I think should be mature enough to be able to take some constructive criticism because they're professionals. Um, and this is very different to say a young person trying to make YouTube videos and stuff like that. Cause I see, like, I see um, young people trying to make videos. My nephew is actually one of them. And when he tries to make something, I'm not going to hold him to the same standard as say I would with uh, a vi video from a YouTube who does this professionally and say, this is garbage. I'd say, no, nah, you got your showing some really good um, uh, effort here. Uh, I could see some really great promise in what you're doing here and there. And uh, it's a completely different mindset of approach where this person I know is wanting to achieve something. They need encouragement. So I'm going to focus on things that are doing great, you know, well, things that I can build up on and build positivity. And so it's just, I think it's, a, it's an interesting discussion to look at both sides, I guess, of the uh, of the criticism tree, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I guess uh, the. Have you seen Whiplash? Coin? You mean like both sides of the criticism coin? Yeah, coin. I think I was going for that. Because um, trees have. Yeah. I guess a tree has two multiple. sides. Yeah, but like they you split down the middle, branches. like an outside and an inside, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen Whiplash, Shad? Out of curiosity. No, yeah, you talk, is that a so movie? Is it? Mm -hmm. uh yeah so that's that's a really great movie and, and it's there there is a yeah, there is a part of that good. film that is about the idea of um the film is basically kind of about what does it take to be basically the best at any particular creative skill and um 
one of the characters. Okay. I don't want to. I've spoil seen too much ads food. about this. Yeah, I've seen a trailer for this film. You want to be the well best up. drummer in the world. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the one. So yeah. I, I don't want to spoil too much. There's there is a character who has a perspective on what it takes to basically create um, the best player in the world, and he always refers to Charlie Parker who was a jazz uh, player, and he got a symbol thrown at his head when he performed. Um, with a with a group uh like it didn't hit him but he got a symbol thrown at him um and and then he came back later on and and basically became like one of the greatest jazz players ever and the logic that he had is that there is no that that somebody like that could never be discouraged no matter how harsh the criticism is that's an interesting thought but there probably are a lot of people who could be really great who would actually be discouraged from incredibly negative Definitely. scathing yeah. criticism and so, yeah, I would be inclined to agree that um, not everybody is going to... The same approach is not going to work with everybody. Um, you can't be harsh with certain people who could be incredibly talented, who could be discouraged um, by being harshly berated. Yeah, I, I have... think tact is very important when it comes to uh, criticism. Tact is important. It's just also to be uh, important to be clear uh on your on yeah. your criticism and not just label it as crap like that doesn't help anybody just say yeah. okay your audio levels are wrong um the section isn't clear and you know the visuals in this part of the video don't correspond to what you're talking about things like that you can work with or saying like oh your voiceover doesn't have any gaps between it so everything's a run-on sentence things like that can be are like pretty objective and pretty useful um when you go into when you uh get more esoteric like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling a theme to this story. It's just like, you know, okay, what are we supposed to do with that? But I actually have two stories, one about myself, one about a colleague. I'll try to be quick because I know we're barely past the title card here. But um, uh, I, I have done a lot of music since I was a teenager, like electronic music and stuff like that. I've never done anything professionally, but um, I, I tinkered around, did some loops and stuff. Didn't really learn music theory, which is probably my biggest problem. But um, everybody had showed me music to people would like say, you know, friends and family is like, wow, it's really cool. I like it. You know, so-and-so and people would actually ask for it. I'm like, oh, that's neat. And one time I was in a car with this, with a, a work colleague and I just, without telling them anything, we we're just driving. And I put my music CD into the, the music player and they're like, what is this crap? And I'm like, oh, interesting. Oof. Uh, because they, they, they weren't, they were, they, if I would have said, Hey, this is the music I made, they probably would have had a completely different response. Yeah, but you know, had a, having no context, I got their honest opinion. I'm like, oh, interesting. Okay, that kind of hurts, but at least I got their honest opinion on it. You but, need someone um, like that. You need someone yeah, who's willing to absolutely. tell you the, the the truth. And and it's really interesting. I I have a a very like a polar opposite example. Um, there was a local um singer in my area that I'm kind of friends colleagues with. Are all local sing local singers in your area? <laughs> Uh, local singles are in your area too by the way right? local singles well yeah they they know about all the ipads you won and so they want to get in on yeah. some of that action <laughs> exactly um but interestingly enough she was like uh she would like do local music at like the local uh i keep on saying local the local um uh, church and stuff like that and of course you you have a captive audience there you know they're you're gonna, they're all gonna clap they're all gonna cheer and she it kind of went to her head and then she went on tour and it failed so she didn't i think she some actual criticism or some guidance or at least constructive criticism would have helped her because i think she got the miss the kind of warped idea that she was you know incredible and everybody wanted to hear her and she did a tour and that didn't quite work out that well not to say she was necessarily bad but had she had a more critical eye like a, a music producer go over her work and say oh yeah you know you actually need to do this or this is not going to stand out or what people really want to hear is this you know, for better or worse, that she probably would have done better on tour. But because she listened to an exceptionally uncritical and positive audience, she kind of went to her head and she was like, oh, well, I can be, I can become a rock star. And I, so, you know, criticism can be harsh for sure. And it can actually be quite, uh, like uh, Shad said, quite uh, unmotivating, you know, demotivating, in fact. But at the same time, if you don't get that criticism, you may completely uh have a warped idea of how good your work actually is i, feel, oh, I, I totally like agree a... totally agree in fact i so, sorry freaking out uh, i have an experience that that mirrors right into that because you know how i was saying i want to be a good artist well 
eventually a professional cartoonist moved into my congregation in the church where I attended. So I was a member of the same faith and, uh, and he was a professional uh, cartoonist. His art was just amazing and seeing him work, how fast he could draw was crazy. And like he um, had these Conan panels that he did for, um, uh, for, well, he didn't do it professionally because they were the submission panels. So he drew these Conan, you know, um, full page comic book, you know, pages to submit to Marvel to uh, get hired on Conan. And they offered him a job, but he turned it down because they didn't offer him Conan and he specifically wanted to Conan. They're amazing. And so I remember showing him some of my work, right, about these superheroes I'd created. And I was saying all the high big dreams. I was like, I want to send it to Stan Lee and get make comic books of him and stuff. And and, uh, and I, his response, right, I remember it, he was like, now, I don't want to upset you, but you really do need to understand that if you send this in, it's not going to get accepted. Mm. Well. <laughs> and that was like a, a, a stab to the heart, right? But he yeah, was man. so true. It was absolutely true because my drawing wasn't even half as good as it needed to be uh, to be accepted because there is a professional standard that people are accepting. And as hard as it is to hear, even the big wide-eyed dreamers need to know where they're at before they try and jump into something that they're not ready for. Well, um, you got to... Uh... You got to get past that Dunning Kruger part. You got to. I, I yeah. feel like Dunning Kruger is so true because there. It's happened to me so many times. Um, you should probably explain to thought, the people at home what the Dunning Kruger effect is. So the Dunning Kruger effect is essentially the idea that whenever you start upon anything, but specifically like a creative skill, when you start, you have an incredibly high level of confidence, but your skills are shit. Um, and, and you, you, uh... you are so, you are so confident, like you are so very confident in your ability to do this, but then, and the reason why you're so confident is because you, you kind of don't know what good is yet. And then, you know, you start figuring it out when you learn a little bit more about the craft and your confidence poor, just craters it goes down. It's, it's a, it's a steep drop. And, um, it's, it's this point where I think a lot of people quit. Um, and then eventually you start to, that's not it. How is that not it? It's similar. Um, it, Isn't that, you can go more broad with yeah. it. Essentially, the less you know about something, uh, it, think of it as a spectrum in terms of those who don't know yeah. much about a topic, think they know a whole lot more than they do. And the people who actually do know a lot about a topic are also confident in how much they know. And people who are kind of in the middle are generally the most accurate about how much they really know about something. It's it's like the lower the lower skill you have, or the more less knowledge you have, the more es the higher estimation of your knowledge and skill you have, basically. So the, the more you know about a topic, the more accurate your estimation of skill is. You tend to yeah, have an inflated estimation yeah, was, of skill. Was, yeah. Yeah, you're pretty basically. accurate. Yeah. Like I have, I have a, I have a great example of that. I almost quit YouTube and within my first three, few months because my first scripted video I did, I did a, a, a Doom uh, retrospective, and I spent like weeks and weeks on it. I, it was like a ten minute video. Oh my god, it was like Jesus, so long. And uh, I, I got it up and I was really proud of it. And then I searched for my video, and then I found uh, a Hoy's video on Doom, which was an hour long, and looked like a movie documentary. <laughs> His video on Doom, was and I was awesome. like. <laughs> It's incredible. Yeah. And I was like, I can never do this. So I thought that like, well, I'm useless. I should just quit right now. But luckily, instead of what I did is I was like, okay, let me try to improve. And I don't think I'm as good as Ahoy at, even today, but I've significantly improved since 2016. That's for sure. So you can take it one or two ways. You can look at like, oh man, I'll never be that good. Or you can look at it as like, hey, maybe I can try to improve. Why is this so good? What, what techniques does Ahoy use? That you know, I don't want to necessarily want to rip him off, but I could I could see okay, his pacing. He he'll have like meaningful silence. He'll have meaningful, you know, interruptions where he does you know a musical cue. He'll time his cuts to the music, and so all these things I took to heart, and eventually I got a lot better. And and I probably wouldn't have had Ahoy not existed. Um, so just just on this note, then, just of course, I read it off. This is also the big danger about uh, self-publishing because uh, there is a lot of people who are self-publishing work that is really not up the level that you would 
ideally want when you're publishing anything. Um, and it's a difficult thing to actually figure out where you are as a writer if you're at the level adequate enough to be considered a professional. And one of the uh, points of advice I have for people about trying to figure out if your writing is up to standard and quality is uh, I have a whole video on it, so people can just watch that video. It's about um, uh, when you're continually trying to learn the craft and you get to a point when you review your past works that you're not finding nearly as many problems as you were before is one. But the other way is uh, still, even if you can uh, intending to self-publish, and this is actually what I was doing, still submit your work to literary agents and publishers. And as soon as they start to show interest and ask for more samples, that's a clear sign that you're writing at a professional standard because no literary agent worth their salt is going to ask for any additional um, samples of your work or the whole manuscript unless the sample you sent them was at a professional standard. They do not even look twice at things that have just, you know, low sub quality subpar standard. And as soon as you start to get, you know, interests and feed and people wanting to see more, that's a good sign for you to say, okay, I might be somewhere with my writing now, and that can give you a bit more confidence to go at, or down the self-publishing route because it's wrong to say you should never self-publish. I self-published and have seen incredible results, um, and uh, and people have offered to represent me, you know, professionally. But now I say no because I can do a better job for myself doing it my my own on self-publishing, and so. Uh, it is a danger though, because I have seen come across people like, all right, I got this book, I'm ready, and I want to self publish it. I'm like, okay, have you really looked at it? Have you really gotten it properly, you know, reviewed? And because one of the worst things that you'll do is put something out there, publish your first work, and it being terrible, because that's a mark on you as your, you know, professional writing standard that's there forever. And it's like, oof, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I got this image up on screen that probably represents what the point of the Dunning-Kruger effect is pretty well. Um, you, you start out with a little understanding and hyper-confidence, then you hit that valley where you're like, oh man, this is so much more complicated, I'm actually pretty sure of it, and then you start climbing back up. But, uh, I mean, funnily enough, the different yeah. graphs have different points to make in terms of where you end up at the end. A lot of the time, the idea is that even once you're, like, basically the best in your craft, you'll never be quite as confident as you were when you started, because you, you're kind of more aware that there's still probably stuff that you could be better at. This, I think this, it's just a thing of you, you start really overconfident. Like, even the best doctors in the world will probably suggest, hey, get a second opinion. Somebody else well, might I, have more experience in a specific field than I do, you know? They must be just less definitive on things because they know more yeah. about the caveats and like, hmm, actually, well, that's not quite the case. Hmm, well, you know, there's always that argument. But the idea is you just got to push through that valley of, like, doubt. This is kind of the approach with a Dark Souls boss. Uh, oftentimes, the first, like, first couple <laughs> tries are your best ones, and then you slip into many bad ones, and you're like, I'm never going to do it. And then you start really learning. And then you do it, and you're like, oof, yeah. that was tough. It's, it's just the thing of, as you learn, it becomes more daunting, but then as you keep doing it, you'll get better. You just get back up, you get through that, that back to that, uh, kind of peak. Kind of peak. Not, not ever quite as high as it was at the beginning, I don't think. Well then, so should we, we carry on with the video? Yeah. yeah, I think that was just a very elaborate way of saying we feel a lot of these film essayists should, uh, I don't know, get their stuff reviewed before they put it out there. Maybe. So they all, always think that their feelings on a film are absolutely valid because that's just. I was going to say that part of the problem with that right? is that they feel. I've had people I've talked to in the past, YouTubers, who have been like, I do not want anyone's opinion on this movie before I complete my whole video and release it. Like, not even get it proofed. Because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's so I'm not, important. I'm not of that mind. It's so important to capture those initial human reaction as if this 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 golden egg that cannot be touched whatsoever and it needs to be captured and by the way i'm totally on board with the idea that like it's fun to compare at least with initial reactions to like uh later on reactions but the idea that like i couldn't possibly show you my video because it would taint it you're like okay <laughs> that's weird 
That is so bizarre. That's like writing a draft and never getting it reviewed or revised at all and just publishing. I would tell them. That's like, that's like awful. I would tell them I'm the opposite. Um, when I finish watching a movie that I have things to say on, I want someone to talk to about it, not a mirror. <laughs> I'd be like, hmm, what did you think? Well, you know, these are the problems. I'd be like, did anyone else notice how stupid this thing was? And then, you know, if two people like yes and two people like no, I'd be like, ooh, here we go. I would think that your initial uh, experience of some media would could definitely be tampered with if you watched a review and are already have a label of this is a bad movie or this is a great movie. I think that could definitely alter your opinion of it. But once you've kind of like experienced it on your own, I, I, I definitely find value in seeing others people, other people's uh, viewpoints on it because there's something you could completely miss that somebody else might have noticed. Yeah, I, I just uh, I feel like the work gets improved when you have more eyes and more uh, minds on it, at, at least in terms of input for you, because yeah. uh, you'll never know what the kind of stuff they can come up with that makes you go, oh shit, that's true, I didn't even see that, that's or your, something like that. That's your unknown, unknown. Well, right? uh, absolutely. I mean, this is why when you write <laughs> like a book, you not only do you review it several times, but you get an editor to go through it, and then you get beta readers to go through it all, and you're always getting feedback on every single level because oh, figuring out like if things work, because when you're writing something, to figure out pacing can be a very instinctive thing, but you're going off your own perception and you need to try and find out, okay, that's how you feel it's either flowing or you hope audiences will react this way to how you've written it, but you're not going to know that until you test it out with a, you know, a sample group. And sometimes the response is very different to your intention or what you, what you expected. Uh, well, so it's, <laughs> here's something to think about though. People bemoan test screening and bring people in what, what's it called with video games when they bring people in to like play it and play test well it... play tests yeah that's right um people criticize that because that's yielded bad results sometimes um i i guess it's just interesting to think about um at what oh. point do you do you when you bring other people in to take a look at it it's like well who's whose perspectives are you seeking out matters a well, lot I on that note, Fringy, it actually relates to a point you rose previously, is uh, you have to know enough about the craft to be able to point out good criticism and feedback and bad criticism so you know, when it's just incorrect. Like, I've had people try and say, this is really bad, or like, it was actually one of the beta readers for my novel, and they tried to point out something that wasn't working, and they were objectively wrong. They were not understanding the character at all, and if I had followed what they were trying to say, it would have ruined the book, and it was... The other part is what they were saying was in direct contradiction to something that heaps of other of the beta readers were praising very, you know, like quite a lot in the book. And so, it, yeah, you have to be able to be aware enough of the craft to be able to figure out, uh -huh, sorry, you're wrong at times. Yeah, I mean, even if you conclude that you shouldn't take it or should take it, at least give them a listen, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, uh, you just got to be discerning, that's all. Which um... interesting. Go ahead. No, I was just going to point out uh, there's a there's another layer to it too, where even if the uh, observed flaws are incorrect, you could also fault the creator for not making it clear enough that 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 that's the case. So like there are sometimes very obscure references that clue you in on something that uh, say a lot of people, even the majority of people watching a movie, might not notice. And so you could well say objectively that isn't a flaw because it is explained here. Maybe it's so obscure or it's so cryptic and maybe intentionally so that, you know, a lot of people can't pick up on it. And so you could even criticize, hey, well, although you do explain it here, it went over most people's heads. And so you could even count that as a flaw. If you're trying to get it across to the majority of people, maybe you made it too subtle or maybe you didn't make it clear enough. Lots of tough details to, to sort out, but I mean... It's funny, we're, we're talking about stuff where it can get really complicated as to whether or not, is it a flaw, is it a misunderstanding, is it blah, 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 but I'm stuck all the way back at, like, they'll make a major mistake and won't see it because they didn't show anybody. And they didn't, for example, Wonder Woman 84 just has a rape scene in it, and they're just like, oh, <laughs> shit. Because you know for a fact that she would have uh, not done that if she could go back. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. she wouldn't have done that. 
I, I, like, that, I, that one still baffles me. I can't believe it went through all the stages and no one, like, I, 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 did someone raise it and they just said, no, nah, we disagree or it's fine. I don't know. That could have happened. I'm assuming oh. that everybody just sort of went with it. And if there were ever any thoughts about it, they were like, nah, I'm, it's fine. I think it's fine. And you know what? We were we were struggling on the rules when we were watching it in real time. We were like, "Wait, is it is it this? Is it this? Is it that? like how exactly?" And I wonder if people on set were like that. They were like, oh, "This all makes sense in post. I don't even know what's happening really. I think it's Chris Pine. She's having sex with. It's fine." It's all the individual scenes are so you know could, like self-contained when they're doing the filming that they're not paying attention to the larger implications of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, I like, think uh, the riders at least. Gosh, oh. you'd think someone on the Tross script stuff would have been like the enemies don't know how to look up that seems stupid right <laughs> uh, also they probably filmed several versions of the different scenes with different lines yeah. like they could have had a whole version that we don't know about that um she was actually like he wasn't inhabiting someone else's body but or, you know yeah no it could, could have been there was a version where it was just chris pine came back and that was that yeah. yeah yeah you could change that in editing practically like the, it's such a there's only a couple visual cues you could probably could have fixed that in and editing. one literally. adr line you'd be fine yeah i i just i really want to see like if if you've seen the the skit by whitest kids you know about the grapist i really want to see like a a version of that with uh patty jenkins like showing the showing the movie to like a focus group and they're like hey, isn't that kind of rapey it's like no no, no. you're sick in the head <laughs> <laughs> Her reaction like, you would have to be so sick to think that's right. Of course it's not. Be <laughs> gold. Alrighty then, let's see what his first point is. <laughs> <laughs> Location cards are giving me Civil War feels, which makes perfect sense since we're about to jump to right oh. after the events of that movie. I Wait, get, it I... reminds you of, it's like Civil War, so that's... A win? I, 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 you know, what? Yeah, I, I can word it right. better. Yeah. I think this is a a minor win for the film that they kept the locations consistent when this film takes place inside Civil War. So it's like, I guess it's nice that you remain consistent with how they do the location descriptions in Civil War because your film is in Civil War. But um, I don't know that that's much of a compliment. Is that a compliment <clears throat> to Civil War more than it is to this film? I, well, the compliment yeah. comes to this film for just maintaining that consistent sort of approach yeah, yeah. it's nice i guess like i guess that it's, a little... it's a nano it's nice. compliment to the film but okay that's fine i mean that could, could have been literally the editor was like uh what do, what kind of you know title card should i do for this location i'll just copy and paste the after effects project i had from the other time okay cool done you know like... it could have been as simple as that actually it's like the two towers using the same uh font as fellowship and return of the king you're like oh yeah. that's good they use the same font. Well, this so the, this is the thing. That's to fine. be fair, Black Widow could have not done this, and I wouldn't have considered it a flaw. I'd have just been like, okay, do whatever you want. You're your own movie. Um, yeah, I wouldn't consider it the win. So that's that's like, kind of why fine. I'm saying it's like it's like a thing. nano win. It's like it's it's more yeah, neutral, it's like, but it's fine. Yeah. yeah nice it doesn't seem thing. like a win. Yeah. I like that it, he, the specific praise he gives this is that it makes perfect sense. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> How much in this movie makes perfect sense? They just because it, 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 the implication, obviously, we talked about this before, but just the so things not making sense would be bad, right? Cinema sense wins. Sorry, um, Jovovich isn't a bad doppelganger for Scarlet. Wow, have oh, she sort of looks like a young Mila Jovovich. Kinda, I guess. Yeah, I yeah, get. Is that good I, I, or is that? It's just my subjective reaction. I couldn't tell who was the, to right after... the young Scarlet. Jones I had to ask. Watched when I first watched yeah, it. Yeah. For the events of that movie. Um, um I, I wasn't... No, that, especially because they gave it, like, yeah. what looks like... Blue hair. Blue. Brown hair dyed blue. Like, isn't yeah, she supposed yeah. to have, like, red hair? Yeah, yeah. the easiest way to have done it is to have young Scar Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, <laughs> red hair. It's like... Scarlet Widow. Why, why blue? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I completely I, agree with you. It threw you me know, off I, a little bit at the beginning. She's I was not like, like the, she's not so, like other girls. <laughs> yeah. I, my... My ability to figure it out was even further off, and I don't know if this is just a thing with me. Like, because I didn't know that the one in the um, shirt with the yellow sleeves was young Black Widow, uh, I couldn't tell that that was supposed to be the character. I then couldn't even tell if the 
the young person was a boy or girl. <laughs> like, I was like, it, it was nothing signifying it too easily for me. So I was a little confused at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, and it got cleared up as, as time went on, but like, I, I don't know that I would compliment the casting or the, the way they represent the character for the ease of the audience. Uh, yeah, I, I think no, it was this, yeah. unnecessarily distracting to have the blue hair. Like, it, it may, be, may seem kind of like just cheating, but a red-haired girl, you're like, oh, okay, I know who it is. You could also do it another way, which if you... I found the first act pretty tedious. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird way to start out what is essentially an action movie. To have like a couple of kids playing in the playground but i think it would have been interesting to see to start out with modern black widow and then maybe she looks at you know something happens and you look into her eye and then it, then that it cuts to the same exact position with the little girl so we know exactly who it is you could do blue hair or whatever but it, as long as you kind of introduce the character you know and, and then it like cuts to that could. exact you know I framing think, or something that's one idea that's what they wanted idea. to do from what i could tell was give us this wonderful classic american suburban family life and then it all comes crashing down and this is what she always wanted back yeah and i can see that she just, wanted her blue hair back that was that's what it was all about it might also like be it, it, it honestly might even be something as as like this is her purity and like blue purity and then she becomes something red and dangerous and and dark or something. blue purity uh, i don't know like that was col a thing color association like you ever notice that like banks quite often have green carpet green kind of like represents finance For money yeah, yeah but um, i didn't know i thought white was purity white could be purity blue is usually like calming something good you know water is blue for example you need water to survive red is like danger attention uh <laughs> But yeah, there's like, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm reaching here, but I, I, you could see something like that where she seems like kind of free, blue, safe, you know, calm, red, danger, uh, death, blood. I mean, there like were people highlighting like, Delicious did, did kids even dye their hair blue That is like, I mean, yeah. it was probably. It was yeah. odd to see. It, it, yes. it was really strange to see. Not nearly as common back then. I knew a couple of people with yeah. dyed hair, but not so many people with blue hair now. In the 90s, yeah. Yeah, in the 90s. They'd be like, wow, so you look like a clown, like they do today. I mean, I what? Mean, this, <laughs> this made me even question if um, uh, um, uh, Black Widow was a natural redhead. Cause, yeah, like, same. That's, that's what I was saying. Black Widow. I was like, I thought there was there was genuinely a thought in my head. I was like, oh, are you telling me that she's been dyeing her hair red because she likes to dye her hair in general? Yeah. And then I was like, no, because the idea is that the red roots come out when she's not dyeing her hair anymore. Yeah. And I was like, I'm confused. And in fairness, your hair color can change as you get older, like your natural hair color. Uh, obviously, w when it goes to gray, but I, I mean, like literally, like my sister went from like a really bright blonde to a really dark blonde the older she got. Um, and so I don't know. Maybe they're saying that she went redder as she got older because those roots don't look that red, you know. Maybe she was no, like Roland. She was born with blue hair. Once again, they're talking about Black Widow's hair in this video. They have nothing substantive to say. Just had an hour of the matter of criticism. They just want to hate. They just want to hate women by focusing on their physical appearance and making well, fun of it. It's funny you bring that up because uh, it's a compliment from the video, and we're trying to figure out like what is this, if anything. It's like What's kind of a compliment flaw. other than an observation. Well, I would categorize it more yeah. in the floor territory than compliment, um, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't bring it up. I, I, I... Yeah, M Mila Jolovich doesn't look like Scarlett Johansson, so I don't know if a mi mini Mila Jolovich is a good no, no, I mean, for I mean the Scarlett. baby, like, or the the young kid looks like a young Mila Jovovich, which I can see. I just don't yeah. see. I don't see how that's a win. We we can worry saying no, I, how is that good to make them look like a young Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, if if you're gonna make her be like the grown up Black Widow, she doesn't even like. If you're gonna if your comparison was Mila Jolov jo Jovovich. Like, you failed. She should be a young Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, she looks like, Scarlett uh, Johansson. I mean, I'm pretty lenient with yeah. stuff like that. I, like, she's fine. fine. Yeah. This is the thing. I I don't it's think of anything young. about Those this, but if he's going to... So if yeah. they grow up, and, yeah, it's fine. If he goes as far as saying it's a compliment, I would be like, I mean, it's more of a flaw, but I'd rather just not talk about it. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you want to raise the issue, movie... then... Yeah. Oh, the thing, when a movie actually nails a younger actress to look like their older counterpart... In a a movie, lot of young actresses that nailed in Hollywood. The, um, oh, that's unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> but um, 
it actually really increased the aversion. The only film that that I could think of, and there might be other examples, but that act when I remember watching it, did it really good. That had a young version of the same character and the child actress they got looked really similar to the old one. I think it was one thousand or oh, ten thousand BC that film. Apparently, um, it is Mila Jovovich's but... daughter, by the way. That's what people are saying. Oh, really? Oh, really? That's interesting. Oh, wow. Which is interesting. I'm glad yeah, because well, I'm 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 curious. I'm glad that her she's carrying the legacy. The family legacy of being well, an actress. Someone else said she likely better, had already... blue hair IRL, and that's why she has it here. It's like, oh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I've who can a... who color who could color hair for a film? That's what I'm saying. Well, couple... or, or, or a wig, you know, like. Well, for for one, she's already a better actress than her mother. But um, two, <laughs> <laughs> wow. two, uh, I I I have to push back on that because hair in Hollywood and TV and movies is there's an incredible amount of work and amount of attention on hair. I oh, read really? a story. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, literally um, there were, they spent hours and hours figuring out um, Riker's hair for Star Trek uh, Next Generation. In fact, um, when he uh, when he was done filming the first season, he came back with a beard. They're like, oh my God, they freaked out. They're like, wait, you can't have a beard. You know, so-and-so Riker doesn't have a beard. And then everything was like, oh, okay, great. No, actually we like the beard. Let's yeah, work with it. Yeah, thank God he got then, a beard. And then, and then they had hairstylists like trim it and, and cut it for like, you know, tweaking it literally for hours and hours and hours. And eventually they actually shaved off too much. So they started, they actually appended it with like, uh, you know, glue and, and uh, extra hair to fill it out again. Like that's how much attention they have on hair. And it's, it's a serious, it's a serious deal. So the fact that they just casually made her hair blue, that must have been a deliberate decision because... Uh, well, a lot either of, that a lot or she came on, on with yeah. blue hair. They were like, we could, we could, we could use that. We're okay with that. Um, yeah, they're yeah. like, ah, it's a kid, whatever. Uh, but yeah, and, uh, but the... just to just because Mila Jovovich has come up as an item of conversation and uh, <laughs> uh, tied into Rags's point before about the degeneracy in Hollywood, uh, Mila Jovovich has actually come out and, uh, and admitted that she was, uh, yeah bad things happen to her when she was underage and so yeah hollywood oh. is a cesspit that deserves to be burnt anyway. oh that's pretty awful yeah you hear stories like yeah, that all the time good. and that a lot of people just the the, the 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 of the few that spoke up they lost their careers right like um yeah. there's a couple yeah, of examples like, yeah i watched a documentary on my flight back uh, to australia on child stars and that's where mila jovich was getting interviewed and she comes out and says it and it's like and some of the stuff oh it is disgusting Disgusting. Yeah, oh. especially yeah. the children. Children are so vulnerable. I I was really relieved to hear because um uh what's his name uh the guy who plays Frodo Elijah Wood Elijah was a Wood. child was a, was a child actor but his mother was like okay after set you come directly home no parties no get-togethers no meetups you come directly home and yeah, so he's he like claims very normal well adjusted <laughs> so yeah, he's like one of the that. yeah thanks to that but I I, I would be shocked. Uh, you'd probably be shocked to find out how many of these kids were uh, abused and and done horrible horrible things done to them. But luckily, we have a few that got away from that. Anyway, <laughs> many isn't a bad doppelganger for Scarlet. Wow, have we come a long way since Michael Douglas rudely uncanny valleyed all over our screens. Huh? Um, so I guess they're, they're talking about. My, I don't know if he looked that bad in uh, Ant Man. He was, he was alright. Yeah. He looked good um, there. I don't know that. Yeah. And the thing is, also um, he's much older. Yeah. And he was playing somebody who was much younger than he is. It's a lot harder to make him look younger than it is to make uh, Rachel, Rachel Wise, Wise look yeah. younger. But um, no, that's a fair compliment too. The technology to de-age actors is oh, doing okay. great. The one in Captain Marvel of Samuel Jackson kind of surprised me. I was like, whoa, he looks great. Yeah, that's really good. You can tell. See, the that's a that's a positive thing in a really shitty movie. Yeah, yeah. makes this too. I'm just curious when he gets he to the storytelling one. ones, like instead of the yeah. effects ones, it's like, mm. like oh, Rachel, look the font. Ooh. I like how he says, does Rachel Weisz just look the same 21 years later? It's like, there's a lot of actresses that do that, where you're like, wait a minute, you look exactly the same. You look the same 21 years later? Brave girl, your pain only makes you stronger. Such a 90s lesson that we've mostly realized is nonsense, especially to a six-year-old, but then you realize she's not actually their mother, she's training assassins, so of course she'd say that. No, but that's Hang on, there is a vein know. of truth in that statement. Still. Yeah. I mean, it's not wholly inaccurate. Um, 
what type of pain you carry and how you got it. Yeah, well, I, I'd probably go as far as saying pain makes you stronger is a little bit useless on its own. You're going to need a lot more than that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you could just be hurting yourself, and that's not good. Overcoming adversity makes you stronger. That's probably a more accurate statement. Yeah, state. yeah, that's a better statement, yeah. Because um, that's the statement Sorry. that um that she like carries it through a whole life, if you guys remember. <laughs> so I always found that so strange. It really felt like it's got nothing to do with Black Widow. Pain makes you stronger. It's like, that's not really... I don't see that in her storyline. Yeah, Literally, it's just in the because of her job, she might be in pain, but she still has to do her job, you know? So. It would be like if, if Iron Man said, pain makes you stronger, is like, summarizes my life. I'd just be like, not really, but okay. I guess you can pick things that can kind of apply to that. It felt like a generic one to throw on a character that you can kind of say is their journey. Honestly, like a much better message if they wanted to do that would be something like you need to learn how to forgive yourself and redeem yourself and do better. You know, with the whole Dracov's daughter thing, like that would have something like that. I just pulled out of that out of my hat, but something like that would be a much stronger resonant message for this movie. Um, and as people are recognizing, it's like, yeah, I guess pain did make it stronger because she kept falling in different places and getting yeah. <laughs> blown up and stuff. She's getting stronger and stronger. Sorry, I don't want to um, uh, sidetrack things too much, but just on the note before where we were saying that, yeah, there are some actresses that age 20 years and haven't, you know, they don't look any different. What about those actors that do age like 20 years or more, more and they look completely different? Like for me, the one that always stands out, have you seen young William Shatner compared to old William Shatner? For some reason, when I look at like Young Lou Chat, old. It's, it's like I'm looking at two different people. They look. He looks different, but he looks amazing for his um, age too. It's also like eighty. Oh yeah, he looks right? straight for his age. Uh, he's older than that. He's in his. Old. I think he's in his nineties. He is an old man. Yeah. He is old, and he's still just fucking carrying on. He's he's gonna Christopher yeah, he Lee and just go March. on forever. Yeah. Christopher Lee is an example of someone hard. who, as a kid, I always knew John Cleese and Christopher Lee were people who I like. I knew this the younger versions and the older versions as almost separate actors. Like, I recognized them differently. Like, oh, there's that guy. And it's like, no, that guy and that guy are the same one. And I was like, oh, wow, yeah, I guess they are. Because, like, I always remember um, older Christopher Lee would often have a beard or a goatee or something. And then younger one would always be shaved. And then, like, you know, one color hair. And the other, the, while well, the other one is, like, fully white or gray old man roles. Um, and yeah, John Cleese was kind of the same thing, where I'd just be like, they don't, it's not, I, I don't know if, what it is for me, I just, um, there is sometimes, like, I don't see them quite as the same person until I see enough of the, uh, middling years, I guess, where they connects them. But, um, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, you know, I, I would literally jump between the man with the golden gun and Lord of the Rings, and I'd be like, I don't think they're the same person, are they? <laughs> like, they kind of look different. Yeah, like a younger, younger Lee kind of had, it looked a little bit awkward. He looked really, really tall because he was kind of skinnier and, and younger or whatever. I had the same issue, I had the same thing when I watched uh, one movie with a younger Anthony Hopkins because Anthony Hopkins has been like, quote unquote, old wise man for like 50 years. Mm -hmm. So when I saw him in, uh, I think it was Elephant Man, I think I saw him in, he's like, oh, yeah. he's like young. He's kind of like, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm straight, but he's got a like little, little like hunky, like kind of like, oh, uh, you know, this guy would probably be like really, really attractive. I mean, he's not a bad looking guy, obviously, but. But like, I never thought of Anthony Hopkins as like, you know, a, la a lady, a ladies man or whatever, but I could see him actually playing that role. Well, you see, but he just got immediately graduated to old wise man for some reason. I watched his career with great interest and thus I saw his gradual turn from 40s to like 60s to older and older until all the color had left his hair. Um, I think when yeah. I think of Anthony Hopkins, I think of Mask of Zorro. That's just what I go to when I think of him. Yeah, which is oh, like yeah, the last inspired. of his sort of roles where he was a bit more, he moved around a lot. Now he's much more a, I sit and talk, I stand and talk, which is fine, because <laughs> that's his, yeah. uh, his age. Um, Michael Caine's another one, I think, to to some degree. And these are only because I think I saw their old person movies and tangerine. young person movies back to back, and I'd just be like, man, it's like a fucking going time traveling. Yeah, Sean Connery with like James Bond to yeah. The Rock. Yeah, that was a big mm -hmm. one. Bam, 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 I don't know, bam, Sean Connery, I can, like, it's so identifiable, even young and old. It might be his accent, but he's always it's so excellent. identifiable with Sean Connery. That's yeah. why I was saying it's hard to explain this because I really, I really agree with the Sean Connery one where I always see them as different, but I don't know why I would say that. And I think it's literally just on the surface the the complete different look 
James Bond look yeah. compared to uh, older Sean Connery, like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen or um, Indiana Hunt, Jones. Hunt for Red October. Yeah, like these, he's distinctively got a new look. I think you have to kind of reinvent yourself because eventually all you all you do is you look like a, a worse version of your your peak. But there's been actors who have successfully re reinvented themselves. Like uh, a great example would be somebody like um, uh, what's his name, uh, Irish guy, have taken Liam Neeson. Oh, Liam Neeson. Like he was Liam he was like Dark Man and movies like that in his, in his younger days, and he re reinvented mm -hmm. himself as like a more experienced, uh, you know, kind of action star with like fifty cuts a second with the Taken series. I was just thinking about how Johnny Depp is kind of like the character. He never would have been to, like any one character because he was playing a bazillion different characters all the time. But he was pretty normal in his, like, a, you know, What's Eating Gilbert Grape and stuff like that. He was a pretty, pretty, uh, fairly normal actor, but I guess he got into the character, character acting gig and he's now basically invisible now he just play whatever he wants to now he's gonna struggle to get jobs because of <laughs> yeah yeah he's almost yeah. invisible in hollywood now <laughs> oh, God. yeah sucks but there we are yeah new new fantastic beasts and new pirate movies will not have him in it like hmm. yeah that's that's a shame they're dead for a minute if you see anybody talking about jack sparrow on the internet they'll be like no one can play him again no one no. <laughs> like do not yeah. allow anyone to try and play jack sparrow it's kind of like uh king and i with uh yul brenner he he got so iconic because the, the character isn't necessarily supposed to be bald but he played it bald and so like nobody can play uh the king and king and i and not be compared to yul brenner they have even made like i think a saturday night saturday night live skit uh mocking that fact where like a uh, um uh, somebody was playing him as like <laughs> and he was getting nothing but comparisons to Yul Brenner. Sometimes you just innate, uh, and that was not only that, but that was a, a unique character. The Jack Sparrow is the first time it's been in, portrayed in any media other than the tour, right? So yeah, nobody's going to get, nobody's going to play Indiana Jones without being compared to Harrison Ford, etc. cetera. Um, as someone just mentioned, uh, Keanu Reeves growing out that John Wick beard is kind of like the line has been crossed between older Keanu stuff oh, yeah, and newer yeah. Keanu stuff. Yeah, he shaved it for the new Bill and Ted movie, and honestly, he looks so much older without his beard. So I think he should stick with it. it it's a good look for him. He wouldn't shave it for Matrix. No. Not that he'd have to. You know, Neo might have been like, you know what? I wouldn't mind a beard. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pro beard now. Anyway. Called Bioluminescence. Pretty biology lessons. Oh, would you grab oh, your Oh, fuck answer? off. Oh, come on. <laughs> that worth the points? See, Pretty biology like, lessons, you child. I, to <laughs> me, that's type of the ones that is trying to kind of copy CinemaSins, but in reverse, where he purposely picks out a nonsensical, irrelevant thing just to give it a tick. Yeah, like but in this shot right now, it's like not handling defense. not handling the bowl as safe as she could, or something like that. Sin. Where yeah, you just be like, I mean, what? Because sometimes CinemaSins kind of hear your corn on the cut. way of pointing out bull crap can come across funny especially when he does it obviously ironically and so uh. it can work but trying to reverse it without any possible comedic punchline when you know you're purposely being sarcastic it does not work so yeah. don't give weak you know nonsensical wins it, when there's nothing there i don't think it works Either way, personally, because my big problem with cinema sins is that they're like, oh, we're satire, and it's like some of our arguments are obviously wrong. <laughs> it's very hard to tell. It's hard to tell when you got it wrong, or when you were trying to be wrong, or when you were trying to make a joke, because sometimes your joke is a criticism, sometimes your criticisms are inaccurate. And it's like, well, this is kind of worthless. Like, I, I don't know what I'm meant to do with this. I, I either have to take it all seriously and then criticize the points that are wrong, or I don't take any of it seriously at all which you yourselves have claimed is not the case, that sometimes, like, you're actually trying to make real points. I don't want to get off on a whole tangent, but did you guys ever identify what that whole uh, Firefly thing was? I, I I kind of, like, backseat script wrote an explanation for it, but it's not at all really brought up in the movie. Like, it, you see it at the beginning and you see it at the end. I thought they were going to go for, when I first saw it, I, was, I thought they were going to go for something like, uh, oh, why do the why are those bugs glowing? And it's like, oh, those bioluminescence uh, fireflies make their own light, and then kind of like retouch on that later, uh, so as sort of like 
kind of a theme or something, you know, like, uh, oh, you make your own light. I don't know. That was just one idea I came up with, but something would be a- at least explanatory. As, as far I said as I know, in the video, it is waiting for a video essayist to just grab yeah. something because the movie didn't put any effort into that. But like one yeah. line would have made that somewhat thematic. Like, yeah, like I just said, you know, fire fireflies make their own light. You could kind of see something there, you know, maybe, but they don't even mention it again. They just show it at the end. It's like, oh, fireflies. Remember that? It's just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alexei Ranch dressing couldn't be tight suit oh. shadowing. What is that? Huh? What? He, Alexei's, Alexei's having ranch, ranch dressing, which kind of sets up how he's gonna gain weight. <laughs> oh, come really? Is that? Oh. He said he said. So this is the thing. He just said it. So he just said like the the tight suit foreshadowing. And so we're all just like, oh, that, is that a joke? And he's like, yeah, sure, it's a joke. And you're like, is it? You gave it a win. Yeah, the way. Yeah, it's funny because he said it in like the oh no way what in, in that like type of voice. But like it's it setting up the idea that he's going to gain weight. Is yeah, uh, you know, like, is that I? And that's I a to... win, or is he making fun of the weight? I, yeah, it's so weird. But to so... me, that's not a setup. Just because someone likes ranch doesn't mean they're going to get fat. <laughs> yeah. Well, so again, the so is, if he was like, like, it's just a joke, guys. I just feel like. All right, then. You gave it a win, though. That's why it feels weird. What's yeah. the point of the win counter? It's it's a new uh, filmmaking technique. It's called ranch position. Oh. <laughs> I get it. Who would want... Whoa, 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 whoa. We skipped. Can't be having that. I think it couldn't be. Tight suit shadowing. I don't want to go. I get it. Who would want to leave Hopper? You gave that a win. It's yeah, exactly it like like Cinema Sins. He just adds in jokes, and they're completely but indistinguishable that one, from at least. Critique. But that one was nothing. That was yeah. I can see why she wouldn't want to leave Hopper referencing Stranger Things. You're like, okay, why is that a win? Like, what, what is that? I just don't. I never understand the system. It it almost feels like filler because he hasn't got much to say on why this is good. It'd be like reaching uh, for things. Yeah. Which again, it, it, just it, it, it illustrates how useless these videos are for the overall, oh, like, goal of Omega, film Omega discussion. Reach. It'd be like uh, doing any movie with Christian Bale, and it's like, oh yeah, Batman, ding! It's like, okay, yes, the hey, actor I, did play like, Batman. He, but he's gonna have a real it? point eventually, I'm, it'll come. I mean, he's had uh, a couple of real ones. Is, uh, is, he getting tr- is he trying to copy Cinemasins? Because I remember Cinemasins, uh, you know, thing on Batman Begins, and he f- comes to the scene where Batman um, uh, comes across the kid in the window saying, you Batman, and it's the same actor that played Joffrey in Game of Thrones, and he gave him a sin for not killing Joffrey when he had the I chance. Remember that. Yeah, I remember I got that. a chuckle out of that. I, it, was, it was funny, you know, because, yeah. Um, uh, and that was... Uh, Obviously, sarcastic. It was meta humor and stuff, referring to things that exist outside the film. Is that what he was trying to kind of do here? It's like, oh, you like this guy? Is it another thing? But again, it's, it's not working. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of his signature. Uh, they even tell you this. Like, I don't know if you ever talked to any YouTube reps. They even tell you to like come up with some sort of signature catchphrase or some sort of branding personality thing. Uh, <laughs> literally, like. Uh, so his one, I think, is like lap dances or whatever and, and jokes throughout the video. So like he'll just randomly take a scene. This scene does not have a lap dance. Lap dance. Ding. You know, oh, and that's just... Hasn't he stopped that because it's so un-PC no, it's... now, though? I think Probably. I haven't heard I haven't... him say that in ages now. I haven't watched him for years. Yeah, I think so. He's watched him for years he either. stopped specifically yeah. because it was too offensive, which is funny. It's too offensive? Yeah, like to it objectifies to women. Lap dance. Oh, what a fucking loser. Wow. Maybe you're a loser for not appreciating that lap dances are offensive, Rags. Now I'm a winner for winning lap dances. Yeah, yeah. Um, but okay, let's just hope we get some real points then, because I'm already I'm already bored of joke wins. Yeah. I'm sorry. This whole setup from the carefree, peaceful crane down on Shut that up. through the suburban neighborhood, waving at kids, playing with her sister, and then sitting down to dinner is all so perfectly crafted to trick us into thinking this is Nat's real family. Perfectly crafted. Dad. Nat's real family. I don't know how you would... So here's the thing. I don't know how you would fuck that up. Just show a normal family. Well, um, <laughs> it's, it's I was going to... So like, but I mean, say. if you know anything about the MCU, so you'd be like, so Nat's Russian. What's she doing in an American? Yeah. Like, what? what is yeah. this? Yeah. 
already know that so you already know something's up yeah some something's point. not right yeah yeah something's really wrong i knew something was wrong from the very beginning it didn't like the mother's quote-unquote reaction to the kid her being hurt was completely wrong and everything was kind of off and also they, they never explain why nat never ever has has an accent whereas everyone else gets a really thick russian accent too which is strange to me but whatever yeah nat trained to not have his i would have thought what he should be complimenting is that this environment makes a lot of sense this kind of environment would give nat a strong i don't know attachment to family life that she never got to have again or something like that but like saying this is great at tricking the audience into thinking this is nat's real family i'm like oh it, not even close really? for me but uh, no. uh hmm. but it's a story about family and that's what's so powerful about it yeah dad says they have only about him and Nat is sad to leave her very real not at all cover for being a russian spy slash assassin sleeper cell family in life so it looks but real but you know it's not real but it's so i guess he's just sad to he's just complimenting the fact that it could have tricked the audience which i, I guess it could have if they wouldn't pay more attention yeah, yeah. okay also see sure. how comfortable the six-year-old is with the rifle shells and it starts to crack a little i, want ice I think you need to hang around real kids I, yeah, well, no, no i take that, that back i <laughs> but like i like this girl is comfortable giving her father bullets that he dropped i would say um yeah kids are gonna be more yeah. comfortable with bullets than a lot of adults would be because kids will be like what's this funny metal thing yeah here you go they might yeah, not even yeah they might not legitimately even know what a bullet is especially if the, if the dad's like oh i've dropped something i'm a kid i want to help my dad here yeah yeah. All right. Well, okay. I'm not too familiar a... with like you know full gun culture being an Australian, but I assume parts in America where gun culture is very common and kids are introduced to the you know firearms at an early age, and of course if they're being responsible, the safety aspects and stuff like that. But it might not be strange for them to uh, you know yeah like bullet hold a bullet. It's not just... unsafe. Also, just, the... here you mm -hmm. go. At, at this point in the story, also isn't Nat the only one who's gotten training of the two kids? The other girl hasn't been through the Red Room yet, right? Yeah, so if anything... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it, all, mm, In some ways, you could mock that against the film, actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know if I would, because there's other reasons you could make it so that she's comfortable or... or I think it's a girl just giving her dad something. Yeah, that's that's kind of the defense we're yeah. making, is that it's it's kind of just, it's the same as if he dropped a screw or a, or a screwdriver yeah. or anything. He's just like, eh, this is your thing. Like, we set the bar really low here, but <laughs> yes, I guess yes, that's we have. good. That I mean, I mean, to her, it's that? like, uh, hey, dad, you dropped your clunky cylinders, you know? You dropped your, you just dropped your cylinders, here you go. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Also, I, I also we ignore the sin of he has a gun in the closet, not easily accessible. It isn't already loaded in case he needs it quickly. It's. Uh, I mean, for spies, that's a bit strange. It's pretty. Yeah. It's a pretty odd one. I too loved Don McLean back in the day, but how perfect is it that Yelena you would see now? this song, not for what it truly is, a song about Buddy Holly and those two other guys' death, but a happy-go-lucky piece of America, reinforced with flashlight tag, high school football, and American flags. What's the win? I don't know. I was just about to ask the same question. What is the win it there? Filled her it's about America. America. Yeah. yeah. She, she doesn't America. know what's about the death of Buddy Holly and, uh, uh, the other guy, but I'm just like, I bet most people don't know that. I would In say fact, most I bet a lot of people just flat out don't know that. Yeah. Uh, so, also, yeah, me neither. Yeah. It's pretty bit, bare minimum praise to, sh to Especially have Especially she's a child. Like, why would she? I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, it would be, would yeah, it'd be exactly. strange. And a song can be about a thing, but that's not why it's loved or recognized. It becomes iconic for different reasons. I mean, it's you're given this, you're given, you, you made a 30 minute video on why this movie has good things in it. So clearly that's the case. It's kind of like that, right. that kind of upbeat song, uh, Pumped Up Kicks, where it sounds like, oh yeah, Pumped Up Kicks, blah, blah, blah. And it's actually about somebody like killing other people. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot it of songs sounded like, like, like that. He, yeah. I mean, he, he liked the choice of song, but it sounded like he was more praising the marrying of the song with the visuals that were passing by to try and show and instill the sense of Americanism to uh, the viewpoint character being Natasha, and that's what he was liking. Maybe if he had said it's the same juxtaposition present in their family dynamic, being that on the surface it can come across as something very normal, 
very American, but underneath there's something a little bit more, I don't know, complicated and uh, almost anti-American in a sense, at least them. Um, I don't know, Like the, the, it feels like we were missing more there just than saying she thinks the song is chill and American and fun when it's uh, about other things. You're like, okay. Don't give this a plus. Oh, just thuds, no bounce. It did yeah, bounce. That's, that, it did kind of bounce, but also, is that, was the plus? The physics? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Well, just, just on just this thuds. part no. in the film, you know, establishing that, ah, more superhumans at this point. And, oh, okay, magic, powers, everything, you could have superhumans, but super soldiers, with how insanely difficult they showed it was to make Steve Rogers to begin with, and how pretty done, you know, established they had then made afterwards, that how rare he was and, and things. It's so, like, how many uh, super soldiers now existed before Steve Rogers yes. woke up from the ice? Uh, more and more damage this? to the world building every time. Yep. yep. And yet, yeah, this is getting a plus because it didn't bounce more than it thudded. All right. And I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if that's realistic. A lot of things bounce that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Like, uh, I unfortunately know that bodies bounce if they fall. <laughs> that thing is so, super heavy, I'm well, guessing yeah. it would. Oh, I'm I'm oh fine God. with believing that how it falls is how it would fall, but I don't, I don't know why What's we're complimenting it for this. Yeah. Like you are, this cut is is reeks of desperation. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is bounce. A minor. Since you controlled by Hydra at this time, you can make good guys bad guys and bad guys good guys wherever you want. Just think about what he's doing in '95, and y'all hate when I call him a villain. 1991. Bucky's a great guy. Bucky's a great guy. Love Bucky. Yeah. What, what, was what, what was the point? What is, what? what is this? So, Stand up comedian. To, to recount, he's like, it's kind of cool that S.H.I.E.L.D. here can be the bad guys when, if you look at the context, they're stealing state secrets. <laughs> like, so they're not even the bad guys necessarily here. Uh, but he's like, well, yeah, oh, these guys are spies. Yeah, but but ignoring that, he's like, the S.H.I.E.L.D. can be bad guys because they were controlled by Hydra. You're like, okay, much like the Winter Soldier despite being Bucky, was still doing bad things in 95, as if he wasn't introduced as a bad guy in Winter Soldier, which he was. Then he's like, oh, but you guys get annoyed when I call Bucky a villain. It's like, you should be calling Winter Soldier a villain, probably, just to make sure people understand, I guess. I don't know, because Bucky yeah. Barnes... Into Whatever. That We're trying to recover from all those thoughts, and then dig, win. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> it, was, it was the win! What <laughs> win? I have no idea where he pulled that out of. Yeah. I, I guess it's the fact that S.H.I.E.L.D. can do things that come across as evil because they're Hydra. That's a win. That may be, this may just be a what annoys me about... Opera. Sorry, yeah, just what annoys me about the whole S.H.I.E.L.D.-Hydra thing is that in, you know, um, uh, Winter Soldier has established that there were a lot of agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that had... Sorry, agents of Hydra that had infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., but it wasn't 100%. There was still a lot of, you know, genuinely good S.H.I.E.L.D. American agents trying to do the right thing. And what was implied by that, the further you go back, the less infiltration that Hydra had in S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, uh, that's what the implication I got. And so to say that every appearance of S.H.I.E.L.D. in history is going to be a Hydra plot, it's just like... That's not what I got. It seemed like S.H.I.E.L.D. was still trying to do good S.H.I.E.L.D. things for the most part, with only some subversions of Hydra along the way. I mean, Winter Soldier said that um, uh, Arnhem, like, infected from the moment, like, World War II ended, right? Uh, and, and, and Yeah, but that's... And he was, like, high-ranking, and, and so... All, well, the thing is, them showing one mission of trying to get information from spies that are leaving America... Again, that doesn't even have to be a Hydra mission. That can be a S.H.I.E.L.D. mission. Well, exactly. And the fact that, you know, um, Nick Fury has had, had such an active role in S.H.I.E.L.D. throughout the past and stuff, and he wasn't corrupted, well, again, implies that... to be fair, oh. Shad, that wasn't planned, and it wasn't planned even when, for the people making the MCU, they didn't plan to make S.H.I.E.L.D. Hydra. It was the Russos that said, yeah. hey, wouldn't it be neat if S.H.I.E.L.D. was Hydra? That's true. And it's... It, Winter Soldier itself causes issues, uh, but like it's been hard for writers going forward to just make sure everything is calibrated. But they don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a retcon. I mean, I I thought that was an interesting retcon, but yeah, you can yeah, make it you work. Can't, you can't you can't judge everything before and after by the fact that uh, at that point, because because Hydra hadn't really, I guess, surfaced until Winter Soldier for the most part. Like maybe they've been sabotaging things along the way, but. 
they all shield is also responsible for uh getting the avengers together and saving the world so like exactly. they clearly exactly. they clearly they clearly been effective up to that point yeah i mean the arnim zola ai was a part of shield from the beginning it seems like but so was peggy carter and she was always a good good person and so exactly it's hard yeah. to believe that hydra stayed secret for this long with people like fury and carter involved at the top mm. yeah but they did as did the wakandans as did the shang chi people ten rings whatever as has kang <laughs> God, it's all terrible. Well, that's fine. Let's move on. <laughs> Mommy, you know it makes me stronger. Ha! Parenting fail burn. Please. Dip. I mean, that's a criticism. That would be a sin, not a win. Like Parenting okay. fail burn. Like, it... Alright. <laughs> I don't understand. I, I just don't know how it's a win. That's all. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Please. No more undercover. Is it? Technically no. left. Um, Isn't fine though. <laughs> well, so I don't know what to make of it really. Like, what do you what do you yeah. guys think that she says? But mom, hey, makes stronger when she's been shot. It's like I guess it's kind of sad. I don't know that it, the kid is watching oh, you I mean, and like... mom bleed out and has been told previously that it's okay because pain makes you stronger, but it's clearly fucking not true right now. <laughs> like, no, I'm, that's I'm, why I'm... it seems like it would have been a sin, a flaw that it's a you know pointing yeah. out a contradiction in the message that they're trying to um, put through here. I mean, so I'm, funnily enough, I would I would defend the film if I had only seen up to this point and been like, well, isn't that kind of what they're going for? The mum has um, a lot to learn about that particular piece of advice, that maybe there's more to it, and maybe the sort of the kids, but later on in the film, we find out that's all that drove Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow through her life, apparently. So, like, it, I guess it holds true to some degree. For, <laughs> for I don't know. Like, again, shitty movies have a really, like, inept ability to give you some kind of through line. This this feels like I I was more commenting on the whole like this feels like reverse nitpicking. Nitpicking. You you force a a good point where it doesn't necessarily fit. Yeah, like as everyone I think has been saying. <laughs> so. Yeah, I I, I kind of got that. The I kind of got the idea that it was very self whatever that point was before was very self-referential and mm -hmm. I, I get the idea that he's either, either had comments or previous videos and so we're probably missing some context or something. Maybe. Technically a lifetime of imprisonment isn't undercover work, so the real lesson here, kids, is be specific with your wants and needs. I will kill that That's a cinema win that again. Win? That, that's him like trying win. to... Yeah, that's him trying to do something snarky and funny that's not really a win, but is putting it as a win to be funny, to copy cinema sins. Aren't we getting a little too many jokes? We need some, you know, wins. I'm good, yeah. He's like, lol, he said he doesn't want to do undercover work anymore, so we ended up in prison. <laughs> like, and it's not okay. technically undercover, so... Yeah. yeah. You know what this is? Uh, you know what this is? Exact same problem with cinema wins and cinema sins. They're mixing uh, criticism with riff tracks they're trying to be funny they're trying to do like a stand-up routine with the movie and i guess that's fine but it just really muddles the whole thing like i riff think tracks so, has... yeah. why not make jokes about the actual good things yeah yeah because that would require more talent and cleverness gosh darn and time gosh and darn. dedication to the craft and this is easier to just say who oh, he's eating ranch dressing he <laughs> like uh, fat okay, mm. all right that is that's not even observational comedy. That's just your eyes work. Check, check. You know? Mm-hmm. I check. I check. Spoiler, they didn't not touch her, and she did. Just took a while. What? Huh? I'm very uh, confused. What? I mean, those aren't even the soldiers that Natalie, that not not necessarily killed, right? Wait, oh, so he's yeah, saying they the... end up in the red room. Oh, eventually, she did get them all. So, so yeah, so, he, so he's saying they do eventually touch her. She does kill them all. It just took a while. We have no idea if these people are the same people. Yeah, like, yeah, no, that's yeah, yeah. Cool. it would be weird if they were. It would be weird if they were. Yeah, yeah they'd probably they're yeah. probably like retired with a pension or something. And don't remind me how much this movie. Red room offers in terms of employee benefits, but. And don't remind me how much this movie does not give a fuck about all of the male soldiers in the in the army. They only care about the female yeah. ones. And also just like the is he doing a spoiler alert for something that's gonna have to happen in ten seconds? 
Because they're about to take her? I don't know. Seems kind of silly to me. He just means that she kills them in the finale, and it's like, but they don't even know if these are the same people, so I just, I just fucking got no, no clue here. Yeah, yeah, also, they... um, it came off a little creepy when he says, spoiler, they do touch her. He's like, what are you trying yeah. to imply there, mate? <laughs> they touch her with their hands. Yeah, because, well, he wants to make a joke. They make contact with her. Of the, 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 yeah, because he's trying to use the words that she used, because that's. I know, I know, but I'm just saying, Yeah, like they, they sedate her and they capture her. A little her and... creepily, just. No, um, I think that's crazy. Might be just you. Might be just me. It's possible. Maybe. I don't get that. I wouldn't, I don't know. I guess my mind didn't go there. Not. I think it's... He did kill them all. Just took a while. What was her name? Natasha. You know it's her. They still make it land like it's a huge reveal with you. What? Why? That's Isn't a win? That a... Why is that a win? Yeah. Because uh, it's a reveal, apparently, but I, I don't know. I certainly no. had gotten it at this no. point. It lands like it's a huge reveal, but why is that a win? Like, what, why is this like... Because like... you know her from the MCU. In fact, it's a little overbearing. Uh, actually a little bit. reminds me of one of... Reminds me of this one critique uh, YMS had for the Lion King remake, where, where it's like, right after a scene with Mufasa, we'd already seen him, and right after that scene, we see a scene with Scar and uh, Zazu, and then Mufasa walks in, and they have like triumphant music, as if this was the the reveal of Mufasa. And he was I remember like, that. What? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, remember and he was like, why? Why is this? That. Yeah, why is this fanfare? We just saw him literally thirty seconds ago. <laughs> just odd. The return of the king. <laughs> Exaggerated sound design in slow motion. <laughs> yeah, that was it. All right. Um, free will and the ability to give birth are apparently defects. Yike. He back what? Out. No, what no, he's we... bad because he's going to kill children, you fucking dipshit. It's and, not about his why... potential philosophic stance on what... No, he, he's bad in this scene because he's going to murder a bunch of children. Also, Rags, why is this a win? <laughs> because he's <laughs> bad. It's a win. Like, he's what? Mad. He's a win. What the fuck? That it's, it's guy a... is established as being bad. The bare it's minimum you would expect out of the end. He was already bad, though. That's the thing. Like, like he's already... All of this shit is horrible. That is like, that he also says, like, kill the defects. And he's like, wow, this guy's bad. It's like, wh it's where were you this whole time? Women, it's because they weren't good for the program. <laughs> they're defective, essentially. De like, defective products. It's not because they're women and because they can give birth. Well, the, what the fuck is well, this? It's also, it's a tiny little completely insubstantial point, but I've never in my entire life heard somebody say yike. It's always yikes. Yike? Isn't it? Yike? <laughs> Yikers. He said yike. Maybe it's like a Japanese word, yike. That's the... Yike. <laughs> what? Free will what? and the ability to give birth are apparently deep. I'm confused. I'm not letting you get rags. Have you practiced you. that before? Rags, huh? I must correct you also. That's yamete. Not Ike. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, no, Ike is go, right? Ike. That's his name. He's the protagonist. He has a very big sword. His armor doesn't make sense. There's no way he could actually get it on. He's just, yeah, he's an anime protagonist. He's the best, by the way. He's really, he really see, is the best. See, I, I don't know. We you can heard worry. of Ike? Rags is doing this with such proficiency. It sounds like he's practiced it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I no, I'm just that proficient. That That's a testament to my proficiency. This is, we were talking earlier about the Dunning-Kruger effect. I've made fun of anime so much that I'm on the right side of the graph where I'm an expert at it and I know it. R what? Rags. Your, your microphone. What? Rags. What, what's your yike opinion rags. of... Yike? Uh, rags. Ike? What, what, what? What, what is your opinion of Roni Kenshin? I haven't seen oh, Roni Kenshin. It's so good. Yeah, you should watch it. Yeah. You would watch like an artistic, like level anime that is just beautiful. You need to watch the prequel OVAs, is Trust it, and Betrayal. Though? It's absolutely awesome. All right. Is it though? Okay. I, we should do an EFAT movies on Samurai X Trust and Betrayal. It's friggin' awesome, man. I want to. Oh god, it's it's really just a shame that we're just all booked and we have so much to watch already. Oh man, what a what a shame! Oh, oh if only that could have oh. happened. But there's just, I guess we, you know, I oh, we're just so busy. Oh man. Oh no, Rags, it's, it's almost like you sound sorry that you can't watch this anime. <laughs> I think he is. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
So he says yeah, remove the defects, and funnily enough, I don't even, from, from having seen the film too many times, I'm not even 100% sure on what he's referring to when he says defects. I think they just weren't a fit for the program. Well, so that's kind of what I'm saying, is that I think it's supposed to be unclear exactly what he means specifically, but then he says free will and the ability to give birth are apparently defects. But they're all women. The ones who so, got accepted were well, women, so is he too. If he's referring to the sterilization process, that happens way later, like when they're graduating yeah. or whatever. So, like, why did he show that the clip defect. and then say this yeah. here, like that? And so, also, he's bad, so of course he'd have a bad opinion. The most free will of them all in this scene is Natasha. She's making a ruckus, she gets caught, remember? And then he's like, oh, you must... Like, like so, I don't, I don't know why he said this here, and I don't know why it's a win. The, the bad guy is bad. But it's, it's very strange. I mean, it, it, we're setting the bar low. We're consistent yes. in that regard, at least. Effects. Yikes. You bad guy. It was at this Yikes. point that I realized somehow I'd missed Olga Karolenko in all the trailers, and I wonder. Oh, she's Taskmaster. So, uh, don't bill your actors like this unless you want me and like eight other people to figure out. I had all the people. It was, it was everybody, everybody pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I will say, I doubt everybody figured out it was. Olga, I don't even know how many people knew her as an actress, but, uh... But I think I didn't. we all knew it was gonna be a woman. Everybody was because talking about how Taskmaster was a woman, yeah. I didn't, really, because I saw the body of a man. So I that's what threw me off. I, yeah. But so I could see I how people... Confident. I was yeah, like after the reveal, I could see why everyone would think that. My my brain was just like, oh, that's just clearly a man, because of well, I, could, I have eyes, so I mean, right. wouldn't do uh, that, uh, but... I mean, I looked up... But I see how, yeah. The main stunt person for Olga was a man, so they yeah, definitely of lot, most I mean, of the fight, of most of the scenes with Taskmaster <laughs> well, is a man. Didn't, they so. didn't have to do that. They could they have could had have a stunt female, woman. They could have had a stunt woman. They yeah. could have had. A, oh, I almost sure, said female like, stunt man, but what they I could mean, have had a stunt course, woman. The when I say of course, it's it's like you look at Taskmaster. It's like that's a guy. Like that's definitely a guy. Look at how like, well, and look at especially bizarre because Olga's just she's like a third of the stuntman's size. Right. Like, it, it, yeah. It's well, bizarre it's, to it's, see. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the scene where she takes her head off, it it looks like <laughs> they they CGI'd like her head onto onto the they body. They did. Yeah. There was there was it, something. It, it was either like... the head or the body. Is this film looks very did. fake? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I wasn't keeping track of the actors at all, so I had no meta knowledge or anything. And when I saw Taskmaster, I was just like, oh, yeah, it's a dude. Just look, look yeah, at Yeah, I mean, um, but a lot of people were aware of the, the coming well, reveal of course, before Tony you can see this. the guy. Yeah. Uh, but it, again, there's no reason why you couldn't just be Tony Masters with an I instead of a Y, and then just have Taskmaster be a woman throughout, like just a woman. Or Danya Masters. Well, as long or... as we give them a good fucking character, we got nothing, though. Yeah. Wow! Also, nothing for character and nothing for. <laughs> well, what is this? Is this? Yeah, this well, should be a lost, right? Is, yeah, well, Muller, the way, see, the way he, he's saying he it. Ding it. Oh. Yeah, the way he's yeah. saying it, it's like a flaw. Yes, well, yeah, it's see. totally. Oh, okay. Flaw. Yeah, let's. I guess we'll, we'll see. But is he gonna ding it? Oh, he's he gonna dings it for a win. He says that's a win. Says it's a win. That should lost. So, so the win is just that Olga Kurilenko plays Taskmaster. Then is that the win? Or is the win him figuring out that well, Olga but the like, giving himself a win, yeah. I guess the thing is, the concluding statement is, don't do this, ding. Like, what? <laughs> don't do this, win. Like win. what? Yeah. Oh, what? Sometimes At least I, we get. I wonder if he forgets when he's writing his script that he just he makes a like comment and then dings, is. and he doesn't even know. It's just yeah. it's just become second nature. Where he just dings it after everything he says. I think he really needs like a sign above his his computer screen that says this is a win, just to remind himself what he's doing. Because mm -hmm. like yeah, that yeah. that that was just him congratulating himself for figuring out. It has to be correct list. to be a win, or <laughs> something good. Like wins are things. Like just the definition of win. <laughs> yeah, we, on his screen, we're stretching the word himself. win at this point. I don't know what it means what? anymore. Just yeah, like what, a, what, his what entire we... rule set, just like stuck to his monitor, just like all right. Now and the, okay, good. <laughs> he gets away with all of this despite like the inception of the channel and the appreciation this channel gets is in opposition to Cinema Sins. They're like, oh, this is way better because Cinema Sins is like toxic. This is like celebratory. But I'm just like, they're exactly the same. Mastermind. There is no fucking difference. It's the same except one's positive and one's negative. It's the same that's... except he calls one a win, whereas the other one calls the same thing a sin. I was going to say, that's why I don't really see any difference oh, at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> They're both true. terrible yeah. at this. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't bill your actors like this unless you want me and like eight other people to figure out your twist before it's even set up. 
Oh, so oh, eight. Eight. That, win. that implies okay, that, a win. Right. But by saying that eight other people figured it out, that implies that very, very few people figured it out. Right. Because that's nine which, people. Which, of course, that's not even the case. A lot of people figured yeah. it out. Yeah. So that's where the Bowtie logo comes from. It has nothing to do with spiders at all. Why is I, it a win? Uh, why is why that is a win? win? <laughs> why did you give it a win? <laughs> Also, no, it's not a bow tie logo, it's a Black Widow logo. They didn't see like, oh yeah, we're gonna give it a bow tie. The, uh, the logo is a bow tie. It's not the hourglass on the back of a Black Widow for the front. <laughs> yeah, of the that's, that's like, actually pretty insane. That he... uh, that's one of the most explicit. <laughs> he is like, I do not understand the iconography for Black Widow. Win. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? That's so weird. Are not I wise, father? <laughs> Don't credit this. Yeah, you're gonna, music. Wait, yeah, you're gonna credit music. Music. Yeah. Yes. Over top young girls being sterilized and turned into assassins kind of makes you want to say, here. Really, Troy? Really, Laney? Was selling out and getting corporate jobs really the worst thing you could imagine? What the fuck that, are you? That, was, that was a joke. What? The joke is, hey, you know how you sold out? It could be worse. You could be kidnapped from your family. <laughs> oh. to an Why is that a I don't know. That might be good for some people. Maybe what, they're really what shitty a, families. Uh, it just feels like a really weird non sequitur. Like, what is this? What? Why is this a win? It's happening? a joke. You, it's a joke it, yeah. and it's a win. I made a joke, guys. And Calm it's, it's his win. joke. He yeah, made a joke and gave joke, the film yeah. a win for his joke. His joke. <laughs> Which wasn't even <laughs> funny. We gotta. Yeah, I've just read one. the next one. We gotta hear this first before I can respond. Ah. You know he's a bad guy if he's with Clinton. Political wins come for the obscure references, stay for the biting political commentary. So he's that with, wasn't that was a relevant sorry. president at the time. That's why he's with Clinton, not because they're saying Clinton specifically is an evil president. Yeah. Well, does he think no. if they wanted to say that? Yeah. <laughs> to clarify, when was when was Clinton's presidency? Uh, ninety-two, 92 to, to ninety. Yeah. And this is set ninety-five, so that's why that's yeah, why he's there. That's why he met him. The idea yeah. is it's not because all of the exactly he's in power. It's not because they're saying every person who meets with him is evil. That's not the point. Wouldn't it be <laughs> weird that he meets with a president and gets his face and everything out there? That seems odd. Yeah, that seems kind of counterintuitive. But didn't uh, one yeah. of the Marvel movies yeah. reference Obama once, and so Obama's canon? Well, in the Marvel how, universe, I, just but, it's but how can he be canon if the president they rescued in twenty? I guess he was a one-term <laughs> president. One yes, <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, in the MCU, Obama was a one-term president, which is one more term than he should have had. But you know, biting political commentary. biting political <laughs> commentary. Well, that's not what you come for, but. <laughs> Wilson and the other guy, the incredible shrinking convict. Put some respect on Scott Lang's name. Rogers Why is that, Why a is win? that a win? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my win, I guess. Uh, so the, he's, just saying, mm, he's just saying words at this point. So see, oh, what I would have eh. done if I was trying to draw a win out of that statement from Ross is I think it's pretty consistent with Ross's character that he doesn't take a lot of these things seriously. He considers them threats in terms of... Um, mm -hmm. uh, he, he considers them things that he has to solve problems, right? But Scott Lang... Is not taken seriously by like everybody, and that's uh, something that he has trouble with. He's he's like falling asleep when he's introduced in in Civil War, and then of course like Tony's like I don't even know who you are, and he's just like fuck's sake. The idea that he's like the incredible shrinking convict is like yeah, because they captured him. He probably doesn't take him seriously as much as he does the others. It makes sense that he might refer to him that way instead of Scott Lang. That's the best I got. And I, I would I would say that most law enforcement types would wouldn't really take. Uh, somebody's assumed identity very seriously. They're like, okay, Mr. Anderson, lower your weapon, you're coming with us. Like, they're not going to go by, like, uh, oh, you know, uh, uh, Billy the Kid or whatever. They're going to go by their real name or Mr. You know, kid. mocking name or whatever, something like that. Like, they they wouldn't, it, granting them a special identity is kind of almost granting them power. So I don't think they would necessarily do that or be inclined to do that. So I think Sorry. it's perfectly within his right. I'm a Ben Poon Slayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm really confused and also disappointed Ooh. at the execution of Cinema Wind's very concept. He's supposed to be even pointing out wins, and I thought that would be stretches, like it'd be really p pushing to try and compliment the film. But it's not. He's actually even pointed out flaws and counted them as wins, and yeah. it's like contradicting well, the concept the... from your channel. What's well, going thing, on? Chad. I mean, you see, here's the thing, Shad. That's really easy. 
So I was confused. So really, this is just like cinema things. It's like, here's the thing. Here's cinema another thing. Statements. Yeah, cinema, cinema things. things. Yeah. Cinema <laughs> things. Cinema stuff. <laughs> and it dings the thing counter. <laughs> thing counter. Hey, that was a thing. That was something. A thing. Ooh, look, thing. Natasha's nose. Ding. And it's cinema still, things. Oh, no, instead of ding, it says thing, but like high pitch. You gotta commit to the ding counter aesthetic. The thing, yeah, thing. You know. Oh, somebody, somebody said in chat, cinema dings. There you go. That's even better. Cinema <laughs> things, not cinema dings. The ding is the sound it makes. Cinema <laughs> things. That's that's the, his, his whole thing is he points out things. It's great. Like I had a I had a very low expectation of the concept of what he was going to do here. And he has even fallen short of that. <laughs> it's just, I'm sorry, yeah, he could man. Be, he, is... he could be doing better than this, but yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> the poor guy is desperate. Got no friends. Where are you going to go? I've lived a lot of lives before I met you, Ross. Ooh, breakup burn. Oh my God. Did, what, well, shut the I lived a lot off. of lives before I met you. That's not a burn. Yeah, Ross has lived up? a lot of lives before he met him. <laughs> he's, he's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, that's not a burn. That's you have a very up. low bar for well, things in general, but also burns? Mm, yeah, he's, burns yeah, yeah because he's had a few. Breakup. Not the Maybe. first burn he's mentioned. He he thinks looking at a stove is a burn. Mm -hmm. Touch the stove! Ding! Uh, no, I got a <laughs> Cinema thing. References. Cinema <laughs> thing. It's, they're punching! It's a thing! <laughs> it's a thing! <laughs> Oh, it's just a cinema thing. Don't, don't praise this. Don't praise this. He's gonna don't. praise this. He's totally gonna yeah. praise this. And before he does, remember how much she doesn't use her fucking gun in this whole scene. That's that's a fun okay. part to it. Is he, is he gonna call it an Arya Stark move or something? I, I think he's just gonna say the choreography's good. Yo, okay. apparently the widows don't mess around. Crazy way to make it. Yeah, but yeah. we heard that. Uh, Do you notice know only yeah. now? The widows don't mess around. The will class They're assassins shit. trained from fucking almost birth to kill. <laughs> like, they, they, they don't mess really around. Bad job of it. Attacking someone with a knife when you had a gun the whole time almost is like the Sounds like messing around. messing around. Yeah. yeah and not yeah. the most direct thing you could do to beat your opponents. Also, uh, how much does she struggle with this person who just got hit by a car when you're fair armed amount. and ready to kill? <laughs> it's just like, okay. Yeah, fair amount. Could have been a lot, lot easier if you just shot her. She was already stunned and injured. <sighs> Make us immediately feel this is Yelena and sympathizing with her and at the same time showing how powerful the mind control is. Widows are brutal. Mm, uh, I mean, no. Sorry, They're what was dumb. the first part of that? Crazy way to make us immediately feel funny about knowing this is Yelena and sympathizing with her at the same time funny. showing how powerful the mind control is. That's funny. That, well, that's like two things. About, that's like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like those two can't coexist. So if we're supposed to be like, ooh, it is Yelena, but she's kind of cruel, but also she was completely mind controlled. You're like, wait, so you wouldn't feel funny then. You'd just be like, yeah, she was mind controlled, now she's free. Yeah, I think I would be just sympathizing with her, not feel funny. Yeah, I think that's what the point of the scene is, especially when she, like, you know, leans over the body and she's almost crying because she's had to kill a friend yeah. of hers. Like, I don't think there's, I don't think that's supposed to be a mixture of feelings. I think we're supposed to be like, she was evil or controlled and then uh, non-controlled. No, what, what, what's he mean by feel funny? Because he, you know, was like beating the crap out of the other lady. Was that why he said it felt funny? I got nothing. Also, it's kind of a miss opportunity that we see her under my control for what, maybe 30 seconds or less. And it doesn't like we, really affect her going forward at all. Not at all. We, we, we get none of the gravity of her being under my control for her you entire get a line. life. You know, you get a line here and there, you know, being like, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> it has like, been known to be referenced. Yeah, it's like I've never I've never picked out clothes before. Sad. <laughs> but OK. Um, a lot of people would be like, thank God you've never had to pick out clothes before. <laughs> I see maybe the compliment I would give is just like the how fast she goes from being what seems to be like a ruthless killer to this caring soul shows the power of the mind control. I don't know about this whole feeling funny thing. Yeah, she would at least be incredibly sheltered, naive and or just completely neurotic, borderline, you know, autistic because she wouldn't know how to interact with people. Yeah, her whole and life has been training that. to uh kill people yeah widows are brutal 
Roxana. By you all? I thought we'd move past the mid nineties. What? What? Because she said what? Roxanne. Oh. Things. Hmm. <laughs> it's a reference. That's what people would sin right. sin cinema sins for. Was he would just say reference and then ding, and he does the same thing. But it's not even a reference because her name is. Uh, I think Oxana. Oxana, yeah. Not, not, not Roxanne, right? So, or Roxana. I, I fucking whatever. It doesn't matter. If you're referencing the Sting song, it's Roxanne, isn't it? Well, there's some commitment. As no. Mm -mm. Well, what other choice do you have? Uh, also, that's insanely dangerous to stab yourself in the thigh where she, all those big juicy blood vessels. She also are. drags oh. the knife down. It's like, oh, you're doing some cutting there. And again, I can't get over how the fact that she knows where it is. She would never know. And also, it is. Does, I don't know. It's just. Mm. So I'm I'm reading ahead as the copies of their fighting style mutant rewatching the airport fight from Civil War makes sense. So making sense is good. Just to again confirm. We've, we've oh are are you do you just like it when things make sense? Well, in fairness, he's just it could be a joke. He's like I understand why he's watching this one or she's watching this one because it's an awesome fight. Um, well, he's saying also he's got the little semicolon, so they're actually two separate statements. Oh, so he is saying... So, he is saying that if it makes sense, that's, oh, wait, but that's something... That's why wouldn't it just watch... Listen to him say it, because his, the way Why wouldn't it just it watch all fights, though? Sense. Why would it make sense? Why does it make any more guess, sense to watch the Civil well, War it's one? It's funny, right? Because what you're saying is, if something makes sense, it's good. But why does it make... Do, it only makes it sense in makes its sense? footage to watch. Like, not specifically that it's the fight from Civil War, unless it's yeah. that it's the most recent one. And so you've got the that's the a That's a more specific compliment, but he didn't do, say that. But he didn't say that. Yeah, that was, we were doing the legwork yeah. on his book. I don't know if, we, the, I don't know if we went over mean, this when we first, well, uh, the first time we went over this movie, but that's one little pet peeve when people watch the movie. <laughs> it's like, oh, this footage, this was, we're watching the, the previous movie. It's like, was there a camera there? Was there surveillance footage? I don't know. Um, well, wow, this, this is at. probably. I guess this, yeah. this looks like B-roll footage, though. Let's like. Okay. Well, so I'll agree with that. The the you. positioning of the camera doesn't look like it's on a building. It looks like it's floating above them. Also, super high quality for an airport security camera as well. It's like HD 4K image. Look at that resolution, that frame rate. Yeah, frame rate's a big thing too. Style mutant. Yeah, I know she's not a mutant in this yeah, one. Yeah, look at that. Rewatching That's the airport fight from Civil moving? War makes sense. Also, it <laughs> yeah, was an awesome fight, moving. so definitely can't blame her. Also, her mask is dope and intimidating. No, right, it's hey, stupid and dumb. Mm. Dope and intimidating. It's it 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 reeks of try hard Call of Duty Battle Pass. Like the Urban Skeletor it looks like Skater Skeletor or something. We just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, He Man. I'm doing an Ollie. Yeah, look at me go. <laughs> I'm meeting uh, Tony Hawk, think... man. <laughs> Just on the topic, how do you think they could have adapted Taskmaster? Because he was basically a skull with a hood uh, in the comics. You, you could have done a work. bajillion different you things. You have so, so much free did, reign. Yeah. You have right. so many I'll, options. I want to hear examples. Give me examples. Well, like, you want me to visually what describe what it should oh, look yes, like? Yes, Hold impress on. me. I can find. I can probably Google images some comedy. skull skull masks that look better. Let me just uh, go skull mask. Unfortunately, when you Google Taskmaster instead of the actual comic one, most of the ones that come up now are the Taskmaster. Well, from... just Google yeah, Taskmaster, just go to Taskmaster, Taskmaster comic. comic. You could just Taskmaster yeah. comic. Yeah, you got Taskmaster here from Spider Man. Could have done that. Oh, he's like an actual skeleton boy. He, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, he's got like an actual right. skull face. Kind of like Red Skull in a way. Is there, yeah. is there, what's the comic reason for that? Is he just a skull person? No, Anyone just likes him, I guess. Not to know. I mean, there's probably tons of uh, ancient and medieval style helmets that are decorative that resemble the shape of a skull that look way better than the crap in Black Widow. Yeah, I'm just I asking, think, is, yes. is he an actual skull? Like, is that his head? Or is it a mask? No, he's a guy. He's... he's... Well, in that case, yeah, it'll be easy to do that, I would say. <laughs> Just get a skeleton helmet, like that's. And with that's the it. hood, putting a lot of shade on it, like it, it'll look, it'll probably look pretty good, I'd imagine, potentially. I think it's just weird when you think about how, if this isn't this uh, organization, why did, what's with the spooky skull helmet? Was like, that if her this decision? is the organization, yeah, like why? <laughs> 
How come Why did they pick Drakov green light uh, green lit that thing? It's well, just, it seems for the same reason he green lit so, all the other fucking costumes. They're all shit. Um, the P the PlayStation Four Spider Man version of Taskmaster isn't half bad. Yeah, you, yeah, you can use that. Up. You got options here. Oh yeah, the PS4 Taskmaster looks way better than what we got in Black yeah, Widow. Good. It makes it look kind of like a gas mask a little bit. I like that. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's, it's not covert at all. It's a fucking absurd outfit, and it makes it so obvious. Like, you know in Budapest when they're running around and stuff, it's like all the cameras would have caught this guy with a skull suit mask thing. Like, it's not it's not either at all undercover, but that goes the same for the Black Widows. Also, the big visors, it's not intimidating either, especially with you if you've got the cuz if it's trying to be a skull, then generally skulls will have the two circles so that in black for the, you know, the hollowed out aspect of the skull, not this big like bicycle or it looks like a ski visor, which yeah, is yeah. really not intimidating at all. It's like an edgy, edgy uh, snowboarder mask or something like that. That's what I kind of know. Yeah, yeah, I think of extreme sports when I look at him. I'm like, look at yeah. you. Yeah, BMX, yeah. You, you know what would have been terrifying? They wouldn't have gone this route, but you know what would have been terrifying? I don't know the backstory of Taskmaster at all, so I don't know what, what he is, What if he's like supernatural or whatever, but if they, I mean, Natasha's uh, sort of uh, camouflage mask where she can pretend to be other people, that was must have been developed by Drakov's people right how terrifying would that be to have a, an assassin who can mimic anybody's fighting style who could also uh cover up their face and become anybody so literally anybody in the world could be taskmaster at least anybody with that build there's so many That'd be a, a fucking fight scene opportunities they would have had i'm just picturing like on the bridge blackwood is like dominating by pushing him all the way back one area and then as he learns more, it like stops in position, and then he starts pushing her back, because like he's just able to counter everything. And uh, how much you lose a sense of morale if every single throw, like punch you throw, is just countered and blocked, and you get hit like over and over again. There's it's the it's the Thanos Hulk fight. They did it. They did it in that. It was really quick, and they didn't do it like once for Taskmaster in Taskmaster's movie. Yeah, and uh, you know, retreading old ground, but I, I love the idea of like you seeing that UI is like switch, you know, uh, Hawkeye mode switch, you know, uh, Hulk yeah. mode, Iron Man mode switch, you know, like that would be so in interesting and interactive. And that's that's you know? the weakness that they can defeat him yeah. with. Is, yeah. Oh well. Something about divorce. Yeah. Always nail the theme home by sticking to the familial slash oh, relationship, yeah, but they're not allowed to be in the movie. Sorry, familial slash relationship terminology. What so, so terminology? like just mentioning Divorce? your brother, sister, mother, daughter, whatever. Just doing that, you're on theme. Like, okay, doesn't even, it doesn't even matter how it's said or where it says, just as long as you say it. Okay. Which are, they're pretty common as words go, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> No, it's, it's Budapest. Budapest. This conversation makes me think that she and Clint had already had this argument before they talked about it in Avengers, since she lets this him get away with This thing makes me think of a thing, Clint. Like, like Budapest all over again! You and I remember Budapest. Well, alternatively, she didn't care to correct him in the middle of battle. That might also be another reason. I mean, it's, uh, what, are you, what do you make Why of that? that? You're just like, lost. okay, fine. All right, yeah, like, that's what a lot of these are just, okay, I guess, you yeah. know? Man, this right. is the best box die job I've ever seen. Oh. Why did that win? I mean, I feel like dyeing her hair is a skill that she'd pick up. A, well, I thought life, but I right. thought the joke here was it's clearly a wig. It's not the dye that's done that. But, but then he gives it a win. It's like, oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Things can he's, be losses, but also wins in Cinema Sins world. Like he's literally kind of doing Cinema Sins now. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Yeah, like the equivalent the... in Cinema Sin Wins yeah. Sins video would have been like, that is a wig. Like, it's not, you know, and then <laughs> ding for Sin. Instead, he's turned that into a win here. And again, I don't see the fucking difference between these two creators really anymore. Some obvious nods to Moonraker in here, Jaws and Taskmaster. What, with them watching the, the film? Jaws and Taskmaster, what exactly is... How do you connect Jaws and Taskmaster that much? I don't know. 
Jules the is holding. Do you guys remember the same goons? number of lines? He says what? Goons have the same number of lines. The base up in the sky, Orwell space, and also even spies. he's struggling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stretch. But sorry, on a meta kind of thing, I've always wondered how people would contextualize movies like James Bond in this universe where such crazy, ridiculous stuff is actually real. It's like James Bond would just be... Yeah, in the same not... way war movies. Yeah, that would be like I mean... considered a more historical fiction than... So, like, people in chat saying, like, well, I guess they're, they're both muscle. It's like, but why is that? Like, oh, yeah, you know what? A lot of villains have muscle. That's true. So that's why oh, yeah. we see, like, he's trying to connect Moonraker to this film because it's referenced as her watching it. What is, it's like, well, you know, Taskmaster and Jules are both goons. Oh. Okay. I mean, in the original, the original first Hitman movie, they have a snapshot of somebody playing the Hitman game. Is that a win? I don't know. Just reference. Yes, that's, that's that's more of a win than this to that's me. A, that's a mega win. I I wonder if he's gonna be like there are also guns in Moonraker. There are guns in this. You know, and spies. Well, yeah, spies. Spies. Yes. I love spies. The same. The base up high in the sky, well, space. And also not spies. space. You know what? Lazy too. You didn't yeah, get any footage space. from Moonraker. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Yeah, that's work. But really, I just love that Nat watches spy movies for fun, and based on knowing the lines, she watches them a lot. <laughs> what? Okay. All right. I guess Stop doing up. that. You're just I saying what that. happened. <laughs> All right. You know, that's... Uh... <laughs> but he, he likes it, and it's worth a win. But for Natalia to watch James Bond, is this like, you know, professional critique oh, instead? God. It's just like, yeah, I would have done it differently, Bond. It's such an amateur. You'd, you'd expect them to do that. The, the, the try and have some fun with it, but at the no, same time, no, we'd expect would... them to die. Yeah, I, I would yeah. like it if if we saw her just I don't know if 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 this was built on someone else, like maybe she'd referenced it before in some of the films, and then we see that what would she be doing if she's trying to stay undercover and she's sitting in this thing all alone? It's like maybe she would watch some Bond movies. That's fine. I think it's surface level. I think it's that she's kind of like a spy. John James Bond is a spy movie. She's watching James Bond. Oh look, she's reciting the lines. She must have watched this a few times because she likes spy movies. Because she's a spy. And I'm sitting there like, I'm not sure spy spies would just like spy movies. I imagine that, that you could get the opposite result, right? I mean, what you think? Yeah, plumbers have... love Mario. <laughs> what was I sorry? They'd have comments about it more. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like they'd be critical. Like, wait a second, well, that's not I'd... how a pipe works. Yeah, I can't give a one-to-one -one example because I'm not a medieval person, but a medieval enthusiast, I tend to dislike <laughs> most medieval period yeah, films because of how doctors and nurses. Are you, are you a you're a medieval advocate? Yes, I am. A lot of doctors, nurses, firemen, police, like when they watch different things about those things, procedural detectives watching detective shows, they can get. You know what? Regular people can get fucking pissed off watching detective shows, isn't that right, Fringy? Um, yeah, that's absolutely true. And so, I just picture that when they're experts, they're gonna get even more pissed off or whatever. But they could also just be like, yeah, I mean, I like all films. So, I just think it's lame. It's like, she would like yeah. spy movies because she's a spy. You're like, wow, you really thought oh. about that for five seconds, didn't you? <laughs> there's really, there's even a genre on YouTube where you got doctors commenting on, like, House and other medical yeah. shows, right? Yeah, oh yeah, so... to, to clarify, there's a lot of stuff that these people end up saying is, like, really good. Like, really fucking accurate mm -hmm. and stuff but yeah this could oh, be literally literally uh oh rebecca you know or, or what, or what her name is <laughs> natasha she's a spy let's have her watch james bond and the conversation yep and man that's that's about it too that's the we're, we're right before the film goes insane so <laughs> that... well before we continue and detective shows kind of came up and it seems like fringy you don't like detective shows no, no. Yeah, Fringy, what the no, fuck? That, uh, yeah. what, that, wasn't, that wasn't the point okay. that was raised. It's that okay. you don't need to be a fan of any particular... You don't even need... You don't need expertise in any specific field to have more or less of an interest in anything, oh, yeah. really. Completely agree. In terms of media. Um, but just because like, we're on detective-type shows, I just want to say, I love The Mentalist. I haven't seen that. 
I've not seen uh, it. it I, right up until the red John arc is completed, it's brilliant. It gets a bit off the rails after that. But, ah, uh, yeah, Patrick Jane, one of the most charming characters, uh, and really enjoyable stuff. Very well. Uh, but yeah, let's let's see what he's gonna say about. I'm actually looking forward now to the parts where this film goes insane because he's gonna have to contrive positives from it. Even though we've been essentially trained to expect jump scares and explosions out of nowhere, this one got me. Obviously, All right, that jump, one jump got scare. You. Jump scare. That's why it's that's a jump, jump scare. scare. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, fucking baby. But all right. I mean, I, I, that's not, I don't uh, criticize anybody for getting jump scared by stuff like that. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I'm just saying it's lame to compliment it for Hold being a the jump Hold the line, scare. Mahler. Fuck that. Jump scares, I hate them because of that, Rex. When they go, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, you made me jump. Good job. Thanks. Oh, no, 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 that I'd be like, yeah, but this? Um, This one, I, I can't remember I... how I initially reacted to this, other than just being fucking confused. I other, was than, like, other than like, oh, so she's dead. Fuck fear flashes, yeah. But um, it, amazing that flashes. he's going to try and get through this scene and like we've gone through a decent chunk of it by simply saying the jump scare worked on me. Like, okay. Walk alike. Seeing Olga Kurylenko walk and taking all the femininity out of her walk makes sense both as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> taking all the femininity out of her walk. That's definitely what they did. No, that no, is no. That's definitely what they did. It's they took out the femininity of her walk. I think the theory makes way more sense that they didn't actually plan to make her a girl at this point of filming because this would have been done so long ago. And that there's just little bits and bobs around that imply that they, they might have gone with Tony Masters before uh, bringing uh, Kate Shortland on. The, oh, I, there's pieces I of information this... that can match the narrative. I just find it funny that it's a guy. He walks like a guy. They didn't take yeah. the feminine walk away from Olga Kirilenko. Why would you even try to say that? never had it to take it away. Wrong. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned this in my review of Black Widow. I thought the guy who was going to play Taskmaster was the spy friend of Black Widow. Apparently not. Like That, that would have made more sense as a twist okay. than anything. <laughs> the black guy, yeah. I, I forgot. The black guy? Name. Wait, wait. I got no Hawkeye. No, no, no. The guy that gives him his her the, the connections and whatnot. I oh, uh, oh, Mason. Is yeah. His name. What? Sorry. His name is Mason. Are you talking about the one that is Mason. like a handler? Yeah, the handler guy. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, the, the yeah, no. Uh, who, that was apparently that was a potential when they were making this film that he, it was going to be revealed that he was uh, Taskmaster the whole time or something like that. Which, yeah, I could see them doing that too. Um. That makes more sense than, oh, surprise. It's incredible. The the, the, he said this, though, because, like, none of the other fucking Black Widow's r women remove their women walks. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> women walks? He's saying that like, that happened because I, I they were guess. mind controlled. Like, I'm sorry, why would you. Why is it you want to make them walk like a guy? What? Why would that He's be a. Like, this is some sort. Yeah, it's acting like this is some sort of like clever maneuvering on the part of the handlers filmmakers. Of like, like oh, yeah, you, you're crafting they, yeah. they sure did fool you by removing Taskmaster's feminine walk we're and giving, also using clearly a man as the suit wearer. But yeah, we're ooh, giving, they got you. We're giving the mind control to majority women, if not all, exclusively women. Make sure they walk like men, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what are you? Why? <laughs> It doesn't matter it's, if they're men or women if they're standing around in the middle of the street said, with machine guns and goofy outfits. He said it hides her identity. Do you know what else hides it? The fucking body. <laughs> like, is what he, like, I, I guess he's saying, like, oh, if Taskmaster would have walked like a woman. I, it's like, yeah, walking like a woman wouldn't have revealed who Taskmaster <laughs> really was. It wasn't like Natalia would say, oh, it's you because you're I just a woman. assumed it was a mega Black Widow, it would essentially. Be, dude, like, it'd be so yeah, funny if, like. Black Widow. It, he, he does the female walk, but as this body, and then we're like, oh my god, now I know who it is. You're like, who? You're like, woman. <laughs> like, woman. Or it would be funny if they had the clearly man in this outfit walk like a woman. Yeah, that's what I'm to saying. To try and sell it. Yeah. And then, that's uh, a, that was but a funny idea. It's not only funny, it's stupid in terms of he's saying it protects her identity. It's like, oh, we got our identity. What's your information? Woman. Oh. That narrows cool. it down. <laughs> now we know exactly who it is. I, I mean, she, uh, I guess Olga had That doesn't even make fucking, if, if, sorry, I'm pissed off at this point because he's trying to say <laughs> it's a good thing. It hides her identity by convincing people it's a guy. It's like, how is it helpful to be, to know that it's a girl or a guy? How does that narrow it down? 
it's like it knocks it's, out half the population. No, well, that's well, three point five billion the, people who it can't. No, eat no, now. the 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 difference, rags. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't. No, I don't. don't. I, okay. I, so he's saying no. now that we know, uh, not knowing it's a girl means it protects her identity, but we know it's a guy. So why did it make any difference? Sorry. It doesn't achieve anything. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, either, I see what it's you're either fifty percent of people, or it's fifty. Like, it thank, has to thank be one or the other anyway. So what's the point? Yeah, thank goodness well, we convinced it's, them it's, it's a guy rather than a girl. We didn't want to narrow down the identity. It's like <laughs> it's yeah, wrong yeah, on yeah, multiple yeah. levels. It changes nothing whether it's a guy or a girl, and it doesn't help you at all. Either way, it's a, anything, a significant portion of people. Anything, it's, it's still fifty percent of the population. Well, this is making me wonder what would actually change if Taskmaster presented as a female instead of presenting as a guy. And the only thing I can think of would be people's response and reactions. They might maybe take him less seriously if they knew that he was a girl because they think girls... What if they underestimate well. him? Maybe that's good. In the, yeah, and that could be a useful thing because if you underestimate him, the, she could get the upper hand. But this is also the MCU where, you know, women just in the comic book universe can fight easily as well as guys, and so that really wouldn't mean much in the end either way, so... And then, so, someone just mentioned, isn't it 51% of women on Earth? Or it might what, be whatever, I, what, what, whatever. Think, no, no, that's important because that means it's better to make it be, that people believe it's a girl. You have oh, more by people. 1%? Oh, you just made a fucking stink about more numbers, so shut the fuck up. 51 is more I wasn't than 49. Making a stink. That <laughs> means okay, okay. you have more. If you're going to put effort into making her come across as a guy to protect her identity based on like people who have to search all of men, it's like, well, there's more women, so just don't hassle with all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, make yeah. people think it's and a woman. Molar, molar. But the thing is, if people know that she's a woman, that means they can exclude half the population already and they have less work to sift through. <laughs> you know, it's still several billion people, but it's less work to sift through you know to what? find out who she really is. The so, ultimate... So, th yeah, checkmate, man. The ultimate thing to do would have been half a man's walk and half a woman's walk, because you can't be oh, one sure. One leg each? Yes. yes. Yeah, the left... Yes. Yeah, you, you mess around oh, with yeah, the brain yeah, so that the left half you. is female and the right half is male. And so it's like, it's like, yeah. So now so you have to check everybody. <laughs> and, and Rags, well, when you say half, half, are you saying like there's one boob on one side and then a pectoral on the other to really throw I mean, you, you, you could just have the right side be a fat dude, so it's a boob anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. I feel like, if anything, that just narrows down substantially. <laughs> Confirm Search the world for the someone world. who's half male, half female, <laughs> right down the middle in a line. Right this middle. person like, is oh, very. That's like four people. Yeah, this is a very unique person. <laughs> like, <laughs> ultimately, his point is: it's great that they removed Taskmaster's female walk so that it protects her identity. What a stupid thing to say for many reasons that we just went over. And also, it probably wasn't even. The woman is probably yeah. Andy Andy Lister, the the main stunt coordinator for Olga's character. Yeah, like most Start most of the stuff was know. done by Andy Lister. He's done X Men. He's done Spider Man uh, stunts. He's a really good stuntman. And I, I I don't imagine the conversation went on on set like, "Hey Andy, don't walk like a woman." <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think they actually gave a fuck. He just got out of the fucking car and walked. And they were, no one yeah, said, yeah. like, make sure you don't do it too womanly. <laughs> I wouldn't want to give it away. <laughs> God, he's about to ding a, a win for this. Since she's being mind controlled. What? Yeah. Oh, what? we're just complimenting what? the slow mo? Is that what that was? The, the, the cool slow motion with the block is the yup. That's a thing. Yep. Okay. What? So is that cool? I guess. The shield that's... instead of Ta aiming for like. Yeah, Taskmaster teleported over there. He got the shield yeah. out without making a noise when it was embedded into the car, and then uh, she doesn't shoot anywhere else other than the shield, despite being that, that incredibly. Like the shield pretty, can be thrown yeah. into a car. It's so hard it sticks there, but whatever. It makes her look pretty dumb. She's like just sh continually shooting into the shield, and you guess after the first shot that it deflects you'd get the idea that it's kind of useless but no she just keeps shooting in the same spot it's just also somewhere else completely gave up a an advantage of not of being behind somebody like she literally did uh you know nothing personal kid and teleported behind uh black widow and then did nothing with it just ended up you know blocking some bullets but they she had several seconds there where she could have you know, sneak striked her and with, without without any opportunity. 
of uh, noticing her, but uh, movies. And it, and he's probably about to compliment the one part of the fighting in all this movie that I think a lot of us actually liked. And I'm just sitting here like, if you're gonna be consistent though, the rest of it was shit. But you're not gonna say that. Yeah, there it is. Oh, no better way to cement what Taskmaster's power is than to have her. That never happens again. That's yeah, it. That's it. literally it. This is the only thing that he does in the entire movie. This this exists only to remind you that it was the only time it was used. Well, I get the impression he's going to be like, yeah, but remember he had Black Panther claws, and then there was the part where he did, like, the Bucky knife thing. And Not the same. Like, that doesn't mean anything. So he just had those, but it didn't amount to anything. Well, of course, it's 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 not being used in a creative way against other people. It's just an aesthetic. It is, it is yeah, basically. It's and just like, ooh, guys, remember, this is Taskmaster, because you forgot. It's so lame. Like the, 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 we never get any kind of a, the one I wanted was um, like real time learning, and this is the closest we got because she used it on him and then he managed to reflect it back. Which could be because he already knew, or it could be because he learned in that moment. But like, man, none of that is in the movie, and he's like, this cements it. Like, uh huh. Cements is a funny way to say it. I mean, it is cement in that it dries off, and then now it's not malleable well, at all. Again. If generally when you say this cements that, then it is not the first example of it happening. It is the final very, it's the nail in the coffin, essentially, to coin another yeah. phrase. This is what really drives the point home to where it is undisputable. This cements well, the fact that it's it's like when you say it's written in stone. Yeah, yeah it, um, it is the end. It is the finale, in a sense. You've you've done and it. And the You're only on. thing you can say as a reference before this one, excluding third party stuff, is him watching the screens. But that's not I really anything, is it? They could have no, done that in post after the movie was done because they were like, "Oh fuck, that's right. This is supposed to be Taskmaster." <laughs> Quick, add a scene where she's looking at people doing yeah. stuff. Does she this use it in the film? No, but yeah. Also, we're uh, we'll be getting to the visor stuff soon. I can't wait. Immediately hey. steal signature move in the middle of not performing it. Also love that as Taskmaster's HUD is telling her to go after the vials, all the other data concerning Nat fades away. Right, there it is. <laughs> there it is. That's, but there that's it is. bad. That's it's bad. The part of <laughs> so you should delete the threat before going after the main objective. I'm just saying. It's and this is a bad. weird one to be specific about the criticism, right? Because a lot of people, even on Twitter, were like, isn't he just saying that it's good that the visor would fade the information away in accordance with the visor's goal to to say she's not important that vials are. Do you understand? Like, very specifically? Which, which, even if that was true, that's just like, I noticed how his visor does a really dumb thing. Well, so that's that would be <laughs> yeah. my counter. I think it's all stupid. Why would it ever do that? It's like, this is, this is a threat. Don't I'll, worry about it, though. I will use the example that I've given before, which is, in a video game, imagine you're playing a video game, right? Um... Mm -hmm. Imagine every time your objective changes or you know alters in some way, you lose the rest of your HUD. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. I love no longer knowing what what direction I'm supposed to be going, or my compass, or how many rounds I have left on my magazine, and what my equipment is, and anything. Thanks. Well, and, and it's almost worse because it's like your HUD's trying to kill you. It's trying to give you. It's omitting yeah. information that could protect you. It's like uh, you yeah, know, you don't you don't want to know about Probably the boulder opposite. heading right for you. Actually, I love this uh, still too. It's almost like that uh, jealous girlfriend meme where it's like you know Natasha's looking at oh, uh, yeah. Taskmaster, and Taskmaster's like looking at the vials. <laughs> yeah, I wonder you sometimes. Vials, he says not to worry about. Yeah, I wonder sometimes when he's writing this shit that he'd be like, "Isn't it great that it fades away in accordance with?" the target being the vials, and then his brain is like, really dumb though, isn't it? And he's just like, hmm. Well, I gotta put some points on the score. Yeah, like, the awareness has to be there, and it's just, it must suck. Go after the vials, all the other data concerning Nat fades away. Which is dumb, because she's uh, right in front of your be. face. Yeah. Like, I don't know, I feel like she's still relevant, because she's like within striking distance of you. She could headbutt you at this range. I feel like you, you should still you. care. Yeah, she's, she Absolutely. could stop you from getting the objective. She this does so do cool. that she several is. times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 she it's is. Like, like, complimenting the HUD is dumb. <laughs> because the HUD actually raises so many questions. And By like, the way, he's saying she's good. Of course she's good with a shield. Uh, of course she she just uses it like a normal person, but she holds it up. Good with a shield. 
Yeah, I've just... That's a shield. Yeah, I know like, what that a shield is, is. That is how you use a shield with basic yeah, competency. Like, you hold it up in front of the threat. <laughs> wait, wait, is that is that a reference? Because she works at S H I E L D, the organization I figured, that with the shield. I figured he. Well, so this is again the laziness. He should have shown times where she may have. She must. She's picked up Cap Shield before, right, and used it. I feel like that might have happened at some point. I'm trying to remember. She she did in Age of Ultron. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And you'd put that clip in there, as, and that would be fun if for the, if she actually used the shield in any kind of way that wasn't just, I'm blocking things. See, like... Uh, of course she'd be good with a shield. Like, what? Or, I, um, uh, or, I mean, if you want to add comedy, have her use the shield defensively for a bit, and then she, like, quips about, oh, I, I, like, now I see why Steve carries this thing around everywhere. Something like that, you know? I'd still be something. critical of that, because she spent so much time with him and the shield that it would be weird for her to conclude that now. Yeah, I guess. Has she used it to this extent? Maybe this is the most she's ever used it. Um, But wouldn't that still like not work that point. well with seeing what he does with it? Like, throwing it into metal cars? Maybe she should be asking... No, no, not Taskmaster, Cap. Like noticing how useful it is for him. Yeah. Maybe, but I still, I still, I, at least with her using it, there's some difference there. Makes sense. No, she should be oh, dead. Wait, what? Sorry, or it seriously me. injured. I don't get it. He just said skadoosh. When... Skadoosh. Oh, right. I don't get it. What is that like is a. That... Well, Kung Fu Panda post. I guess he's, says, yeah, I guess he's just saying it's cool. Yeah. It isn't cool. It's, she should be, like, seriously injured. And also, yeah. how is he that strong? Sorry, how is Taskmaster that strong? And Black Widow, I guess, for surviving. And that, yeah, like, this This the is, like, four in problems in a matter of three seconds. But yeah. skadoosh, Rags. Skadoosh. I don't know Whatever that Rags. Yeah. It's a win. Because he said so. Clearly. Cinema things. <laughs> it's a thing. And... Those people highlighted it's like I'm assuming Skadoosh isn't strictly Kung Fu Panda, or is it? Um, I think I only that's know it from him. I only yeah, know yeah, it. I only know it from Kung Fu Panda. In that case, yeah, yeah that's what people saying. Else. Like, how does he? How are you referencing Kung Fu Panda here at all? And it's like I guess it's because he says Skadoosh when he beats the person, but he's the protagonist yeah, um... when he defeats the bad guys, not when <laughs> the good guys. Also, how broad, you know? Like when you defeat yeah. someone, you can say Skadoosh. Like, okay. Well, that I just want to say, I really Black like the first general. Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, I think it's great. I remember I liking it a whole movie. I, uh, I really like Kung Fu Panda. Movie. When he's doing I his like training, it, uh, and he too. becomes like, he's doing his training, and it's unconventional, you gotta train him through food, but then by the end of it, he doesn't even want the food anymore. Look at well, this oh, story. Well, it's a well, good old-fashioned, recent... good, fun, simple story. With recent news being what it is, maybe there could be a Kung Fu Koopa. And Jack Black, Jack Black could reprise, semi-reprise his role as Bowser needing to be trained in Kung Fu in order to be Mario Who would be Mario training and him, Luigi. Huh? Be... Oh, just make up a character. Waluigi. No, we can find a character. Waluigi, he's the yeah, Shifu. Be... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Waluifu or something. Waluifu. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Master Waluifu. <laughs> That's so funny. I, yeah, I'd, I'd watch it. Um, all right, we got we got paused on the next one here, and it says, "Makes sense that a brainwashed, traumatized human weapon would fall for the oldest trick in the book." Meaning that she the took the vials trick out. Oldest trick in the book. Wait, the oldest trick in the book is removing vials from a the case container. so that. Yeah. If... <laughs> I I don't think that's the oldest trick in the book. Um, also, how did she escape then? Would he be like, right? I guess I gotta yeah, chase her because she's got go, fucking vials. Yeah. I'll go get her. She's within a stone's throw from me right now. I'd better and go. She's and she's injured. You know, yeah, and she's clearly very injured. And I've got a, I've, I got a alive. visor that scans. God knows fucking why. It probably has thermal vision, right? Probably. You think it does yeah. everything else? It it can threat assess people by percentages on the fly just by looking at them. So it's like I guess yeah, it's it pretty be. yeah top tier. Yeah, it's, it's like that. Go ahead. It's just it's just um this seems so post hoc like had this not tricked Taskmaster, he'd be like, it makes sense that a well-trained assassin wouldn't fall for a trick like that. But instead, it's like, no, brainwashed, traumatized human would fall for a trick like this, because they did. <laughs> so, well, you know, that's that. 
I mean, it's kind of also weird to think that this, if you're banking on the naivety of a brainwashed, you know, human, but also this, this person apparently studies all of their opponents to extreme detail with surveillance footage, you think they would, they would kind of be in the head of their opponents. They'd know the kind of tricks that now would be up to. So, and, uh, as we saw 88% Natalie, you know, 88% um, threat, Natalie would not be a problem. 100% attention focused on the vials, they would be able, they would be very much focused on what happened with those vials and then not just give up on the fight once they're outside of combat range. She grabs the vials as he's jumping toward her with the sword. Like, so he should have detected it or she should have, uh, fucking, whenever I say he or she, just assume the, the correct one. I kept, kept, keep getting distracted because I just think that I always associate he with, with the Taskmaster in this scene. Same, yeah. I mean, it's a dude fighting, like, you know. Well, yeah, I, I mean, literally, it is, it is Andy Lister <laughs> that we're referring to. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's kind of unfair for us because it's literally a man up until the point that he, she takes off the helmet. <laughs> and then when you put it back on, it's back to beating man. <laughs> like, well. <laughs> Makes sense. Washed, traumatized human weapon would fall for the oldest trick in the book. Probably hasn't seen a lot of movies, just cinema wins videos. What? John Woo's in Budapest? Before I make you. Oh, because of the dove reference. We skipped. We skipped the whole. How does she even know how to be here? With her pointing guns at each other, which well, doesn't right, make any right. sense. He might, he Why might, are they not? He might go back to it in a moment. You know, you might just yeah. go. You, I don't think cinema wins is extensive. Goes through the whole thing. Yeah. Thoroughness. When yes. I when I hear cinema wins, I think thoroughness and accuracy and consistency. Those three things. Ooh, Nat asserting her dominance by forcing Elena to walk backwards. No, they and just, she just a messed up. Asserting her dominance because she slipped over the fucking thing. This is so weird. <laughs> That's not, no, that was the actress fucking up. I was about to say, yeah. I would have interpreted it that way. I'd have been like, ooh, they kept that in, I guess, where she slipped over the thing. <laughs> I don't, yeah, uh, asserting her dominance by having no, someone so else also, slip. What if Yelena just didn't move? Dominance. That would have been awkward. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dominance would be her backing down or something. She's just, she's still pointing the gun at her. It's, I yeah, just, I've never known, like, I've never known dominance to be asserted by hoping your opponent slips on something. Like, yeah, <laughs> I will assert or... my dominance by having you fuck up on something. And when he says assert dominance, it just makes me picture the, like the the canine way of asserting dominance. Like she starts peeing on everything. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what what about dry humping someone to assert dominance? Because dogs do that as well. Even. I mean, if these two want to dry hump, you know. <laughs> what do you? Someone said Goodell that. What even? What is? What would I say? Like, <laughs> she asserts dominance by having her opponent fall over. You see when. I don't know what's the name of the guy that you play in Dark Souls. Oh, Jim, you, like when Andrew. when Dark Souls is fighting Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, uh, he 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 makes him stumble a bit when he jumps to swing a sword at you, thereby asserting dominance or something. You can find a way to make it work. Yeah, you probably. just have to change the names. John Souls. John Souls. All right. No one will understand that when that comes out, but it's fine because no one ever understands Goodell, and that's the beauty of it. I like how that's Cinema Wins is totally cogent. It's totally yeah. super cogent. I just like that how Cinema Wins has devolved into praising outtakes now. I, it's yeah. it is a, a kind of hilarious to watch someone desperately like because that's what I mean. He's not even particularly good at this, like clearly, because there are things you can oh, compliment no, he's in Black not Widow at all by forcing Elena to walk backwards and stumble a little. I guess this is why she's the Avenger. <laughs> That's the hey, thing Avengers, the Avengers do. Allowed to be in the movie. She's an Avenger because she makes people trip over when they walk back. <laughs> That's her superpower. Yeah, she makes people trip. That's what yeah, makes her an make Avenger. stumble at just the right time, mm, spell disaster. Just great, great content here. All right, Yelena ain't no oh, sorry. My, That's stupid. Why are you coming? Why really are you? Pro that is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in any movie. Neither of them have wow. their finger on the trigger, too. Yeah, yeah, well, they don't really win. Yeah, yeah, but look at, look at Yelena. Her thumb is like off, <laughs> way off. What is yeah, going we commented on? on that. On, 
in the slide, yeah. Is also, that, wait, we have to clarify with Rags first, because this came up in the stream. Is that I mean, good I or guess bad? It's, I mean, it's it's probably totally neutral. I you don't I don't see it much, but I is guess it you better could than really just having your to. finger against the uh the little it's thing just... protecting the the trigger. Well, generally, when I have mine okay. here, oh, wait. so yeah, mine is when I hold mine, my left thumb is underneath my right. I'm right-handed, so my left thumb is underneath my right thumb because that's gonna be where the mag release is anyway. So my left thumb's on the mag release. But also, it doesn't cover mm -hmm. as much because if you have your like, you can't really. It's it's really awkward for me to mirror this, where you have your thumb just sort of sticking out. It covers up more of your peripheral vision when you're looking down the sights to have your thumb sticking up like that. Um, so that's weird. Out of curiosity, because yeah, like instinctually, I'm if I'm holding anything like a gun, so uh, do you shoot right-handed, Rags? Yeah, I'm right-handed. So the left is the same for me. Even though I'm left-handed for writing, uh, the right hand's holding the gun, and then the left hand wraps around the bottom. Oh, I didn't know you shot. Hmm. Oh, you bit with being right-handed. Okay. So the, the, that's what feels natural to me. Right hand holds gun. Left hand wraps around the bottom of the right hand holding the gun. If that makes any sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you left or right eye dominant? Left or right? How do you? How do I know? Um. How does uh, one know what their eye dominant? Yeah. I think there's a way to no, test I that, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Uh, so put your uh, like uh, put your hands together, like your okay. like your fingers are laced. Put your hands together, right? Like praying. Yeah, kind of like you're praying. Yeah. Okay. Which of your thumbs is on top? Wait. The left. Your left eye dominant. But I. That's one. That's what one does that test. mean, though? What does that mean? Sorry. Oh, it means that if you like, if you're aiming down this, it's it's your like you know how um. That's oh, like generally if you aim down eye... the sights, what eye do you close and which eye do you keep open? Yeah, like which one do you will you generally use? It's not always a one hundred percent thing, but people are generally in the same way. They're right and left handed. They're going to be left to right eye dominant. There's a few tests you could is do. There a correlation one is um, between left handedness because I'm right handed. I think it's opposites, but I'm not certain. Um, I was going to say, if I'm I, shooting I'm with certain. right or left, I'd assume I'd just lock the eye related to the arm. I would assume so it, too, right? So if I've got depends, the gun so... and I put it up against my right arm, I'd close my left eye, right? Because my right eye would be closer to the scope, presumably. Uh, it depends. It's generally not going to be that much of a difference because your head's going to be tilted a little bit anyway. I see. Um, but it's, I mean, you could shoot with both it's a lot of it's just sort of yeah. what your body kind of naturally does there's no I gotcha. there's nothing you know big about it um there, there's a few other little tests you could do um involving like putting your thumb up over something in the distance and then keeping one eye open and the other closed to see what you know which you know which eye keeps the thumb over the thing um hmm. so as long as just asked, like sort of is there any reason they would have the fingers on the trigger so necessarily they're not willing to shoot Do you here want to shoot? And they're then, acting but like then, they're willing to shoot. Yeah, but then but they actually try and kill each death, other. Nearly. It's bizarre. Yeah, like, nearly. I think I see in the video, it's like, I don't know what they're trying to do here. I, I don't understand. Like, they, she clearly almost kills Natasha several times in this fight, but she's not willing well, to put her finger on the trigger. Stab her several, she, yeah. she nearly, if she didn't dodge quickly enough, that would have been it. And, yeah. You know, well, smashing also, a plate yeah. on someone's head, it's not something you just go, <laughs> lol. I'd be like, careful. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, and, I just and, uh, in the part that we just saw where they reach for each other's guns and then disarm and switch, the amount of time it takes for them to reach the other gun, like we're watching it in real time, either one had plenty of time to pull the other gun back. They were just basically waiting there for the other to grab it and they were letting it. And it's just clearly an obvious choreographed move that they were doing on purpose for the choreography that it, uh, would not play it, out naturally at all. It takes an incredible amount of cooperation from both parties to do that, where you're both giving up your gun to the other person yep. while taking theirs and putting it in your hand. It's it's like the driving scene. Yeah. It takes insane cooperation to uh, have one person control the brakes, one person control the wheel, and to do the perfect spin. Yet they do it. Yeah, I'm, and they do I, it I without actually, cooperation. They both just do it. <laughs> it's like okay. There was there were some people at the office I worked at um, who got actual uh, gun uh, disarmament training in case there was like an active shooter. And uh, the first thing you do is you go low and you knock the gun. You know, push the gun up with your hands. You go you, you duck and push the gun up uh, up. So your your primary your primary goal is to move their line of gunfire away from you before you even attempt to grab the gun 
grabbing the gun would be stupid. Your your point is to move the the line of fire away from your face and your body. Yeah, you got to get it pointed away from you. It's the most important yeah. thing. So trying to grab a gun while you have one of your hands on your gun and while letting go, like yeah, that'd be it's a it looks cool for the movie, but it doesn't make a whole lot of practical sense. I don't think. Yeah. Um, that's uh, someone yeah, said. That's how dangerous scary. is smashing a ceramic plate on someone's head? It's like that's kind of my point. It, you got to be I careful. You could it, the scale of damage is probably going to be anywhere from like that was annoying to oh shit I'm bleeding. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like a solid Especially because it creates plate? a lot of it takes well, a lot it of feels force. Like, um, this feels to me like the thing where people like if you smash someone over the head with a bottle, probably not going to shatter. That's probably going to kill that person. Yeah, not usually, probably, that's the way to knock people out in movies. Yeah. Usually, yeah, that is so chance. dangerous hitting someone with a bottle. Like, like oh, a isn't solid it, yeah. isn't it more likely to break if it's full or something like that? I'm not sure. I but don't know. All I know is that smashing it and then it just shattering into pieces. They have shatter glasses that they use in films that's to true, make that yeah. happen. But a real and one, yeah, in real life, and the same with shattered glass sorry. as well, right? There's a reason sorry. why when people do funny thing. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Sorry to cut in. Uh, no in the fight scene on the sh on my short film, we got to do that. We use the shatter glass, and uh, Dalen grabs a, a like a fake bottle and smashes one of the stuntmen in the head with it, and just bursts into pieces. It's great. <laughs> so yeah, well, I got to experience that firsthand live. It was awesome. That probably would have been really fun. Yeah. Um, oh, oh I'm sorry. Man, I just, uh, just, just fun reference in that Batwoman episode where she goes to knock all the glasses off the table, but because they're made of that like sugar glass or whatever. They all smash before she's even thrown them anywhere. Yeah, when she, <laughs> when she brushes them off, they start to shatter. Yeah, I that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you could really just have, you could have just used real yeah, glass use, for that. Well, and if they didn't break on the ground, just add in the glass well, breaking sound real, effect if you need so it. So the thing is, you could use real glasses, but glass is dangerous. Yeah, you get like, you get contractual is, issues, safety precaution well, stuff. It's, it's, there's a reason why they use shattered glass as well when people jump through windows, because the reality is if you jump through a oh, window, yeah, for it's, that, probably not, yeah. it's probably not going to break, but if it does well, break, you're in a lot of trouble when so, you land on so the this ground. this is the thing that I assume happens if you were to ever try and do a big Hollywood production. Rags is there like, just throw a fucking real bottle, and then some guy walks up to Rags like, we can't do that. Like, this contract yeah. here, this safety restriction well, here, we can't do a real bottle. And then Rags is like, look, actor, are you okay with pushing a bottle onto the floor? And they're like, yeah. And then some other agent is like, you can't do that. You're like, oh, well, I think, like, yeah, like some would be okay. It's like, well, I no, Quiet, my client I'm a is actually pioneer. not okay with doing this. Well, it's just, it, it's um, I guess the thing is, is there's a lot of stuff that just happens on set where it's like there is there is the need to be somewhat expedient because you are it's very expensive. Like, yeah, yeah, and, and these sort oh, of things yeah. are incredibly expensive. I, I, also, I've heard uh, certain actors do stunts before asking anyone just so they can get it like i think tom cruise did it in one of the mission impossible films oh yeah that was a great that, yeah, yeah that, so i know that that's the story for that was um the burj khalifa thing that they did in mission impossible 4 the his the insurance company would not let him do it so he fired them and then got another one that would let him do it and <laughs> so he did it um and now he, he seemingly could just do it because apparently the stunts in the upcoming one are again hyper dangerous and that he had to learn several new skills to i'll do be it. watching that I'll be watching that eagerly, like, even if the story ends up not being great, which hopefully won't be the case, same director behind the last two, so fingers crossed, but the stunts are always really fun. Yeah, you know, um, Is it just yeah, me, or, or is Tom Cruise, does he not get enough credit for his body I think Tom, what he has achieved? I, I, I like him. I like him a lot. I, mm -hmm. like, uh, I like watching him do stuff. I think it's really cool that he's this dedicated to doing these stunts. Like, he learnt... I think he spent thousands of hours learning how to fly helicopters to do the stunts in the last one. He actually hung onto the side of a plane for for uh for like five. And yeah, he did climb on the Burj Khalifa. He actually did that. It's really cool. Yeah, it's that's really awesome. Cool. Um yeah. and he's and he is a he is an old man. He is yeah, I always think he's younger than ages. he is. He's I always think there. he's younger than he is. He's nearly he's 60. Getting up I think. There. Not height wise, think... he's short, but he's age wise, <laughs> oh, he is. He's yeah, so what? He's fifty nine. He's yeah, also that's what just. I mean. He's still an extremely <laughs> talented. Five seven. Just actor. for clear, he's what? Tom Cruise is five seven. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> yes, Tom yes, Cruise right. is short. Okay, we get it. And he doesn't yeah. let that stop him. Uh, nope. Clearly, that's, that's, I, I, that's, that's yeah, his he's, motivation. He's, uh, he's he's compensating for his height. That's why he does so much. <laughs> he is a uh, he's a fun action movie character Absolutely, guy. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say he's probably the most dedicated action performer 
out there right now um, in, um, in, ter- in terms of in terms of like actors who don't need like mainstream hollywood it, probably yes when it comes probably, to yeah. stunt specifically but then again you've got like jackie chan was equivalent in terms of and and yeah. admittedly he did a lot of stuff when it was far less I wouldn't be surprised Same. if there's a lot like of when people in... Chucky Chan, he has done insane stuff. Like, you know how we're talking about fake glass? He has jumped through real yeah, glass yep. and cut his yeah, arm that's open right. and it, everything. It was the, the guy uh, was crazy. I think the main one for him was... I can't remember the movie exactly, but he's, the, he's like on the sixth floor of a shopping center, dives onto yep. the pole and slides down it and falls through actual glass. And then there was one where well, I think he just he like, landed as on his head. Down, yeah, as it's sliding down, he is falling into, like, into you know, those light. rows yeah, of Christmas lights. lights. Uh, yeah. like Christmas <laughs> lights. And he's getting electrocuted as he's busting through the lights, several layers and rows of them. And then he falls into glass as well. And he's like, after the stunt, he's falling in and out of consciousness. Uh, it's nuts. That's and that was insane. Police Story, the one that he did. Police that Story, on. that's right. He, he yeah, did no. a lot of those ones, yeah. Yeah, no, Jackie Chan came from like, you know, hardcore actual stunt work over in Asia. Um, but you don't see him do that kind of stuff anymore. Like well, he's, he's, he's definitely kind of chilled now. out. He's like sixty seven now. But like yeah, yeah. as far as as far as like a Hollywood like theatrical actor type or uh like cinema actor type who doesn't need to do any of that stuff, I I'd say you can't really find somebody who's done quite as many practical stunts as Tom Cruise does. Because he and, and he didn't even yeah. come from the stunt stunt a- aspect. He came from the, you know, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't know for sure, but he's definitely uh, to be celebrated. He's doing some great stuff. Yeah, for sure. It's it's really cool when you have like your uh, your actors also being able to do these. Uh, it, it's just the benefits that you get from a filmmaking perspective where you don't need to hide their face. Though, admittedly, yeah. nowadays you can like CGI faces on top of other ones, so it's Come not even. But even then, I imagine it still influences the sort of direction and the way that you make it. But if the guy is able to do it, it's like um, I always forget his name. He's the lead in uh the raid, like because he's he's fight guy. So when he gets utilized in fights, it's it's really cool because you're gonna see his face all the time. You can do those long shots where it's it's like thirty seconds of uninterrupted action. Well, probably not that long, but you know, along those lines. Just want to say that was a really cool set of tangents. We went from. Well, are these people trying to kill each other? The plate on the head, how damaging is that? And then uh, bottles to the head, how damaging is that? And then what Be sugar cool. glass versus regular glass is? And then uh, doing it because of restrictions or not? And then Tom Cruise would often try and get past those restrictions. And then how good uh, Jackie Chan and Tom Cruise are both in their stunts. That's, that's how that all went. Uh, the reason why we got there was because we saw a scene where two characters were pointing guns at each other and then switched their guns and pointed them back at them. Just a failure in, like, trying to achieve any of those things in terms of coolness. Yeah. Somewhat, somewhat back on, on top Keanu of Reeves too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of done some cool stuff. Yeah, just a little plug for The Matrix. They they actually had a Hong Kong um, choreographer, uh, choreographer, choreographer, I guess. That's yeah. it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Korea uh, to uh, train all of the uh, actors, like you know, Keanu Reeves, Carrie Ann Moss, Hugo Weaving, um, Morpheus. I forget his name right now. Um, Lawrence Fishburne. But like all, all Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. So they, they were like all just you know film school kind of you know kind of wimpy actors, but they actually got to learn how to fight and really do those scenes. And I think that's part of the reason why The Matrix was so good because you actually got to see up close non stunt actor non you know body double fights where they yeah, have the whole yeah. body in frame you saw their face they could yeah. have long takes as well with a lot of the different they had portions. long takes in the matrix yeah i mean yeah about the, the is... matrix one because matrix two and three just had cg well yeah we're talking yeah. about yeah. one yeah, yeah. they yeah. still yeah. there's probably one. still plenty of examples of good shit for the fights in two and three but holy fuck everyone remembers oh, oh. the cgi yeah, yeah like, you, the one too, where uh, he's got the metal pole it's just really a full CG. <laughs> yeah, look, like, it's so floaty <laughs> it's 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 it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of the problem with a lot of um i think i think a lot of the time what betrays cgi is not actually the 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 fidelity it's like how it moves there's just something that can sometimes be unnatural and it's like oh it's like really light you, i feel like, like that's it's yeah, the bounciness like, and the animation like you'll i notice in a lot of spider-man movies you'll see like somebody leap and then kind of bounce when they hit they hit a wall yeah. and leap again well, and bounce is that certain sort of animation and tweening it looks so fake to me and i hate it well, it's, every it's time funny I see because it. um in animation bounce and and overreach and stuff like that is really great for enhancing the movement but uh yeah. when you're watching something that's realistic it, it's like gotta try and make it look like something that's real i was gonna say they have Anatomy. floaty um benefits for the matrix because the fighting is floaty throughout yeah 
Well, yeah, I, no, I think it I, depends on what you're leaning into, right? For the story and the Matrix, if they're manipulating this world, yeah, um, it feels like, like the physics are in their control to a degree, and of course, yeah, wire work. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting. CG is not bad. CG is a really good thing when CG you use it. Really like, uh, um, I I've been researching the Matrix for like the last year, so I'm pretty familiar with how they did a lot of those effects. And there's actually a ton of CG in the original Matrix. You just don't notice it all. Whenever you whenever you see uh, one of those like jump up, spin around kind of slow motion things, that's done practically and with CG. What they did is they basically shot it with a green screen. They uh, shot uh, with a with I think about 30 to 40 different cameras placed around the the action so they could actually snap like uh, a series of st uh, still photos uh like one after the other go like to get that to get each frame rotating around them in in super slow motion and then what they did is they used that footage they used computer interpolation to basically fade between each of those frames to get a smooth effect and then they they had used computers and photography to map the entire room that they were in to basically like make a panoramic cg 3d version of that room so the background is completely cg but you don't really notice because you're focused on the actual real photography of the people in the in the middle that are you're rotating around that you know the the trinity kick or you know neo dodging the bullets etc so it was a great combination of practical and cg and it's done in a well where it's fairly seamless it still looks great even 20 22 years later CG is great when you use it when you use it right, but when you make an entire scene full of video game characters, I think it doesn't look the a quintessential lot. example well, is uh, Jurassic Park. Usually, where it's like yeah, the CG uh, married with the physical effects when the T Rex first breaks out. It's just it will never be awesome, uh, never not be awesome. And it was so brilliant. Like the the my most impressive, my favorite uh, shot of that is the shot where you see the animatronic T Rex on the right side of the car, and then you see the CG uh, T Rex walk into the rain in the front of the car and they use they split the footage uh using the bar from the the like a uh, front bar from the jeep they the right side is real footage the front is cg and then they knew that it wouldn't quite look good because it was like 1993 or something like that so they added uh rain for not only dramatic effect but also to disguise the early 90s cg and it still looks great you don't notice that the front is, well uh, i adore that scene dinosaur. particularly the yeah. part where we're like worried at the potential and then uh especially the sound effects the wires all breaking off one by one yeah. just goes like yeah, they're all just the, like that, it's yeah. like oh like it's spielberg, the shittiest guitar spielberg is uh is actually kind of insane when it comes to sound engineering uh he'll get sometimes 36 layers of of uh sound la layers basically for any shot he actually sent people down to record birds of that specific region of where the uh, Jurassic Park site was supposed to be like native tropical birds of that area to add it in just for atmosphere and stuff like that. So he's like really, really well known for being particularly pedantic with sound engineering and, and sound design. So yeah, he's, he, he, I mean, he's, he was a classic, classic director there for a while. It's really on top of his game. And then he made ready player one. Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, he made like 20% of it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think it's it's one. Yeah. Spielberg's made incredible movies. He's also probably made some shit yeah. ones. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, do you guys want to talk more about Black Widow? Sure, let's no, let's, let's do that. No, we're no. Good. No. Well, so I, I don't. I'm not even <laughs> sure what the compliment is here. He said like, Yelena's no slouch. No, he's he's yeah. just saying. Oh, she can. <laughs> All right. Uh, she, she can fight like Natasha. Hooray! That's basically it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she, she can take a gun off somebody who basically also, provides it. Aiming yeah, at each other's hands, what are they doing? Give the gun to each other. Yelena ain't no slouch. Stay down! <laughs> oh, that scream! If there's ever been a vision of loving sisters, sisters uh, stay down. Oh, I hate this! I hate this what? bullshit YouTuber fake laugh that people do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Shut the fuck up hit me really hard in the face so that was a win by the oh, way oh yeah it hit me really win. hard in the face when she flings her so hard into that door that it broke the glass and may well have given her a permanent spinal injury but i think he, well funnily enough i think he was referring to the plate when he said that i think he was referring to the plate but, i just find it amusing that it syncs up on that injury it's like oh yeah sisterly love right there just reminding yeah <laughs> this fight is 
super technical and all the moves no, feel isn't. deliberate. This is no, shit. No, this looks no. really stupid. This is one of the worst. There's all the combat in this movie is crap. And this is the kind of shit where we veer away from I like it when he's like, this fight is super technical. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? And you're like, well, the moves are deliberate. They're quick. He, I imagine he'd, he's going to have more to say. But also, when you say super technical, you're referring to something there that's provable, right? Like, we can look at the actual fight imagine, and yeah. prove whether or not you're saying is true instead. Because I just, I know he would be like, that's just my opinion. I think it's super technical. But if you don't know what technical is, it's probably not even worth talking about it. Exactly. Quick, but it's also a great way each of them is and how brutal they're willing to be with the constant smashing in. I don't believe sense. that, though. That's the thing. I don't but, believe yeah, that yeah. they can throw each well, other around like this. It's so not that, right. It's twofold. I don't believe it. But secondly, why is this a positive when you consider their, who they are and what they're Yeah, Yelena should and, not be doing any of this. This is yeah, completely... Exactly. Are coming from her. And you know what? Nat as well. She knows who this is. Nat is very family-oriented. What the hell is she doing? Yeah. What are you both doing? It's you... trying to kill each other because we need we, a fight scene. We need scene. a fight scene, yeah. We need to fight for the trailers, yeah. We need to fight for the yeah, trailers, and if we didn't have a fight scene just... at this interval, people would get bored. And, and then his commentary is, look how willing they are to be brutal. You're like, oh. Okay. Yeah, is that a good thing? I don't even know that that was ever in question anyway. They're both fucking long-term assassins who've done plenty in their lives that are way worse than this. We've literally seen them both do way worse than this. Like, I don't understand why this is a... Look at the proof of how the brutality runs through here. Oof. Impacts. It's so like decades so of pent up in one fight. fight. Yep, check. That decades. feels like the same point you just made last time, though. That was like the last point, and you just doubled it. But said it in a different way. Feels like there's also... decades of pent up rage for you. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't at all. Why, why would... We why didn't would even Natasha know what was happening here. pent up rage, though. Yeah. Why would that have any rage at all? Yeah, what the fuck's yeah, Natasha got to be angry about? Yeah, and also... She I guess you could say her. she's angry at the <laughs> recent events, but that's not decades. You know, the Taskmaster shit with the vials, but, like, why would she... That's not pent-up rage over decades, you know? If she was, like, chemically uh, under mind control, would she have all this rage for her sister that tried to save her for all these years? Or would she actually consider her well, to be... She didn't try cool. to save her for all the years, that's the point. I mean, uh, yeah, she didn't try to, but she did try to save her initially, and then they got separated. Yeah, and then she didn't but, do it. I'm, I'm on her side for this. I'm with Yelena, but that's the fault of the writers that uh, Natasha didn't do anything yeah. for her in her all those years. Well, like, Yelena didn't exist until. True, she then couldn't do anything for her. In the news. Captain America bringing down the Red Room. That's a really good point. I wonder what other kind of villain stuff went on while the Avengers were distracted by Tony Stark's daddy issue. Wh what? Why is this wait, 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 I need to... Yeah. Okay, so first of all, Tony's daddy issues, way to just totally devalue is he talking about the conflict of the war. The Civil yeah, War conflict is Tony yeah. Stark's daddy, daddy issues. issues. Wow. Like, his, dude, parents, some, his parents were... Get stuff happening. That's 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 what civil but war also, is in his mind. Just Tony about, Stark's daddy issues. Yeah, it's not about the whole world having a perspective on everything that's been happening with the Avengers and all of the collateral. And damage. Tony having Ultron's to watch aftermath. his parents get annihilated brutally by his one hey, of his best issues, friends' you know? best friends. Just daddy issues. I don't even know how he drew this from the dialogue. By the way, what she's saying in this scene is that she was expecting Captain America to have taken down the Red Room by now because she's given the vials to Nat. Remember how much that yeah. doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Uh, but that, what's that got to do with this? That's a good point. I wonder what other kind of villain stuff went on while the Avengers were distracted. What are you talking about? But you know, Mahler, uh, the Chitauri invasion is just Tony Stark's daddy issues. Um, you know. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Again, I, I really don't know why he played that clip to then support this point. Expecting to see Captain Seems like a weird America side job. Bringing down the red room. That's a really good point. I wonder what other kind of villain stuff went on while the Avengers were distracted by Tony Stark's daddy issues. <sighs> okay, just, yeah. I just, okay, just... None of that made sense. Yeah. And this, kids, is why you should never try to rewire your house without electrical training. Big fan of Why is that a win? I don't get <laughs> is that it. Funny? I guess that's, that's a, a joke. But, I what the, but what the win I... could have been is that it's neat that Yelena has this place rigged in case it was ever discovered. I have other criticisms mm -hmm. to make of the scene, as you would have seen in the video, and that only works in a very specific isolation, because to be fair, she's not really prepared at all. Um, 
But instead he was like, don't rewire a house, because it could be bombs. Hee <laughs> hee. That's a okay. thing. ka -ching! <laughs> And yeah, look yeah. how much we've skipped, by the way. We're already here now. Yeah. Yeah, he skipped the whole running around scenes. Damn. Of this camera, the way it makes you feel off balance while showing us how high up they are. <laughs> That's a no, I mean, oh, okay, I mean, like uh, to be fair to the guy, that, that could be like, oh, this shot is really nifty. I think that's what he was trying to say. Oh my god! I mean, you didn't even hear that, that. I think that that that's that's a more that's a better description. That's a more like, oh, I get the logic behind that. That's you know what? Then maybe you're right. Well, I'm just not impressed by a camera. We can been at the top of a building shows the view down to show how big the tall the building is. I'm just like. Congratulations, that is the most basic fucking well, I mean, thing you could wait, have done. Yeah, but I, I get that more than, oh, the light makes explosions, that's a win. Like, th that that explanation of, oh, the okay, off-balance. Uh, fine, thing, so it's, it's not... That, that makes... It's not a negative that, being dressed that, up as a positive. It is, as far as I'm concerned, it's almost a neutral. But at least I understand yeah. the logic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. I get why you think that would be... A good scene, like I get that makes more sense to me than than an attempt at humor that that sure, fails. Yeah. Like, it's um, like praising a dolly shot, like oh, this camera's yeah, moving. Yeah, because it's on oh, a crane yeah. more than yeah. likely. It was they really bought a dolly, and I, was... I think it's nifty. Yeah, that's basically the, the comment. I understand that more than everything else so far that this guy's been doing. Like, well, I, I, the... like... oh my god, another firework! What the fuck's going on? Did we achieve victory in some way? <laughs> ah! <laughs> did, did, did the virus die? Did, did we... Are we in control of the UK now? Wales, exclusively. Oh my god, what the fuck's going on out there? Is it like whale and They're just really happy. Game, um... Did, I... Uh... Did, so anyway... <laughs> Wait, let, let, Welsh holidays. Muller, get down. I can't hear it. Muller, get down. But I was gonna say you have to admit all the stupid shit in this scene too. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. The moment you realize, like, wait, what? Are you, why are you jumping onto a pole, unleashing it, and hoping to crash it into a building? What the fuck is your goal? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you what? doing? What's wrong with you? How high up What's wrong with you? Well, that's more commitment to a. Cause or I actually no. What it is is a showcase of how little Drakov cares about the widows. They are very no. That's no, stupid. Is, no, that is really that's, stupid. That's dumb. No, no. Also, that's this is not the scene you should make the comment on. The the scene that he should make this comment on was when Drakov just pulls the kill switch, pushes the kill switch. This is just the if widow. I was stupid. <laughs> so the reason that you give soldiers things like good rifles, body armor extensive uh -huh. training, functional equipment, is not necessarily because they will change the course of a war. Oftentimes, they have not really anything to say with how the war will turn out. It's because each one of those soldiers from your country is an investment yep. in money, in uh -huh. time, and the political ramifications, and getting new recruits in the future. The idea that you just have... Yeah, like especially if we're talking about Drakov with all of the mind control and the bullshit about keeping a floating fortress. Each one of those Black Widows is valuable. It represents yeah. a huge investment in, in, in time and technology and the expenditure of training. The idea that you would just waste one like this is ridiculous. And he's tangled his wires. He's like, Drakov doesn't care about the lives of these women, so look what he's willing to do. It's like, no, so he doesn't care about no. them on a personal level, like they're, them as people. He does care about them as resources. Do you know how long he's packed into these people? How much time and money are in these fucking people? There's no way that he wants them to just kill themselves. Uh, 10 to 20 years per person. That's an incredible investment. Yeah. The but... only time that might be the case is if they are captured and uh, secrets could be spilled from them or whatever, but he's, he's still dodgy on that because he's an idiot in this fucking movie. But um, I it's thought for a second yeah, there, because yeah. I was listening to this without having read ahead, that he was going to say, wow, that's real commitment to the cause. Oh, actually, no, that's kind of dumb. I thought he was going to say that, but uh, instead he says, no, this is, this is evidence of how Drakov doesn't care for the widows. They are very expendable. 
to the point where he'll just have them fucking kill themselves. Yeah, Yeah. there's a difference between being expendable and being wasted. Wait, is this scene... Does Draco do anything in this scene? Well, so he's he's implying that the Black Widow software would have them value stabbing the hand of their target more than their lives. Because that's how Lily cares for them, but that's stupid. No, I just think the widow is stupid. Not necessarily that well, but the, they, the training Drakov gave them. But he's right in yeah, that I, their software makes them do that. So whoever designed the software that puts that controls them is to blame for this, not them necessarily. No, you know I don't know. Okay. I, I I think they're brainwashed to obey orders, but in terms of how they fight, it's a perfectly individual choice. No, I, I completely disagree. I think that her choice to uh, attack uh, Nat is as a result of a brainwashing, not her choice as a person. No, but I don't think Drakoff is controlling her like he's behind a computer. No, he's not on a joystick. Exactly. No, it's the con- yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's like they're following computer programming. Yeah. They're yeah. brainwashed. You know what would have, you know have been really creepy? Is if uh, at one point when they basically have one of these uh, brainwashed widows surrounded, they're like they try to reason with her and then she's actually like, oh oh my god you know i can't believe i did this so and so and feigns being turned and then tries to stab like yelena or uh, natasha in the back or something like that just to show how deeply under under uh Drakov's thumb that they are that would be an interesting twist to show okay we absolutely need to you know use this this chemical thing on them we can't trust them they're completely completely dominated and they cannot they cannot help themselves until they're free of this well they control just to kind of make it even that much more sinister you know what i mean they get that across with the whole uh they can make them stop breathing at will right or at least the, yeah it's later on the yeah. pig um yeah all, all i'm suggesting here is that the software has it so that priorities like your health will never come above the da- any damage to a target which is stupid yeah like if you that's could if efficient. you could chop their toenail off that's worth you dying it's like what what? <laughs> like, why? Yeah, there there are very specific circumstances where you'd want to trade one for one, but this isn't even that trade. This is, nope. I'm, I'm yeah. going to stab your wrist at the exchange of an entire Black Widow. Yeah, she's trying to save you. Oof. Take the help, and then as soon as you're up there, stab her. Yeah, like they're that, not very that's... smart. When it would, be, <laughs> it would have been way cooler to have it be the, you know, they save her, without, and then she's like, you know what? I totally, I, I was, uh, or she's like, help me, help me, you know? And then when they save her, she stabs them. Like, there's, there's, pri- there's, there's protocol for this. If you're in a position yeah, where you can, you would have, yeah. You would think that there would be protocols, so if there aren't, that's stupid. Yeah, and I'm disappointed that the most advanced, most long-running espionage agency hasn't got anything like that. They're like, eh, I don't know. And they're clearly not mindless killers because they're she uh, Drakov supposedly has one behind every each powerful person in the world, so clearly they can blend in with society and feign social cues to get into power, right? I'm I'm sure they're very. In fact, that might actually be something you'd think would be trained to those ones at least. Maybe there's a difference between foot soldiers and then people who are meant to go undercover for you know, x amount of time. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. But um, this is not a. This is not a consistency sort of compliment to Drakov's approach with these women. It doesn't make any sense. He treats them as objects. Yeah. I'm I'm okay with saying that, but those objects are valuable to him. He needs them. Yeah, exactly. Objects are still valuable. Well, yeah, my phone is valuable. Uh, like my phone is an object. It's not alive. Stop objectifying like your phone, Fringy. It... Well, I'm just saying when I put it on my desk, I don't slam it so hard that it and my desk collapse and turn into <laughs> dust. Cool. And no pretense about whether he's dead or alive. I appreciate that. The audience knew, Yelena knew, and I think Nat knows. No pretense about whether he's alive. How can she break out of the conditioning to say that she doesn't want to do that to her? Yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, I think you guys might be ahead of me. Yeah. No, that's the next one. It's on screen. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 very expensive. Then, Waller, did and you no- notice? Hmm? Did you notice that he skipped the part where Black Widow falls like, yeah, like, yeah. In end. fairness, <laughs> maybe maybe he'll address it at some point. You don't write him off entirely because I don't understand how you can completely <laughs> ignore that part. But maybe, maybe. Um, I just I just want to point out that he's given a, a win to the film for not pretending that Drakov is alive or dead or whatever. That he's definitely alive. I just don't know why. That's yes, no confirmation to Nat. Nat can't yeah. confirm that based on this. 
I just didn't know we needed. I mean, if, if Drakov was dead and his program was still working, that wouldn't change what the Black Widow does. I mean, I was just thinking, do they use his name at all to Nat, or does Nat just assume Drakov is alive from this? I didn't get anything from about uh, Drakov. Because the fact I, is, I think that was a conversation before, wasn't it? And this is a big criticism I have for Nat. I don't know why she thought if the red red room cannot exist without Drakov is her logic, and it's like why. Why couldn't all yeah. of this be going with Drakov's son or, or Drakov's associates? Or he has his yeah. protege or you know, whatever. You know what would be really, really creepy? And again, I'm backseat writing. What if Drakov did die and uh, his daughter was def uh, horribly disfigured and she was running the operation? And at the end, she has to reason with Drakov's daughter at the end, who's still cool. running the Black And you Black could program. even do the thing they do in equilibrium where right up until near the end she's still like because the daughter's using drakov's image maybe to yeah. give orders it might be tough to argue that all that makes sense but at least you could do it for natasha specifically yeah to manipulate yeah. natasha that'd be that'd be enough of a, of a justification for that uh, disguise but that would be really interesting that'd be way way better of a twist i think yeah because she would feel fully justified in ripping him apart and then she finds out it's the daughter and she's like oh i'm conflicted but you're still evil yeah Stuff like, you know, e easy stuff. Pretense about whether I appreciate that. The audience knew, Yelena knew, and now I, I think Nat knows. I don't want to do this. Ooh, ruthless. That's ruthless? <laughs> I mean, I guess, but it's dumb more than anything else. I don't even, it feels weird to be like, that's ruthless, what we've had, like, this is something we know is definitely a thing. Is it not ruthless that she's willing to cut her own salvation to not die, like, and cut cut a hand to throw her onto, like, a, a seven-story fall. Like, I get, I get that, you know, being forced to kill yourself, oh, that's ruthless. Like, what about that scene where they capture all those children and kill the ones the that aren't compliant? That was pretty them, ruthless. Yeah. That's way worse. <sighs> and so it's like, so what are you saying, then? Like, the it's not ruthless by comparison? I'm just like, I don't know, it just feels weird that he's like, oh, this is of ruthless. all the things to highlight. Yeah. Just feels odd. And he dings it as well. I was like, oh, by the way, this, what is he going to say about this? Sisters, you can't uh, trust her. <laughs> sisters, oh, that's what, funny. What? <laughs> she took the Fuck keys off, off it because sisters. Tee -hee. <laughs> I have that, sisters. That? They don't do that. I just, I don't know. I just want to put it out there that not all sisters steal keys. <laughs> it's just weird. To and yeah, yeah. Just I want to acknowledge it again in case you missed it, chat. He did indeed ignore the the seven story fold part or however much it was. We, we, he has left that for now. We'll see if he comes back. Pick up right where you left off. Nice car. So you want me to chase him down and on? Whoa, 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 whoa. How far did we just skip? Wow, we, we did. We skipped quite we far. We skipped the AP. Oh, oh wow. Uh, we skipped just skip the AP. Whoa. And the Black Widow who was chasing them on the, uh, on the, uh, the bike with the <laughs> chain gun. Yeah, we, we missed the fucking APC intro. We skipped, a, APC, we skipped yeah. a lot. I thought he was going to be like, wow, what an this intro. Ding. This, by the way, well, highlights this. Well. This highlights my issue when people are like, "Man, uh, you know, why can't you, Mola, or, or you other guys, d depending on whatever you're covering, why can't you cover? Um, I don't know, fucking the new blah blah. Why can't you cover Shang Chi, for example?" And I'll be like, "Well, I, I can't cover everything." Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, but you know, Pearson X has covered all of these," and I'm like, "This doesn't count. You barely. Yeah, but they did a shit job. He's covering fuck all. Like if someone said Cinema, Cinema Wins has covered Black Widow, I'd be like, he he's missed loads of opportunities for praise, but he's also like omitting shit tons of the movie to praise it. So Cinema skips. That's yeah. <laughs> Damn, like what a way to just really just tearing chunks out of this movie." He's skipping all the bad stuff, that's why it's only 30 minutes long. He's not skipping all of the bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what Cap would do. Hey, wait a minute. Where did Captain America learn how to steal a car? Nazi Germany. And we're borrowing. Take your feet off the... Um, so he's saying that he's going to return it or give it back or leave it to be found. Mm -hmm. He's not going to keep it, is what he's saying. I'm, I'm, Which is kind of the same thing. I mean, it's not really a worthwhile distinction for the point of this point. Well, that's that a doesn't make any no. no, that doesn't make any sense. How this plays out, I know in our Black Widow video, we talk about it a bunch. Nothing about that makes sense in any way. No. The fact that you think that's resourcefulness. Dude, it would be like if I take a baseball bat and slam the concrete in front of me and it makes a crack that goes all the way to Rags' house and destroys it and that was my goal. It's like, wow, that was resourceful, Bola. <laughs> like, how did you... 
How? <laughs> like... <laughs> resourceful. Just call it that. Ding. There is playing a video game. Weapons to cycle through on the left, items on the right, and this mimic stuff might as well be auto-aiming. Is that a compliment? That's a win. <laughs> he, he's he's dinging it. It feels he's weird that... It, yeah. So the... You know how he's, he's got, literally got a weapon selector, yeah. He's yeah, got a but like that, that, it's got a sword. <laughs> I presume grapple, bow, or well, arrow and bow. I don't fucking know. But like, does it really make sense that it would be organized like a video game where we have to hit up, down, left, right on um, a D-pad or maybe WASD to access particular things? Well, he's like, does that make any sense? He literally takes out his bow himself. He doesn't press left on the D-pad. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just to remind him that yeah. he has those things. But yeah, I'll, I'll remind you, Mahler, though, that his combat strategy compatibility is 100%, though. Oh, so nice. Yeah. Good. It's, good that, wow. it's good that we know that. That's oh. better than XCOM. <laughs> <laughs> you might hit something yeah, with 100%. 100%. <laughs> almost bled to death. Ha! She said, None have trouble. Not because there wasn't time to tourniquet her wound, but because she was planning to use No, there was no- that's true, though. You, you can argue it's both, but there, she absolutely said to not fucking tourniquet the wound while Taskmaster is five seconds behind them. But yeah. he, he's saying it's clever because she wanted to lead Taskmaster to that hole with the blood drip. But that doesn't make sense, then, because that means they blood dripped into the hole, and then they walked over to the other place, the vent, to climb in to then tourniquet the wound? So where's the blood? There'd be blood. You're dripping They'd have the blood. To walk over to the hole, tourniquet, then climb to some place while Taskmaster. Walk over to the machine. well because we see them dealing with it in the vent, so they don't deal with it until then. Which means I guess one of them took a coat off and held it underneath the dripping wound to make sure none of it fell until they got into the vent. I don't know. I don't. The problem is that none of this timeline matches up. Taskmaster should have caught up, but he doesn't because yeah. he can't. Not allowed. No Use the a, yeah. Diversion. The Rakoff kills you. One of the big ones comes to avenge you. Wait, what are the big ones? <laughs> I like to imagine Thor and Hulk finding out about this conversation and arguing about who she meant specifically. Well, so we're just gonna ignore how stupid it was that they fucked up the timeline. That uh, Drakov didn't try to kill Black Widow because he wouldn't want to set off the Avengers. Which one? You can kill her without setting off the Avengers, especially with assassins. Two, um, she wasn't always an Avenger when she had left Drakov. That happened years later. So, nope. Well, I doubt from space has to take an ibuprofen after a fight. And it's sort of cute to think that Nat doesn't see herself as any lesser of a teammate than the god, and you know what? She's probably been just as effective. Stop. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> no. What? I need you to stop. <laughs> I need you to stop this right he was, now. He was almost there, because what he had to say was she's as integral to the team in a, in a meaningful way as many of the others in, in different ways. Like, yeah. you keep it nice and broad. You don't go, you don't say she's done more than Thor. Like, what are you talking about? Look at this image. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, no. yeah, she's the same, guys. She <laughs> lacks the capacity to even hurt Thor. Exactly. She, uh, Natasha's like role in the Avengers has been uh, complicated because of the fact that she's so depowered compared to them. She's oftentimes the one who talks to them about different things, but then she still gets certain jobs done that are sort of lower level. But man, how fucking stupid! Cute to think that Nat doesn't see herself as any lesser of a teammate than the God. And you know what? She's probably been just as effective. She did do the whole save the world self-sacrifice thing. Anyone else that can say that? There you go. That's she different. killed herself, so she's pretty much on, <laughs> on level with Thor. No, that's different from punching like <laughs> robots and shit. It's well, like, it's the thing. By his logic, like she... nobody is any different from anyone else as long as they've had done something they that resulted in saving the world. Yeah, exactly. Like, if someone pushed a button to prevent a nuclear war, they're the same Coulson? as Thor. Coulson's Thor, basically yeah. the Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Exactly. I just need uh, uh, Natasha what? to... Sorry, I just <laughs> need Natasha to turn around. It's like, what are we, some sort of kind of suicide squad? <laughs> and jumps right off the cliff. <laughs> that, that would be <laughs> fucked up. That would be <laughs> hilarious. Okay, well, they're at least on equal footing, and Tony didn't have to fight his best friend for the honor. <laughs> Sorry? He no, had to, so you're right, he had to fight an show. alien army. Yeah, I was, I was yeah, gonna say, do you, do you not remember how- how do you think Tony looks like this? He <laughs> he Thanos, Thanos, that Thanos point. fucking yeah. army. He's been torn to shreds. Like, what are you- <laughs> like, what are you talking about?
Yeah, oh, Tony that's... didn't have to fight Hawkeye to kill himself. He had to just fight an entire yeah, army. What the? Or in a space just to kill himself. Army. Hey, yay, yay, yay! What the fuck? Tony didn't have to fight his best friend so, for the so honor. They're the same, Mahler and everyone. They're, they're the same. Well, no, he actually Basically, he's, he's devaluing Tony's yeah. sacrifice. He's saying Tony didn't have to fight someone to kill himself. She did. It's like, what are you? No, I would. Ar Tony didn't I have. Would argue maybe also... he just thinks Hawkeye is way stronger than Hawkeye actually is. <laughs> and so he's like, thank God Iron Man didn't have to fight Hawkeye. <laughs> I'm also like, fight. I think he's. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead, Indigo. No, I just, you didn't have to fight Hawkeye. He had to fight the destroyer of the universe instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Hawkeye is also, you know, similar. I, I also think he's devaluing, like, in a way, he's devaluing that sacrifice. Like, he's he's totally missing the context of that scene. So, this is like, he's, this, he's terrible. <laughs> this is like a terrible comparison. By, by trying to do, by, by, by taking what she does and trying to twist it into something else, he is trying to elevate her into a uh, like a different category other than what she is which mm -hmm. by at like in effect kind of like devalues her in terms of power yeah he's yeah, fucking I up think... in every way right now he should have redrafted yeah. this and talked about what she brings to the team and why she sees herself as an equal potentially but certainly not in power like what do you mean yeah it's like the Usopp of the team if, if, if chat gets that I'm sure they will in chat. there's a few yeah. weeps in there yeah, is that is uh is that EK's brother? Yeah, is that yeah, yeah exactly, bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just didn't want your sister to tag along whilst you saved the world with the cool kids. You weren't really my sister. And the Avengers aren't really your family. Sisters, they know how to hurt each other. None of it made any Shut sense. Up. I'm sorry. None I've gone over this in the video. <laughs> I hate this dialogue. Natasha would never say that to her. It is so fucking cold and harsh and comes out of nowhere. Like. Natasha, uh, we know from this film that she cares about her deeply, and she abandoned her for no reason. The idea that she would be yeah. like, in response to saying, you wouldn't want your baby sister hanging out with you while you're doing Avengers stuff. The idea that Natasha would say, you're not really my sister, bitch. It's just like, wow. That's out of character. And then for her to say back, the Avengers aren't really your family? I was just like, I don't even, what the fuck's happening now? If Yelena's gonna make that point, then the undercover family isn't really a family either. I, I hate it. I, like dialogue what is if, so important. Well, this was That's on true, day. but like, it, what if we just didn't think about it? Hmm. Yeah. My, my, or, my take is that, or that this was the point. Ooh. <laughs> my take is that this was day seven of eleven of their uh, writing uh, the script for this movie, and they were like, "Okay, well, this is the part." <laughs> Uh, this is the part where they're supposed to have some sort of conflict that will get resolved by the end of the movie. What can they say? Oh, uh, you're not my sister. Uh, they're not your family. Bam. Yeah, and then That's later on she'll say both that the Avengers are her family and that Yelena is her sister and she did care about her, you see? And we're just and sitting here like, the... That's, who she, that's who she was. You said she wasn't that for your movie. And I think they literally said at the end, it's like, the the fake family thing was real for me too, kind of thing. Like, that's not, yeah. not the fake family part. but Yeah, which, again... Too. She would have felt that anyway. This is Natasha Romanov. You made all of this up. Yeah. She can't create a family, and she's very much about family, and she's found a family with the Avengers. She's all about family. You know, she's she's basically the Vin Diesel from the Fast and the Furious of the Avengers. <laughs> it's all about family. So, yeah. It, it just seems like a cheap shot just to get that little bit of conflict there. Deep. By diminishing the value of each other's relationship that's uh, that's not right the, uh, oh what what just happened did he, did he i'm one? actually oh whoa did you just, what a, he's I, I mean questioning it yeah but why, he's maybe, breaking the conditioning maybe. maybe let's have a look at that again my sister he's breaking the conditioning. aren't really your family sisters they know how to hurt each other deep by diminishing the value of each other's relationship that's uh, that's not right so uh wait oh, he, oh, the, he he did, it. Wait, the wind counter went up it. but it's an x i went 62 to 63 but with an x <laughs> what's going on, <laughs> what's going what on? What? you need to explain your rules to us i don't understand Elixidimissions has the reverse sound and it goes down when he gives a compliment. Like, <laughs> I need the Hulk text, or it's like, that's the thing. I never have rules, and he just flies. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never had the, any rules. 
<laughs> yeah, Shad, you, you got a good point. He did the reverse, the reverse point, but he counted up instead. So he like, yeah, he, he copied the gimmick, but he didn't and do it right. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm going to be right. even more nitpicky. I think he managed to get the criticism wrong. Tag along whilst you save the world with the cool kids. Well, Tomorrow, say it is not so. And yeah, the I know. Avengers aren't really your family. Sisters, they know how to hurt each other deep by diminishing the... It's like... So, do you understand? so he's saying it's like sisters diminishing the value of each other's relationships to hurt each other? That's not right. It's like, well, that's what they would do if that's what they, their goal was. Yeah, if, if, if they, they wanted that, to hurt each other, hurt I guess? Relationship. No, it seems like the primary way you'd hurt your sister, you'd diminish okay. the value of their relationships and stuff. It's like, yeah, so like his criti my criticism is it's out of character. Yeah, no, a uh, family can hurt you worse than anyone else because they know everything about you. They can cut, they can, yeah, they know where I live. Yeah, they, they can, yeah, <laughs> they can cut you real deep if they want to. So, in fact, that if that was what they were supposed to say, which probably isn't, that would be an effective way of hurting you. Um, going, getting personal, but what does it mean to go from 62 to 63 with, a, with an X? Like, what, what does that mean? Value of each other's relationship? That's uh, that's not right. The, 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 I'm in the hair. I'm oh, darn. Praise this. It went back to sixty-two. <laughs> so I guess he's saying he was gonna he was gonna praise it, but he had to take it away. So he. Oh, ah, okay. okay. He, I, I withdraw key? my previous. Yeah. All right. Well. Even though. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's a good. But but like Wait, I still don't think he got the criticism right. Yes. But at least he noticed. He's beginning to believe, Molly. He's, he's beginning, beginning to notice. The spoon <laughs> is bending. <laughs> Matrix reference. Like a fight. Beginning Amazing to impression and acknowledgement that Nat is effectively a celebrity, but also, yeah, why? It's not acknowledged. No, Homecoming and everything already did this. Nat is effectively a celebrity. It's like, well, of course they She's all an are. Avenger. Yeah. And she does these yeah, um she does these poses or whatever when like in the first time we see her do it, I think in Iron Man Two, like, who's watching other than the people she's gonna knock the fuck out? Like, I don't understand. Like. It's always been a strange um, joke, but like it always felt weird coming from Yelena, especially. She's so like again, so well adjusted, so fun. Yeah, like it's yeah, it's Elizabeth. Uh, it took years of of getting back into society and and joking and getting people to kind of break out of your shell to be anywhere near as personable as she is. So that's that's a bit wild. Um, and um, I, yeah, and then and then it pays off later because uh, I imagine he's gonna. He's gonna give it a big old ding for that. He's like, oh, do you remember that conversation they had? Oh, great. I guess you gotta hop off here, guys. I got a commitment in about 20 minutes, but uh, thanks so much for having me on. And um, yeah, Wow, uh, only four hours and 20 minutes? Gosh, you must get busy all the time. <laughs> that is so fucking pathetic. Yeah, unfortunately, I have a thing every other week, and, and yeah, yeah, the ones yeah. I'm invited to generally tend to jump on that week. But uh, thanks so much for having me on, and uh, yeah, anytime. Yeah, so, no uh, problem. Thank you so cool. much for joining us. And... Um, well, I mean, do you want to do you want to tell people what you're up to, where they can find you, what what you do? Uh, Indigo Gaming should be the first re search result. Uh, working on a really long video, um, not like Mueller long, but two hours plus. Uh, cyberpunk nice. genre, The Matrix. Um, you know, cyberpunk books, cyberpunk TV shows, comics, whatever. Um, could be fun. Probably releasing in November, but yeah. Um, I also do gaming content, Elder Scrolls. Fallout, all those RPG stuff like that. Um, yeah, I appreciate any people checking out my channel, and thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, you bet. We'll catch you in the yeah. future, I imagine. Yeah. Catch you, man. Cool. Look forward to it. Thanks. Uh, nice meeting you too, Shad. I I think we've had a pleasure talking before. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Good to meet you too, man. See ya. Okay, bye. 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 See ya. Ciao. Bye bye. Dusty down. I never know who has or hasn't met each other before on this this crazy thing we call EFAP. That I so I can't remember all the people that I've been on EFAP with at times, and so sometimes when we're on, I'm like, I know I've listened to you on EFAP. I can't ever be here. So I was like, I, I just I don't know. Sometimes I met you before, right, Shad? I think have we? Who? Mm. He's the one with the sword, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sward said, reviews. Said nunchucks are bad. <laughs> but don't worry, we can worry. Out. I remember you, of course. I do something. Oh, Chad, I have a question. Will you do like a, a definitive medieval weapons tier list in the future, or? 
it's so difficult because there's a lot of context that makes weapons good for situations and not I other see. situations. And well, then I got my own biases. And... Maybe if you just do <sighs> at least one for Beast. like open field, two guys, same build. Yeah, yeah. Just back yeah. up right, and right. just did what, it. What, what's the lowest tier possible? Just like to nunchuck. For when you do... Failure. Like, I guess, like, yeah, like two people. Two blokes fight. Oh, like the worst weapon? Like the, uh, the weapon well, from Batwoman. The, the, the well, name we would of have the group, to have the name of the group <laughs> tier. Is it like ultra <laughs> mega crap? Is that the name of the group tier? The lowest group no, tier? No, no, what the, you we we can I think you should come up with something thematic, thematic for yeah. the tier list. Yeah. Like maybe like you take all like great Roman generals or medieval kings or you know st uh, strategists yeah. and things and like oh shit this is like Richard the Lionhearted tier or oh this yeah. is Frederick the Third tier or something like that like oh man this is Drowning a River Drunk tier or this is like that oh this is like a uh, Children's Crusade tier something like yeah, that well, you know or, or I could name it after weapons because the lowest tier weapons would be the nunchuck tier so that's that makes nunchuck tier sense. there you go wait nunchucks yeah. are worse yeah. than the Batwoman yeah. weapon. Oh, they're in the same group. Whoa. Batwoman tier? That could just be the tier. This is Batwoman tier or CW it's tier or something tier. like that. <laughs> but you, what you would do is you'd have to, you'd start out with all of your weapons like that are going to be ranked. Um, and maybe you have to put in the stipulation of like actual weapons that were actually depicted. And are you going to say, well, this is, this is not only real weapons, but this is fictional ones that are plausible to exist, like the Batwoman weapon. Uh, like yes. you could, like they constructed a prop for it. So you could make one if you wanted. So, this you know, that true. would, that could be there. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd want to group it with, yeah, I'd, I'd probably do a, a list of real weapons and then I'd do like a whole separate analysis for like fictional but plausible weapons and then maybe just fully, fully fictional. Um, you could get, that would make a good stream too because you could use one of those lives, like uh, like the, the tier list maker things and you could do the stream with some of your friends and you could get their opinion and everyone decides which tier to put it on and then at the end you're like, okay, here's our list. And um, uh, then as you go, is, you could compare I, the ones with each other and maybe adjust. So once you get I don't want to shame them. Some some of them don't think nunchucks are as bad as I proclaim. And we could get into a great battle and then the debate. Maybe the, that's, the that's tier list the is like... Yeah, that's friendships what the stream is for. And, and yeah. maybe, maybe the, yeah. the, the tier list will be aggregate. Like it, it's the four of you or whatever and the score reflects the... You know, yeah, like, like if three of you agree or four of you agree and one of them doesn't, then you could just laugh at him and move on and yeah. you could put it in the thing. And he could be like, well, I'm sticking with nunchucks being great. And maybe he could make it a running thing. Maybe you could replace like the nunchuck tier with his face or something. I don't know. But you could do something like that. It'd be fun. That sounds like yeah, something that would be fun. fun. Oh, what you should do is maybe you could plan this out. You could get I don't know how well you're connected with like Scalagram at Metatron and Skull oh, yeah, yeah. and people like I'm that. Connected. You could get a big oh, thing together where every all the experts come together and plan this out. So you have all the time. Make it a big, big thing. Get everyone together. And that could be the idea. Make it and a then really big. You can write the same like thing with circle. castles. A round table yeah. discussion. And then do the same thing with armor <laughs> sets. And do the same thing with uh, horses, maybe even. Horse armor, I don't know. Okay. Well, well so uh, there's a lot like, of potential Ah, yes, this there. is Percheron tier. But, ah, yes. but with the, the Sword Guys community, I'm not sure how comfortable so many of them are to get into vicious back and forth debates and stuff i'm, I'm well i mean if they're pathetic I weenies getting... i assume that they won't wow. do it but if they just wow. want to have a discussion about it then you could just like have a, have a fun stream about it yeah it would be a lot of fun uh, it would be very fun yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd be, yeah. You, you could clearly set the tone that it's not like a super cool uh, you know super like in-depth be all end all like like super duper clinical uh discussion on it but in, you know you could you could eventually settle on something or that make a little tier list mm. ah, that would be heaps of fun i'll certainly uh because uh, i've actually done a group um uh, chat already with uh, it was scholar gladiatory and metatron todd's workshop uh nice. modern history tv and me um uh, and it was great um uh, and gee they're all great guys they're really really top so yeah, yeah okay would flanders be watch and do Flanders. Yeah. Well, I mean, Flanders. I guess out of anyone who was closest to Flanders, it would be me. You know, religious, Aww. ultra cut, mega Chad. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> you 
wasn't Australian though, so yeah. Nope. Uh, You're gonna have to be who's who are the Australian regulars in Simpsons? Are there any? Um the regulars. I guess Andy the Prime Minister. Um <laughs> It's in more than one scene, I can't remember. Well, I mean, you could be a regular even if you're only in one scene. It would be abnormal, but... You can be um, a regular if you're only in one, even if you're in one scene. How does that work? I don't know. It's, you know, I don't make Maybe that rules. could be the I, joke. Yeah. All right. I now, guess apart from when The Simpsons... Then, uh, yeah. Apart from when The Simpsons visited Australia, I'm not sure there's any regular Australian characters on The Simpsons. I'm oh, but what about, uh, what about Dash Dingo? Or was it, was that his name? Dash the Dingo? What, what, I, think, the, the I, game, I thought the Dingo the Dash was an Olympic event in Australia. Well, no, that would be cruel, uh, potentially, anyway. Um, cruel? No, what? it's Dingo, Dingo Dash. What, what the fuck? No, what, what, well, no, no, the Dingo, the, the Dingo Dash involves babies, and so it gets a bit messy. Oh, what man. was that? I'm just trying to remember. Oh what was God. the game? Because Lisa was sick, and then she played like it was Crash Bandicoot, but not. Uh, I think oh, it was I remember Dingo what you're talking something. about. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was Dash Dingo, and then there was a guy who was like, you know, you got to get the didgeridoos or something. <laughs> and then, oh, and this is it's it's thematic. Oh, it's so perfect because remember, Dash Dingo gets killed by ninjas with nunchucks. <laughs> She says, nunchucks, they're not even from Australia. <laughs> Which, well, I mean, you know, that's up for interpretation. God, it's poetry. It rhymes. We were talking about nunchucks and Dash Dingo got killed by koalas with nunchucks. It is. This Perfect. is This is just... Uh, the, the story had a pay off, set up and payoff. It's all come, it did. come to fruition. Yeah, and that was entirely unplanned. <laughs> I did not realize <laughs> that that was where we were going to go organic. with that. I guess Dash well, Dingo, does he count as a regular then on The Simpsons, or...? Well, Chad can be Dash Dingo, yeah, I think that's fair. Well, just just on, you know, The Simpsons and the depiction of Australia, there is a truism in uh, one of the parts of the how Simpsons depict Australia, and it's that when they're, they're trying to um, name the bullfrog, it's like, what's this? They're called a bullfrog. I was like, oh, I would have called them Chazwazers. And in terms of, you know, the regular names that Australians have for like animals, like wallaby and koala and stuff, it's like, yeah, I could, I could see it. Kangaroo. Yeah, kangaroo. <laughs> I guess kangaroo. <laughs> kangaroo. I'd Hockatoo. call it a dingabonk. Um, I'd call it a Chazawaza. <laughs> Clonkastank. We got we got some funny names for these these and of course dingo. It's like yeah, it's pretty uh it's it <laughs> sounds Australian, doesn't it? It just yeah, sounds like, like an Australian uh, word. If you just sound the if you just hear the sound of the word, it sounds like you know when you're calling someone an, an idiot like dingus or something, it's dingoes. Oh you're a dingo, aren't you? Yeah, fucking dingo. You dingo. What are you doing? I, ju I, d I do find it amusing that we did build a fence to keep out both the rabbits and the dingoes, and it was only effective against the dingoes, the natural species here, the rabbits. They couldn't get... They got past that fence with ease. Bloody rabbits. Oh, and of course, wombat. Crafty you rabbits. Have wombats and pets. We don't have any of these as pets. They're wild animals. <laughs> like, I guess you, you could have a wombat wombats as a pet. Wombats are be a cool. road hazard. Like, seriously. They're, oh, yeah, they're they super dangerous, dangerous if you run into those. Echidnas it's as like well. Yeah, well, a wombat is just this just thick, dense ball of muscle. It's like hitting a boulder if you run into it with a car. And it'll write your car off. Like, I fully mess the whole thing up. Yeah, be, be, and of course, if you hit a kangaroo, it's like hitting a deer, <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. If you want to destroy your car, that's one way to yeah. do it. I've, uh, you've uh, you've hit, been in a car that's hit a kangaroo, haven't you, Fringy? We've never hit a kangaroo. Oh, um, really? No, fortunately. Me neither. Um, yeah, neither. Yeah. I, yeah. I've, uh, yeah. Well, I, like, wallabies yeah. included, because. Uh, no, even then, cool. even then. Even um, then. And, and that's, that's despite having done many long distance, like, road trips. Um, just, it's never happened. You see them, you see them around all the time. Oh, yeah. But, uh, fortunately, I, I've never. I've got kang, uh, yeah, I actually have kangaroos on the Shadlands when I go over there to film and stuff. I still oh, got kangaroo I, bones I, in the front of me Audi. That Shadlands. doesn't surprise me at all. Oh, I know yeah. when I went to Tasmania, the big thing that was just that I noticed was that there was wildlife all over the roads. There was a lot of roadkill in Tasmania, a lot. Um, <laughs> and, Lots and of devils. I, I think, well, I mean, a, there were Tasmanian devils. There are. What's a Wallaroo? Wallaroo is a town. 
No, I, I googled Wallaby. like Wallaby and like Wallaby, yeah, Wallaroo, yeah. Kangaroo. So, like... so we, there's Wallaby as an animal, Wallaroo as a town. <laughs> you say that like no, it makes no. sense. Yeah, like, get him right. Just get him. No, no, no I like, mean, I'm looking well, at the Wagga Wagga, right? right That's... now, man. Oh, careful. Common Wallaroo. Os Panther Robustus. W Wagga Wagga is a town. Don't worry. Wait, wait, let, let me like... Careful, you're getting so Wagga close Wagga. to TOS. Oh. <laughs> you can't call. <laughs> the, uh, uh, is, so if you're from there, are you the a town Wagga Wagga? Is a violation of, the, the town's name is a violation of TOS. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a couple of examples of that on Earth, isn't there? Why? Yeah. Why? I think that all of the Wait, did you the forget the that context doesn't matter upset. to a lot of people online? <laughs> saying words okay. that are evil. The common Wallaroo. Um, oh, maybe. Are you sure? Wait. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know why I. Yeah, I don't know why I screwed that one up. Well, there is a town called Wallaroo, and there is also an animal okay. called Wallaroo. But the town is spelt with one L, I believe, and this okay, is two L's. Oh, now it makes sense. So it's not at all confusing at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, it makes sense. <laughs> um, so on the country road up to the the property that I grew up on, it's like a 20-minute drive. Um, every time you drive on the road, there is at least one dead wallaby or kangaroo or wombat on the side of the road. Just as a, oh. like, you'll always at least see one that's been hit by a car and definitely hit a wallaby kangaroo while I was in the car growing up. Uh, yeah, the road hazards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they've got signs that are like, hey, watch out for kangaroos. Yeah, yeah exactly. The ducks, got them for yeah, kangaroos. we have them here. <laughs> for what? Kangaroos? What? It, like, if you spot a kangaroo in Wales, like someone's really wrong, so they just say, you know, <laughs> be aware that if you see a kangaroo, something's fucked. When I was yeah, in Canada, I mean, they had a, they had like signs for deer, but like for us over in Australia, it's kangaroo warning signs on the road. But they, they've got deer all over the place. Signs too. You got to watch out yeah. for koalas. You better watch. So interesting fact: Do you know koalas are extremely dumb animals? Like yeah, they're uniquely, smooth brain. yeah, uniquely <laughs> stupid. I'm not. I'm not but, kidding. They are uniquely stupid amongst animals. You can look this up. They are profoundly dumb. dumb. Oh yeah, yeah they're, further they're, proof uh, that the koala. Is I, the I'm not interested in. I'm not interested so much in that you're stupid. It's that in they're uniquely stupid. Mm. Yeah. Explain how are they uniquely stupid? That has uh, me interested. Just, is it like size of brain or something? They're, oh, their yeah, brain is so smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the, yeah. the reason why smooth brain is an insult is because it seems like what matters a lot more is how wrinkly your brain is, not how big it is. Um. I think I think there's the ratio, right? That's like one of the big ones. But yeah, if you've got uh, wrinkles brain, to surface area, it kind of yeah, like um, yeah, it's uh, it's super smooth. It's like the it's crows like, have like hyper wrinkly small brains. They have a lack of folding brains. in the brain. They have a lack of folding in the brain. <laughs> but koalas, they're they're wonderful little <clears throat> creatures. They just sit up in the trees and they eat the little eucalyptus leaves, and then they they go to sleep for like twenty two hours. Lazy bastards. Oh, surface area. So the wrinkling increases the surface area of the brain, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, well, so well. apparently, uh, let's see. Um, the koala brain only fills 60% of the brain cavity. No, it fills 70 to 75. All right, so I guess they figured that out. The ancestors of the modern day koala once had a full size brain that filled. Oh, so their brain is smaller than their skull, like by a significant <laughs> degree. Interesting. Or lads. Uh, pretty, so they're, they're pretty useless, dumb animals. I, I, well, every, every, I agree. everyone they're, says they're, they're, they're these lovely, cute animals. And look, yeah, they I can are. see they're cute, but they're they're pretty dumb and useless. Well, so whether or not they're smart or not, from what I understand, their poop is very good for the environment. Very good in terms of like um being a fertilizer. So. Uh. That's uh. So they they have a uh. They have a a little a little. Oh, what's what's? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Can't think equals no sad. Hey, look, that's really true. You know. It's true. Can't think there is no sad. 
koalas are time for them to become extinct nah i'm keeping them around sorry why would you I'm want that koalas. why would you want to keep them extinct or make them extinct why would you do that I, yeah i don't know why you would want to ex koalas man they're adorable they it. eat the little they eat the plant yeah but remember there was somebody who said i don't care if like chickens suffer they're chickens who cares oh yeah fuck that so person, there, is, but... there are these weird takes on animals like i want to keep them around all right they're adorable they're like little mascots of australia okay. They're, they're cool. And plus, they're if important. we're, uh, I mean, we don't want to start just, ranking the importance they, and they, value of animals based on their intelligence. Well, we can't do that. Oh, because, I, oh like, I'm sorry. I, I do. I, I personally value animals that are smarter and more useful than animals that are not as smart or as useful. Well, I mean, you say that, but like, think about you could apply there. Well, yeah, but think about like ants and stuff. An individual ant isn't particularly intelligent at all, but if all the ants were gone, that would like completely destroy the world. Yeah, they're, the world they, they're, they're very, to, very to... useful. I agree. Like ants are very well, useful. Well, sure. So so that's the point then. Utility in terms of the ecosystem. Util I, I said utility, are... like usefulness and intelligence, both things. I don't know that right? intelligence matters that much as long as they have some sort of role that they fill um in the ecosystem no, i think uh i think a more intelligent wait what if they what if they are only a detriment but they are intelligent what then well then they're our enemy and should be eradicated clearly so intelligence isn't the most important part then. like the like, part like the, the emus Mola. the <laughs> emus <gasps> well have you guys considered well, zombie emus, koalas we... We can keep mm. the emus around, like, oh, what the fuck? They're, they're fine. Well, they're, they're oh, fine. oh, oh, Friggy, hey, you look, wanted these... We have a treaty. We have a treaty. No, we have a treaty. No, no, if we no, violate we, the treaty first... No, I'm just saying, I'm saying, if we, no, oh, saying, if we violate you. the treaty... Tonight on Australia Today, we have a debate coming to you from down under. I'm breaking saying, a treaty. I think breaking a treaty is a sign of weakness. I would, uh, yeah, that's what I'm was saying. We need to... No, no, no. I, no I'm, I'm saying we've we always been, been at war. I will... Oh my goodness! We need to we need to wait for them to make the first move. I'm sorry, it's not it's not. Vile, sadistic, evil animals in the world, and you think we have a treaty with them? Oh, I'm well, so we do. Shocked. We do. It ended I'm with a treaty. No. It did. Oh, we, lost. So we lost. We no, lost. And it's okay. No. To main, Those are you know, just we, you weak, be careful. weak sympathizers who just. Mm. I'm not sympathizing anything. I'm I'm thinking oh. about the betterment of this country, and I just think that we need to wait yes, and see what and happens. And right? you need to be eradicated for the betterment of this country, Freddy. Oh my goodness. I I feel like I feel like there should at least be an attempt to maintain the peace rather than just immediately cause a a, a war. You know. Well, an emu apologist would say that, wouldn't they? I just find it funny that. We talked about nunchucks, and here we are about talking about emus and their effect. And <laughs> well, what a ride, guys! What a what a great ride! And it's, we gotta thank it has been Black a ride. Widow. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys remember Black Widow? I remember no? Black yeah. Widow. <clears throat> I want to no, see the, the emu war movie though. Like whenever that Me happens, too. John Cleese yeah. is making one. I want to see it. Yeah, and if people War's wonder why I train Widow. sword so much, yeah. Emus. Okay. Serious. Gosh. Well, look, if the Lewis guns didn't do it, I'm not sure how, how well swords are going to handle them. We'll just well, have no, to because, see. No, no, guns, it's really hard to hit emus guns because a bullet's so small and everything is easier. But but a sword, you have a much wider striking area. So good old Generally, it's the size but, of the bullet, remember, the diameter the of the emus. bullet that makes it easy to hit something but also yeah, emus but, but are, emus are different you know, like rags i'm sorry unless you've tried to shoot an emu you just don't have the experience of how difficult it is like have, have you tried to shoot this? it is bullets, that legal bullets <laughs> bullets have failed against emus we've done this the, the, the they've defeated the the gun swords what? are where I, it's i feel at. like i feel like there's more to the gun than the lewis gun you know i feel like there's there's more options well, lewis guns, guns are great right. don't get me wrong yeah. but yeah we've and I, I almost feel like it's it wasn't the Lewis gun, it was the application of it. That's probably the truth. Because you know what, case. you know who else had yeah. guns? The Nazis, and they lost the war, and they had some pretty fucking stellar firearms, so... Eh. Proving the guns are shit. Right, Shad? Swords, that's what, yep. that's what the Nazis needed, swords. swords. Where they, they, yeah. they were using they swords, they <laughs> Charge into us in the name of swords. Slice, slice and dice. Uh, they will oh, never expect it. Uh, 
seriously, go back, you know, into the, the medieval period. Germany. Germany in the medieval period was ultra Chad with because they're just swords everywhere. The the burgers, uh, that was the name of the citizens. Oh. They were all parts of the Michel <laughs> militia. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah, the burgers. Yeah, that, that it was a legal requirement to own a sword in the Holy Roman Empire during the medieval Holy period. Shit. It's like. Yeah, that's so. Uh, like, you're you're required to have a sword. You were required to own a sword because citizens of towns were parts of the militia, and so would count you would if actually you had, like, be a stick, and you broke it and made it sharp. That counts. Well, well the, the, like, what was what was really interesting? Um, the penalties in breaking the law, like for drunkenness or wife beat and stuff like that, was a withdrawal of your right to carry and own your sword and stuff. Like it was, a, a, you know, a, a responsibility that you had to do it because you're part of the militia, but it was also a privilege that they would take away from you as punishments. Like you don't deserve a sword because you've, you've misbehaved. Shame on you. Um, and, but yeah, like how awesome is that? Like legal requirements, like if you didn't own a sword, you would actually get penalized under the law and fined if you for not being but honorably armed. You could escape that fine but... if you beat your wife. That's, <laughs> That's what I true, gathered from your instructions there. <laughs> exactly. It's like, well, I don't want to own a sword, so I just slap my wife with it, and then it's like, and then they get got, got to sidestep. Like the, the end of your house, like, there's no sword here, and you just punch your wife. Like, it's fine. Fine. I'm not supposed to. We don't endorse punching wise here. We're saying this is an example of what's terrible, terrible, terrible. This is an example stuff. of tyranny. Of That's what we're highlighting. Tyranny, exactly, exactly. Alrighty. Let's continue, shall we? I... This this one you whip your hair when you're fighting. I don't Did hear you anything. ever wish? Oh um, God. Oh, I envy you. <laughs> somebody's not in this right. this uh this group, apparently. My internet I let me let me refresh my internet. Oh no. oh no! The emus—they heard what you said, Shad. They're very. They're Why would they come for you first? Should they come for him? Oh no, no, no! See, emus are so devious, stuff like that. They'll attack the sympathizers first because they're the weakest. So I'm sorry, Fringy. Well, no. I'd like oh, to see what's right. right. I got, I, I got a lot would... of goo here. I got a lot like of goo, right? Hmm. So the goo is a weapon. Yeah. The I I got many types of goos, and there's. There's certain there's certain utility to the goo that I think would benefit me if the emus were to attack. But it's weird that you say I've got lots of goo to like be a counter when we have no idea what the goo even does. It's like saying I got lots yeah, of shit. Yeah, I know you have no idea what the goo does. I'm just saying that the goo is effective at com combating emus. At least some of it is. Apparently not your internet though. Well, sure, the, but the internet isn't made out of my goo. If it was, then oh boy, that that would be some hyper fast connections between. Um, Why haven't you set that up? I, it's not, I, I don't know, the, the, the government, they're, they're just not on board. Well, if you don't tell them what the goo is, they probably won't be there. <laughs> That's gonna stop them. Hey, look, alright, just, you gotta trust in the goo, okay? Fair in enough. goo we trust. Uh, Fighting. There we go, so now it's playing. Alright, we, we stopped them, don't worry. I want a dog. Florence Pugh kind of outshines pretty much everyone. There it is. Always. Yeah. Everybody's review. Yeah, Florence Pugh is the one that dominates, does amazing, when she's like most of the time just doing the most normal acting ever. It is ex it is shockingly normal. In the For film. a character no, who no, should I, not be I behaving also, normally at all. I also think it's like a trend. They're filling the replacement. Yeah. A little bit, her, yeah, a little bit. They're, they're like, giving her more well, shit to do than the actual character in the in, in the movie. The so. examples I gave in the video were the the joke she makes about the posing, the cry she does in the family meetup, and then the last bit at the end where she does the head thing with the scar. Those three are just what they think about, and then like she was incredible in the whole film. And you're like, was she though? Are you sure? Well, I liked her. But that's like because they didn't give Natasha so much to do. Like it, she, she it feels up. like they went out. Of, she, yeah, you know, she did a bit. She had a tear here and there. It's fine. So she had yeah. a beard. She, she had a beard. She was yes. sad when she had to fight the the task mistress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Rachel Vice is amazing. I somehow is it all wise times, or wise? I've always said wise, like, wise. But, yeah. but I've never, I've heard more than one person now say vice, so now I don't know. Oh, wait, 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 Rachel Weiss. Vice is it a German oh, her last name? name? Oh, okay, it could be. Maybe. I thought you were talking about the Come flower. On. No, 
Is there a way to find out? Well, how does she pronounce it? That's what I want to know, I guess. Right, that's... Well, it's like... Rachel Weiss. Let me see. It's come tough, unshakable assassin with archetypal, sweet, naive little sister. No, it's no, dumb. it doesn't make sense. No, Stop no, it. No, no, it no. It is bizarre. We are rewarding the actress for not, like, having a completed character, but rather playing two. That's exactly what I said in the video. She plays two characters. She plays them just fine, if not very well at certain points, but she's not one person in this fucking movie. Because she mm -hmm. can't be... Because that wouldn't be marketable or... Yeah, no, we gotta fast track her. She's gotta be relatable, she's gotta be fun, she's also gotta be a badass with a cold history that gives her this very meaningful history. You're like, oh, okay. I can't s- Best way possible. Where are you gonna go? I don't know. It was more like an invitation. To bedroom and kill Dracoff? Yeah. That sounds like a lot of work. Yep. Did you censor your own Could movie? Be. Hmm? He, he, did he censor shit? Oh, he might have. Yes. I, it, like, jumped for me. Uh, I do believe he did. I found out. Yep. Man, this entire sit-down heart-to-heart is moving. No, Something about No, but fine. What can you do? It's like he finds it moving, okay? It's nice, I guess. It's like, oh, so cute. Also, too. like, the, uh, it looks so fake. You're not really there. You're not actually you there. Just, that was yeah, CGI. Yeah, it could just screen, right? <laughs> You yeah. couldn't just find CGI, a patio yeah. to sit down in? Like, fuck me. It is a weird one. It's, it's only, Craft it, of filmmaking, man. I really do think like this pushed me past the line of like being like, yeah, they did this just in case they made change. And I'm like, I mean, okay, but like at this point, why isn't it just a green screen then? Like, just yeah, everything is green. Yeah. <laughs> no, why have actors just CGI, on. just animate the well, whole I mean, thing? What if you wanted to change the chairs or the drinks or the fucking food on the table? Make it all green, fuck it. As opposed to just hey, I decided let's make afterwards that she right wanted now. to have her eating you lasagna. Know. Wait, there's people in chat saying Neve, as in like go back Neve. What did he say Neve at some point? Naive. Did all Maybe of us miss the subtitle? No, oh, let's let's go. Yeah, everyone. Well, we'll have a look. See, just for you, chat. I don't know. It was more like an invitation to go to the red room and kill. Wait, this is probably not what they're referring to. Break off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he spelt naive wrong. It depends on where he said naive. Oh. Yep. Oh, that was earlier, right? When he was talking about how she was naive sister, you got to skip yeah, further she, ahead. She has to, she's oh. the assassin. Oh, yeah, she, sweet Neve. Yeah. yeah they, <laughs> sweet Neve. <laughs> ne ne what, what happened there? It means the misspelling, right? <laughs> Me, but um, that's a, have that's not a, typed a, I, I don't know. But you got two things wrong there. So yeah, like yeah, he did. <laughs> that's just a flat out error. Like, yeah. not a typo. Yeah, maybe he thought that's the right spelling of name. Wait, you Why reckon? Did he check? I don't maybe. know. <laughs> Because oh, this is how you spell right? it, right? I feel or, like he must or, have spelled the word naive know. enough to know how to spell. Maybe you're right, yeah, maybe you actually thought that's how you spell naive. It's weird to me, because you, you see that word come up a lot, it's quite common. Yeah, it's common I don't know. enough. That, that's one I could misspell He spelled it N-I-E-V-E. -E. Mm -hmm. That is bizarre. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Na that's why I, I guess yeah. phonetically, if you... I guess, like, if you don't give a shit about your video, and you don't check the spelling of the subtitles that are prominent throughout your whole thing, and you don't see the squiggly red line... Well, so... Then well, there's no I squiggly would... red line in Vegas, so that might be maybe. Well, yeah, but notice. he would have written. No? Presumably, he wouldn't have written this in Vegas, so he, um, he, it would be I a word processor. By now, I think that by now like he would have had something. No way he scripts he's, he's in got Vegas. And everything. No way. He well, puts I mean, the he's whole, got like first draft. Like in he's there. got a, a. He's got a. No, like that's a, not what, what I meant. I meant like a um, preset. For like I usually type it out again. Uh, yeah, no, of course he would have a, a, mistake. a preset, but like, yeah, so whatever word processing thing that he wrote this in originally, the first draft, you'd think it would have put a red line under that. Or just auto-corrected it, maybe. And you know what, even if he's using something that is so archaic it doesn't even have that in it <laughs> somehow, he could then copy and paste it all into literally fucking like a YouTube comment section and it would show him what things are misspelled. <laughs> right. It's a, bit, it's a bit strange, How? but whatever. It's kind do you think it's a bit like not ironic? I guess it would be, I guess, like super appropriate that of all the words you misspell, it's naive. But like, it's naive of him to think that's how naive is spelt. Kind of. Hmm. I feel like, hmm. like how naive that you don't spell check 
the subtitle of your video. I don't think that works at all. It has to you be don't? something else. You gotta, you gotta figure you don't out. Because I feel like, I feel like you can. I feel like you're onto something, but I don't think that was the naive part. Because yeah. naive means showing a lack of lack of experience, wisdom, yeah, no, or I judgment. Know. I know. That's um, naive. It, so a lack of I wisdom class... and judgment to put. I feel like that's it, to check I feel the like spelling of your... more than just that. Well, I, I'd be it fine does. with. Uh, Rags categorizing as naive. I'd also think arrogant would be fine if we categorized it as he's like, I don't need to spelljack my work. Yeah, because arrogant, because be arrogant is underneath the naive umbrella in a way. Arrogant's just more specific. Yeah. Um, but it, I guess I, there's, a, there's a level of irony there. I'd happily say a level. It's not quite intellectual levels. Yeah. I will. Would it? It would be. Well, see. Here's the thing. Intellectual. I feel is ironic, but ironic. I feel like naive. That would be. It wouldn't be irony. It would because it would line up appropriately. Like it wouldn't be irony if that makes sense. Is it ironic like, that I he's feel called like somebody naive when he's naive about the spelling of the word naive? Well, I and I think in that sense it's ironic. But may, he's we got layers. That's the thing. There's layers to this. Yeah, this is poetic. It is it is not ironic in one way, but it is ironic in another way. So him calling her naive when he is being naive, that's irony. But the actual misspelling of naive when he is being naive to misspell that word, that isn't ironic. That is appropriate. They're not appropriate, oh. but I don't know what's hilarious. The, what is, well, I gotta Google it. What is the opposite of irony? Uh, is it serendipitous or serendipitous? I don't know. Is it? Uh, can't since uh, uh. I gotta look. I don't actually know. Just look up antonym. Just look up an I'm, antonym for a... I am, but there's a lot here. Like I, I'm on uh, wordhippo.com right now, for under under the antonyms of tab. Uh, let me go to the, yeah. I can. I'll try uh, the one I normally try use. Source, irony. Yeah. Irony synonyms. Let's go with antonym. Oh, it only does synonyms and definitions. Does it have antonyms? Okay, serious, compliment, flattery, approval. No, oh, praise, respect, considerate. No, definitely no. That yeah, this is apparently more difficult to find an answer than I believe. Um, let's go to Quora. There's generally some good answers there. Congruity. So yeah, because I guess if irony is the incongruity between like an intention and a result, or between levels of knowledge then you can have like dramatic irony right that's an incongruity between meta and internal like knowledge in a lot of ways um so i guess that means that congruity could be a an antonym to irony hmm uh so you could have the opposite uh, let's see so I guess someone's someone here is saying that because it, it could be literality, because it's because if the if irony represents an incongruity in something, then I guess their logic is that like the opposite of opposite is just the thing itself. Um, but I I don't know I I like in I like uh in what was it congruity. Incongruity? Congruity is the opposite of irony. Oh, yeah, I guess that follows, yeah. Yeah. So it is simultaneously his misspelling of naive is both ironic in one sense and I guess tragically congruous in another sense. <laughs> Tra tragically congruous. Tragic, tragic congruity. Did I ever tell you the tragedy of Darth Congruity, the ironic? Darth Congruity, the ironic. That was a fun let's, tangent. Let's press yeah, on. Come and kill Derek yeah. off. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. Yep. Yeah, what? That's weird. Be fun now. 
Yep. And this entire sit down heart to heart is moving. Something about no, it isn't. you have low standards in your pathetic. It's with her sister. Uh, Nat getting geez. one last call to adventure. This is not her last call to adventure. This is not her last adventure. One last <laughs> call to adventure. adventure. <laughs> does he forget that this happens during? She's, How does he forget? She's because got a lot. He, he prays. She's, she's got a shit ton of adventures left. For another well, seven years. <laughs> Well, you n remember what his first win was. It was she about the font in keeping with Civil War, recognizing that this takes place during Civil War. So how yeah, can no, so he acknowledges that, but well, simultaneously he also thinks that... He must that be acknowledging it in meta, like it's her last adventure this is the best part, in release. This is oh, the best. maybe. I guess, but, but like, then he should... Funnily enough, so, there's less time between Iron Man 2 and this than there is between this and Endgame. Six years versus seven. She's actually got more adventures than less to go on. This is the midway. Again, he, he has to be referring to it in terms of the audience perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Which is dumb. Whatever. Because it's <laughs> just, but whatever, it's fine. I knew it. I knew you did. It's so cool, right? Don't compliment this. <laughs> I just get uh, this out. What the fuck was that what noise? Is, what? <laughs> <laughs> that did that sound could like be something I squeeze into a video. This is faker than a cinema wins laugh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just, what, what the fuck is that? What is that? What is <laughs> that? <laughs> I've ever heard. Yes, I've heard. It's, it's creepy. It's creepy. It's creepy. It's creepy. It's like a koala laughing. Smaller. It's, it's not like a koala laughing. Koala laughing. Yeah. Take that yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> so koala laughing no, would be like. No, no, no. 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 I, I want to hear your guys' fake laughs. Go, go on, Fringy, give us a fake laugh. Like, just oh, shit. make it sound um, real. No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 yeah, are we grading the fakeness on how genuine it sounds or how fake how it is? How genuine the fakeness is. On how genuine the fakeness is. We want it to sound real, but it, we you need to... But we're to putting it on. But, you, but we're not actually like, laughing at the, something funny. Over the top laughter. Yep, it needs to be over the top laughter. And we'll rate it on how real it sounds. But it needs oh, to be very over the top. Like, Dude, this, this is like, this feels challenging. Because I'm trying to figure out, do I want it to be super intense? Or do I want to dial it back? Am I trying to be convincing? Or am I trying to be entertaining? Well, here's the thing, Fringy. This is like high, I could say, this is like how we rate movies. It's like high dives in the Olympics, where... The, the higher the skill you go, the more difficult it is to pull off, yeah. but the greater the score can be. I, do you want to oh, play it man. safe for an easier low number, or do you want to risk it for a potentially high number? That's You know what? I'm, i am got to think about it. Someone else go first. Well, I don't mind going for it. Like, what, so just do a fake go. laugh is the challenge here? A fake laugh that's convincing. The thing is, I also, all, almost characterize fake laughs as just they lack any sort of passion. And uh, spontaneity, they're always just, um, they're very planned and simplistic. Like, that one was perfect. Ha 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 Like, what the yeah. fuck is that? And you're like, that's my laugh. You're like, no, it's not. That's not your laugh. Like, <laughs> Don't lie. You're lying Don't to lie. me with your fake laugh. Yeah, you're a liar. You lied to me with you're the laugh, liar. now you're lying about the you're lie. You're just making a lie you're sandwich. You're not telling me. So, yeah, I guess that's mine. Alright, who's next? Where's the laugh? You, Mahler did it. It's when he made the more. noises that <laughs> resembled a fake laugh. Those I weird noises that I weren't words. How did you blank that you part out? Not, you were doing this because of you. I, I, I blanked out. I must have had a strike. Uh, go again. Oh, I was just trying to repeat what he did, which was... <laughs> but we want it to be convincing. We want you to... A convincing fake laugh. You didn't even laugh. notice it the first time. The parameters <laughs> are on a fake laugh. See, now that was a real laugh. one. It must have been convincing because Chad didn't even hear it the first time. Well, and then also, this isn't just fair because I know what Mahler's, like, laughs sound like, you know, in, yeah, in Fringy's true. too. So for me, I can't be, like, I know because we've hung out well, for so long. Not to mention the course, fact that this format is literally closely. do a yeah. fake laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's being made very clear that that's what we're doing. Yeah, it's Shad, telling true. me my fake the laugh sounds is... fake. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, but I thought we were going for, like, a fake laugh. A real was, fake laugh. Uh, but sounded real, so we could make it convincing. Well then, okay, you go. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Hang on. I'm in a hotel, so I don't want to go too loud. because What does that have to do with anything? Fire eyes. Ready? Ready? Over the top, right? It'll be like... Convincing. That's pretty good. Well, that's not too hey, bad. How was that? How was that? Yeah, that's okay. believe, yeah. yeah, depending on how that blends into like a sentence or something, I think that's pretty. I could believe it being a real laugh, depending yeah, on where I it was placed. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, like I think life. placements. Is key. that all gold to make a fake laugh sound real? <laughs> yeah, that was like, the goal. That was. Yeah, what I was well, going why, for. why wouldn't I just do a real laugh at that point? Because well, then it, you just because real laugh depends. on commands? Because that's a skill well, that I don't think you're going to Just think about something funny. Just but, think about like. Well, that's the thing. I know how I laugh, and I can recreate. Think about the think about the koala brains and laugh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> just, yeah, see, now I'm already thinking about things that are funny because it makes it easier. Yeah, well, that, exactly. what, what a pointless challenge. Like, try and re laugh for real, but fake. Like, <laughs> no, but yes, I, I do it, do it. it. No, I don't think it's pointless because what, what Shad is trying to point out is that somehow we can laugh, but. Cinema wins can't even pretend. Well, to but laugh. we can do a convincing well, no, this laugh. Is, this, this is my point. Like I, I've been filming yeah. videos where I like I think I did it with the um, double flail crap video, right? Where mm. I need to actually film a take where I'm laughing at something to try yeah. and emphasize the ridiculousness of it, and uh, I need to choose to laugh. And I just kind of trigger. You oh know, wait, my was that what you were asking us to do this, to... this whole time? Was to try and do a convincing laugh but fake? Just what I've been yeah. freaking saying the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were telling yeah, us yeah, to do a fake that's laugh. That is what yeah, he's saying. No, 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 no. But that's, that's, you know how words work? I thought you were trying to say recreate a false no, laugh. I, no. Shad, Shad has said many oh, times with yeah, detail been been exactly what he was wanting. That's what words do. <laughs> literally, well, both of those things could be mean. That, 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 I mean, that's <laughs> literally what I thought what? he meant. After listening to someone clearly fake laugh, I thought he wanted us to do fake laughs. But then yeah, you understand? Fake again, but yeah, but that can mean two again. things. How are you not getting I, that? I said multiple okay, times sure. that, that you wanted fake laughs. <laughs> That's like the thing I've been joking about this whole fucking conversation was how those words put together. Do a real fake laugh. Do a fake real laugh. Those can mean both. What the fuck? <laughs> I, but I said, try and make it sound convincing, like you. you yeah, convincing that it's real. it's something that you right, would have done to fake a laugh. Right. That's the whole point. <laughs> That's why Angry. when you said, like, I, I, that's when you said you laughed. Saying, I was like, saying no, no, it's no, convincing, convincing is to distinguish it between an obviously fake laugh that is laughing with the intention of sounding fake. Again, exactly. you'd be like, convince me that you're doing a fake laugh. Do you understand? But he said convince, he said convince him that your laugh is genuine. Yes, that I, I, I genuinely that fake. Times. That's the problem. These words are right next oh, to each come other. On, Mullen. Oh man! I don't know. Like, what? You, you all assume I'm lying? Yeah. Like, that's literally what I thought you no, meant. We, that's why I did a no, fake laugh. How did you guys not pick that up? I literally did a fake laugh. I'm not assuming that you're lying. It just seems like you've totally misunderstood. Well, okay. In that case, why didn't you call me out when I did the obviously fake laugh? Well, I'm trying to, but then you're yeah. like, ah, just, did you know The only it? person who didn't hear it was Shad, so he would have called me out, but you guys didn't. I I tried to call you no, out. No, 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 like, Shad, 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 I'm saying you would have, but you didn't hear it. Rags and Fringy didn't call it out, and I did an obviously <laughs> fake laugh, so why didn't you call it out? Because you said <laughs> like it is, you were trying to, to recreate someone I literally went, ha, 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 ha. Well, like, is that how you yeah, think no, I laugh? I know, I know that you did. You were imitating the uh, Cinema Wins laugh. That was it, what you yeah, did. Yeah, that's, and that's what I, so how, how am I the one that's confused when that wasn't called out in any way? I, I called it out. Because uh, no, uh, when I said Shad, I didn't Shad hear it, I said yeah. I didn't hear the real laugh. I'm not, and yeah, it, Shad. You said, no, I did laugh. Shad, you're like, in the clear. Sure Shad, you're in the clear because you I, didn't I, hear it. It's the others that are not in the clear. I did hear it, but I... <laughs> you're I, I heard the fake laugh, but I was waiting for the real laugh. And when I said I didn't hear the real laugh, you said real you did. Fake I thought, laugh, you, you, mean, I thought you were referring to the real authentic one that was supposed to sound real and authentic. And I said I didn't hear it. And you said you did. And as I said, mustn't have heard it had a stroke. I was referring because I was expecting that you did it. That exactly. And that's, that's, that's why this whole did, time um, I thought did, you wanted me to make a fake laugh genuinely. I, I Wait, but didn't didn't afterwards didn't we explicitly say like oh but now like the real one or it, am I totally missing? No, because I was done. Rag said he's done his laugh. Oh, okay. So I get now I don't I don't get why you and Rags didn't call me out for like you know you're not doing a real laugh, Molly, you're doing a fake one. No, but that was what I just asked. Did we not? Wasn't it like immediately afterward that 
It was no. asked to do it. That's why I was so confused. Are you sure? Hundred percent. Sure? Because Rag said to Shad, he's done the laugh. You didn't oh, say do another one. I didn't one. say that though. Okay, well, you, what, you uh, I guess you just. That's you, what I'm asking. Do you're you know what I said? Because I don't remember what I said. Well, then Maybe wait. I but if Rag, if Rag said really that, why wouldn't you have cut him off to say no? He hasn't done it. Didn't Shad immediately say something after that? Well, Shad was just talking about you wanted me to do it again because he didn't hear it. Okay, but I mean, if he already asked that, then. Yeah, but that's a different complaint. Confused. He's saying he didn't hear it. You'll say okay. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing that that means that I didn't actually. I'm just, it. I'm just satisfied because like my confusion wasn't. I wasn't tinfoiling here. Like I was tricked. <laughs> he uh, said that you were tinfoiling. No, all of you were. You're all like, no, you're wrong. You mis I, misunderstood it. But it's like I have plenty of reason to have misunderstood that's, it. That's not tinfoiling. That's oh, what is saying tin that you we thought that you misunderstood. Yeah. How is that tinfoiling? I, I, I'm I don't, used, what yeah. is tinfoiling? Why are you getting hung up on tinfoiling? It's not, it's not really important. Like, you said that we were tinfoiling. I don't know what that means. You said, you said that I was. I, I've never heard tinfoiling <laughs> as a term used. Okay, yeah, I'll help you out. So, like, I've I've generated this from craziness and that everyone's gotten the right idea, but I got the wrong one somehow. I must have been I must have been making it up. Conspiracy theory time or some I, shit. I don't know. Sure, but none of us ever said that. I like legitimately oh, no. was that we thought that. No, you never said tinfoiling. That's fine. You, you got no, me there. I, I never did that either. No, you yeah, I, I thought just you like, didn't hear okay, it. Okay, 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 can we just like fake real, real fake laugh now? If that's yes, what Chad wants. Yes, or, yeah, yes. Yeah, so so the foil gets to just hang in the air. All right. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. Like, Absolutely. I guess I wasn't yeah. tinfoiling at all. I was right. Oh, this is fine to I never said that you were tinfoiling. That's my point. Oh, my God. oh yeah, that's what we said. You were you, it doesn't have to be the literal oh. words. Don't worry about it. It's just a general term. Oh, okay. It doesn't have to be the literal words. But you're just yes, for you. Not every word I even say is meant to be understood yeah. literally. Yes. We were figuratively tinfoiling? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. So. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, like representative, Wait. but not 100%. We were sort. Yeah. So we were sort no, of. No, no, not, not, not you, we me. Oh, oh, you were yeah, tinfoiling. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't sort say, of. Like, you accidentally yeah, you stumbled you into a tinfoiling, but it wasn't your intention. All, all that I was foiling. making it up, either way. Were you, res were you, were you potatoing and you tinfoiled yourself? <laughs> were you clad wrapping? Um, clad, clad wrapping. I'm not sure what a clad yeah. is. What is a clad it's, wrap? It's like, it's the see through one, you know? The the one that is, uh, you can see through. Wait, or is that, oh, which one? Cling, you cling mean, wrap. You you mean glad wrap? Not, yeah, it's not cling. Clad oh, so you know, I there, mix up there's cling wait, and you're lad? about cling film? Well, well, yeah. No, no, yeah in, Australia, we have a, in Australia, we have a brand called Glad Wrap. Not yeah, glad we have Glad. Why glad is a brand. Glad wrap? So Glad. No well, you, you combined Glad, which makes cling wrap. Glad cling clad. Is oh, probably what happened. That might be what happened. You could have been referring to both, but wanting to save syllables. Yet, mm. ironically. Or led to a it longer discussion in which we had to time. decipher. Yeah. yeah. So, it, which means you could be playing the long game if this object comes up in conversation enough times to justify this initial clarification, then it will eventually pay off and save time far down the road. However, ironically, by the time that happens, we will have forgotten the portmanteau and you'll have to explain it to us again. Yeah. But fortunately, we don't have to worry about that because we didn't waste any time on that. No. Wonderful. Yeah. We did. yeah. Good thing we did it. So I, I'm still waiting for my genuine fake laughs. Okay, well, I'm going to go first. So let's yes. get us over. Go right. weekend, worry. Let's, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. I, I just have to reimagine this whole conversation. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm good. Wait, what? What was it? I, 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 That's the real fake laugh. I thought we Shad laughed and then... Nothing laughing. came through. Nothing no, no, came what? through. What we mean? didn't hear a thing. Is this... What? Oh, am I getting like... Or is this a joke now? Am, am, no, I, am I getting... I no, we're not, we're not we're not all simultaneously gaslighting, I swear. Of silence. Are you serious? Ten... Are you didn't hear me laugh? We're, we're it was so silence. silence. Hang on. We can worry. Is are you shitting me right now? No, no, wait, 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 the, 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 hey, hey, the proof is in the stream. The proof, the proof is in the stream. We're just, we're just, we're, I'm looking at chat right you now. You could have okay. just laughed again. The proof is in the stream again, and all this time. Why are you gaslighting? The proof is in the stream, okay? You can go back. Oh, that's not even gaslighting. We just said we couldn't hear you. Oh, oh, oh. Why are you, guys? I, I left. Like, do you want me to laugh again? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, if, we didn't, we'll see, if our complaint is that we couldn't hear you, then Are you we would. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that was our complaint. That yeah, is that it didn't come uh, through the mic. So you really yes, want you me? Like... You really want my high pitch in your ears? Is is that why? I, are you really sure you want to do that? Well, what wow. was the point of this uh, otherwise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you thin me right now? <laughs> Maybe your, your microphone might be you might be peeking in your microphone and it cuts it out. Yeah. Could that, you record uh, this the locally and then be... send the file to us in Discord? There you go. That would solve otherwise, it. otherwise, there's no proof that you did it. You could just be trying to punk us, weekend warrior. Yeah. And, how do we know uh, that you're and... not trying to gaslight all of us into thinking that? When you <laughs> did oh my god! I'm being gaslit, gate kept, girl boss. Oh my Are you tin foiling us? Like? If someone lit a match in these after it would explode with it's all this double gas. Tin foil reversal. Oh it, 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 a double oh tinfoil reversal. Can That's like a move on the high bar. The no, the, the fake, fake laugh. You wanted to do it fake again. Fake laugh again. I fake laugh. Oh my god. I like I said, okay. I think it's peaking or something on the microphone and it's cutting it out. You are, and you might have to record it. Yeah, are you laugh gassing me? Ch when, as Chad pointed out. When <laughs> Shad did it, it cut out a little bit of it at one point. And I think it's because Discord actually sometimes it's like, is that a human or is that something else? Maybe you need to scoot away from the mic so it doesn't peak, but it also picks it up if it's loud enough. Well, I mean, at least we have confirmation oh. from Discord that. Or we could human. just move on um, with the Weekend video. Warrior is. <laughs> oh, oh I, I really wanted to hear the fake laughs. Okay. Well, here's the thing. How about I've got an idea. We can combine both of these ideas, right? All right. A oh, good what? a good bit of fakery, right, is all in the timing and the presence. Mm. So let's continue with the video and we'll all squeeze in our squeeze fake laughs. Fake oh, and right? once it's done, call it out like a few seconds later. That was my fake one, by the way, if nobody says anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We could try. okay. Yeah. Let's yeah, do it. Okay. All right. Well, Florence Pugh is a win. That's what we're on. So you could laugh at that, theoretically, but it could also be fake. <laughs> Let's get this out. View is always a win. And you can put always so much win. stuff always in there. Really always, really. Oh, I beg your pardon, Serena. Was Clearly, Luke would have a problem with Serena. Also weird that he keeps getting involved Why with would abused he? and trauma. Serena? Who's Serena? Wait. Luke with Serena? What are we... Who's Serena? Oh, I'm sorry. Is it a reference Serena. to some other show with this actor starred in? Is that the idea? Probably. Probably, yeah. yeah. It is Serena Alexandra, Serena Anastasia, Serena Maria Fedorovna, Serena A Novel, Serena Catherine, Serena Elizabeth. Try Serena Florence Pugh. See if that brings up anything. Mm. Serena Pugh? No. Like a TV um, show or movie or anything? Now there's a... It's saying, do you mean Trina Pugh or Sabrina Pugh? But probably not. So... Serena what now? Who's the actor for Mason? One sec. I'm gonna reverse engineer this, or maybe regular engineer. Rake Mason, played by O.T. Fagbini. What? Is that seriously his what? name? Oh, sorry, not an I. Fagbenly. Fagbenly. Did you just say Fagbenly? That's- hey look, I- I didn't name that's him. It means to call Benly a fag. I mean, it's not cool. Anyway, that's his the... <laughs> name. Is o his, his first name is O.T. with a dad? I don't know. Just... So his, his oh, name is... Oh, he's, he's got... Rapper. He's got a... Uh... Oh, his this name is... This is the weirdest is, um... rapper. <laughs> so his name... His... All right, Over so his name... <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, his name is... Uh, Ol Olat Olatunde Olateju... Olau Lorem, that's his, that, those no, are like no. his first three names. No, it's... no, 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 his, his, his rapper name is Over the Top Fag Benny. Well, no, I, I, right now well, I'm his trying rapper to name isn't his, his, his real, real name. name. Like, I'm Fringy trying to was figure out yeah. his real name. Oh, wait. You said, no, 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 no his rapper. So he is a rapper. I thought that was like a joke. Or is he not? Uh, it no, says no. he is an actor, screenwriter, songwriter, and director. It does not say that he's a rapper. I, I don't know where that came from at all. I'm assuming it was a joke anyway, Weekend Warrior was the... making. Uh, yeah, don't worry. I guess, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't worry. It's, it's, like it's OT or rapper name. And so, Luke, Luke Bancole or Bancole is, is, the, is the character he plays in The Handmaid's Tale. There you go. Oh, okay. And is she in The Handmaid's Tale? Or... Uh, well, no. Handmaid's Tale has oh, wait, no, traumatized sorry, women not... in it, so... Okay. There you go. Oh, yeah, well, I have to pee, so you guys discuss that. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Alright. Um, oh. 
Yeah, meta okay. meta commentary that deserves a win point because reasons. Because he, he, because he chose, sense. yeah. I mean, yeah, it'll just be a win that, hey, look, there's this weird connection, kind of, if you think about it. Great. Do you reckon he's going to mention yeah. all the prison deaths? I think not. No, probably. Are probably we not. even going to make it that far? In, in... We are. I don't know. If... Maybe, maybe, maybe he's going to skip it. Well, like... remember, that's next. That's like right after this scene. So, Oh, you mean like, will he skip over? That's kind of what I'm asking. Do you think yeah. he'll address it or not? Maybe he'll go... Oh, it's a family moment. He'll ignore the a whole family jail moment. sequence. <laughs> uh, I have returned a fun. <sighs> hey, Ranks. So what happens now? We're going to hit play. You ready? I I am ready, yeah. Boom. I can believe it. Motorized women, what's your deal? Pretty sure that's what? Cyrillic for love, and it's got to be Melina, right? And those two aren't entirely... Yeah. Google Translate says it's Helena, but it sounds like it's pronounced Yelena. Also, the collarbone says Lady Luck, which for the record was just one letter wrong. I'm guessing this is all worth saying it's great. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. He, he, is, he, he figured out the trivia. He's, no, he's trying to copy Cinema Sins when he points out irrelevant or out of place things in the background, or if he reads the actual mm. articles and As, newspapers um, that are put down yeah. and points out wrong dates and things. And. Yeah, you can disingenuously place ironic criticism on movies by pointing out things that people don't really pay attention to because and say, ah, it's wrong, it's got the wrong date. But in this one, he's pointing out things that actually make sense in the thing, but it's not really... Well, I'd be on board with relevant. that if um, if not for the fact that his relationship to them wrong, is, wrong. is garbage. Um, yeah. The idea that's like, look, he yeah, tattooed makes no them on him. that he would have the tattoos, yeah. yeah. It would make more sense for him to tattoo his fucking self on him, which he has on his back, I think, right? Captain America. Some, um, yeah, like I don't consider this a good detail because it just makes me confused about him. Udua, which I used my ultimate genius to ascertain was not correct. I don't believe your ability to find out what the Russian is on these. I, I actually would probably, probably just err on the side of the movie got it right. Because if you just flat out phonetically Google the names, yes. like, you, then it'll be different. Because names are often similar in languages, but they will not be always the same, especially if one of them might be the native language of that name, and we're used to saying it a different way. He probably did one Google, and then he was like, eh, it works. And then it was like, okay. Like Juan and, like, John and Juan? Yeah. They're not oh, yeah, well, similar. It's well, the same name. Seriously, Joshua, right? That comes from Jeshua, or Jeshu, which actually is Yeesh. a Hebrew name for Jesus. And so, um, yeah, names can change pronunciation through languages quite dramatically. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, left Hopper at Russian prison camp? Brutal. Even for you, Eleven. Oh, uh, Stranger Things mm -hmm. reference. Oh. Dang. Yeah, I don't... It's a win. Yeah, it's a win. Anyway, this shield, you know, that he carries with him like a, like a precious baby blanket. Where's the lie? But to be fair, it did save him from... It's a weapon. It's also a shield. It, <laughs> it's also a, yeah, it's... I mean... Yeah? It did save him from falling them. out that window that one time. What are we... What are we doing? No, it's, and, and his whole... The context of the conversation is a lie, because he's talking about how he fought Captain America. And this is, and this is when the other guy said, you, well, uh, Captain America fought out in the 2000s or something. He's saying, but, as cinema wins, that yeah, it's true, mm -hmm. he does treat that shield as a baby blanket. It's like, what? No? He uses it exactly... It's like saying well, all the people with guns treat their guns as baby blankets. It's like, well, no, they, they use them as guns. It's a tool. Yeah, I mean, in any capacity that he would have met Captain America, he would have the shield, and that's his weapon, so he would be very serious about keeping it handy. It's about as, like, insightful oh, okay, as a okay. comment as, like, you treat your clothes like a baby blanket. And I'm like, I, I, I wear them. Yeah, I, I like them. Well, yeah, I do <laughs> use them to protect me from the, the natural things, yes. From falling out the window that one time. Yes, that oh, is the one time the shield has been reference. pretty useful. Yep. <laughs> that's the only the time. time. <laughs> To my advantage, I dig it. I push him out the window. What year was this? Oh, well, that was a win. Oh, that was a win. Why okay. That, a win? that was a win. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. 
Is, is he suggesting anymore. that because Cap helped himself when he fell out of a, a window of a building with the shield, that him taking the shield off him and pushing him out a window, that... Is, does he think that's a reference, or...? I, I just don't follow that. That's a win, I guess. Captain America was still frozen in ice then. Hmm, so maybe they're saying that there aren't two timelines and the cap that Alexi fought was the one that stayed with Peggy. No, no people have said this in my comment no. section. No, history uh, would change completely if he was fucking with it like yeah. that much. He has to literally, like, stay in Peggy's house and then go to the supermarket with a fucking, like, a baraclava <laughs> on to make sure no one recognizes yeah. him. The, and then he'll have other problems to deal with yeah, at that point. Honestly, though, it, it doesn't matter. Him being there means it's a separate timeline, because it can't be the of one course, without him being to. there. Like, pe yeah. people legitimately well, think that's a great little, like, he went back in time and just stayed. It's like, no, 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 no. With how they've explained well, it, that's a different timeline. So the reality is, is that scene breaks Endgame. Like, that scene destroys it. What, Whatever you, yeah. semblance of, of sense you thought there was in the time travel, it just, it breaks, it completely breaks in half. Well, I mean, it depends how they try and explain it. He's a like nah, lying there's or no, there's he... There's no way. There's, what, there's you think no he's way. not lying? You think he actually fought Captain America? Oh, sorry. I, sorry, I'm getting confused. I thought we were talking about the time travel thing. Still. Wait, All right, I fucking I... lost. <laughs> All right. What are, what are you, what are right, you saying, saying Chad? There's multiple ways to explain yeah. his comment that he fought Captain oh, America. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. He's lying. And, uh, and he's yeah, lying. one could he's be lying. that he's lying. Or he ran across the black super soldier who... I don't know, was wearing Captain America uniform at the time. They, he um, wouldn't have been Captain America. He would have been I someone know. else. I guess, right? He would yeah. have been someone else. Yeah. So yeah, he wouldn't have mistaken could... him for Steve Rogers. That would be yeah, like... That would have been and, unless good. unless he wants the glory and is lying that it was Steve well, Rogers. So at it that would, point, it he's still lying. That, right? then lying. still come back. Yeah. But it's not lying as much as he fought no one and is making up an entire battle. He's like, right. oh, I fought a super soldier from America, so Which, it's close frankly, enough. It's more likely he... that's well, what yeah, Some people were like, he was it Isaiah Bradley? It was like, Isaiah didn't have a shield, did he? And then he's also black. There's no way that he had a shield, right? Because they didn't have enough vibranium unless it was just like not a vibranium shield i guess which would be strange like well it feels like you've lost the utility of it if you don't have a vibranium shield isn't the whole point that and if he was out super durable doing missions with a shield with people mistaking him from captain america it's like how did this never come up exactly oh, that's a good point he would have been on multiple missions unless he just went, well as we know he did go on unless multiple they were missions, all yeah. and, well he killed everybody maybe <laughs> like that stuff it was like the only way that it <laughs> works or it was just a John Walker 1.0 that we haven't heard about yet. It was a John Walker 1.0 we haven't heard about yet. I what? mean, what do you think is the actual what? answer, buddy? Like, what well, yeah. you, what you really Jesus think? Christ, people. Can't he just have been lying? Why can't he just be yeah. lying? He's lying to fellow inmates to make himself seem extra tough. Yeah, He's lying it. very poorly, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and that's my criticism of it. It's a stupid lie, but at the same time, like... Why are we like, maybe there's this whole of the Captain America we know nothing about, neither does the world. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> let's, just, let's just assume that. Yeah, why is that the, why is that the explanation? Well, why not just him lying? I agree. Yeah. 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 Not the poor oh, look at the big bear. His name is Ursa, and you're calling him a big bear? Something tells me you might have oh, some Ursa. Yeah, this is the thing that I think I let. Um, major problems. Um, on that Ursa major. So, so he's he's a, it's a reference to a comic uh, character. He's um, oh. he's a mutant. Oh. Which is why everyone's worried. Actually, <laughs> it's like, uh oh. <laughs> Major. I can see why anyone would be called. I can see why a big guy would be called bear. Yeah, well, but exactly. yeah, if you get it though, it's like he's a bear. His mutant power is to become a bear, I think, or something. So that's why everyone's like, "Oh, they're giving us clues, 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 clues." clues. Much like when they showed um, the the devil sort of uh, stained glass thing, everyone's like, "Mephisto, Monkey. Mephisto," and then it wasn't. And they're like, Mephisto's in one division. No, he's not. They're like, Mephisto. He might be in something eventually. Don't Please worry. Give us come for him. Don't worry. They'll get him. Yeah, they'll bring yeah. him in. You'll all cheer. And then he'll be shit. And you'll be like, I wish they never did Mephisto. <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, well, no, but hey, Doctor Doom. Yeah, Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. Woo! Doctor Doom. Galactus. Yeah. Oh, I wish they Oh, they fucked both of them up. Oh, shit. Who, who's left? Uh, Magneto? Oh, no. Actually, no. Namor. Oh, he's on his way. He's definitely on his way. Who else is oh coming? 
just um, all of it, all of it. To yeah, get well, ready. I mean, the Fantastic Four are on their way. Uh, the X Men. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, sorry, they're X People are on their way. X People. Now. Oh yeah, there was that X. interview where it's like, why would we call them X Men anymore? There were women on the team. Oh, it's like God. I didn't realize that's how they were. It's characters. people kind. <clears throat> X People. The X, X People. <laughs> God damn it. X persons. X women. Two. Women's. Based on that wrist. Wow. Tattoos of Lenin. Karl Marx on his knuckles. I guess my real. What's this guy's ethos? Political wins. Come for the obvious Easter egg. Stay for the satirical political. It's not. Satirical he's from the fucking country? Soviet Union, you dipshit. Think, Holy fuck. Um, How and thick and I, are you? And uh, excuse me also, just saying that, oh, Karl Marx commentary, that's not fucking commentary. You, it's you, not commentary yeah, like already. Yeah. Like, you wait, think you have George yeah. fucking Washington <laughs> as a tattoo? <laughs> that's political commentary. Uh, 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 that political commentary, the, uh, pil the political ideologies the tattoos are revealing aren't too far removed from the political ideologies of the actor playing the role. Hey, how about that one for commentary? Well, exactly. is he, he saying that it's too obvious what his political leanings are. No, well, I think you're yeah. giving him far too much credit. <laughs> but why would he say it's a win then, if it's too obvious? Yeah. I so I can't I can never answer that question with... for you for any of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with I agree with Indigo Gaming. It's like cinema things. It's like, oh, I noticed this thing. Call it a win. That's that's. I the noticed whole video. something. Yeah. There's... Yeah. Well, it's very confusing, because, yeah, like, if we cut out everything he says after the, the question, right, and he just said, what's this guy's ethos? It could be like, oh, I get it, because it's so obvious that he supports Karl Marx, and okay. Sure, but what, how is that satirical? But he wouldn't be allowed Well, so, yeah. so I was going to say, if we, if we agree on that, there. and then we read the rest, political wins, come for the obvious Easter eggs, stay for the satirical political commentary. Sorry. I have no idea what he means it, by this. Yeah, you're yeah, not making commentary, you're just like, time, I know who that person said. is. I guess I don't understand. Isn't an Easter egg that a Soviet super soldier has Soviet uh, things like tattooed on himself? Is that an Easter egg or is that just part of his character? And second of all, where's the satire? What are you satirizing? Yeah, exactly. I don't. He, he wouldn't be allowed to have. You're not satirizing. Tat hey, look, him. he's got marks on him. That's political commentary. That's satirical. Right. <laughs> it's funny. This is about equivalent as him saying, "Oh, look, a communist flag." This political commentary. Oh, yeah. just, well, just the, the, the red guardian. He's got a American. red outfit, and he's part of the Soviet well, Union, which well, uses red a lot. Ooh. I feel like the, feel like the oh, easy satirical commentary. <laughs> I don't know if Captain America. It's like, wow, he's got like a, he's got the the star, you know, red, white, and blue on his shield. What's his ethos? Stay for the political, satirical, political commentary. It's like, what, what is that? Like, you haven't done anything. <laughs> I don't know. You haven't said anything. There's no satire here. There's no commentary either. Like, like, oh, the there's, most basic there, it's thing not even. Give him. And yeah. he did give it's it like, a win. I noticed that. I noticed an object. Commentary, like. Yeah. Those oh, political ends come for the obvious Easter egg, stay for the satirical political commentary. Okay. Come up and I know it seems unwarranted. No. What? Come up and to hang like on, hang on. someone's Satirical. I, I got one. Satirical political commentary is like, oh, look, I have a picture of Karl Marx. They really want to show that ideology. They should have shown the Antifa symbol instead. Ha <laughs> ha. Is that. Yeah, wait, exactly. Sorry, I'm I'm so, still stuck satirical, on this. Come satirical political commentary. Wait, sorry. My mind is like, what did these guys do to this guy? What they they, do they ate the food that was sent for him. So the come and up they, and they, they laughed at him. Pull through a, 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 a glass window. Like that's your come up. And you get well, and, and look what he says. Named. I know it seems unwarranted, but you eat a man's dessert, you get defenestrated, as in pulled through, well, tossed through a window. As in. You get pulled through a window by a super soldier and possibly die. Like if you land really badly on your neck. I know it seems How unwarranted. Is <laughs> morals. It is yeah. unwarranted. Just is, yeah. This, this is the thing. He's so he's commenting on the morality of this. Will he comment on the morality of what happens next? That's well, not a win. Yeah, because when we talk about no, that isn't a win. Like, so you know, these two guys, they ate some food. That was pretty bad. These people, they did nothing and they got buried on the snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what in the For world? Dessert, you get defenestrated. In Soviet Russia, door opens you. Oh, that doesn't even make sense. That doesn't make sense. Oh, he opened the door. Open <laughs> yeah, he opened the 
his door. door. Yeah. That doesn't Where make sense. That doesn't kick his face in. Yeah, this yeah, doesn't that, make that sense. That would work if he tried to ram the door and then just smacked and into then the door and fell into his face. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, yeah. It'd be funnier like, if the door opened and then he fell onto the ground. It's like, ha, I have a sentient door and I hate you. Yeah, or, or there's an explosion on the other joke. side and the door breaks off his hinges and slams right into him. And it's like the door opens you. That That's closer, but he opens the door and you say he in Soviet Russia, door. door opens you. That doesn't make any fucking sense. No, he yeah, opened the door. Because we literally saw it in Soviet Russia, Super Soldier opened door. Yep. That, so, that, what that, the hell? Just... <laughs> it's just because it's Russia. That's it. <laughs> it's just Russia. <laughs> yeah. That didn't work. I don't, think I don't think I'm doing this joke right. Oh my god. Uh, he actually. Uh, oh, wow. Why did you do it? We jumped it against himself. Jump the gun. I don't think we jumped the gun. We commented just like he did. We had the exact same commentary he did. I guess the thing nice, is, is that he still kept it in. That's the problem. Why did you keep it in? Yeah. What the fuck? Because Mahler, just... he has to make the sweet 15 minute mark. So that's why you put like, the joke in. This is the equivalent of us pointing something out that's bad in a movie, and then a character goes, wait, that doesn't make sense, and they carry on. It's like, so... Okay. Yeah, it did make sense. Why I agree. <laughs> just yeah, yeah, it just lab shit. He lab shaded his own video. I don't know. I guess he really wanted to keep it in. I, no, I, I think yeah, I like the idea that he really wanted like it in there. Yeah, it's like I know it doesn't make sense, but I want it. I want and it in just, my video. I get I, uh, the cynical part of me is just like he put it in, even though he wrote it down. He knew the joke didn't make sense. Is that so the joke? He Do you think it. he's like it's funny that it doesn't make sense? People will laugh at that. Oh, that's also that's but also like the possible. people who would laugh at that joke. I don't want in my audience. I, I just sit here confused, and then I'm like, oh, he realized it didn't make sense too. Okay, nice. I'm doing this joke right. Move your ass, super soldier. Encouragement. But you haven't done any joke get right. Some None of them are funny. Encouragement. <laughs> Encouragement. Get some. Counter, really? So the problem Gosh. is they don't tell him where to go. They just let him stand around for ages. It's not really Again, encouraging, is it? He's really trying to copy Cinema Sins, and as you know, bad or good you want to criticize Cinema Sins for, is doing a much worse job than Cinema Sins. Like at least when Cinema Sins has those one-line commentaries, sometimes there's a bit of erotic humor. Where this one, it's just it's all missing. Yeah. It's all over the place. <laughs> now that's a superhero landing. <laughs> Shut the uh, fuck up. Well, that, there you go. <laughs> now you got more sampling for the fake laugh contest. Wow. No oh, way. That, yeah. was, that was already... I've been that's doing fake laughs. Fake laugh. yeah. yeah, you've already done that. That's all I'm trying to do is <laughs> repeat is, his laugh. His fake laughs have all been different, by the way. He's trying to sound real. Like, that, it, the, they're so obviously fake, yet... He's put it in because well, I think he thinks it's was convincing. I was just. Well, That's what I mean. His fake funny. laughs have been different because they're not his laughs. He's just trying to no, create a right. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tommy Wiseau's laugh in the room, right? He does that, doesn't he? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I am laughing. What a funny story, Mark. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> top notch. What a funny story, Cinema Wins. <laughs> Now that's a superhero landing. More encouragement. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> right man, so she killed me. <laughs> what is this? Oh my god, why is how is Florence Pugh's delivery so perfect every time? Keep laughing, buddy. We're about to get a massacre. Keep laughing. Is this, a, is this a parody? Like, oh, isn't she wonderful? Isn't yeah, it does seem... darn amazing? Like, is she... He's... And self-assuredness. And self-assuredness. So... <laughs> Perfect every time. Every time. All right, oh, here, here, here comes your challenge as a critic. Can you do it? Can you acknowledge what yeah. happens here? Don't high-top me what? and tell me it's about my bad faith interpretation, okay? Be a cool way to die. Priorities! Uh, Oh, oh, oh hey, no. look, he's about to show it. Let's see. Can he do it? He's, You know what? With that commentary, he's getting a little bit closer because it's almost like he's saying she's prioritizing um, how cool it would be to die that way versus the gravity of this situation. C could be that we're getting somewhere. There's some soul here, maybe. Yeah. He, he we'll almost see. was saying it in an ironic way, saying your priorities are messed up um, to try but... and point out the incongruity of it. 
we would say her priorities are messed up because she's not concerned about the potential of damage this is going to deal to the people below, but he might be saying yeah. she's fucking up because she should be worrying about getting out of there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm, we'll have to find out. We'll see. Wait, what magical blue energy thing were they hiding in the hair? Yeah. Oh. Wow. That, oh. That's, is that a Cinema Sins or? I don't even know. That was a win. That was a win. Win. <laughs> the weird blue light is a win. What? <laughs> okay. I, I saw a weird blue light and I clapped. What the fuck? <laughs> it's a weird blue light. <laughs> win. What's that there? Win. I guess that's a win. <laughs> Oh my God. Dude, why is that a win? Help me. Why is that a win? Because he noticed it, Muller. It's a cinema thing. I think... It's not fair. So, yeah. If there's one thing he's good at, it's hanging on to aircraft as it ascends. The... Okay, so oh, he... we aren't talking he about it then. Like, he well, yeah, we might have skipped it. We'll have to see. Is it your time of the month? I don't get my period. I don't have a uterus. Or ovaries. That's what happens when the red room... I think we have skipped it. Yeah, you're probably right. That's okay. it. He's yeah, this is after but, the... But here's your second the test. Here is your second test. What are you going to say about this? All right, let's see. Gives you an involuntary yeah. hysterectomy. They just get right in there, and they chop them all away. I'm just going to pause for the sake of us. But Honestly, a frank conversation about hysterectomies and him. <laughs> a frank conversation. Why are you laughing you? again? A frank conversation. I, c I read ahead. The frank about in the MCU. Sign me up. A frank Start conversation about hysterectomies oh in the God. MCU. Wow, this. Oh yeah, that just sounds what in so world. creepy. It's like what oh, in the world? Yeah. What the Talk fuck am I listening to? And uteruses and oh, t what the fuck? <laughs> what? Yeah, this is like... That sounds it's so a, that's crazy. Joke that's so I can't joke. even make a joke about it. Jesus Christ, it's so fucked up. What is this? It, you want conversations about hysterectomies in the MCU. Why? <laughs> what? But also it's the tiny the it's, it's fuck up. Level. Like, why? It's, it's... This is apparently a frank conversation. This conversation. Yeah. This no, it's a joking. It's, a it's not a, it's a frank joke, conversation. Yeah. It's a joke, and it's not even a yeah. funny joke. And she should be really distraught about that. Like she makes well, a. It's, it's it's downright tasteless. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially with how they've handled the it previously. Fucking. It's funny. Yeah, and Natalia, she's expressed that she's she would have liked children, you know? It's something that she regrets. She feels abused and violated from what happened to her. And, oh, it's a joke now, yeah. And, but the thing is, there were so many things he could have said, and this is what he said. Yeah, yeah. This, I was not prepared for this. A friend, like Sign machine. me up, okay. I'll see you. You know what I love? Fucking hysterectomies. The conversation. The conversation. Oh, especially contrasted against the last time Nat talked about it. All hush hush. In the red room. Did, why do? You, what do you yeah, mean yeah, all hush like hush? They were no, trying... that is dramatic. Yeah, I saw it. It's like they were almost treating it with a sense of reverence and respect for how distraught and horrifying it was. It's not a joke. She it's says not, no, yeah, they, they yeah, sterilize you, and she starts to tear up because we know what that means. Yeah. yeah. You don't need it to say they get yeah. right in there and they chop away all of it and then they pull it all out. Okay, thanks for that. Where I was trained, they sterilize you. It's honest. Sorry, you shouldn't be comparing to an actual storyteller. This is not at all. Um, yeah, this performance is honest and raw. I'm reading ahead, but. Why? Why is it being comical? Like the the thing. Oh, so she, want. so he's complimenting the uh, the 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 one in Black Widow. He's yeah, he's, by comparison to this, like uh, uh, the, yeah, I okay. Mean, let, oh, let let us let this oh, play. For, I was about to say. Well, so the Black Widow, the, the way that he handles it in Age of Ultron, <laughs> Whedon is really well done. Um, this guy is saying yeah. that like Black Widow's done better, and this is his reason why. It's honest and raw and isn't scared of using the correct medical names even while still being pretty dang comical. In a macabre It's kind pretty of dang comical. You fucking clap at anything, you seal. I can't believe that we've not only complimented roar, what they're it's... doing here, but he's also denigrated the prior scene in Age of Ultron as being too hush-hush. Yeah. Masterful. Yeah, and even, like, being inferior to the scene. That's amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's... I can't even make fun of that. It's...
Just what are we so doing? Because like stupid. the goal in both scenes is to get the information to the audience and then get uh, we'll get the information of the event to the audience and how the characters feel about it. Nice and mm -hmm. like I say subtle in terms of how we got the uh, information in Age of Ultron, and very clear how Natasha feels about it. In this scene. Yeah. The information is delivered like a clumsy fucking idiot. Like, it's all chopped out and pulled yeah. out, lol. You're like, okay. You, you, you're thinking about how I should even feel about that, but then you've also got these two, like, making jokes about it. So, wait, yeah. do they... What do they think about... Florence Pugh has been able to deal with this as an adult. The, the, the ability to create life has been stolen from her, right? And this is this only recently she's been able to really acknowledge that and deal with it, and she's already making jokes. It's like, damn. Like, lol. I don't believe that. I'm sorry. Neither do I. I don't believe that. Yeah. Because it's bullshit, and well, the way you'd expect it to be dealt with is how it's dealt with. I to show that, but... Well, some people use dark humor as coping mechanisms for traumatic events, but that's not what's coming across here. It this is the guy that made it happen. Involved. There's no he way she would be joking about it with him. Mm. She would yeah, rip him to shreds yeah. over it. him. Not with him, yeah. Especially. I think Chad, Chad had the right word dismissive. It, it's like you you made this very important yeah, the, uh, dramatic event like a joke. It, gotta, it comes across like that. It's not like even a dark humor like you're coping with the event. It, I, 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 I get what you're also say, saying, Shad. It's not, but it doesn't come. Yeah, it doesn't come across like that. Yeah. Yeah, there is. So, I agree that you can make a context where well, you see, could make a joke the about reason it. Being... Uh, Shad, you, you cut out. Yeah. Well, because they don't show any part of her actually showing true sorrow and regret mm, of it yeah. actually happening. It's only just a joke that she's throwing away. And well, we so never talk no about it again. We never talk about it again. Yeah, this is just, her, it, it feels this like is a her skit. commentary on what happened to her. This is her, this is the extent of her commentary on and it. And this is the man that encouraged them all to, to go into the program. And he doesn't even know this happened. There's so much here that could have been used for good storytelling. Yeah. Instead, it's a quick joke, and it's bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, it's a skit, the way they use their hands also. Like, yeah, and, and he's rewarding it for being honest and raw. Yeah. And pretty dang comical, in macabre sort of way. Oh, come on, bro. Yeah, it's shit. That's the thing, it would have been cool to actually have a scene where they address to him that they feel he is as much responsible for most people, but if not a bit more so, for what happened in their yep. lives. Instead, yeah. they're just annoyed at him throughout the film, until the end yeah. where they like, hold his hand or whatever, and they're like, aww. And you're like, okay. <laughs> nah, but there's our tough guy stand-in, so scared of the ovaries. Uh, so scared of the ovaries? Is that what he what said? Are you doing? The what tough are you guy stand-in. Scared of them, a win. And that's a win? No, 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 no. First off, that doesn't work because she doesn't have ovaries. Second off, <laughs> like, it's not the ovaries that we're afraid of here. It's just the graphic description of an evasive procedure she shouldn't be making in character anyway. Yeah. What are you doing? I don't understand. Like, I, like I said, I got nothing for this. There's a tough guy standing so scared of the ovary. What are you talking about? If he was a tough guy, wouldn't he be not scared of the ovaries? Because he was. A well, to be honest guy. with you, Shad, I'm not sure I believe he knew nothing about this procedure anyway. I'm not sure that the position he had. How could he not know this? It feels weird that he wouldn't yeah. have known, especially with um, Mil Melina. She went through the. Yeah. She said she went through the Black Widow program four times before she got Natasha, and he was married to her for three years. She never told him that she was sterilized. I doubt it. Yeah. Tough guy stand in so scared of the ovaries. You cannot kill a fox that sweet. Yeah. What? <laughs> Flirting with a memory? Memory? Fl he he's he's referring to this... Melina and he says you can't kill a fox yeah. that swift. Why? What do you mean flirting okay, with a memory? Okay. I'm sleepy. <laughs> it's 8 8. I, I, oh, I, hang on. I'm out. Of, I don't remember the context. Why does Natalia say you? Because, well, so when he says you can't kill a fox that swift, they're interpreting that as sexual. And that's why they're like, ew, it don't talk about sexual, it like that. Though. Well, so, because this is the thing, right? If nobody had told me anything about this and, and he said you can't kill a fox that swift, I'd assume he's talking about a, like, combat prowess. 
Yeah, craftiness. Yeah. That's just really. But know, Natasha says, ew. And it's like, oh. I guess. Uh, so, mem means I, something else? Must, it, it, apparently, it's something what? sexual. Like, and so. That's he's very bizarre. And then the commentary from Cinema Wins is, haha, flirting with a memory. Memory flirting? Is that a thing? There's probably a name. For what? How does that work? How does that work? So if you compliment someone in any kind of sexual manner, or, or in their appearance, you are flirting with them, but through your memories, because they're not in the room. And that's worth a win. Why wouldn't you just no, say it's... it's a compliment to them, rather than you're flirting with memories? It's a very... Yeah, it's a very weird term it's for a it. roundabout way <laughs> of saying something that isn't that complicated at all. He's literally like, they couldn't have killed her because she's two X. It's like, wow, look at you, memory flirted. <laughs> like, what? It's like, isn't it not just, so wow, look at you recalling information? <laughs> like, I just don't understand <laughs> a lot of this commentary. Flirting is the it's probably a name for that. I don't think we have enough fuel for St. Petersburg. No, we're good. We'll make it. Ah, they didn't make it. No one... And that's a win. Why is, Why is that, that a win? win? They failed. Why is that a win? Why did they trust that he knew when he didn't even look at the fuel gauge? Why did they not bring the fuel up? To fuel the... Why did they it, assume the red the room would be within distance of the fucking prison? Is the win I mean, that he, he they could made try a joke? and say? Yeah, it's like he might be trying to compliment that. Hey, there was a joke there, and in the juxtaposition of we weren't making it, and they crash. And but he doesn't say that. He's just like, yeah, oh, they crash. Oh, I noticed the thing. Cinema <laughs> things. <laughs> it's like saying, oh, there's a tree there. Win. 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 Oh, Imagine they're talking. Ruthlessness. <laughs> Compliments. I guess. Oh, see, see, he did it's it. It's a cinema <laughs> thing. <laughs> he, did. <laughs> he did it. He did it, Chad. It's he just a random thing. Ding. We <laughs> were talking. Ding. God, he really is desperate. He's even. It's in the script. Compliments. That's a. That's a win. I don't know. Question, compliments. Yes. Question mark. He, he, <laughs> he, even he isn't sure. He doesn't know if this is a win by his own yeah, standards. He put it, yeah, he put it there, right? There is a question mark and compliments. A scene I is happening. Win. Avenger Super Jet. Yeah, he acts like he's not a fan, but he's a fan. And... What? Oh, it's what? What the fuck? Because he said, "Why didn't you get an Avengers Super Jet?" And he's like, "Oh, so he must be a fan of the Avengers, even though he says he isn't." That's a win. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Oh, super, super thin. To say that's. And this is the end of part one, but if you oh. want to see part two, oh yeah, we right really now, gotta I make this two part up on fifteen network. minutes. Yeah, that was really tough to make. To read, you're watching right now. It's okay. been a main fucking fifteen minutes on this Man, video. Man, two minutes of Nebula. Fuck that. I'm out. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, speaking of God, it's eight a.m. and I didn't sleep. So. Very <laughs> I, well, weekend morning. I got I got to split and go to mass. So that's okay. You uh, that you, is, you you sleep. That is unfortunate. Yeah, I was gonna say you could have yeah, helped I... us here, but you know you're abandoning us. That's fine. You know we'll deal with it. Yeah. No, you you got my laughter, so you could just call chat. No, we and... didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced you liar. Laughing. We good warrior. Okay. But I really do got to split. Oh, uh, I kind of so... I kind of heard a laugh there. Do you want to um? <laughs> okay. Do you want to tell yeah. people where you're at and what you're doing and why you they should come subscribe? Hey guys, I'm the Weekend Warrior, and I make fun of bad media, specifically movies and video games. So, I'm not gonna say what my next one is, cause that's a secret. And oh, thanks, Smaller. Thanks, thanks, Chad, Rags, Smaller, Fring, Fringy, and the mm -hmm. Wallabies. <laughs> so I'll see you guys. Mm -hmm. okay. Take care. See you. Good dude. morning. Good night. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Take care. Bye bye, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Bye bye. Doodles. Links in description so, and in chat. So. so, we started at 4 a.m. for me, and I actually stayed up all night, so I haven't slept, and now it's like 10 a.m. Oh. So, yeah. I'm you... not sure how much longer I can manage. Well, just whenever you want to jump out, it's no problem. <sighs> um. Well, I'm, I'm conscious at the moment. Well, are you guys ready for part two, or what? <laughs> Man, I mean, I'll. I mean, I could do it if y'all want to do it. Um, I am on board. I don't think I'm up to it, honestly, guys. Uh, well, uh, you can stay for however long you want, honestly. Like you can just drop out whenever. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm about to crash, and uh, and I have to admit, getting through that 
cinema wins. That was that was actually rough because there there was a lot of oof and mm, in in that one. Agreed. That was, a, that was a a rough one. And so just thinking about a whole another part two. I'm not. I don't Fair think enough. I can manage. Unfortunately, I, I'm. I'm. I have, the, fle- the the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> unfortunately. Well, yeah. If you want, do you want so, to jump out now? Or? Yeah, I think I have to bow out now. Unfortunately, guys, it's been a pleasure as always, though. Yes. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, I'll pop a link in 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 chat and in the description. I figure they know oh, you pretty you. well at this point. Uh, what, have, what, have, what have you got coming? Now. What have you got coming? What's, what's to be excited about? Well, well, pu- published a video uh, just today uh, or well, last night, depending where you live, uh, on the rule of cool and uh, the problems of it and how to do it right. Uh, and there's a bit of some behind the scenes for the short film as well, because I filmed ah. it on set in person. Uh, and uh, honestly, it's one of those videos I'm really proud of. Uh, it's one of the best I think I've ever made. Uh, addresses the subjects. Uh, quite extensively and uh, covers all the areas and, and it's one of those ones where uh, I watched it at the end I was like oh that turned out even better than I yeah I'd hoped and so yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with it well exciting stuff um, all the best Shadow Visti we'll see you the next time we see you all right thanks guys I'll catch you around see you dude bye. Bye. yeah bye well since it's us three I'm sure we can get through part two real quick right Sure. I just hope yeah, it's we'll not see. more of just like he just says well, something and we're either confused as to why he said it or it doesn't. It's gonna mostly be confusion. Format. It's so annoying that like the format is exactly the same, but it doesn't get criticized because it's positive. Um. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, it's as insubstantial. It's kind of the proof that it's not actually about what you say. It's just whether or not you're positive or negative, and it's just like that's shit. Yeah, it's not. It's not much. It's not. It's not really any different. The only difference is you like it more because it's positive. Alrighty, well, let's let's. I mean, he's he's. Yeah. It's coming up to Act Three. It's going to be real hard for him to find positives. Yeah. Don't do it again. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you both. Have Can you see how this video is clearly hacked in half as well? It's not. Absolutely. It's not yeah, built in two parts. He just chopped there's it. There's no reason to do this though. You can just have it be one. There's oh. no. The reason why things used to be in parts was because it was like a ten limit, uh, ten minute limit on videos. Th- that hasn't been around for like a decade at this point. Yeah, but Frank, I can think of a reason why you do it. Well, of course, double the double the, the everything. And it's not even. It's not even like a difficult. It, it, he clearly barely put any work into this, which oh, he yeah. probably doesn't barely put also, work into fucking anything he makes. That's so. something I've been invested in as an idea. How long do you think it would take you, completely honest now, to take part one, just part one of this this fucking thing, and recreate it? But you main, you pretty much keep everything the same except it's your voice, obviously. Um, oh, I could pump it out in a day. I'm I, I'm literally gunning for like how many hours do you think it would take? So I'm guessing. Oh. You'd have to type down his script, then... I feel like it would take a couple of days, max, though. Well, so, I'm not <laughs> sure, because it's 15 minutes, right? And then a lot of it is... True. It's just footage. Uh, this thing, the the visuals, the, the most time-consuming thing is wind counter and the subtitles. Right. Probably, But yeah. you have a preset for that, and so you could put them in and just clip the time or you just go in at the end you just read out the script and you go back and subtitle it and adjust the timing but visuals for the actual movie are really easy because it's just footage from the movie we copy down the script takes let's call it 20 minutes because 50 minute video just give you that extra bit on that you i think you could do it fast i guess that depends on typing speed recording it let's say an hour just to make sure you get everything the way you want it to be because it's only yeah, yeah, you recorded oh, your lines. Oh, half it. Well, it's, I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. Um, and then you chop that up. That should take, what, uh, just over however long it was recorded for, something like that? Maybe Chopping up the audio? Yeah, to be into, put it I into would, place. Oh, I would, I do that as I go. So that wouldn't be, that w- I don't think that wouldn't really be extra time for me. Because that's just, I just record in, like, little chunks anyway, little bits. 
That's how a couple I'm doing sentences. It now. Yeah, record a couple sentences and don't let it just cut it and then start a new one a couple minutes or a couple sentences, cut it. And this isn't exactly a complex script. No. You're not really trying to package your ideas in any kind of enlightening or insightful way. This is very, very vulgar, you know? Well, so, so you, you get all them in place, then you get the visuals. That's going to be the longest part, more than likely. And 15 minutes of visuals, mainly from Black Widow. Hmm, that could Has take... there been stuff from out of Black Widow? There's been a couple, very few references outside of Black Widow. Um, you had the Winter Soldier clip. I think there's been a few others, but nothing too strenuous. That Chase could... said I used to make these videos three times a week. Yeah, dude, like I'm saying, this is a day. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm i trying I to... Cool. I didn't want to say it without that. trying to get the piece by piece, because it sounds like a little bit arrogant or whatever, but I'd just be like, no, I think you could do this in under a day. I'm pretty sure that's oh, possible. Yeah. Absolutely, it's possible. I mean, if this is what you do, if, if this is going to be, especially if we're talking about you sit down and this is your, you treat it like job job and you have eight hours shift, you could knock this out in an eight hour shift if you just worked, you know. It's quicker to record the sins one by one instead of recording all audio at once than, than cut it up. For this, I would I... record it all at once. Because it's not one. it's not yeah. complex and it's not structured in any in any way that would require you like... to redo it. And so, you don't really have to have your visuals match the audio in any really accurate way. If you're gonna do record because I think Jay records straight into Vegas. Do you do that as well, Ranks? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess Jay's saying like you'd hit record and say like there's no lap dance in this scene. Stop record, find the clip, put it in, and then hit record, do seconds like that's I don't know how that would be faster. I don't think that's faster. I think it's way quicker to just do it all at once and then chop it up when you're uh, in if editing. you even need yeah, if you even need to, and especially if you go through knowing you're going to chop it up, just leave yourself a little gap for the ding. Oh, I, I, yeah, but you you can just do that while you're cutting in the timeline. Just as soon as you finish speaking, ding, line it up with you the could. Audio I was track. I'm just saying if if you're if that's if you know it's coming. And you know that a ding is going to be there, and you just have the ding in your script. Then you can just leave a pause. You don't have, even have to cut it up. Oh, but I would <laughs> still. I think. Yeah, we de like we definitely don't do it the same way. Thing. Um, I'm I'm much more of an audiophile to the point where I hate it when any clicks or sounds that shouldn't be there are there. I like having multiple takes. I like them being done in Audacity yep. and then noise removal and then uh, imported into Vegas. Uh, I, I take a lot of steps to make it so that the audio is going to be top of the tiers, top of the pops. Um, and I do, I guess it might be slow for me because I do more dud takes than you guys. I do a lot of dud takes that I end up cutting out. Um, but I'm still, I think that would be a fun challenge for me to do someday, just to do a stream that is as long as it takes, if, if not capping out my ability to not go to sleep, to see if I could recreate this video in a day. It would just be fun to do as a challenge. Because mm -hmm. I'm curious about the workload that goes into them. So many people. Your ledgers must be dripping. Just gushing red. I couldn't be- I swear to fucking god, if he gives this a win Wait, just because it was what Loki said. Oof. Be more proud of you. <laughs> Priorities. Th Stop doing that. <laughs> Again, all of his fake laughs, you collect them, they've all been different. Because he, he doesn't know how to be, he doesn't know how to come across as he has a laugh. <laughs> um, and also, yeah, priorities is like, yeah, I guess so. Isn't it funny that he values the people his daughters have killed over the horrors that they've gone through? All right. Alexei is corny enough that it could be a joke, but between him and Yelena, it seems like he sincerely thinks of them all as family. Is he is treated corny or is he corny? I'm not even sure what to make of like, that. Yeah, like, is the film doesn't treat him seriously, but does the film, like, in-universe, that, that's why there's that weird seeming disconnect. I'm not even convinced he cares about his family that much. I don't know. I, he doesn't seem to give a fuck about them in several circumstances. But then he does also. It's it's very bizarre. Straight up, have everyone back together, and it's pretty dang wholesome. There's nothing wholesome about it. It doesn't make sense. And you, I'm, I'm telling you, man, if well, you is it super if wholesome you, when the pig is choking to death? 
or when he's not acknowledging the horrors his family have gone through, yeah. because that would be awkward. Wholesome as in there are holes in how he behaves. Oh. Together again. Ah, you can see that face mask tech they use later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, man, man, why didn't you ding it for all the guns here? What, and wait, do they even use guns later on? Probably not. <laughs> I think they use a grenade launcher and that's basically it. Ding it for that. That's a great thing. I know it's played for laughs, but big props to David Harbour for bringing a smoking badass dad bod to the I eat one avocado a day and have 17 There's personal something badass about that dad bod. I don't know. Is he complimenting him because he's out of shape to match the character, I guess? Well, like commitment to the role. If, if that's what... Did, did David Harbour actually do anything to match the Alexi role? Was it just him? I don't know. Sure. Marvel movies. And owning it like a boss. Gotta respect it. I mean, also David Harbour's workout routine. You're just as... I, I have no idea. Talk, talk. If David Harbour did something physically for the movie, then sure. I don't know yeah. if he did. Beautiful and the supplest the day they staged our marriage. <laughs> now we're flirting, but... I have a lot of energy. Yeah, no, <gasps> Man, he's literally just gone to the point where he just says what happens and then he dings it. There's nothing actually, like, here. Please don't do that. Here's what's gonna happen. I don't want any food. Eat a little something, you hey, lady. Hey, we're gonna toss the location of the Red Room. They're all either former or current assassin spies who pretended to be a family for years and in many ways hate each other, but this is still less awkward than most families Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> and is this a plus that it's less awkward than most Thanksgivings? I don't know what like Thanksgivings kind of where they deal with like <laughs> the stuff that we're dealing with in this scene. I don't... If it was if it was more awkward, he'd say somehow they made it more awkward than an actual family. The ding, it's a ding either way. You see. Thanks. Me, you are my mother. You were my real mother. Well, there goes my tough guy's ass in exterior. Have I mentioned Florence Pugh? Yeah, everyone does. This is the scene people reference. She does a good job. It's unfortunate that this is the only time we get to explore this part of her character. The best. The best part of my life was fake. We often forget that three years is a significant portion of a child's life. As adults, what do you mean we often enough... forget that? Who forgets that? <laughs> I, just, I, I, I forget. Yeah. That. Yeah. If, if you were ten Who years old, that? three years is thirty percent of your life, and it's more like like fifty percent of you know how much you were really fully aware of. But let's be fair. It's that, and then assassin mind control life. It's like, yeah, of yeah. course this is going to so be the course. preferable memories. <laughs> It's all she has. Just like somewhat normal. Yeah. I this wasn't surprising at all. In fact, this is this we were waiting for this sort of shit in the movie and we got barely any of it. Enough time to call your job a career. Some people still have boxes to unpack after living in a house for three years, but to a six year old, three years is literally half their life. Yeah. Imagine if someone told you yeah, at twenty four so, that the think why, why? Okay. He's, He's saying he this told like that to somebody yeah, like if you said it to someone, they go, oh, yeah. I've like, never thought about that. <laughs> Okie dokie. The last 12 years of your life were fake. So of course, Yelena is the most impacted. And like oh, I said, yeah. The <laughs> why is that a plus? That's just it I, follows. So <laughs> like, I guess he's just trying to give a reason for why she's so upset. This is like, y yeah. Yeah, but we know why she's upset. This is all. This is this her is character. Like this is everything. Yeah. This is, yeah. Beginning. Look at this light. This is real. Especially when all that came after was the smell of teen spirit. You were selected by a nice. genetic potential in infants. So, les enfants terribles? I knew all the presents under the tree were just empty boxes, but I didn't care. I wanted to open every single one. But even for Nat, three years is almost a third of her ten. Oh my god. Yes, it mattered to her as well. Ten year old's life. And wow. that's not even taken into consideration that most people don't make long term memories for the first two years. Yeah. <laughs> You're just born in a cage, but that's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's like it a is. Little... <laughs> she stayed in that cage, motherfucker. She had to be told to exit the cage by someone else and then rewarded for doing so. Mmm. Sound that says so much about how she's astonished with who Nat has become. What do you mean? She didn't even know her. Like, she, she knew her for three years and then she ditched her for the rest of her life, just making more genetic experiments to control other women. That's it. That's her whole fucking existence. It's like, oh, look, she's she's appreciating how much Nat has grown up. It's like, she never cared. What are we, yeah, yeah. What, the, what is going on? I'm sorry, on? actions speak a little louder than words. She's been out of her life for what, decades? Oh, cinema land, she said the line. Okay. And there was some acting. Sure. Tell me, did you keep your heart 
Pain only makes us stronger. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a little annoyed Nat doesn't mention the real family she was- Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my wow. god? What the fuck is this doing in your video? <laughs> Whoa. Hey, we're not supposed to be talking about the flaws. Part of for over a decade, but I get that she's got to credit Melina since she did technically make it clear what she wanted Nat to do. Never let her take your heart. I don't. I don't. I don't even know what she was supposed to make of that at that age. Never let them take your heart. She. You do remember what she did to defect, right? <laughs> like, seems like your heart might have prevented you from blowing up a child, but I don't know. It was, mm -hmm. Alert at the red room, and I'll be here any minute. Typical Iron Maiden, Iron Maidening. I made in reference to her role in the comics that is not mentioned at all in 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 the movie, but it's fine. It's like please stop talking. Please, please wait. No, please, please wait. Please. There is a reason why I'm telling you this. Okay, trust me. Gonna pause for copyright. Can't imagine what yep. his commentary on this will be. He go toilet on my hands. Oh my god. <laughs> Urine is. Oh, he's, he's funny. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, it, it, it was a huge shame. It was the one chance they gave him to do something significant and meaningful, and he's like, lol, piss. 35 <laughs> degrees Celsius. <laughs> I love how absolutely deadpan sincere Alexei is at wanting to tell this story, and then his big conclusion is... Fathers. Fathers. <laughs> he's just a simple, sweet guy. What, what can you even say about this? I have nothing, I mean, okay. really. It's I, like, I okay, I guess, you know, it's... Uh... Others. All right. Although, at the same time, I don't know, Alexi, gaslighting Danny seems like a bad idea. Just ask Christian about the bear. The only thing you care about... I'm assuming that's all references to other media. Yeah, I, I don't know. What... Is it just like, I know of a thing that happened in another thing? <laughs> We've had a lot of them, so yeah. About their yeah. stupid glory days is the Crimson Dynamo, and no one wants to hear about it. When you look at the list of Russian men who've been the Crimson Dynamo, you understand why she got confused. When I read about his but wheel, what does that mean in this universe? What, is what, what the, are the Crimson Dynamo? It's completely useless. It would only be confusing if she had read the Wikipedia article for <laughs> Marvel stuff. The bride, something touched me deep inside. Yeah, and then you cries this. As, as should be praised, I guess. It's just fucking yeah. sad as hell the writers didn't come up with it. In Soviet I guess Russia, it just, this America... price feels really hot. Wow, right. we're doing the joke again. Okay. okay. Um, wow. It just feels feels like we're sort of devaluing the things well, that also, actually were praising. It doesn't make sense film, again, right? too. Well, but maybe that's his joke this time, too. Oh, great. It make sense you. To. Uh, still not sure I'm making Yakov proud here. Maybe it's oh, just... Wow, he didn't even compliment it. Wow, that's amazing. That's like the never mind. That's possibly okay. the best thing wow. in the movie, and he didn't easy. compliment it. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. All right. Wow. wow. I'm actually really okay. surprised. That's like a a huge missed opportunity. But okay. Spotlight. The way he takes those darts like a champ, but that is a beautiful beard. So it hey, being a beautiful no. beard is a win, but there is no win for that whole scene. There's no like, win for him appealing not a win. to something yeah. that Yelena valued as a child that he remembered, but his beard, though. What are we doing? You're so bad at this. <laughs> How did you miss that? Are the masks I'm sorry. Huh, because Nat really doesn't like hurting her sister anymore. Right. But... What the, what's going on? <laughs> Do you get it? She's sorry because it's actually Nat using it, and Nat doesn't like hurting Yelena, so she said, "I'm sorry," because she doesn't like hurting. Dude, that's her. a win. That's a yeah, cinema that win right there. Okay. Red room. Red room. Red room. Is that is that doing anything for anyone? No, what's no, the not funny. Of the I don't, I don't oh, get yeah. it. What, what, what is that? Just saying Red Room in a funny voice three times. I'm what? assuming it's a reference. Yeah, like he's Red mentioned Rum? The Shining there as well. Okay. But Shining what, what Black is, Widow what is, why would that come to mind? Red Room backwards is a murder. The, it's what happens in The Shining. But that's like oh, right, in I'm blood on a wall, I think. Right. Like, Moordor, am I right? Seems like Melina slash Nat is breathing nervously here, which works both since it's really Nat, and that Melina could be just nervous to be around Dracov. <laughs> She's breathing nervously, and you know what? Both characters could theoretically be nervous here, so it works. It's like, it's just great. Nailed it.
Dreykov when it's definitely clear to him that she just reconnected with her family. Plus, Dreykov has a- Oh, sorry, I'm a fucking idiot. Red rum, not red room. Red rum is murder yeah, backwards. Fuck, yeah, that's- <laughs> I was sitting there like, wait, murder with two O's? Murder? Well, that was his joke. I, I should have clicked on that, yeah. That's why it's not connecting for me. Like, I don't- I don't know. Uh, Alright. Personal- This is a much less cool way to die. <laughs> Again, priorities. It's Anyone not else? What that's going on? <laughs> I what seriously. Again, priorities. Again, no lap dance. <laughs> that's almost another challenge I want to do now. Like, could I make a video like this in earnest? And how long would it be? Every compliment you can think to mine out of this film, and I still think we could make a way better video than this. It would probably be five minutes, but that's still, you know, man. Let's have a split. It was actually Ethan Hunt. Very down for that crossover. Anyone oh, have another a split win. second where you thought it was going to be? It's a win that I erroneously thought that Tom Cruise would be <laughs> under the bus. Or is it a win that he's simply referenced that there are other movie franchises that so use a mask the movie thing. wins because masks exist in other... Okay. Yep. That's an interesting observation. What? <laughs> Appropriate reaction. I'm having... To Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> reaction. <laughs> oh, stop. This is he a said real, what this in response to something life. surprising? It's appropriate. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a win. Actor but it's says not a what? Win. More at eleven. <laughs> what in the world? For Christ's sake, what could you learn from this? Like. <laughs> I don't even know which one is the stupidest of all the wins, but that one is up there. <laughs> Trouble here. I said, there's something I need you to know. I gave my life for a cause. I thought that was- He's gonna give a win for this. Alright. Mm -hmm. being brave. You, you don't have earpiece. David Harbour is nailing it. I fully support giving him another shot at Hellboy. No. No, 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 no. We'll not do that. Give, give it back to Ron Pillman, fuck. Also, um... I guess this is a compliment to his acting, specifically. Which is fine. As in, like, I'm fine with that. What? Whatever, bring it, Boyke, but actually, don't, no, I'm exhausted. Say hello. If you are paying attention to the gas list, you probably figured this out by now, but if you didn't, you're all, what? You bet your ass what is a lot of people were like, what? Because it don't make no fucking sense. Yeah, because again, I saw clearly the body of a man. Well, in look there, how much smaller her body is right now. Thought, yeah, <laughs> it, it looks changed. like uh, it looks very awkward how tiny she is inside of that outfit and the shoulder pads again to make her look like she isn't super slim. Like that's the thing, trace in your head where her shoulders actually are. Ugh. Hmm. She's got a long neck, but uh, yeah, this isn't the. This, I'd get the comparison up, but obviously I can't. But Taskmaster's outfit is different from this in, like, a couple seconds later. Is it a safe deal? Smelling my pheromones. You're smelling my pheromones. Oh, is he, is he gonna call it badass when she hits her face on the desk? That's the big, big question. Oh, yeah, he might be that dumb. Mm -hmm. He might be that low-barred. Genuinely intriguing bad guy power. Kind of creepy, too. Any power that involves Something smelling pheromones about that. feels it's creepy. Silly. Anything that involves smelling pheromones feels creepy. <laughs> okay. Any power that involves... Okay. <laughs> and that's a win? I guess, yeah. It's an intriguing bad guy power. It's not... It, it, there's so many ways to subvert it, and it fucking doesn't really make any sense to me, but, like, go right ahead. Like when Cyclops is around, exactly what part of Scott is he smelling? Is it the lasers? It's the lasers. I mean, uh, what? Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll just move on. This is the last time that we... <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> this poor guy can't have any sentimental moments. And that's funny and good. That's that's... hilarious. Ha 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 ha. We God sure forbid, do love cinema here. The character Owens. were able to express themselves. I'd fucking hate that. Thank God. Win thing. Bean was about to get a shot at Camille. Those names are too obscure for that movie, aren't they? Well, here's a hint. That version of David Harbour hates communism, and Olga Kurylenko is trying to avenge her father. Another movie reference. Good job. 
Oh, don't, this is such an yeah. obvious great moment in the movie. This just top yeah. tier. It was in the. I'm pretty sure like this is like in everyone's videos that it's, praise this movie. They can't resist. They're just like, oh, it's so good. Ugh, that was disgusting. Might as well get used to it, Yelena. I don't think Nat's gonna be doing it anytime soon. Eh, unless she wins the lawsuit, I guess. Damn it, you're weak. Oh, I mean that. That's a better way to take that than simply complimenting. Yeah. You know what? I'm surprised. I, I, that's probably my favorite cinema win in this whole thing. But it's easier to be tough in front of defenseless little girls, huh? You should try laughing real creepy-like. That works for people pretending to be other people sometimes. What? You should laugh creep real creepy. It works for people. I'm trying... Who... I'm also trying to deconstruct this comment. Chat helps out? I'm lost. You should try laughing real creepy like. That works for people. You should try laughing real creepy like. That works for people pretending to be other people sometimes. Maybe that's a reference to something? It's gotta be. But loads of people in chat have no idea. But why is it a win? Well, because it's a reference. If we get the reference, that's the win. But like, what is the reference? But it's the it's win a in favor of the film, though. That's that's what the that's film. How it works. So the film has someone pretending to be. Let's say that it was a reference to something. So it would be that this film has. I almost feel bad calling this a film. This movie has a person pretending to be someone else, and another film has someone pretending to be someone else. And, so and they laugh. This someone film said gets the Joker. Is it? Is it Joker? <laughs> Was the Joker pretending? I guess he was. I mean, because the Joker is an alien. Is the idea when he was being beaten up in the cell and laughing maniacally? But he wasn't pretending to be anybody except for the Joker, which is to what he is. <laughs> so I don't see how that could be it. I'd, I, I'm just going to keep going. Mm. I don't know. I genuinely do not know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a little confused. I'm. <laughs> Yo! No, that's a win. <laughs> okay. And is that Bucky's move? Oh man! Oh, wow! So good that it he. Is, it's that yep. easy. Yep. It's that easy. Thank you for your cooperation. Got me. Just like she got Loki that one time. No. Uh, no. God. Oh God! It was so obvious. Um, yeah. when I first watched this film, uh, it was it was like frustrating when she said, like, you're really desperate to impress me. It's like, she wants you to tell her the plan. Like, that's it. There's nothing, there's nothing else to interpret. But with, oh, the Loki scene, don't even go near it. It's not fair. The other time when that guy. I like how he didn't put footage up for that because he doesn't have Avengers. Oh, I see. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, here we are. What's he gonna say? Here we are, everybody. Let's get ready. Mm, <laughs> I don't here we do it. I'm gonna... so ready. My anus is trembling with oh, excitement. Oh, God. Shit myself. Huh. What are you going to do? Even more commitment. All the commitment is so gross. Wow, he you praised it. So that's a praise. That's insane. She has but commitment. She... You know what? Maybe that she is has commitment. The that's the that maybe that's true. the best thing you could say about it. She was committed. That's like yeah. the most um like the most common trait generally of a protagonist is determination. So it's like, wow, they're really determined. And like, yeah, I think so. She was really determined to break her nose. Yep. She went for it. Yeah, and that's worthy of reward. Only now that the, the world has too much of girls. Yike. All I can say is yuck. yuck. All <laughs> I can say is Why does he keep yike. saying yike? I don't yike. know. I guess maybe it's his thing. He's like, I'm gonna start the yike train. Fuck yikes. But why would you do that? I don't know. It's 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 like ooh, I gotta show everyone that I really don't like misogyny. Well, it's that's funny to weird. me. No, I'm trying to figure out the yike part, but yeah, <laughs> that's who. I've never heard. Yeah, with that, without the yes, I've never heard anyone. Uh, I don't know why he's say doing it like that. that. Um, so th th this is always funny to me because it really does separate out like a bias. I think when you're so obsessed with the ideas, like you know what, it's bad to hate women. It just is. The second you're given that like key signature, you'll immediately be like, "What a bad villain! Oh, I hate him! Oof, bad guy!" It's like, did you listen to what he said? That the world has too many girls. Just stupid that is. Like, what? What are you even? What? Like, I gotta kill the girls. It's too many of them. To a resource this world has too much of. <laughs> what? And then he just doesn't light up with him. He surrounds himself with women, but apparently he hates them. Like, okay. 
But hey, it's like Harvey Weinstein. That's good enough. Takes advantage of the Whammons. Our wood paneled studio executive's office. And look, obviously we all saw the sex trafficking parallels, but it's just occurring to me that Drakov has literal impenetrable armor. He's untouchable, you- Unlike Harvey Weinstein at this point. Unlike Harvey Weinstein. You could say. And he holds Nat's and all the lives of the young girls that work for him in his hands. And then Nat frees herself by breaking her nose and disfiguring herself. You get where I'm going with this? Making herself unattractive is how, is how you escape the sexual clutches of Harvey Weinstein? Is that what you're saying? It's by no means a perfect one-to-one, -one, but I can't be the only one who's yeah, wondering what Drakov... Yeah, I, yeah. He, I think he's actually it's saying, like, the way you escape a sex pest is to make yourself ugly. That's his incredible that insight. Is not, that, that is, is a strange conclusion to come to. It's also um... really not good. <laughs> That's a conclusion, like, fuck up your what? face so they won't want to fuck you anymore. You're like, what? I mean, they're just gonna do you from behind. It's not gonna help. I... I mean, I. I'm trying to come up. Why with... would the moral of the story be that you have to hurt yourself to escape? Why would Why would that be a moral that would be well, good or something? It's funny you, you say that. Want to take away from? I think we talked about it, but like this movie's theme, a thematic bedrock would have been way better if you could, through strength of will, defeat the mind control. Yeah, that feels like the way to go. That's the Give obvious. Give them some autonomy. Yeah. Instead, it has to be the gas that saves you. Your total slave, yeah. Or you... Yeah, it's like the it's like the Rise of Skywalker thing. You can only escape if the Force helps you. Oh god, that was and the so force stupid. Does, and the Force only wants to help a couple of y'all, I guess. Yeah, fuck the rest the of them. Because the Force is a dick. Of next movie is so I can boycott. Change of plan. I completely demolish one of the engines, and we are going into a controlled crack. <laughs> cool headedness. In. Yeah, I mean, you know, she pretty much guaranteed the death slash danger of all of the people on her team, but I guess it's worth it. And Soviet Russia taskmasters you. Soviet Russia taskmasters you! Nailed it. But I... I don't get it. I think you, the joke you, is that it doesn't work still. It still doesn't work. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> She's just a straight-up maneuver thief. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's not they easy. got you. That's it. Yeah, yeah, and they have that's how hard they had to work. That's the thing. That's how hard they had to work. To get you to go, wow. It's a huge shame that like just see right through it. I don't know. If you go in wanting to be fooled, then you're gonna be fooled. I don't even hmm. Yeah, I know it's her thing, but that's flair. It ain't tactical. Although, maybe Nat's the original maneuver. Wait, sorry. Did he just describe that as non-tactical? The kicking your shield to get it up to your arm straight away. If it's possible yeah, for it's you to thing, do that. That's flair. It ain't tactical. If it's possible to do that, then... I think it's tactical. I would prefer to do that than lean be, yeah, down Yeah, it could be tactical. It. The issue is, well, I don't, you never have to take, it doesn't yeah. make sense, because it doesn't... Yeah. Like, how does it stick to your arm? Yeah. And if we agree it in a way that, it... <laughs> that to ignore that part, this is totally tactical. It's way faster than yeah. bending down to pick it up. Yeah, theoretically, you could grab it faster. You could have your hand... You don't have to lower yourself. But yeah, there there's, could be some reasons for this to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Cool. Although, maybe Nat's the original maneuver thief. It would make sense that she learned it from her No, mom. no it's just would a it? Black Widow thing. They all get the training. I don't know why it would have been her mother's specific move. That's what kind of... I, I, well, I guess there's no way to know that for sure. Does Yelena move, use it at any point? Then again, she could have learned so. it from the mom, is it, so... Is, she, is, is that what the visual is? The mom using it? Wait, why would, here? Why would Nat have used it? As a result of learning it from her mum when she had no connection well, with her mum. She got trained afterward, yeah. yeah. so that doesn't work. She had to have learned it as a part of the Black Widow program, which means it's just a normal move where they jump onto your head, flip you around, and toss you away. Like, yeah, okay. But now Nat proves why she's not just a widow, she's an Avenger. By having everybody do stupid things throughout this whole fight. Yeah, like, look at all those yeah. people in the background there she, that aren't attacking her. She survives her. because they, they all, don't just shock her and beat the shit out of her. They all have ranged paralytics. Like, they can just go, and you're done. But instead, 
they approach her and like fuck up everything over and over again. She should not. She's only hold her own. Exactly. It's the exactly. plot. The <laughs> plot keeps her alive. She should not be able to do this. It is so beyond long. her capabilities. Yep. But it doesn't make any sense. That's a cinema win rags. I think you'll find. Oh, brutal. Teamwork. It doesn't make sense. How did you lift her up and throw her across the room like that? Are you a super soldier? Fuck, statistically, you might be in this universe now. Yeah, there's a lot of them. But, um, lots of them running around these days. Just Who knew? Wow, he's skipped over a lot again. <laughs> she didn't even say one, because Nat would expect the fake out on one, so she just did it on zero. It's, it's an escalation of the normal. I'm over-explaining. Said she'll pull it on three, and then she just pulled it. That's a cinema win. You get it right. I'm at the hundred. I mean, I wouldn't mind an apology. Do you have to worry about like I, or it's like difficult I, to call I, on I, some yeah, of I, this. Yeah, it really is, because a lot of it's just dumb and pointless, and it isn't. It's the the bar has been set so low that you'll clap at anything. It's really it's there's anybody could be this guy. That's the thing. Then, anybody could like be cinema wins. Is that you remember oh, that Nat so isn't you've super acknowledged power, but that, that it this doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter because she's the best at everything. This I, is I do love that. This that is, is super now. interesting. <laughs> this hey, is look, pathetic he, now. He, she fell, and you remember that she shouldn't be able to do this, but she's the best, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, not only is it okay, it's actually a good thing. She's the best. He's given up. So she can just do it That's all. all this is, is just give it up. He's yeah, like, I, I need to she... I need to cram shit into this video. To and, and that I'm gonna split up later into two parts. I I have to find things. What are we what doing? What can I find? We gave I'll up. Just say, Fringy, that's what this is. I'll just say she's awesome. Win. Look, it doesn't make any sense, but she's real cool. She's the best at everything. This is just like a contingency they had training for. All right, so when the red room starts crashing, you're all gonna jump out oh, and just start shooting. Oh, okay. Or it's really stupid. You could have just said or that. It's really dumb. Shooting at everything. Many of you will be hit with debris, but just, just don't stop shooting. You know, so with are those those shield thrown. Oh wow! He why just would a, you, a, wait? Look a, a, ta <laughs> a tactical use of that move, by the way. Oh. Um, hmm. I'm starting to wonder if Alexi really did meet Cap at some point because he threw his why shield. Why would that be the reason why? Because you threw it. You couldn't just be a good at frisbee. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know why you need to meet Cap rather than just watch it. What is the difference? I don't see how meeting him would help you throw it better. I feel like throwing a shield will help you throw it better, not meeting him. <laughs> Again, we, we knew that he'd be desperate in Act 3, guys, but like, this is... Just, uh, <laughs> this is, no, this is, this is desperation. Yeah. If, if it ever, if ever desperation was a thing, then this it be. On skills, I'm starting to wonder if meet Cap at some point. Okay, okay, maybe he has a little ways to go still. <laughs> his glasses. He's way cooler than... Oh, right. his glasses. Oh, oh. That's a win. Ha ha, his glasses? Yeah. Okay. He split this into two videos. There's nothing in here. <laughs> two. And if, you re if you really did... If you, if you cared about your job and your work and you wanted it to be really good, then I'm sure you could go through this with a fine-tooth comb and find some details and stuff and little nifty little things about a movie because it's a collaborative effort and i mean surely yeah. like the writers weren't in charge of everything so something cool might be in the film uh elena break off this time saving any possibility of more red being added to nat's ledger why would it be red to a ledger to what? kill drakov is just blood's blood and that's is, that is it as simple Black as you kills a lot of people like she does an i guess we're ignoring the prison uh of course but yeah. Not to mention all of the deaths from like this whole thing collapsing, but uh, why? Why? It, like they're getting rid of Drakov to stop him from continuing the Red Room, taking over the world. Yeah. Like what? What? That's that's red in the ledger. That's like that's that's you owe for that. Like that's a bad thing you've done. Okay. okay. Uh, Fucking, mm. I don't agree. But okay, you think so? Kills Drakov this time, saving any possibility. That would be of more black in the ledger. To Nat's ledger. Convenient parachute. Just let's convenient let's ignore that part. He cut ahead of that, Rags. It's fine. Okay. Sick beat drop. <laughs> no, it I mean it's 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 fine. fine. Like it's just yeah. it's fine. It's I just, will say that it's fine. It's just funny though. Like he he has to just ignore <laughs> what happens and find something.
It's the beat drop, you see. That's the good part. Yeah, that sure is cool. Beat drop. Oh, people are saying he said Dreyvok at one point in the subtitles. I must have missed that. Dreyvok. Sounds like a Star Trek bad guy. <laughs> Sounds like a Dark Souls boss. Commander Dreykok. Dreykvok. I'm Dreykvok. Dreykvok, the Lord of, I don't know, Sloop. <laughs> Lord of Swampness. <laughs> I don't love all of this score. I got a better late motif, but this freefall section is perfect. I wish he had, like, a perfect. presence in this movie. I wish, I wish he wasn't wasted. I wish That's the thing, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I guess if he doesn't think that Taskmaster was completely squandered in concept, then... Okay... Um, also, this is peak consumer. I just love this, this set piece. The near misses. I'm never not thrilled. This is peak it's, it's a fucking retarded scene, but the fact that pieces of debris are missing them is enough for you to be like, Ooh! Oh, ooh. oh no! She might <laughs> die! Oh, I'm so thrilled! I'm so thrilled. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the I'm, I'm so thrilled. How is this cool? It's it's really How stupid. How is this so cool? I know we're supposed to be numb to this type of action. What? No. So you're not okay. Like it's it's dumb. Everything about it is dumb and implausible and stupid, and it damages the characters for being dumb for doing it. The fact Taskmaster is here instead of just letting her die is. <laughs> <laughs> We talk about how Movie Bob is the consumer, right? But it's Cinema Wins. Cinema Wins is pretty hyper consumer, yeah. It, it makes sense too, because like his whole job is to consume. That is his job. <laughs> how is this <laughs> be numb to this type of action? But dang it, if I don't love it. I will. I was very numb. Again with that yeah. move? Is Nat mimicking Taskmaster now? <laughs> she didn't even <laughs> see that move. What do you mean? How is she mimicking Sorry, how a move? Did she didn't mimic see? that? Yeah. What? <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> Saving that mass murderer who was just trying to murder you. Also, Nat. Uh. Saving the person who was recently trying to kill you is a cinema win. Okay. Wait until he's. Wait until he meets protagonists from other films who don't have who don't kill and they don't have Changed to. Changed up the move Man, this time so Taskmaster couldn't copy it. She changed it so he couldn't copy. Well, she couldn't copy it. What does? What do you even mean? She's look at the way that Taskmaster's sitting right now, or crouching. The what are you talking about? Do you, do you, do you, guys, do you guys catch this shit? A murderer who was just trying to murder you. Also, Nat changed up the move this time, so Taskmaster couldn't copy it. What are you talking about? He can copy anything. And why would he need to see it to be able to do it when he's already seen it? Or she, whatever. And But that's clearly- look at Taskmaster. She's murder you. She's also, crouched. Nat changed up the move this time, so Taskmaster couldn't copy. Look at her. Like she's not doing the move because she literally can't do that move from that position. Yeah. What you... are you talking about? Maybe he's so used to the power of shitty editing that he just assumes any person in a fight can do anything at any time. I don't... This isn't a point. This is just nothing. Yeah. Is it good? That is dark. The first thing you ask when waking up after decades of mind control. Makes sense. What's dark? He's gone? He's glad that her captor is gone? And that's dark? How is that dark? Is, is the idea that it must be so dark to think that all she cares about is whether or not he exists because of the damage he's caused her. Like, it, it must be the, the angle there. But I mean, I would be curious yeah. if Dracov was still alive. I'm surprised that none of the other characters are. Remember, uh, Melina and uh, Alexi don't ask about it. They're just like, eh, it's fine. Chill. We're both upside down. Both upside down. Oh, look at that. Dialogue they used in the past and then okay. came up in the future. Aw, another one of their sister things. I'm assuming he's gonna reference the one at the gravesite as well. She's like, yeah, these are these are like, you had it before and then you did it again. It's like, yeah, good job. Sisters, they'll give you hope for humanity. Sunny, my mom and Kaya sister. It was real to me too. I'm not crying. You're cr no, I'm I'm crying. Wow, you are. I said it. You are 
Pretty pathetic. It only uh, frustrated me because this is how Natasha should have felt the whole time, not something she learned that she felt, and then it's frustrating that this person never existed before. It's all bullshit. Sorry. But it's hard to feel at that point, you know? Hugging. Hugging. Man, you think they're okay. bickering now? Wait till one of them rings. Point of steel. Jokes aside, I love how the theme of family Wait, is wrapped oh, up. Oh, steel so beams, 9 11. Oh, okay. So many different ways. All these assassins that led their own lives for decades came together and took care of each other because there isn't just one kind of family. And you can even be a part of multiple you families are, shown by natural. Are, you are such <laughs> a fucking peak consumer. <laughs> Yes, that was the film. That you know what? In some ways, she had more than zero families the whole time. In fact, she had two. Yes. When we already knew that she had one. This, <laughs> already. Uh, well, and this film proves that she has three. If we're gonna go super meaningful well, in terms three, of yeah, blood we, connection we and time, and then people who care about it, it's like yeah, you have three, but you didn't even notice because you're not actually paying attention to the movie. Still morning. If it can work out with the four of us, you know, there may be some hope for the Avengers. Yelena why did you, her raw why did you on her sleeve to break They weren't allowed to be in this movie because of sexism. Wait, I think it skipped me. Hang on. But it took Yelena wearing her raw love on her sleeve to break down Nat's barriers. And then we get raw these lost love. girls. She, Nat doesn't have barriers for something like that. That's not her character. She's very open and honest uh, about how she feels about the Avengers. And yeah, the people she cares uh, about. Which should be referenced by the scene that you just showed on the she, video that you made, but I guess... She's not... I don't know, I guess you're just not good at thinking? I don't know. She's not like Tony or Doctor Strange, where getting them to say, I love you to somebody is really hard and complicated because of who they are. This is Nat. She's like number one on the sentimental list for the Avengers. She cares more about them being together than she does about saving the world to a degree. But no, uh... She's got all the walls up in this film, you see, and she had to be, they had to be broken down. <laughs> okay. ...her sleeve to break down Nat's barriers. And then we get these lost yeah, girls coming together bizarre. with Elena, even bringing Antonia along because they have a family bond over what was taken from them. And no, the trauma you don't have a family they bond. They don't fucking know anything about anyone. They, their whole lives are a clean slate. They can't, they couldn't have, like, gotten to know each other. That's kind of a problem with the, her caring about that girl that died in the beginning. I guess she cares about it just with the basic care. Like, these people don't know each other. They went through together. I love every second of it. I can tell. You love everything. Wait, Ross just let her go? Hey, Black Widow 2, the two weeks between the Red Room fight and this moment, totally on board. So you oh. just acknowledge that it doesn't make sense that she could have gotten away and that's a I don't... He digs why... it positively. Like... <laughs> I don't know what I meant to... He has a system that. for criticizing this. He takes points away, or pretends to give one and then takes it away or whatever, but, like, he acknowledges the flaw there and then gives it a win because, hey, that could be the next movie. Yeah. Aw, she's even wearing the... Yeah, that's... Okay, well, yeah. if you're leaving, then... Yeah, there's the vest. And Great. Hot Dog, she even keeps it in infinite. No, Nat. Don't it's not well, well played. played. Jesus Christ, you are easy. Yep. This is what we call a mock. Like, this is exactly who they want watching the film. Well, screw you, Avengers. But I guess she does patch things up by, you know, saving the world. What does he mean, screw you, what Avengers? What do you mean, saving... What? What do you mean, screw you? What? Re Fringy, you got anything on that? <laughs> why did he say, know. Why did he say know, screw I, you, Avengers? I have no idea. I have no idea. Okay. Blessed day, Selena. For real, I'm for real stoked for Valentina to actually be in one of these movies or Okay. Why? Yeah, no, you can't answer that question, right? He can't. So don't ask. That means no qualifying point. something. That means elaborating on information. N not even information. It means elaborating on an opinion. Shows. Alert. For real. One of my favorite moments from the movie is this blooper reel. Can I have my iPad? I'm keeping it. Oh. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas. Is it Christmas? <laughs> oh, it's she, like a she, gift. She didn't give Christmas it back the iPad. Yeah. Funny. Oh, okay. 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 Maybe you'd like a shot at the man responsible for your sister's death. Oh man, they're bringing back the Red Skull! Oh, right. Huck guy. 
Is this movie a good sense? He, he dinged that positively again, but he didn't. He didn't tell us why. Mm. Also, it fucks with shit that she knows about that. Yep. No, make more. Give her a series. Shut up. I don't care. God, you're such a. I mean, if you, that's, that's the thing. If you just throw happiness and likes and smiley emojis at every movie, fuck it. They're all the same. Yep. Oh. <sighs> There are like two years between this and when Cap and Nat saved Wanda and Viz in Infinity War. Plenty of stuff to do, Wanda yo. Wanda and Viz in? I'm... Oh, Viz. Oh, Wanda and Viz in. Oh, yeah, you don't want to abbreviate it there, because in sounds like un. Mm -hmm. Viz in? Yeah. Vision. Vision? You don't want to abbreviate it there. Like, he's, also, he's also trying to argue why we should get more Black Widow, when as far as I was concerned, Endgame ended her story. It was done. Yeah, didn't actually it was done. It was finished. Full and plus, circle. you're just gonna assassinate her more. She's gonna do yeah. more shit that's horrific. Again, he missed the whole prison massacre, so <laughs> I mean, War. in his Plenty. mind... Somehow, hard. I wonder if they miss it, Rags, or if they just willfully ignore it. It's I can believe do, they don't yo. even think I'm about it. I'm kidding about it not being a good They just see it as bad I... guys are bad guys. And that's that. Anyone trying, anyone in the way of our heroes is a bad person who needs to be disposed of. We're about to get to course... the actual frustrating part now, because he's summarizing how good the movie is. Oh, wow. I do want more. We finally get Nat's real backstory and tying up all the loose ends is pretty satisfying. No. And boy, was it fun. No. Seriously, a great Why time. Fun? I think the Red Room crashing scene is one of the most fun scenes in the MC. <sighs> Fuck uh, me, you will clap at anything. But right, it's so oh, big, there's so many sentence. explosions. The lost sentence. You, um, that's a good I'm, a little, I'm a little MCU, MCU deprived. De You're MCU deprived and this is the film that made you go, you know what, we're doing You're great. <laughs> deprived? I guess deprived because you had to wait like a year. I'm, so like more that's incredible stuff. to be deprived of it. I I am more than happy for them to pause for a good five fucking years at this point. Years. Nah, we we ain't pausing. We are going full steam ahead. We're we're speeding up. Oh, God, I'm deprived of NCU content. Didn't he just get how? What? Where in the timeline was this? Two shows were out by now, right? Three. I think Loki came out before. Uh, oh yeah. before Black Widow. And then, of course, right after that, you have another an, an animated show, another movie, another movie, a TV show, and another movie. There is, there's, there's eight, no nine. There's Dude. nine pieces of content this year. Nine. You know for a fact he just wants to replace his palette of movies from all different places with just MCU. <laughs> like, just give me all of them. Mm. Make it easy for me. Definitely Prior easy. About this is that it ends too quickly. I can't imagine what every second. Like again, w what I was trying to say was like to be deprived, and then this comes along, and you're like, oh, thank you. Where I would just be like, fuck, fuck me, <laughs> <laughs> what a waste. And if it costs, so yeah. I get it. But it's such a high level of epicosity. Nat being the right. only high level of person to just jump without thinking twice. Consume. He just showed the part where she grabbed it, so he's definitely aware of it. Okay, I'm just saying. <sighs> This is so nat, and I love that she gets that, especially to save her sister. But honestly, most of the set pieces in this movie are fantastic and are laced with fantastic. meaning. You can feel the laced rage between the sisters in Budapest. Why is she angry at Yelena? What, you you saying they have rage for each other. So Yelena's angry Why? at her for abandoning her. Why is Natasha angry? By the way, that doesn't make sense Why because Yelena she, thinks that Natasha's the only chance we have at out. saving the world. Why would she attack her like this? Doesn't make any sense. It's like, but you can feel the rage. Ugh. Like, oh, okay. <sighs> On the bridge, Nat realizes that she's not going to win, so she thinks ahead and stashes the vials. He no, she's stashing the vials regardless. I like the idea that she's like, she's definitely losing this fight. It's like, wait, so she just thinks she's going to die? What does stashing the vials do if she's going to be dead? What is. You don't think about any of this stuff. Even the chick over the top, you can't hard. help but smile. You can't help but smile? <laughs> Why would that make you happy? Challenge accepted. <sighs> What's the city? Like pretty much everyone else, I obviously wanted to see more of Taskmaster. Hopefully in the future we will. No, 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 you no, won't. You can't. Give it up. It's done. Yeah. You can't do, you've expended Taskmaster and it was way, and the character was wasted. That's one of the big complaints universally about this. Except for you, you fucking consumer.
Matt, sometimes both Harbour and Pew, who are by far the film's highlights, seem to delve into sketch comedy level accents. They're a lot of fun, and they seem like they're having a great time, which is probably the point. But at times, it feels like they're bordering on the this. Russian yeah. versions of the Swedish chef. Oh, this was exciting. But honestly, who cares? I love these characters. What do you mean, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? What do you mean, who cares? Fuck it. They clap. Well, see, because this is the stuff that I'd love to actually go over with him. He says, who cares? I love the characters. It's like, oh, so you're saying, like, stuff like that doesn't matter as long as the characters are, are well done. You're like, yeah, and like, so how are they well done? And, you know, yeah. maybe give an example of how Nat cares about her sister. And then I could give him a reference for, like, yeah, she cares about her and, and the dad so much she's willing to kill, like, 300 people or however many are in that prison. And he'd be like, whoa, now. That, that's not... Um... <laughs> just, I'd love to hear what his response would be. How does he reconcile it? I've heard the defense that she didn't intend for it to happen, <laughs> so there's that. I'll take a David Harbour and Rachel movie, or a Red Guardian Disney Plus show where he deals with the fact that totalitarian big C communism has fallen. No, he there? hates the government. They imprisoned him. Yeah, he, he does say that he thinks it's a pussy party or whatever, right? Yeah, that's... I, 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 I don't... I, how many times can you say... That he's wrong, you know? I guess just... Holy shit, he said, I mean, he's not really a bad guy. Damn. But, uh, I don't know how you could possibly say that. Um, he's a horrific I mean, he's not person. a bad guy. Yes, he is. Now. What's, what do you mean for... At least not now. He can, hey, he what helps... What does he have to do in your mind to be a... I just... I... Pocket. Literally didn't I care know. that both of them had hysterectomies. He's fine. I love my daughters. It's a funny thing. It's a fun. It's funny it joke. Like. Huh? Would vigilante getting a job at Trader Joe's and reading Mark Fisher's capitalist realism? I certainly would. This film sets up so many exciting possibilities. And look, I love Don Signing Florence Pugh, and she's terrific <laughs> in this movie. But we're nowhere without Scarlett it's Johansson. Fine. It's just something we take what for mean, granted. We're nowhere without Scarlett Johansson. I don't, what do you I don't, mean? I don't, I don't know. Character. I, I, well, I, guess. I, I mean, he's right. Mean. The Black Widow the movie doesn't really work if you don't have Black Widow in it. <laughs> I guess yeah. he's got a point there. It's like she transports from an alternate reality, the one where she's the mysterious human among gods and starts to expose her past and emotionality in new ways. Uh, it's another example of the phenomenon we had I would all of up that, with. and this ruined it. This movie ruined that thing. Yeah, they fucked we up her We had her as a great character. We had that thing, and this film you're clapping at like a fucking retard ruined that. I know her, and they know her, and now we both know her. You do know not her know her. You think you do, but that's the problem. You, your, your job is bullshitting on YouTube about media, and you're so bad at it, you don't understand that this movie ruined everything that you think this movie did well. Pretty much. Am I in the Because it feels like it. But I also can't help but feel like this film was a missed opportunity. The Black Widow character has always been fantastic. Despite that, the MCU has never utilized her fully. Disagree. Utilized her fully. She's a great character in the MCU. I feel like she was fully utilized in Avengers. Uh, I think she was fully utilized in Winter Soldier. I feel like they did really well with her in Endgame. She got like a lot of attention, actually. She's a woman with a, a past filled with mistakes, and she's just constantly trying to work at correcting that in a, in a cosmic balance of justice, while also um, creating herself, creating for herself a family that she very much cares about, and, and saving the will, and like the, the, the story completely represents that throughout, like I said, Winter Soldier, as much as we shout on it. Um, do you have that scene where she reaches a level of trust with Steve? Um, and I think that the implication is that from that point in the timeline, she's not just clearing out her ledger, she's also going to believe in and be connected to the members of the Avengers. And in Civil War, she's not actually concerned about who's right or wrong, or which one's going to lead to, like, I don't know, the, the, the ultimate best result. She just wants to side with the bigger chunk of the family and try and keep them together, and... and uh, once, because at first, that's what I always find interesting about that film, is that, uh, I think she sees it as though it's gonna be inevitable, like, she's pretty convinced by Tony's argument, and that the greater half will probably be the ones that stay legal. But then when Steve is basically, like, willing to actually fight the Avengers to not sign it, she realizes that he's never going to back down, so she'll side with them instead. Um... It's, uh, it's, it's real neat. Also, not to mention the fact that she's probably more connected to Steve than any of the other Avengers outside of Hawkeye. There's a lot of stuff going on for Nat throughout the Avengers, and the idea that this is the film, that, like, we finally got 
there's so much more content for her in Avengers than there was. This thing, it's just about screen time. It's just, this is the Black Widow movie. I mean, it's got to be the one that's just, she's just flourishes as a character. It's her movie. She has so much It makes much sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it feels like it. But I also can't help but feel like this film was a missed opportunity. The Black Widow character has always been fantastic. Despite that, the MCU has never utilized her fully. We knew her past haunted her, but that's about it. And <laughs> We knew her past haunted her, but that's about all we knew about her. Actually, fuck off. All the clarity and perspective on the beloved character are welcome and appreciated. I can't help but feel a little bittersweet now that Scarlet's version is gone and probably isn't coming back. And that's even more reason why the timing was so unfortunate. Waiting until after Black Widow died in the MCU to put out this movie is one of Marvel's few real screw-ups. Thank God. You it's it easier to erase lot. this from memory. <laughs> the real mistake was releasing this mistake. film at all. After Winter Soldier, Marvel knew that solid action spy thrillers could work in the MCU, so spy why thriller. wait so long? I look at Marvel Phase 3 and all I can think It's not Please. a thriller. Stop calling fucking Winter Soldier a thriller. Well, a lot of people would categorize that. I'm not actually that opposed to well, categorizing it that way. I just don't think it works. Because um, it's not... Like it wants to be a thriller? It wants to thrill us. The problem with thriller for me is that it's too applicable to lots of experiences you have in almost most movies. Um, yeah. Thrill, being thrilled by a movie is, is common, I would say. But um, I just like oh, the I idea. I think it of... generally means like a, almost a thriller is at least the as how I understand it is generally it's like a like a like almost like suspense, like horror in a way. A thriller. I don't know that suspense I, horror is actually relevant. Thriller can be without horror elements at all entirely. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, like like um. Well, like twists and surprises yeah. and stuff, you get thrilled by them. Basically. That's common. Maybe. The problem um, is that there's a lot of that in lots of just movies in general. Mm -hmm. It's a very common thing. In the same way you could say, like, if all it takes to be horror is to be scary, but I would be like, well, majority, right? We're looking at what happens for most of the, the runtime uh, when we try and create a genre category for, for the thing. And just, for example, like, call, calling this film a spy thriller, I find that amusing because I'm like, is it because there are spies in it or what are supposed to be spies but like is that it a secret organization yeah spy thriller and like there are surprises there are suspenseful moments therefore it is a thriller i'm just like if that's all it fine i don't care like this the thing i don't hold much weight for genre titles i'm just like go have go nuts whatever um but it does bother me when say for example someone's like well uh the classic example so but is not horror it's like Okay. Mm. Um, if someone was, because I say, it's like, am I saying that this film is not a spy thriller? I'd be like, I, I think the only thing that gets caught in my teeth with this sort of thing is just like, it's not a good one. I just wouldn't want people to think it is just for being like, oh, it's a spy thriller, like the Born series. I'd be like, I, I guess so. You know, like how like a shitty B movie sci fi with a guy in his garage and there's lots of like fucking tinfoil on the, the walls and he's got like a terrible costume? It's like, I guess that's a sci fi. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> a, I suppose. I think is. Was there really no room for Black Widow? Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was fantastic, but did it need to happen? Fuck off. Is there a. What, well, why, why. So he's saying. Sorry, you could why just say, you he's, say why not say this? Can be just... He's, yeah, of, he's saying which movie can we move out of the timeline and put Black Widow in? Well, why okay. can't we do... Let's do this about everyone. Let's do this for Hawkeye. Let's do this for Nebula. Let's do this for any character. Just fucking well, yeah, name was, them. Why is Black Widow more deserving of existence than Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Why? Been right then? Maybe it did. But uh, I'm still holding my breath for Adam Warlock to show up. Marvel waited until Captain Marvel first female, female sent here to that's the angle female sent brought this absolute entertainment fest out at any point and guess what both well, of these films it's not that so first of all it's not that simple um getting all of these people involved in these productions to make these films is not that simple um but even then i, I don't I, why, why does he keep like insisting that other things need to be moved out of the way like to, if to you're, make room for this film? yeah because we we enter the purely hypothetical when we're talking about you know like if we say it should have been phase two if someone says like, "What well, you yeah. you guys realize you can't just drop it into phase two. It's like you don't get you don't have the money, the contracts, the people. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that's probably where I would have put it with godlike yeah, powers, like you know? Been, yeah. Right. yeah. And and it's like so, so for him, I don't know why he's like, okay, so our restriction is it has to replace a different movie. Like, 
Why? <laughs> Why did that have to replace you do get, like, movie? When they were like making Guardians 2, it's not like they thought, would it be more viable or less viable to make Black Widow here? I was like, I doubt that. I don't think that that was the call that they made. I think they thought that Black Widow just wasn't viable enough. And then, yeah, and then they realized, oh, it actually would be viable. Yeah, but Guardians 1 proved Guardians 2 would probably be viable. Um, Black Widow... And then after that, you know. Yeah, Black Widow was just fucking... It probably is late by their standards, too, the the, the production-y people. They were probably like, we probably were a little late with this one. Because um, Captain yeah. Marvel coming first, you'd think that it's a more surefire bet to release Black Widow than Captain Marvel? Yeah, you'd think so. Um, but again, I don't want to pretend to know how they made these decisions. What if they said, no, we don't want to release Black Widow first because Captain Marvel is less sure and we can sandwich it between two sure things? Thus pushing yeah. that product and like Black Widow can handle herself, that sort of thing. Like that could have been it. I don't know. But the idea, like, fuck this movie. I don't want it released at all. I so like if we're gonna get to that point, <laughs> we'd be better off if it didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Civil War would have for obvious reasons, but this version with this cast probably could have only come out now, and I like it. I know you like it. You fucking <laughs> have to for your fucking job. I mean, yeah, look, how it, makes, much... it makes me wonder if if this is all an act, or do you just like every fucking piece of slop that you're given by a corporation? I have to wonder uh, how annoying it is to be a fan of his. You'll never know what he actually likes, because he's paid to like everything. I, I mean paid by, you know, like, that's his job, that's how he's set out his job. So like, how do you even know? I guess he's honest sometimes, he might even say I don't like this movie despite praising it or something like that. I haven't watched all of his videos, but... um. It's just, it must be so annoying. And it doesn't mean the end. So you apologize to ScarJo Disney and make some more content and you like it, okay? Oof. Okay. I already told you. Yeah, there anything more is... consumery than that? Disney, please make more uh, content. I need stop it. Stop making more content for Even me. Even though this character is dead. He just wants more. He needs more. Uh, me... mom, 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 he is the... You already oh, got like boy, 10 that's... years. But, oh, um, dead. It's, it's the glutton for consumerism. Wait, someone in chat said it's an act, he's admitted to it being a shtick for a few times on record, so... Is it just a lie, then? Well, what does that mean? Is that just the jokes on you I was pretending to be stupid? Like, uh, what, what is that? I'm, I was just pretending to like this film, is that the idea? Because I'm, I'm not even saying it from a point of view of, like, oh, I'm pretending to be stupid. Is So we don't actually know how he feels about this film is from this video. That he, is, that it's like, hey... I, yeah, I'm, I'm a little Is there a place now. we can go where he doesn't lie to me? <laughs> what the fuck is the point? You can't get information out of him. He is terrible at relaying information. But then, so what leaves that? It's like, well, you still have, you get to know what he feels about something, right? That's valuable if you value his perspective and you line up with him. It's like, you, you don't even have that. What do you get from this? What, is, what does that mean? Yeah, what... What is there to get? Because, like, he's avoided talking about, like, 80% of the movie. And of course he did, because that 80% is fucking dreadful. Um, but of the things he talked about, he missed a lot of good stuff he could have actually complimented. He's he's thrown in so much filler, like it's honestly kind of a surprise. I don't remember it being this Sorry. bad in the other times we covered him. And then we don't even know that he's telling the truth. Like, <laughs> what the hell? It's like this thing, I would like to know how you really feel. That'd be nice, I yeah. feel like, I feel with us, we're just like honest to the point where it annoys people. Absolutely. But I don't know. I don't see how um I just remember this I is the I pretend. I want to know what a YouTuber thinks. This is the pretend what it's what you wanted guy. It's like I don't know that he does he actually do that with everything? Oh, pretending thing, like it's hard this. to say. What next week is in one and if you didn't see the teaser frame that means you didn't watch the app. Hmm. That's Oh. That's that's nice. Like watch you better watch the, the ad so you know what video you I'm making next. You have to watch next. the ad to know what's coming out. Ugh. Fine, I still love you. And I'll see you all next week. Oh, what do we got? Next week? It takes you a week to put out some of this shit. Apparently. A hint that long falls are maybe survivable. So he is acknowledging this. That's nice. Parachute in that one. Yeah, not quite the same. I mean, it's fucked up parachute, and she hits pretty damn hard, and of course she's fine, but... Hmm. Well...
Okay. That, that's, that's his, like, stinger, that, hey, if she can survive that, maybe she shouldn't have died in the fall, which is the standard joke to make. Yeah, I agree. All right. Makes me wonder what the fuck they I were thinking like when that. they made this movie, but like hey, that. why think if everyone's gonna clap? Why, mm. why work hard? Why, you know, yeah, why work hard? That was terrible. It was really bad. I'm gonna refrain from saying I'm it's one of the worst I'm videos better... we've watched, okay? <laughs> Say it too much. Yeah, it's, I think it's definitely up there. I think that is a totally I got fair... I so little out of that. Mm. In terms of, like, commentary on the film itself, there was just a lot of things of, like, ha, huh, thing, ding, oh, there, there was a thing, ding, and then, like... Sometimes we you'd be like, this is a flaw, ding, win. <laughs> like, yeah, wait, what? Yeah. And then there'd be times where it's like you overlook things that are kind of worth talking about as, as good things in the film, and you just gloss over it. Why would you do that? <laughs> I just... Bad. Bad. Mm -hmm. um, right, well, I would like to go to the toilet, so if you guys would like to discuss something, I'll be right back. I don't... Um, <laughs> wow, I, you know what, I'm gonna use the loo as well. Tringy, you got this. Okay, this is the solo show. Sorry. This is, this is your moment to shine. You can do it, I believe in you. We need to have a conversation about let people like things, because it feels super relevant when we think about a video like this. Have you ever noticed how if you express a positive opinion on something, that's really cool, that's great, that's awesome, you're sharing something that you love? Hey, that's, that's pretty neat. And then you're like, well, you know what? I didn't like something. Wow. So opinionated. Why, just let people enjoy things. Why you gotta be such a meanie? Now, the reality is, is that positive or negative criticism, like, should surely be treated as a neutral thing in the sense that they are roughly equivalent to one another in terms of their value or in terms of what they say about you as a person. But for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter if you're positive and just saying things that aren't true. That's fine, because you're expressing a positive opinion. But if you're negative, oh, watch out. Oh no, be careful. You're doing the wrong thing. You're doing a bad. Stop it. And it's got... I... I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that attitude. I think that that attitude prevents us from being honest with each other about what we actually think. I believe that attitude is detrimental to the idea of growing at uh, any skill that you're trying to cultivate. That there should be room for both positivity and... I even like the idea of framing it as negativity. There should be room for people to just speak honestly about what they think about something. And you shouldn't just... It shouldn't just be a foregone conclusion that any negative perspective that you have on anything at all is worthless or shouldn't be shared. It should just be kept to yourself. I feel like it gets really hammered home when you look at something like this, where it's a video where it's just a constant stream of pos well, a constant stream of positivity, but there's nothing for me to latch onto, and it almost kind of feels like we're not even getting a fully. Oh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say that it's like dishonest. It just feels like an unwillingness to share the perspective that you really have because it would be too toxic if you did. need to normalize people being able to say that they didn't like something. Are you guys still covering? No, we're done now. That's it, fortunately. It's the end. The end of the line. I'm not telling you what's in the goo. That's a patented trademark fringy secret. Alright? That's my goo. It's not your goo yet. Not yet, anyway. We'll see how things develop. We'll see how things pan out. It's been it's been a difficult process trying to get that all sorted out and doing testing, figuring out the you know exactly the the full applicability of this goo. Goo plushy when oh well, oof. I'll th I'll think about that. Hey, bring how you doing? I'm not sharing the secrets of the goo. You, asking is not going to prompt me to to share more. I'm sorry. You can't you can't fault him for trying, right? I you know what? I I feel like there might be room to to just you know 
we were talking about how you know if you if you share a negative opinion that's bad but you've got to respect people's privacy too speaking of which give me a minute i'll be right back oh what are you doing for you tell us yep it's our turn we're back we're back baby efap classic we got it the the new the new person's here um so we can uh chat about stuff i think he was talking about uh good old th this this aspect of criticism where or being critical where we want the positive we don't want the negative just uh, cultivates yeah, yeah, yeah. this air of dishonesty basically like how could it not i mean like do you want You gotta be honest with these movies, man. If you just like it, if you, if everything, if everyone likes everything, you're not gonna get anything good. But you know, there's like, not gonna be any. I, don't I mean, if you get, if you get something that's good, it's because you lucked out and got someone who just actually cares about something that's actually good. I don't know if you remember um, the time on YouTube where, like, Cinemas wins Inception, and they applaud him for this as being like, oh, in a world where negativity is rewarded. And, and you know, just like everyone's negative about films, everyone loves to do film rants and stuff, and it's just all negativity. It's nice to get some positivity. I'm just sitting there like, no, the response to it was to be critical of the negativity if it was inaccurate. That was what you were supposed to do. You fucked up. But hey, at least we're here to do that. If in an alternate universe where Cinema Wins was not stupid and good at his job, right? Mm hmm. Where you would, he would, he could actually theoretically really go into films and find the legitimately good things that had effort and attention paid to them, and rewarded those, and kind of was a um, was, was like a, a rebroadcast beacon, if you will, a, like a, a megaphone for those things to get more eyes and attention on it. That could be potentially very valuable. But if the bar is set so low that everything must be praised, if even a film as crap as Black Widow needs to have two videos done on it, then like you're just gonna you're gonna false flag all the time. It's all gonna be shit. And that was honestly all you're gonna get. kind of a keyword there that you said needs. It's like, yeah, he seems to think that we gotta do it. We gotta. It's like why? Because <laughs> like to be fair. It seems, and with people saying that he's like not genuine in these videos, so who the fuck do I know? But like, it seems that he he liked Black Widow. He wasn't praising it. It seems to be the case. Like, out of I don't know obligation. He seemed to be doing it for real. I think I saw a video. I think I haven't seen many of them, but I think I saw he did a video on Logan, and he said that he didn't like Logan. Wow. Um, because of like how negative and bleak it was. Um, God, I feel like he and I would never get along, film opinion wise. <laughs> well, I guess it's just I don't know what I don't know what he's in it for, but um, I I really like the Gambit, and I guess I just don't I don't think that it is particularly great, especially if you're coming into it from the perspective of I really appreciate the work that you guys do to consider all of it to be awesome. I feel like that really devalues the work that is put in by, like, the people who make the, the best stuff, you know? People who are making the really good content, the masterpieces, the, the trailblazers, the, the really great content. I think it devalues their work to just be like, well, no, it's all great. It all has value in a certain sense, um, or it can have whatever value you want, depending on what is important to you in your life and the things that are... You know, your experiences, the themes that resonate with you, that's totally fine. It's a, it's a completely different conversation um, from, from like, the... Well, that 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 uh, that thought just poofed out of my brain. <laughs> that's just gone. I mean, well, to piggyback off it a little bit, um, if we had, like, two people who... One of them is just, like, Ryan Johnson, where they recognize that there's a flaw, and... You know that he has the capacity because he invented parts to his film where he would try and explain things. So he's aware of the process of something not making sense and that affecting your story. You know, we can we can safely observe that. But most of the time he's going to be like, ah, it's fine. People aren't here for that. They're here for the other stuff. Well, there's another writer who's like, in the same amount of time Ryan had, he worked real hard, didn't sleep several nights, and got those fucking things all cornered off, make sure that nothing is holy. And uh, this the cinema wins can't tell the difference. 
It's a, it's real sad. That's unfortunate. That is really, if that's the case for him. Assume, well, assuming the ca the character he plays can't tell the difference. Uh, I don't know if that... I feel like you'd be missing out, though. You know? Yeah. You're missing out. <sighs> so anyway, you guys want to do some Super Chats? I'd love to do some sure. Super Chats. We might get something insightful out of them. From what I gather, we have... Is it just under two hours before we will have to end? I two hours is the is the cap. I was like, gonna say that takes us to anything, yeah. just over nine hours of, of, of an episode, which I think is is more than okay. Nine Do hours not short man bad for you people. Nine hours we've been <laughs> dancing. No short man bad chat. I'll fuck you up. Like a puppet on strings. I have strings, but now I'm free. I'm cutting them strings. I'm God. Lewis gunning those strings. I always get the fucking mini mushrooms. Bringer doesn't have any goo. Don't listen to these slanderous lies. Damn. Um, is a slanderous short lie? Man a you told them. You told them that they not to do it, and they did it. Well, you made the, the, the rookie mistake. Hey, hey Thunder, stop cool. banning. Stop banning. They they <laughs> they disobeyed. Uh, so the first one is fuck, marry, kill for chat. Mauler rags, fringy. I guess they all got to make their decisions on that one. Oh no! Yeah, no, we can we can start looking at the results any second now. I guess. I'm I'm curious who gets the, the most voted for kill. I'm gonna for... go ahead and guess that it's gonna be me. Kill Mola. Oh. Oh yeah. I'm invincible, so you could try. Kill Mola again. Oh, Mola, sorry. Oh wait, marry Mola. Sorry, Fringy. Oh, okay. Sorry, Fringy. Kill Fringy. Sorry, sorry for Fringy that you're killing him or that you're not Kill marrying Fringy. him. Kill Fringy. Kill Fringy. It seems nobody's killing Rags. There you go, Rags. No, one guy killed Rags. Oh. Well, I let me let me get his name for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> uh, let me find out who that is. I'm gonna black widow you. I'm oh, gonna stand no. out in the open in front of your house with a silly black uh, leather outfit and a brandished uh, long gun. And don't forget the I'm gonna wait around. Bullets. Oh, I've got to have my lucky four extra bullets. Yeah, yeah those are yeah. For the yeah, the rounds for the gun that I don't carry. Random bullets. I just have like like a bandolier. Like this is an old west film. Black widow. Music by Ennio Morricone. Oh, that'd be that'd be the way to go. Yeah. Did you watch uh, the John Carpenter video part one from Red Light Media? I did. Oh, I've been enjoying that. That's fun. I really like it. Yeah, most of those films they I just flat out have not seen. So they fucked up the format. Um, they have it so that Jay tells his first, and then they're not allowed to talk about it, and then Rich says his, and then they talk about a completely different film. What they should have done was uh, Rich says his. And that will now be the topic from 15 up to 1, or, what, or 16, whatever and it was. Let me, and what Jay let does... Let me guess. And Jay says is where that is on his On ranking. his list, exactly. That ah, was the way to do go. it. In, in, instead, that, well, they got tangled several times trying to talk about different things. It's like, you fools. You, you, you fucked it up. But that's okay. I'm curious what they'll say when they get to, like, the... the one of the most controversial choices was uh, Rich put in Halloween at 13, I think, or something like that. I think he explained that it just wasn't a movie for him. He never said, like, negative things about it. It was pretty much just, I don't. I'm not into slashers. And I, I can sympathize. I'm not really, I'm not into slashers either, really. Uh, I don't see them. I, I just don't really care for slashers. They just don't really appeal to me. So I can, I can kind of understand where he's coming from. Uh, they're not my go-to. I can enjoy them, but they're just not really my, uh, not really my, oh. you know, sort of thing, I guess. I mean, I can out-hot-take that. I guess they're that. pretty neutral. Oh, yeah. is that a hot take? No, I can out-hot-take you. Oh. I mean, uh, this is... I've made this clear on other streams. I can't remember if I've said it on EFAP before. I don't remember. But, um... I'm big into horror, and I have never liked the slasher genre. I thought it was shit. And, uh, when I first saw Halloween, First Reputation, I was like, well, that was a lot of nothing. That's my hot take. I guys. have no interest in seeing Halloween. I have no interest in seeing The Nightmare Before I have more interest Christmas. in... Scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I don't, I just don't care for slash. If I just don't really care for slashers, it's just not interesting to me. And if the um, spectacle well, is, oh, but the kills are cool, then I'll just watch the compilation. So this is the thing. 
and I know I said this on a stream, I just don't know which, don't remember which one it was. Um, it wasn't, uh, I sort of realized as time went on, it wasn't quite, it depends on how you categorize all this shit, I don't particularly care. But like, I adore Alien and Predator, and both of those films are a group of people gradually getting killed by one entity, which follows along with stuff like uh, Halloween and Friday the 13th and stuff, so, like, so what's the difference? It's like, I mean, I could talk forever about how much more interesting Predator and Alien are. And character relationships. And yeah. the character the work is so much better. And yeah, like, like as you heard Jay defending it, he was like, well, you know, there's lots of really cool shots, there's a lot of creepiness to it that he's sort of standing in the distance watching, and I think... I kind of feel the same way about Halloween as Scary Movie did. Did you guys ever see Scary Movie, either of you? I have I've not definitely seen, seen Scary it, Movie. but I don't remember anything about it. So there's a scene where she's in school, and it's reflective of an actual scene in Halloween. So the, the actual scene is they look out the window and they see him standing next to a tree, and then they look like at the, at the rest of the class, like, what the fuck, and they look back out and he's gone. And it's like, damn, that is creepy, right? In Scary Movie, she looks out the window and sees him just standing there staring. Then she looks around in the classroom, and we cut back to the killer, who then immediately rushes behind the tree really awkwardly. And then she turns yeah, back yeah. and looks, and he's gone. And it's like, yeah, that's what you I know picture. That's what he has to have exactly, done. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it amuses me as I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Meanwhile, alien and predator are hunting, so they'll be in a position where you can only vaguely make them out if you actually caught them, and then they will try and hide. And like, that's way more interesting to me than. I'm gonna stand next to this tree Good until she sees me. Good thing the camera wasn't facing that direction, or else something awkward might have happened. And if someone was like, he's hunting too, it's like, not really. He's looking to be seen by her to then disappear. Because that's creepy. And it's just like, I don't know, a self-awareness from the enemy, I guess. I would be interested in watching the Halloween movies specifically to talk about how good a, I don't think they are. <laughs> like, um... More so from a writing standpoint, I'd be willing as well to concede that filmmaking-wise, there's lots of stuff to praise about Halloween. But, um, anyone in chat, have you seen the Halloween remake that a lot of people praise because there was involvement from different people as well as, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis? Holy fuck, that movie's bad. And, like, I would actually like to watch that for, uh, EFAP movies at some point, because... Oh, yeah? I watched it with, I think, Cynic Snacks... Uh, glib and someone else. It was just a really random thing where I was like, I'd like to see the remake. Yeah, sure. And I'm not talking about the Rob Zombie one. I'm talking about the new remake. Uh, we were fucking blown away by some of the things that happened in that movie. And that's honestly, that's why I'd have some level of excitement, actually. We could do the Halloweens back to back, the original and then the oh. new one. But, um, the 2018 one, yeah. Um, not the Rob Zombie one. Nobody fucking liked the Rob Zombie one. Uh, so. By, by the way, um,. No, you, you finish, you finish. I was just going to say, that's, so I wouldn't want to write off all slashes. It's it's um, Friday the 13th, I didn't really care about either. I was like, eh, it's fine. And I'm on the same level as Rich, where if they go nuts with it, he's like a hulking monster that's powered by lightning bolts hitting him in his grave, and he runs around, he gives excessive, ridiculous, funny kills to people. I'm much more engaged. I can't take it seriously, obviously, but that's kind of the point. Yeah, um, I, that's kind of where I am. I Like, if we were going to watch slashers, the only, as to my immediate memory kind of the only one i'd really be interested in seeing is the nightmare on elm street ones yeah so i was gonna really say imaginative and clever i like them because of the fact that the dreams will often be the, the ways of killing people are not only inventive but they'll typically match the character in some way shape or form about their fears or whatever else conceptually it's so much more layered than than halloween being it's a guy we don't know why he's doing it <laughs> and he just turns up in places and stabs people. I don't know, that, that... Okay. And if someone said, like, oh, what are you, what are you saying, it can't be scary? It's like, no, no, no I, I can see why people find it scary, I just don't find it interesting. That's basically it. Um, but hey, I wouldn't mind watching it to give a better take on all of it, but it was really neat to see that uh, so low in Rich's list. I was like, oh, I'm not alone in the world. <laughs> like, I, I don't really like it that much either. Um, Halloween original in 2018 free fat movies? Yeah, I, th I think that could work. We could even do the tri trifecta. It got remade twice now. So we could watch the original, which is the, the best, quote-unquote, then Rob Zombies, and then the new new one. I don't even know who made the new one. You said new new. New new. Also, I want to watch Freddy vs. Jason. I'm sure that yeah, movie is fucking absurd. Yeah, go crazy with it. Yeah. Just go ridiculous and crazy with it. I like. I it's almost in a way where it's a genre for me where either it's something like Nightmare on Elm Street where it's got to be inventive and interesting, or it's it has to be really really bad so that I can laugh at it and get enjoyment from it. Because I feel like a lot of them are just going to be. Eh. 
Pat Muller, what do you think murder is? Uh, the unlawful killing of another person, I think, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's, that's, about that's it. what murder is. Um, alrighty, next. That's an odd super chat. I'm not sure what prompted it. <laughs> I must have said something that... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what do y'all think is Stanley Kubrick's best movie? I don't know, I'd have to... I don't, I don't, I don't know, I'm not familiar enough with I this I haven't watched movies. enough of them to have a statement that's worthwhile. So, yeah. I love Doctor Strange Love, and I love, um, uh, Full Metal Jacket. Then A Clockwork Orange and 2001 are movies that I have a lot of respect for, but they're not, like, they don't come to my mind when I think of, like, my favorite stuff. Um, but then it's probably The Shining. Uh... I still quite love The Shine. I find that movie really creepy. And it holds up in terms of the creep factor, considering it was made in 1980s. Though, an idea, I, I wouldn't want to imply that that, like, it means you won't be scary if it's old. It's like, I mean, this, you know, Alien is fucking old as hell, too. It's just that... Yeah. I And to be honest with you, I don't think I've seen much more than that for his movies. Uh, in chat, we got Eyes Wide Shut. I have not seen that. Um, Full Metal Jacket for sure, Doctor Strange Love. Um, the Ring was really good. I don't think he made The Ring. Stanley Kubrick's The Ring. I mean, yeah, it could have been cool. Yeah. Um, That's the thing with those, with those horror movies and stuff. I don't really care about watching them. I'll just go on YouTube and watch the scary clips and stuff. Because I don't want to... I don't... Which ones are you just talking about? Kind of just kind of every, like a lot of them. I just want to get the highlights because I'm not interested enough. And in, I want to see the monsters and the kills and some of the tense moments. I just don't want to sit through all the the stuff in the middle for a lot of these movies. I just don't have much of an interest in. Would you do that with like Alien and Aliens? No. So you, no, I'm I like assuming movies. they're like classic horror movies. Um, A lot of them are just the, a lot, what are some examples? They would be... Like movies, I don't have an interest enough to watch, but I still want to get like the the, the good parts of them. Uh, so an example would be maybe, uh, God, a lot of them are blanking. There's a lot of the, um, I I, I can I the clips are in my head, but the the names of the movies don't stick with me. The ritual, the one where they're in the French catacombs. And the, it's the found footage one with the creatures in the catacombs. I did it with the new Blair Witch movie. Well, but, um, so it like, sounded like your idea here is that you do it for the ones that are bad. But how do you know they're how do you know they're bad before having seen them? I don't know. But some of them I just don't have a real interest in. Um, and some I like I I don't I would I don't want to. Just I just don't have an interest in some of them. I'm just like, oh, I'll just go through and just watch scary clips from movies. Uh, I mean, do whatever you want. Obviously, I just it sounds like you could spoil some stuff for yourself there. Yes, if, you could. Like if someone stumbled across a lot of the kill scenes or whatever from like Predator before having watched it, be like, oh man. Yeah, sure. Um, because obviously the, my favorite horror movies, they they do all of the, like, you know, like the haunting stuff. Um, as much as we've said we're not in it for the horror, that is still my preference for, like, horror movies. I want good characters, I don't want it to be, uh... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like string scenes, as, as Ren Reviews once called them, right? Where we just get to the point of they die, which, by the way, is a lot of horror movies, if I can understand. Um... Rags confirmed would use Blinkist. <laughs> no, I think it's these are these are kind of movies where I guess they don't have like a uh, I don't know they're not like the greats you know they're not the the ones that are held up on pedestals and generally agreed are like amazing or something like that but it's just like oh the movie from the da 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 and it, it's just some old movie that I just have they literally have no interest in other than oh I just maybe the clips are cool. Okay, so like if you saw in your recommended like really scary best clip from The Shining, would you avoid it because it's The Shining? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I have not seen clips from The Shining other than just what you will pick up naturally from existing on the internet in the 
21st century, which is not much. I know very little about The Shining in concept. I'm aware of like, oh, the kids in the hallway with the blood, but I don't know any of the context for it, you know, so... Because mm. like that clip will just pop up here and there. And I'm, I'm aware of some of the memes, but I, 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 I don't go for The Shining stuff, because that would be one where I'd be like, oh, that's considered one of the great horror films of all time. That would, that would be one that I'd want to actually see. You guys seem biased somewhat against old movies. How? What? Um, I honestly feel like we're less so than most, but... I yeah, did a whole I'm... video talking about a movie from the 50s that's entirely in black and white. I often... We, we watched Citizen it. Kane just for the lols. I rewatched um... Citizen... Well, I watched it... Sorry, I, I watched it, yeah, for the first time, like, yeah, a, a it was few great. months ago. I thought it was Phenomenal. great. I was super happy with it. I'd always heard, I really like, enjoyed oh, it's that, yeah. Kane, well, yeah, and... it's the best movie. So I go on into it, I was like, so mm. maybe they misunderstand. And then I saw it, and it was great. Maybe they misunderstand when I say something like... It's this good, despite being out this year. What I'm saying is they did a really good job, not just a good job, because of the yeah. limitations they would have had. Yeah, dis like less, the less, Jurassic uh, Park CGI, despite the year it came out, looks yeah. incredible, you know, and something like that. Because it can be distracting. It can, if it's really dated. It can. Like, it, well, yeah, there like, is um, an aspect of if the technology isn't there and you try to go for it, like the prequels, there are some fucking flat out bad CGI in that movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely, in those yeah. movies. So that's just I mean it's, uh, it is what it is. Um but I mean it, well, there is a I guess a limit. What is the oldest movie that we appreciate cuz it's going to is it Citizen Kane? I think it might be Citizen Kane. Um there are probably movies that came out before that we've we watched them like the silent yeah. films from uh and I've seen a couple of them like I don't think um, I've seen any Buster silent Keaton? films. There's a lot of oh, stuff I, in Buster Keaton's Oh, yeah, like I've really seen a lot cool of Buster and Keaton's worthwhile. clips and compilations and things. And I, yeah. I, that's the thing. There's a lot of old movies mm -hmm. that a we, lot. um, yeah. that we can appreciate. There's a lot of things I can appreciate, but I just don't fucking like. Um, and I understand that, especially when it comes to movies. I mean, a lot of people have to crawl so that we could, you know, run now. But I, I enjoy watching a lot of the old TV shows and movies because there is such a difference in how shots were made, the way characters talk, the way scenes and plots progressed. A lot of them were still like you had theaters for, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years since time immemorial. You had theaters, essentially. So when play when, when movies were coming out, they had a theatricalness to them that, um, that that was a holdover from what they knew. And, you know, it changes and evolves. And I find what, that very uh, interesting. It is super interesting. I was just going to ask, like, wh when did uh, when did The Wizard of Oz come out? That was in the 30s, right? 39, 38? Yeah. I like that movie. Yeah, I like that a lot. By the way, that was kind of a flop when it came out. It, Yeah, kind of. A little bit. Yeah. Um, and now it's generally regarded as the most famous film of all time. Possibly the famous, most famous film of all time, yeah. Uh, Maybe Snow yeah. White. Snow White came out in 1939. I really respect that movie. Absolutely. I remember um, there, my yeah, dad used to show me Laurel and Hardy movies that they made, and they're fucking super old. It says, on Wikipedia it says years active is 27 to 55. I'm not sure if that's representative wow. exactly. Yeah, but the thing is because I remember them being just black and white and uh, comedies, but I loved them. So like... We definitely don't have a bias against old stuff. We're more than willing to... To be fair, I'm actually possibly biased for them, because I'm like, I'm looking at something that had a lot less benefit of a, of a whole wealth of past stuff. A lot less stuff. shoulders to stand on, Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I'm much more interested to see, like, how did they manage all of this? What were they focusing on? You can tell from the writing what they, the values they had as well, even if it is from fucking 100 years ago. Um, and I'm... One of my favorite VHSs to watch as a kid was a, it was a VHS, it was like a documentary in a way, uh, Fantastic, I think it was called like Fantastic Monsters from the Movies or something like that, and a huge chunk of it was devoted to Ray Harryhausen and the stop motion monsters of Jason and the Argonauts and mm -hmm. Sinbad the Sailor and some of those old movies, which would be an interesting arc by the way for us to do, yeah. those old adventure kind of movies. I have an insane amount of appreciation for that kind of work that goes into all that stuff and the the tricks that they could play with cameras and how do they blend them and how do the actors like when Jason's fighting that skeleton 
you can like that shit is that was revolutionary at the time a lot of that stuff and you appreciate the acting of okay pretend you're fighting a skeleton as best you can and we're gonna have him kind of do that and the other thing and so you you know like all the the work that goes into making that happen and you're like man that's that's impressive I can absolutely appreciate it. I mean, I, I can't remember if the film good or not. I, I maybe it's a stinker, maybe not. But mm -hmm. holy shit, I appreciate it. If that stuff didn't exist, then I, which is some of the things that people say in like the prequel Defender defense is, yeah, well the CGI was da da da, but you know it helped push it forward. And I'm like, yeah, I can appreciate that. It's still shit, you know. No, there's there's YouTubers that get defended that way. Um, what's his name? Fucking irate gamer. <laughs> he was really early, guys. You know he. He probably inspired a lot of YouTubers to do aggro reviews, even though he was Absolutely. a soulless copy. It's like it doesn't matter, you know. Push some things forward. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, you know, I I'm a fan of a lot of old stuff, and like I said, in some ways, it's they're more fascinating to watch just to see what they do. Um, especially because they're not a part of the sludge pipe. They couldn't be. Uh, Fringy, was your goo what the dark powers used to turn elves into orcs? No. Hey, we're getting there, chat. If you keep asking it, we could keep you... narrowing it down by process of elimination. Could your goo turn an orc into an elf? No. Uh, that's, that is not a property of goo. Hmm. My goo, anyway. Hi, boys. Rags, don't get gaslighted by the bad Morley. Yeah, Mauler. I will gaslight whoever I want. Oh my god. It's freedom for you. That arrogance. <laughs> uh, hey y'all, just got a new position at my job and will be off weekends for the first time in 17 years. Now I get to EFAP every Saturday. Also high rags. Wow. wow. Hey. Hello. That's nice. Congrats, dude. Yeah, have fun, I guess. You know, we'll, we'll be here most, if not every Saturday. And hey, you got you got Friday and Saturdays with EFAP now. Uh, the night for the month coming because you got we got a Resident Evil movie and then the stream from us. It's gonna be great. Um, do you think the mayor was too easily convinced? Talking about um, Midnight Mass, I would suppose. And again, um, try and remain as spoiler-free as possible. I don't think so. I, I think can they understand why it. he made that decision. I think they handled it pretty well. Um. They show him pushing back quite a bit, but it's really hard. I, I think it's going to be quite the challenge when you've got your what what he sees happen and what happens for him and his family. It's going to be hard to go back on that, especially if you think it's connected to the religion. Mm -hmm. I think the I, I think the the show does a pretty decent job at giving you the impression of yeah, I can see why somebody would go along with this. You know, like it's not it's not one of those it's not a it's not a show that portrays it as totally outlandish that anyone would buy this sort of thing. You could totally see why someone could be swept under the spell, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mor and it doesn't treat those people as necessarily stupid, which is one thing I like. Like, it's 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 by no means an anti-religious um, uh, show. I really right. like how it handles religion. Yeah, I it's, certainly it's, didn't think so, but some people really do, uh, from what I've read. Yeah, from yeah, it seems it definitely seems to go a pretty the pretty, I mean, safe route of zealotry is bad. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it's far more a, you know, religion's a very broad umbrella of different things, and you should be a good person, you know, more than anything else. Uh, Mola, dissect the plot of the Sonic movie. I uh, <laughs> I'm still not seen that. You've seen that, right, Frankie? Yeah. No. I have not. Um, it's like it's not good, but it's it's kind of like not good in the old school, not good sort of it's way. It's just, just doesn't like make a sense. three or a four. Yeah, it's it's but it yeah. tries to have like a story about hey, we're buddies and we're we're coming together to save the world, that kind of uh, thing. So mm -hmm. it's very is it enjoyable? Like other is it funny or is it interesting um, to watch? I didn't find it very funny, but I did kind of enjoy watching it. Um, it, it was okay. a bit of fun at times. Chris Pratt as Mario. Might as well have Critical Drinker play him. Makes as much sense. <laughs> I, I mean, Chris Pratt's a good voice actor. Like, it's just... Because, like, I liked it's him just... in the Lego movie. Yeah, he's great in the Lego movie. 
It, it's just I didn't expect to ever hear Chris Pratt as Mario. I'm, like, I am so willing. Yeah, I can't. I'm willing to I say. I can't that, imagine his voice coming out of that character. Yeah. I'm willing to say that I, I will give it a shot. I just, I don't even yeah, know what to expect absolutely. though. Uh, well, hey, I look. don't expect to like it, but I'm not expecting to like hate it. I just I can't see it myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll do a bang up job. I mean, I hope he does. You know, but I guess we'll see. Uh, just finished Midnight Mass. It's great, and I refuse to accept any hot takes to the contrary. So be nice. Oh. Uh, oh well, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that but last if, episode. Yeah, the last episode is catastrophically bad. Uh, Sorry. Thoughts on the Star Wars anime, especially Episode 7, is objectively the best, but Episode 3 is insane, nutty, hilarious, outlandishism. It's all weird, but cool. You see, when anime does it, it's great, but when other things do it, it's shit. Dude, it's something I've noticed. There's a clip. Something I, just something I've noticed. Well, let me describe to you a bizarre thing I could just come up with that's insane, right, Rags? I've done it in videos before to try and prove a point, but what if, like, what if you're in, like, an X-Wing? And you pop open the top while in space, and you activate oh, a, a mountain-sized lightsaber. You turn on your thing, well, and it's I can't. Like, I'm dead. No, shut up. So I turn on like the lightsaber, and it, it's like as tall as a mountain. It's fucking enormous. And then I drive. Well, I, I, the the X-wing's piloted uh, like by BBA or fucking whatever R2D2, and I, and it pilots me underneath, and I chop the entire star destroyer in half by doing that. Remember when TLJ came out and we used analogies that were pretty much exactly what this was to ask how far, how stupid could something go and before people stopped clapping? Maybe or maybe we should have been like excluding if it's an anime because then it's okay if it's an anime. Well, I mean, the scenario I just described, I'm not even going to tell you about the dialogue is what happens. I'm sure the dialogue is incredible. And um, and the first thought I had is exactly what you're saying. I was like, so if they did this in TLJ, you'd all be shitting on it. So what the fuck's going on? It's like, well, it's anime. It's a different universe, a different style. It's different... Okay, all right, then. It's not retarded. It's fine. That's <laughs> 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 just a funny sentence. It's not retarded. It's fine. And this is, this is coming from somebody who... Uh, Appreciates. There's a lot of good anime out there. I'm not, I'm not denying that, but holy fuck, guys. Um, but you know what? I'm not saying the whole show's bad. I'm only of the clips I've seen. But uh. Yeah, I'm just. It's just. Biz <laughs> I just don't understand this. Like, oh, this anime's great. This anime's bad. This anime's great. When people say that, I just like. I I just don't like when people say that. I just don't know what to think of you. You're discovering the absolute state of Betty Weebs. I can believe it. I can believe yeah. it. I heard that one was the really good episode. You are fucking with me, of course. Fuck me. Jesus Christ. Um, but no, we've not seen Visions, nor do I really intend to watch it. Nor ever. probably will we. I'm not interested, I'm just, No. Yeah, I'm not interested. I'm just, just um, not interested. Try to watch A Quiet Place 2 on a plane. Boring as fuck. From what I heard, it, it, it made less sense than the first one, so I... Like, That's a big oof. I'd be the interested to see the two of them for EFAP movies. That would be fun. Yeah. Maybe. Like Quiet Fap. <laughs> Donkey Kong. <laughs> we dude. <do. laughs> yeah, yep. everybody's <laughs> made that joke, haven't they? It's the joke to make, I suppose. Yeah. End of the film. Mr. Mario, you've become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Also, hi, Rags, Mola, Shad, Fringy, Indiegogo, and Hello <laughs> Indiegogo. <there. laughs> And we can worry it. Yeah. Hello. Um. The Indigo Gaming's parents divorced over the Mario movie. Is this because he he was critical of it? I don't know. I don't. I don't understand oh, the, that the, reference. Oh, the original one. Oh well. If any film is gonna cause a divorce. Oh no. Oh no. It is. Dad has his dad considered saving. His mom from a dinosaur turtle? I don't know. I That's just... another movie I look forward to seeing in EFAP movies. So much potential. Which one? The the original Mario movie with Bob Hoskins. Oh yeah, I I do not know anything about it other than it's strange and not anything really like Mario, <laughs> so. When we get a date for the, the new one, we'll probably try and get it watched and right before. Wait, the new what, sorry? 
the new like the the Nintendo Mario movie, whatever it is. Oh, versus that's the... coming out December next year. Okay, we got plenty of time. Twenty though. something, twenty foot. Yeah, it's still a while away. Um, how about Bowser's VA from Mario Sunshine instead? I mean, th that wasn't good either. Like, no, the no, voices of Mario Sunshine were pretty weird. Mario, how dare you ruin our family vacation? <laughs> Like, Mario. What the hell are we doing? It was very um, I don't even know how to put it. Like the voice acting was very. Is like... Is it like uncanny valley levels? Oh, of... it's incredibly uncanny. Yeah, it's weird. Um, it felt I, like the, the actors were told never... not to take it that seriously. That it's bullshit or something. I don't know. Cause it's a very odd vibe listening to everybody talk in that fucking thing. Well, yeah, it's just um, I think there is a reason why Bowser has never spoken again, except in subtitles, and I think it's because of that that game. Like it, it just it doesn't work. I don't think I want to hear anything except or or like it needs to be like a like um, oh, is it from Animal Crossing, Babelese or Animalese, where they just make the okay. So oh, I'm playing right, the Beaver yeah. game right now as we're uh, yeah, as we're kind of course. chatting about this naturally, and when he. And and when you click on the beavers, they they do like the sim thing, or like oh, abdi you doba, you know, like this a fake little little yeah. language thing, and you're like okay, that's cool. Or when the text scrolls by in Animal Crossing, you know, it does that kind of noise. Yeah, I feel like that's as far as I could go with the Mario stuff a lot of the time. Well, uh, yeah, that's 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 all they ever do. When Pete and even if it's human characters like Peach or something, they just go like. <laughs> Oh, ooh, like that's yeah. It. They don't actually speak in full sentences. Peach well, so occasionally speaks in full sentences. But this is the thing. Again, it's if the Sunshine voice actors were the same, but the writing was top notch, it would be such a weird experience because be, you'd be like, oh god. Weird, yeah. But okay, it's more just Mario. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, honestly, we'll just have to see how they do, I guess. Um, yeah. Did you see that Mr. Nuggy said Chris Pratt getting cast as Mario was Italiophobia? How is it phobic? Italian, what, Italian, the... Italian phobia. <laughs> but what what is the phobia though? Is it like it's of Italians? Yeah, they're terrifying. Uh, okay, oh, how Italians okay. are. I wonder if Chris Pratt has any Italian heritage. <laughs> it would be so fucking funny if you like both of his parents were Italian or something. Yeah, or like you could trace it back to Italy somehow. Well, that's the thing. Italians are in that weird list of white. As a as, as a race, so you can't look at someone a lot of the time and be like, "That's um, definitely an Italian," or "Definitely isn't." So people get tricked into doing stuff like that, where they where they jump the gun. Yeah, and and there's like this sort of you know how you can make fun of Russians till the fucking cows come home and no one gives a shit because they're like the whitest of white, 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 white. Um, Italians are in a weird spot right now where, where I think progressives don't know whether they should be defending them or not. I think the reason why is because it's Mediterranean, right? And the same, they're in the same category as like Greek people. Um, yeah, the yeah, Greeks, Mediterraneans, all the the Sicilians, uh, lesbians. Haha! -ha. But uh, you can't. Um, all that should be highlighting to us is how ridiculous all of this is. Yes. Can we just stop focusing on this, please? Can we stop? Please stop. They, they ain't stopping anytime soon. We'll just continue it's, to to paddle along in our little rowboat. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't doing that shit. Fuck that. Not yeah. like Waluigi. No, he's not. Uh, he's dropped into that um. Yeah. That that the pool. He he. Yeah. You would think that they'd say that Mario. I'm sure it's been said where Mario and Luigi and all that they are offensive stereotypes. Yes. Uh, you, that so, must yeah, have been said by somebody have. at some point. Yeah. I think they realized that was one that just wasn't flying by with folks, so they just say fuck Honestly, it, right? Out. I think it's just because it's too beloved as an IP. You can't, like, it... Yeah, that's you, what I'm like saying. Mario. You'd think... You'd think that would apply to a poo, but, like, I think that he got out of it. He, he They got into it because of the fact that, uh... Like, he's not the main star, I guess? Because mm -hmm. maybe if it was, like, a homer, they wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, well, maybe they could have. I don't know, because they... Also... Maybe it's because it's a game. Because well, I was about to say, like, a lot of episodes for TV shows are getting blacklisted now. Like, that's still happening. They did one recently. I shit it in our group chat one recently for some show. I can't remember if it was Community or it was something else. It could have been um, Seinfeld, I think. Uh, but episodes are still getting removed because too offensive. I think maybe Mario, the element is it's too wholesome. Like, nobody's going to be on board with you, like, saying that there's something deeply wrong with this. It's like, dude, it's Mario. He jumps around. He's a happy little plumber. And he saves the day. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. 
How are you gonna get people mad Italian about this? And also, it's, also, it's a Japanese game. Uh, it's a Japanese IP, so they're just not connected. Yeah, to they the don't give a guys. fuck. <laughs> like in terms yeah. of, I, I can't imagine them giving a fuck anyway. Maybe, you know, if because I'm wondering now if there was enough pushback on Twitter, um, would Chris Pratt like drop the role? Um. I don't know. I, I I don't know if it's that simple. He he might already be locked in, you know. So like it doesn't even matter. Like you just got to ride it out and see what happens. Maybe yeah. Um, it's funny because we're yeah. all pushing back for it with like the reasons of being unsuitable casting for the voice, yeah. not because like. It goes that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Charles Martinet's Mario works in the games, but hearing Mario's original voice for the length of an entire film would be just as uncanny. So the the, nah. the format is he's not going to be speaking a lot, presumably. Yeah, just have him have him mostly just say "Let's go, huh? woohoo, what? yeah!" What? Like, yeah, exactly. What? Just do that. We'll and have uh, other characters. So I'm talk. assuming people have watched the brawl cutscenes, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, just do just do the subspace emissary where nobody talks. It's all communicated through. Um, and Body it gives you opportunities before. for some great storytelling too, like uh, so. Pikachu and yeah. uh, Samus, for example. Yeah, they had their little sequences, and there was no. I Subspace Emissary was impressive in a lot of ways with how much they managed to communicate with um, like King DDD. He was super expressive and fun. You just have all of this, and you can do it. You can completely do it. It's um, it, it would be an interesting experiment. Just have Those... have minimal dialogue. Or have other characters talk. Have, like, Pauline talk or Peach talk. Even have Luigi talk a little bit more, but just have Mario doing his little normal thing. The brawl cutscenes were largely mediocre, sorry. But it, it, whether or not they are, it proves the point. <laughs> I don't even really agree. I think I think they did a pretty good job, considering that they're trying to tell a story with a bunch of these characters from different universes clashing. Uh... I wouldn't say that... great, um, like that great maze at the end. I, I still remember that playing through that the first time. It's not fun. I I played through all of Subspace Emissary and I I, I don't remember hating it or anything. Uh, I liked some of the it. Cutscenes but... were nifty. Yeah. I yeah. I didn't have an issue with it, but that was a different me at that time. So. Right, look, it's fun seeing Kirby, like, meeting up King DDD, and they're like, Oh, hey, buddy, I'm so glad to see you. Let's go save the day. There was fun stuff in there. And that, having, yeah. like, it was fun. It was really fun. Isn't the opening some kind of, like, uh, P Petty Piranhas, like... Yeah, Petty Piranha captures Peach and, and uh, Zelda, and depending on which cage you break first, that changes, like, who is sort of... Changes who's where and who you have to fight in certain instances. That's fun. That is fun. That was more effort than they needed to put in. Um, they should have hired Vinny Vine Source to play Mario. It takes all colors to make a rainbow, Luigi, except black. There's no black in a rainbow. That would be offensive. They couldn't do that. Well, is black a color? Or is it a shade? Or is it a lack yeah, of Oh my god. Question. What is the speed of dark? Who knows? Yesterday. I think we can all agree the biggest injustice is having Charlie Day as Luigi, but not Danny DeVito as Mario. Rip <laughs> gruesome twosome. I think DeVito should be Wario. That is the suitable casting for yeah, him. Yeah, that, that is that's that's kind of perfect actually. <laughs> I think yeah, that would be something that I could be like, okay, alright. But it, well, it's kind of the same with, like, Charlie Day as Luigi. For some reason, I'm like, I kind of see it, but at the same time, yeah. why not just have the actual voice of <laughs> Luigi? Just have Charles Martinet do it. Because I feel like you can make a Luigi's Mansion movie, and that could be really cool. Yeah, I agree. That would be a fun little horror movie that, or, you know, fun for the whole family. Luigi saves the day, and you can yeah, have... like a like a spook like a spoopy movie, not a not a scary movie, a yeah. spoopy movie. Yeah, exactly. Fun for the whole family, ah! the, the, like the haunted mansion with Eddie Murphy. The haunting of Luigi's mansion. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness, fifty six coins. Thank you. Uh, hi, Moogler and friends. Hello. 
Hi. Hello. Time for a language lesson. Try to pronounce... Uh... Okay, I'll paste it to you guys. Huh? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Is that what it actually means? Well, this is the thing, it's a super chat, so it's hard to trust them sometimes. <laughs> like... Yeah. Cack I'm gonna double good. check that. Well, I'm gonna double check. I'm assuming that means 12 months. So if it That's means something horrifically as as offensive, the truth, in some, yeah. yeah. So if it says something horrific in another language, then okay. I apparently, guess it, means, it means it means twelve months in Estonian. Okay. Kaksteist kud. Kaksteist kud. That's how I would pronounce it as well. But unless we're doing the W in the case it's kud, or would it be like kud? continuum? Like continuum, continuum. Uh, but vacuum kud. isn't spelled like continuum. It's just vacuum. That's true. Yeah. So, so you don't you don't like always do that with a double use. That's the thing. And luckily, I can say W, and that's not its own fucking letter because we decided to call one letter W of an, a double of another letter. Well, I mean, it is a double U if you. It's a I double mean, that's V. What. No. Yeah. It's, it's a double sure V to capitalize it. Um, so lowercase w is still, still a... depending on which font you're using, it depends on yeah, the generally, font. Yeah, generally, generally, it's, it, they'll be pointy and they'll be v's. Now, my personal handwriting, I avoid right angles for the most part when I do my personal handwriting. I do the q so little mine will be two, w's if they're not capitalized. Yeah, mine will be two curves. I don't. Um, but that is, that's my personal, um, that is I, I personal. have some... That's not how I do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. I think I have. Uh, I've been complimented on my handwriting, but it's definitely um, a little bit stylistic, but not to the point where it's like flowery or anything. But I, right. I enjoy, I, I enjoy having good handwriting. It is, it is very satisfying to write a note, and looking at it, it's like it's an artistry of its own. So I, I well, appreciate it. That's good nice for you. you. My, my handwriting deteriorates after a certain amount of time. Like, it starts off good and then it just gets progressively worse and worse as the day goes on. Like, you realize writing isn't fun and you just want to get the message out and go. Um, <laughs> and I think I think it's I think it's twofold. It's one, I just want to speed it up. But the second one is just my hands getting tired. Like, if I'm if I'm doing it for a certain right, amount right, of time. Right, right, just capital I, L of the curve. No, um, some of them I can't do and really get away with. So L's will have, there's a few sharp, there's a few right angles. Um, there's one on the R at the top left and the capital R. There will be one in, uh, like I said, the L. Uh, B's will have them, uh, but they will, uh, for the most part, I'll, I'll try to avoid, oh, one of the things I do is I'll avoid hooks. So here, let me bring up, uh, let me draw, bring up my uh, GIMP here and I'll give an example. It, it, I could do this with my mouse, so we find a uh, file, new. Let's just do a 500 by 500. Dude, you can choose for a sad wish from Shy Guy. <laughs> I wonder what that sad means. Wish? Yeah. <laughs> sad wish? Oh my god. Oh god, he's frowning. He's angry. Yeah, we're not gonna do a black. Oh, he's sad uh, and everything's crying. Oh. Wait, that's not crying, that's vomiting. Oh, that's... that's everything. Wow, you ruined the bridge, DK, you fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna jump ahead for this one super chat. Muller, I just watched an episode of Star Wars anime, or THE episode you were talking about. As a fan of both Star Wars, excluding sequels and beyond, and anime, I can say the episode is stupid and complete shit. Well... That guy didn't like it. But who knows how many people did love it. I've hit Brown Table reckons it's like the greatest Star Wars content outside of like the OT. Oh man. And I've wow. always trusted Brown Table. It's just it's a good noggin on that man's head. He knows what's up. He steers me right. Um Bright side of Shad in quarantine, he can be on EFAP more. I think he's uh, he's out of quarantine by the time the next EFAP happens, so... I, he'll have to be. I think it's uh, two weeks. Yeah. And it will have been two weeks. Back to busy, yeah. Shad. Um, and a special hello to Rags, the goodest of good boys. Oh, thank you. Oh boy, I can't wait for Girl Boss Peach. 
I don't know. I don't well, know what to expect. I think it's. I would imagine that she's going to have a lot more of a role. Um, yeah. yeah. Than she does in the games, typically. Yeah. Muller and Vringy, do you like horror movies? Yes. Well, I mean, well, do I like horror movies? Like, do I like movies? Um, I mean, I, it's not my favorite genre. Uh, I will say that. Yeah, I don't really care for horror stuff. Like, compared to science fiction or something like that, or detective or, like, fantasy or anything like that, it's kind of, it's kind of on the lower end for me in terms of preference. Do you think that derives from, like, what your most sought-after experience in storytelling is? Yeah, probably. Like, I'm not really interested in being scared. Um, yeah, I'm not really I'm... interested in it either. I love it. Yeah. I find I it's mean, just... Maybe it's that... Maybe it's like it's the candy for me, where I don't want to... I just want... I just want it. Well, Generally, I don't want to... I don't know, like, I don't... It's nice to have, but I guess I don't really want it, like, that much, maybe. Um, I think I've said this before, but, like, there is some emotional experiences I just don't get as often with a lot of the stuff I consume. You get very commonly funny and tragic. Those things are in lots of stuff. But, like, um, one of the ones I've talked about before that I just kind of neatly don't get much, and I did get it with Bioshock Infinite at the beginning, and with Rapture, obviously. Or just being kind of, like, blown away by the scale of a thing. And you're just, like, impressed and... and, and you feel for a second just like how how incredible the world is or something like that. You could get that from like a lot of stuff in Lord of the Rings as well, I would say. Um, that's something I don't get that often and I'd like to have a bit more. But um, horror, like like really good horror to me was like Chasing the Dragon when, when I had it. Um, one of my favorite horror experiences I've said before is Amnesia the Dark Descent. That was like the most I, yeah. I've been scared by anything. Generally the horror games that I like will be exceptions to the rule. So I, I like I, like I say often, Soma's my favorite game ever, and I loved Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Um, I hated Amnesia: Rebirth. Same. And for, for we did a four-hour video on <laughs> why Rebirth sucked and why we loved the other two, but it's it, I guess it's one of those things where if a game's great and it happens to be horror, that's good. Like it's it's good to have that itch scratched every once in a while. Maybe that's the thing. I think, um, for me, I think I talked about this in the Soma videos, um, I just like being the, the, the fantasy of it, I think, of, um, yeah. actually feeling for, yeah. for the walls come down enough that I feel like I am actually in this, like, you know, medieval prison, and I have to move through the w rooms quiet enough that the creatures don't see me, but simultaneously the safety net is there that I'm not actually here. But, yeah. um, it's like a, it's almost like a drug, I guess. Let me ask you this, do you like roller coasters? Do you like that? I've always liked roller coasters, yeah. Because I love them. I love roller coasters. I love the thrill of, like, oh, weightlessness. Um, sometimes I, I, I drive my car really fast sometimes just to get the thrill of accelerating. You know, there's, a, there's an aspect of it. Yeah, almost think... quasi-danger, approachable danger that I really enjoy. Sorry. I like it, like, I, the feeling of being lost, you know? Uh, I, I kind of like that, because, like, if you live in America, if you get lost, like, you're, you'll are you be fine, right? Unless you're in the middle of the woods without any provisions or anything. I'm talking about, like, you're in a car and you just go someplace and you have no idea where you're going. You just go out and you go. Mm -hmm. And you know you can get back, you have a phone, and you can get directions anywhere. It's just whenever you choose to access that. Like, you really are lost, but you can get back to your way. Um, that sort of thing, or that's the kind of stuff I like. I tell people that all the times in games. It's like sometimes in a game, just relish the idea that you could get lost in a world because you won't have it forever. Eventually, you'll learn the game and you'll be familiar with everything and you'll know where everything is. But man, like when I bought the the Daisy, when I bought the Livonia map, I made sure to avoid online maps for it just go in it just just go out into the world be lost you don't know what's over the next hill you don't know what's over there just go out and find what you find and i really enjoy that kind of feeling yeah. of not knowing where you are um i was thinking as well you know like thrilling that's another fun emotion to get out of uh 
like movies, games, just media in general. And I'd imagine what I'm referring to is something like uh, tense situations, but then their um, like fight sequences will often be pretty thrilling. I imagine. If, if they're well. good, and yeah. I care about the characters, like if I don't know who is, well, it, it's like the whole, um, it's like in the Suicide Squad when Flag and Peace, uh, Peacemaker were fighting. I was like, oh shit! Like, yeah, I'd probably describe that scene as thrilling. Many different things could occur. Like I don't know how this is going to resolve, and that's kind of like, ooh, who knows? I don't know if they're both going to live, or if one's going to die, or if I don't know. We're getting to the end of the movie, so I don't know what's going to happen. That's kind of thrilling in a way. I don't know. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, because I, th I wonder how we would have reacted if um, Peacemaker started strangling Flag and Flag got the kill shot on him. Do you reckon we would have been like, well, he had to. Because with Flag dying, I think it felt way more tragic. If Peacemaker had died, I, I have a feeling that we probably would have been like, man, that was tough, but Flag pulled it off because... Peacemaker. Kind of, yeah, like Peacemaker was, he was going to do something that wasn't good, and I understand why he did it and all that, but I guess, you know, Flag won that fight. Flag did what he had to do. Yeah, because I think the tragedy in Flag's death isn't just Flag's death, it's also the uh, that information m may not get out now. Yeah, the implications of it, the fact that Flag was in, you know, Flag was the morally correct one there. Um, you know, what you wanted to see his a resolution play out. Rags, I'm playing this game again with a lot of money on the line. Do you believe I can do it? I do believe you can do it. Do you think I w will do it though? <laughs> I almost died there. That's why oh. I cut myself off. <laughs> I have a total. I, I have a total lack of belief in whether you can or cannot will or will not do it. Would you put money on me odds? doing it or not doing it? What are your odds? I get. Well, it's me against the computers. So. Well, oh. I mean, I I still don't know. Oh, oh! I win. Game. Game. I I turned on the thing. What you I meant to say you... was you put a, put all of your money on it because you knew I'd win. I think yeah. I, legitimately, if I if I had because I just didn't have it open, I have the chat window open. Um, I I, I would I would probably give any the benefit of the doubt. I feel like you could have pulled it off. Well, I lost it last time. I was actually pretty worried there. It was. It, you might even. Say I know, it was but tense. I think that. Yeah, but I I still think you know you got got a little bit of practice in and. That's what I said you should have done last time that you didn't do. That's all right, you know? Yay. You got better. You did it this time. You redeemed yourself. You were able to pull it off. You didn't fall into the lava pit. Also, how many monitors do you have? I have three. Three. I think, right. Yeah, and I think Fringy has two, from what I remember. I do not know for sure, though. I three is three a... Monitors. Oh, he has yeah, three. Three is a great number to go for, um, because you can get monitors, especially if they're just side monitors for extra space. You can get them cheap, uh, yeah. And once you get past three, you gotta get into like setups, setups. Because really, with three monitors, the only thing you have to worry about is: do I have enough desk space, sheer physical desk yeah. space for it? Um, but I guess connectors to your GPU. But I think you can get adapters. Uh, but uh, but really, the big thing is going to be: a, you need a physically large enough desk for it. Or like, you can I do the. A, they've uh, got those things, right? Where you can turn, you can put them on like arms, and then connect the arms. Yeah, to you can. But I almost feel like at that point, maybe it's better just getting a a good desk because with the arms, they have to be stabilized and held in place. And a monitor is not light, you know, to be held up all the time. So you got to make sure you get mm -hmm. solid stuff. And at that point, maybe it's just worth. I mean, maybe it's just worth getting a good desk for it. Uh, the well, desk that I have is a, let me find it, because I, I quite like this desk a bit, in fact, I might as well plug it, um, the desk I have is an Arosi Arena Gaming Desk, um, I've had it for over two years now, it's, my, my issues with it are pretty minimal uh really all that i would say i wish i could get a non-black cover for the top in fact maybe i can maybe i can have ask if the company sells them but it is a sturdy desk and it's got a nice mat that can go on top it's pretty soft for your um your 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 elbows and your arms to rest on um it's it's like i said it's very sturdy 
it's easy to put together it is wide enough to have three monitors and just deep enough for uh, a monitor in front of you as well because i have i have my microphone in front of me directly then i have the keyboard then i have the monitor so it's it's just long you know, just deep enough for me to have all those things uh, you still don't comfortably. want the um i just because i know we've talked about this before but I just, like, I get, oh when i went from a stand on uh standing i don't know what the correct word is here like the standalone microphone on the desk and then having a microphone arm like it was an upgrade that i loved oh you have yours on an arm yeah i do as um, well i don't mine always just sits here in front of me and I don't feel like it's in the way, because whenever I'm typing, my arms are on... Because it's not wide. It's It's got to be just... I don't even know. It, it, it can't be... It's not wide at all. So my arms very comfortably and generously go around it as I'm typing. Because when I'm typing, my arms are like straightforward. They're bent out at the sides and my hands are on the, uh, the keyboard. So it, it never gets in the way. Um, it's not in the way of my screen. It's just down here in front of me. Um, I forgot. Also, high rags. Scritch is for the best Hello. boy. Thank you. Chad, you find yourself in a zombie apocalypse and you can pick one melee weapon. Which do you choose? He'd probably go with a sword, wouldn't he? Probably. I'd imagine so. I'm trying to think of what else would outclass it. You know, for so like an average I'm use. Thinking, I'm thinking I might want to... So it depends on zombie rules, of course. If it's just the general rules of you just have to fuck it up and it dies... Uh, kind of like a person, then I might be going with a partisan. Uh, maybe something that has it's a very sturdy. Partisan of you. Yeah, it is. Let me let me get a good picture of maybe something I'm talking about. But partisan weapon uh, images. Some because I want something that I can stab with that can kind of keep them at a distance. Uh, something that. Because I don't want to get close to them. I don't want to get around them. I want to sort of keep... Yeah, something like this. Let me... Uh, oh, oh yeah, Mordow one has some pretty good ones. Yeah, these are... Maybe this first one on the left. Or the one in the middle. Those heads, how there's that, that, that blade... And then it sort of has parts to the back of the head where it can maybe stop the body. So you stab yeah. it and you could almost like push it back and keep it at bay. So it doesn't like, like you don't stab it through and it could, you, you mm -hmm. stab further than you need to. So I can keep that thing away from me. I so want to, I want I that think thing at distance. There's great use. It's just that I wonder if um, I would want something more all purpose. And, and then at that point is like a spear of the spear family sort of thing. More all-purpose in a zombie apocalypse than a sword, I wonder. Well, the thing is, like, uh, that's why I went with a partisan over a spear, because I want something that's a little bit shorter. So even if they get closer, I could hold it closer up to the head, maybe. Um, but, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of good answers. Mm -hmm. But I think that I would go... With, and it depends on what I'm doing, too. Like, if I'm wandering around in the world, well... I guess that changes because I don't want to haul a partisan around everywhere that I go. Uh, so I'd probably be more likely to have a sword. Um, maybe something a, a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, that would be... Because some people are saying halberds, and I'm like, a halberd would be great, but it requires a lot of room. And those things are... Like, guys, a halberd is long. And I feel like it might be excessive for zombies because I don't really consider zombies like a huge threat because they're you know they're, they're zombies they're, it's the numbers thing and generally if I, I feel like if i'm in a position where i have to fight a lot of zombies i'm i'm running anyway and not like fighting them and if i have to fight them off i guess i guess that's why i'm i feel like if we're fighting off a lot of zombies we're doomed no matter what medieval weapon we I have i guess it depends it depends on the area um if they're coming at you in a hallway then it's like, well, I guess if I like if I had a partisan hmm. or something, I could just stab, 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 because they're all coming at me in one direction. That would be one. Are we thing. dealing with slow and zombies. A lot of this depends. Well, that's the thing. It depends on. Generally, I go for like zombies that are able to not run, but that that area between running and walking, because like they're stumbling they're forward, sort of thing. Kind of, yeah, where they're like speed walking, kind of speed, because they're not. They don't have the 
the, the the coordination to like full out sprint, but they can do more than walk is generally what I kind of go for. Um, inside every man there are two wolves. One says hi rags, the other says no rags. Join the rags battalion and ruin all grandmas. Rags battalion, ruin all grandmas, leave none unruined. Leave none unruined. This whole situation reminds me of a great video by Dog Eat Dog on why celebrity voice acting is killing the industry. Hmm. I'd be curious to know what the argument would be that it kills the industry. Yeah, like, kills it in terms of, like, artistically? Even then, I'm not sure that you could say that that's gonna be the case, because a lot of celebrities might take it very pers uh, like, like, passionately. Like, they'll be like, oh no, I love this game, I look forward to voicing this character, I'm gonna do it justice, that sort of thing. But I don't know. Um, it could be a different argument, but yeah, that, that sounds like a potentially fair video. Vampires suck. Lycans are the best monsters. Full moon on the 21st. There's, I, I love the classic monster stuff. Vampires, werewolves... Oh, there's a game that um, came out recently called Resident Money. Evil 8, I think. You'd love it. Uh, they kind of do a lot of that stuff. It was great. Oh, yeah, they they really... Yeah, they, they definitely don't squander all the potential Dude, of that I, imagery. If I was to have started up like around now instead and I did a video oh fuck's sake I did a video on that instead of Resident Evil 7 I guarantee all the fucking videos would be saying like it delves into classic horror it delves into gothic horror it does a lot with these these things when it's like it doesn't actually it just shows up it's like hello and then that's it but I'm sure the fact that it showed up for a little bit means people get to reference all of that angry super chat 8 very well Oh, fair enough. Uh, hey, Massives. Are you aware uh, what the arguments against Blind Man's finale are in regard to the inconsistency of the mechanics of body swapping and the fact that Danny somehow has a stronger will than the lady who just decided not to die of her terminal illness and stuck there for what was going to be eternity? Uh, Danny was super strong-willed. That's kind of the point they make in also, the show. Also, I'm sorry you don't understand tuberculosis, uh, but the will, first off, willpower... Die. So, first off, willpower plays a lot into your survivability. Yep. Literally the first thing they did, like when I was in Search and Rescue, that was rule number one, positive mental attitude. You have to believe that you can get out. You have to stay focused on a goal. That's insanely important. We talked about this um, with the rats. There's experiments done on this, people. Yeah. And also, tuberculosis can, like, it varies wildly in the amount of time. It, it can take years and years and years to kill people. Like, and it depends on the person, depends on the severity of the tuberculosis. Like the idea every that time, it's just... We don't know that she yeah. wouldn't have died of it. We don't know. She was killed before she didn't die of tuberculosis, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, this idea that it's... I don't know. I just feel like you need to know what the fuck you're talking about, maybe. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Well, it's funny because I didn't know a lot about tuberculosis, and then I was told that they're representing it wrong, and I was like, okay. And I looked into it with Jay, funnily enough, because we were very curious, and we were like, oh, it matches how it's described. That's interesting. Yeah, the the depiction of it in the film seems to totally line the mo the show totally lines up with what we looked into and what we read. Like, it's really not an issue at all. Um, and if you think it is, I don't I don't know. You're just you're fucking wrong. And then you got Danny's arc in the show is uh, being more forthright about what it is that she wants and acting on like what she believes of this stuff. She's like repressed and pushed around. Uh, if you remember, like in marriage is pretty much entirely dictated by the fact that it just seems like the thing to do, and and she can't she can't tell people no. She doesn't want to, and then she's released from that marriage by happenstance, and. It's a fucking awful life to live, but she's happy that she was released from it, and that's like the huge levels of guilt. There's uh, there's loads of good stuff in there, and then yeah, she so she has, and if you remember, she is more passionate about saving those kids to, like than fucking anybody is pretty much. And uh, yeah, she's she's willing fully to keep the willpower. She cancels out the willpower of uh, Viola. I don't know why you'd believe that, like, violas would overpower Danny. They're both human. They both have extreme passion for the thing. It's like, to me, it was it was kind of perfect. 
I'm very happy with the ending of Bly. I still am. And thinking about Midnight Mass's ending, I'm like, yes, I'm very happy with Bly's ending. <laughs> like, I hug yeah. it. I keep it close to my heart because we were fucking lucky we got that. We dodged a huge mine, apparently. And yeah, I, I I don't know what to say about all the the tuberculosis conversation. It matches everything I've been I've seen about it. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I just feel like before I make a criticism like that, I just feel like I would do my just just the basic diligence to Google it, because that resolves the issue extremely quickly. But I don't know. I guess I'm not a doctor. So if I don't know how that's a disease why we Googled works, it. <laughs> then, yeah, then that's why, like, oh, let's see if this is a thing. Oh, this confirms that this thing is indeed a thing. Okay, that settles that. Moving right along. Maybe that's that could be legit the reason why they chose tuberculosis. They, they had a whole slew of different diseases that they could have picked. Mm -hmm. Tuberculosis can... It, it, it seems like it would do everything that they want it to do for the plot, and it makes sense. So that's why they chose it was tuberculosis that she got. Yeah, it's a debilitating disease that would have taken a lot of time uh, to kill her if it was going to kill her. Which is perfect for the, the scenario that was happening. Which was that she needs to be kept at arm's length to watch her whole life be taken away from her, basically. Hence her desire to maintain all the things that are being taken from her. Is this right? Oh, this is kind of a cool challenge look. Uh, th this, is, this is the party game at the end. They were giving me shit ones before, but this one is... There are five shapes that spin, and one of them is not like the others. You have to try and tell which one it is. Ah. I didn't get that one in time. You know. this, is, this is way more fun than the others. Rags, what bad dragon toys do you recommend? Love you. Uh... I mean, if I, if you're looking for something to go in you, uh, my if you're starting out, start small, and use a lot of lube. Just go easy. Don't don't hurry into it, man. I promise me, do not hurry into it. Uh, just yeah, start small, get used to it. A lot of the canine ones are pretty good because uh, they have like different stages to them, resting points, if you will. Uh, and then you could you could get bigger from there. Uh, no, you didn't have to answer the question, but you did. Well, I don't want like legitimately if someone's interested in that sort of thing, and like I want them to have good advice. I don't want to go in. Uh, I don't want you know them to have a like the idea of oh it won't be as bad at the beginning or not as bad, but as it it won't be like it's something that you should be aware of before you start. It, it benefits greatly from the idea of like really stressing with people. Use lots of lube and start small, and then work your way up over time. Because um, if you try to, I don't want anyone to hurt themselves. That's the thing. Yeah, I want to gift you guys stuff from Bad Dragon. What sizes should I get? Uh, smalls for these guys. Probably a large for me. Any of you use Tinder before? Stories? No. Mm, no. I I would um, I would court the women the old-fashioned way. No no social programming for me. I would I would become good friends with their highly esteemed fathers yes. at their manor parties, and then I would express my interest in their daughters, and mm -hmm. then uh, a marriage would potentially be arranged, and then, oh, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. God. What about you, Fringy? Uh, yeah. But I don't have any stories. Oh. Don't start with a horseman is what you're saying. Well, the issue with a horseman isn't the, necessarily the size or the shape. The shape is really good, actually. Um, but it's the, the, the tip is often more blunt. And you should start off with one that's got a lot more taper of a point to it, so it's easy to kind of get onto. Um, so that's that's you know he had my advice. Chris Pratt to play Barack Obama. Fringy thoughts? <laughs> hey, look, adaptation, right? <laughs> 
What if he, like, pulled off the greatest fucking performance ever, you know? What if? It would be hilarious if he, if he had the voice nailed down. He did the perfect voice. He was just, you know, just a white guy. Well, I, I, there's no way it would ever... I think most people would just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? It would um, be funny, though. It would be funny. Ooh, look, I got Waluigi shower. It, it, it's fire, it's not water. Okay. That... <laughs> Alright, then. <laughs> Hi, rags. Why rags? Hello. Fly rags. Dry rags. Hi, rags. Try rags. Hello. Buy rags. Buy rags. Bye. Mm -hmm. Fred the Vampire okay. Accountant is a really funny novel series about exactly that. An ethical vampire who buys blood. The full cast... Audiobooks are great. Yeah, sounds like it could be fun. Spoilers for Midnight Mass. Why didn't Hassan, Aaron, Sarah burn down the church and shelter after the sun came up? I mean, it, so if the logic was we have to destroy these buildings before sunrise because otherwise they will have protection. That's, that's actually fair. It's honestly safer because that means that the vampires will be in the building and they can't leave exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah, and that's of course the obvious well, thing is let's just chill until they all go in that building and yeah, then burn like, it this down. Is the type of time for us to yeah, wait until that. They treat it as though there's a time limit on when the sun rises for the humans. It's like no, the closest no. you are to the sunrise, yeah, the, the, the safer you are. Absolutely, yeah. Right. This this the, the the most efficient. You this is the only building left. That's the whole design of the baddies' plan. This is the only building left that we can hunker down in and sleep until next nightfall. Um and they don't know where the humans are important to note they don't know where the humans are uh the vampires can't leave you know where they're gonna be you know with total impunity you could make that thing go up nice and easy just just wait i don't know i don't um surely somebody must have mentioned this to mike but i guess he was busy or something i don't know that's also i guess yeah a little bit spoilery for a second you're gonna have to tune out it won't be too long, but I just want to answer in chat as well. Someone said um, they were pretty happy with Midnight Mass overall, ignoring the issues uh, and how they play out. Who was your favorite character? And they said theirs was either the Sheriff or John Pruitt. I'd go with it's easily Riley. He's my favorite. Yeah. Yes, it is. Sub yeah, definitely Riley. Um, I could see John Pruitt scoring high, though. Okay. I did like him quite a bit. Um, this the Sheriff, unfortunately, got his potential... Well, like, was not so I was about to say, at the end, they Pruitt, really Pruitt has problems in the finale around. that fuck he with does. him. In the finale, yeah. So it's, it's, if we ignore the finale, he's pretty great. Um, uh, well, if we ignore the flaws of the finale, he's pretty great. Uh, but like the sheriff, I don't think he does anything out of character. They just don't do anything with him. Yeah. Oh, it's a yeah, shame. I feel like they're setting him up for a payoff that never comes. Exactly. And I wanted a lot That's more for thing. him. I want to be honest with you. I don't think he should have died. I, no, I don't think so. I mean, expect, we got because only two people lived. And I'm like, that's lame. Yeah, you know, lame. I wish more people, you know, made it. I suppose part of the the ending point they're making is the death is nothing to be. You know, they they make a lot of points about death, so I imagine thematically they wanted a lot of characters to die. But I just like if the deaths were meaningful and well earned, I would have been okay with it. Yeah, I mean, it's like they plus it's, just, it's a living, not dead person telling me that, so I'm just like. I don't know. <laughs> Um, what about how Riley traumatized Aaron? Do you think there was a better way to show her the truth? I mean, I... That's part of his point, right? He was like, you're not gonna believe me unless you see this. The way that it's about to happen. You could argue, um... This is so spoilery, sorry about this. You could argue that it would have been better for him to, like, hold his hand up through a window and be like, look, I'm burning, but the fact is he wanted to kill himself. Exactly. Yeah, he... This, this, this... Gets rid of two birds with one and, stone and he's yeah. put her in a position where she can escape. She can go to the mainland if she wants to. Yeah. It was and actually he, a pretty smart idea. I, honestly, I think it works really well. I mean, what about in the sense of... Like, I, could he have done more? I guess you can always do more in the sense of, like, the phone and texting the mainland telling him something horrible's happened or starting an investigation... Uh, yeah, he probably could have done more, but I, I, if I gave it a good rewatch, I think I would try and argue done. what he was, he was, like, leveling what he wants with what, uh, 
he would like to protect people-wise. He definitely wanted to not be a vampire. Yeah, he, he was very aware of his his hunger and what that would lead to, mm -hmm. and... Yeah. You could tell he, he was thinking about that with her. They gave us that shot yeah. of her neck. Oh, his parents, too. Yeah, which is going to make you make some decisions pretty quick. Um, he, le he left a good note for Pruitt, too. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Will you do a mini for Midnight Mass? Yeah, the that one's going to be well after Bly, and Bly isn't going to be for some time probably as well, because she's got lots of projects right now. But, uh, yeah, we, I, I'd happily do one for Midnight Mass someday. I want a good amount of time to forget that show a little bit, though. Yeah. But not, like, the main payoffs, just enough that I I can then, we can rewatch it and we can talk about it. <laughs> you know what's funny? When we watch Hill House, and we knew episode 10 was gonna be shit, I mean, myself, Fringy, and who else in our group had seen it already? Metal had seen it, right? Metal, I think, okay. Yeah. Um... I was still super excited to talk about a lot yep. of it, and then I was going to be like, well, and now comes the part where I just don't, I, we have to talk a little bit about the flaws, unfortunately, and how much they, but like with Midnight wrong. Mass, I'm going to be like, oh man, and I think it's I'm just because they stole so much of what would have been completed storylines. I don't feel like any of the characters got completed stories except for uh, Riley. Yeah, that's the thing. The best character is the one who wasn't around for the last episode. <laughs> Meanwhile, a lot of people um, make it through unscathed in Hill House because they don't really even understand what's happening in the last episode. Which I don't blame them for, because <laughs> it's pretty nonsensical. Well, did you think the priest finding the cave was Tism? Um... He, so, we're told he he wandered off. And he kept walking I... and walking, and then there was a desert storm that um unveiled something that was mostly hidden. That's, like, fine. I like it. I'm fine with it. I like the idea that because of where he went, he went to the Holy Land, a place of importance for multiple very big religions. And so the idea that there's something out there in the desert that's been buried, that has, like, religious connotations, or that could be the source of some of our myths, I I like that idea, and, I, and, and that it's been unearthed, um, and that he happens to be the one who came across it, and as a result, he brought it here, and so the story's kind of, kind of, you know, largely centered around that. I, uh, I like it. I, I, I kind of, I well, think it's Here's another thing. I really liked the creatures, uh, I think there was, it was largely non-CGI. I, yeah, I was totally, like, I thought the, the, yeah, I thought it looked great. Such a shame. I was ready for so much more, you know? Yeah. Uh, speaking of wonky, wonky metaphor, what's your thought on Netflix Bright starring Will Payne Smith? I've not seen Bright. Um, I've not seen Bright as well. I haven't seen it, but I've heard a lot of bad things about it. I've heard a lot of, yeah, a lot of weird, all over like the place Shrek. stuff. There's I think to Shrek in this world where fantasy <laughs> creatures exist. And it's like, think about that from a world building perspective, guys. I think that uh, if we were to watch it, Garen fucking T, we would come away being like, Oh man, some of the messages in here are really fucking awkward if you think about it. I feel like that's gonna happen with whatever allegories they're running with. But hey, I would give it a fair shake, I just haven't seen it. Um, Hail the Unlisted, also high rags. Hello. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess the Unlisted will be on their way soon enough. This is like the opposite of Outer Banks. I was getting so mad because of the refusal to end storyline. Season 1 and 2 finales were so built up just to end on cliffhangers to bring you back. So mad because the refusal to end storylines. Oh, and I guess part of our criticism was that like they rushed the ending. I guess mm -hmm. that makes sense, yeah. Just pretend you like the ending of Midnight Mass. Cinema wins. Yeah. That's one way to do it. Chad, I leave on my IDS mission in five weeks. Luckily, I get to speak English and not any other inferior language. Oh, Ooh, nice. I had a sandwich the other day that tasted horrible, but at least it had a good message. <laughs> mm. 
Hi, Weekend Warrior. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> he would have said hi. He would have, yeah. That Nirvana cover hurt me more than anything. Yeah, uh, it hurt a lot of people. It's, uh, yeah, that is a... Uh, mm. What we call a crime, but it was not punished. So, is it only a crime when you've been charged? How does that work? Do you, have well, you committed I mean, a crime as soon as you break the law? Um, it, well, I think the whole point of I the mean, trial is to can, is to find out if you did commit a crime. Yeah, right, right, yeah. That, yeah. Exactly. So if I killed Rags, I haven't committed a crime just yet. Well, the idea is you've been accused of it. The crime, a crime has been committed, but whether or not... Yeah, you, it's, if it's, well, it's, it's built into it's the... It's a little it, more complicated, right? The because what it, where it, yeah. Well, if the premise is that you killed me, yeah, you have committed a crime. Not, well, you've not been accused whether of or not, a crime. Well, I, it's built if, into the question, right? Well, but I could kill you and not be punished, depending on the circumstances, right? Of course. So it's the... So you could have committed a crime, but the justice system wouldn't have discovered Well, no. That? So imagine imagine somebody's died, and then you get accused of murder. It's like the crime of murder, and then it's like, oh, no, you were defending yourself or something. He attacked you first, you killed him. It's like, so now Not we've discovered that there is, there is no crime. The crime was committed by the other guy who attacked you first. Oh, in the, oh, in the sense of, like, oh, it, so you, in the you sense don't know of, what yeah. the circumstances of you killing me are. Well, if I say I kill you, that covers all circumstances of me killing you, which could be self-defense it well could be a things. crime or it could not be a crime I gotcha. I gotcha. but but if you've been charged you've been accused of having committed a yeah crime. if i said i i murdered you then yeah that's baked in mm -hmm. um in luigi voice i'm a scorsese number one <laughs> wait why would it be we said scorsese directs okay I, I don't know about scorsese doing the voice of luigi but i guess i'm on board with that it would be fun. Lack of punishment doesn't mean you didn't commit a crime. No, this specific example was a crime. There is no crime. The Wait. case would determine that there has been no wrongdoing. Is there a crime you can commit that has zero punishment? I think their logic would be like, so for instance, if I, I guess the hypothetical in that instance would be you actually did it, but you got away with it. And it's like, well. Oh yeah, I'm thinking more, can you be convicted, case, but you don't, there is just, there's just no punishment, because I guess it's so low level, but at that point... Um, well, the thing is, is you can have things where, like, they'll give you a suspended sentence and it's not on your criminal record. Like, that's, there is something of a punishment there. I was about to say, like, I could still call that a punishment, couldn't I, yeah. Um, yeah, in the sense that, that you know, if you offend again, the consequences would be significant. Yeah. Um, I don't know that there is one where you would get convicted and there is absolutely nothing at all. Um, Treason. There would always be something, even if it was incredibly, incredibly small. Crossing the US southern border. Is there no punishment for that? Well, it depends, right? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. I mean, there should be, but whether or not there actually is... Like, if an American crosses the border down to Mexico without going through proper channels. I'm assuming the punishment yeah, for that... Yeah, they'll would... deport you. Yeah, they'll, they'll that, deport that, you and yeah. they'll send you back here. Apparently well, we there isn't... We don't talk about how racist the Mexicans are, so... Huh. Oh, people are saying apparently no, so that actually is. Your complaints is that it's not being enforced. Oh, right, they're, I didn't realize... supposed to be on the books. That's the thing. But the the these days, you know, with a lot of people, it's... They don't get, you know, they just, there's no, they just, I'll, nothing is done about it. That comic that I posted, I find very amusing. But Kirby spits them back out and gets the powers. The Doctor should still be in there. No, you can't spit them back out. If you've got the power, it means you've, you've gulped them up. That's you not, have how, to, that's not he, how it works he, in, if, um, in the Smash Brothers, but... If. It works in the Kirby series. Well, there you go. Adaptation. Oh, okay. let, me, let me hold on. If you've shown it, which you may not have, I have not. Okay, yeah, probably because I, I don't know exactly who uh, who made it. Oh yeah, I don't know either. But um, I guess is it safely endangered? Is that who made it? I guess so. Yeah, that's the name of the comic, anyway. But yeah, if that was Doctor Mario, which. It almost seems like that's the implication, <laughs> you know? You can have this scenario. I mean, the mustache just looks kind of like him. Um, 
Uh, yeah, Kirby swallowing up Dr. Mario in, in Smash, pops him back out and then gets the powers. But in the Kirby world, it just, that's it for Dr. Mario. <laughs> Well, is that has Dr. Mario ever been in Kirby? And, and therefore, I am arguing this is an adaptation of Smash. So you're arguing it's Smash Brothers rules? Yeah. I mean, even if it is Smash Brothers rules, it could still work. Maybe he's Yeah, the doctor's Dr. still Mario in the room, just it. like, I'm fine. <laughs> he yeah. just stopped him in. <laughs> uh, Massives, check out Deathloop if you can. It's super fun, and the storytelling and characters are good. Death loop. I've that's new, right? That's arcane. Yeah. I am waiting to see if the performance issues that I've heard about uh, are sorted out. Probably grab it. And if you recommend it, I might check it out. Yeah, I'm hoping it's good. Though I've heard some mixed things in terms of like the uh, apparently it's handholdy, which uh, surprises me based on what it is. Yeah. Come on, we can do it. Come on, DK. Come on, work together. Put him in. Oh, it didn't look like we were losing. Fine, I guess we lose. Um, Friong, have you checked out Fujimoto's Look Back yet? No. Oh, there you go. Look back. Oh, warrior beat you. <laughs> a person afraid of criticism is afraid of creating. You know, not necessarily. Not necessarily, <laughs> no. but... Not necessarily. There's a lot of people out there who genuinely just have serious personal issues, maybe even mental issues, like they cannot handle seeing their work be criticized in any way, and that, but they could be incredible creators, you know? Yeah, of course. I think it's important, and I think it's helpful, but ultimately, if someone was to literally break down in tears the second people start criticizing their work, I'd be like, you need to not show people your work <laughs> until you get that sorted out. Yeah. You're not ready to fight this battle. You are not the appropriate. It's like this is a high level zone, and you're still a newbie level yeah. four. You need to you need to level up and experience a uh, game before you venture into uh, new places. Most people aren't good at criticizing things, but part of your job in almost any art form is to translate the criticism to something you can work with, while also not compromising your vision too much. Yeah, it's um, it can be tough. Uh, like we we talked about how like. A lot of it is is figuring out how valid or, or useful the criticism is. So there's a lot of um, processes. Rags, I'm doing the same video, video game again. Am I going to win? Am I going to win? Absolutely. You've won before. You've, you've had even more I, practice I, I, now. I, I've lost before too, Rags. Yeah, but <clears> you're you wouldn't you wouldn't you're not the kind of person who'd want to let me down. What? Oh, oh, geez. Now the pressure's real on. It's not even just money oh, anymore. Oh yeah. Now I'm I'm lighting a fire underneath uh, there, which is an appropriate you know, analogy. I yeah, guess. I guess so. Bring uh, you wouldn't do that to me, right? Do what? Sorry. You wouldn't make this victory or no, loss based on. No, I don't on... want to make it through. No, I I even if it did depend on that, I wouldn't tell you because that's that's pressure that is not going to be helpful. Wow. What do you think about that, Rex? I think that pressure is uh, is something that will test your mettle. I think that you well, need to learn to deal with pressure, and it might be tough at first, but the more you are used to pressure, then the better that you can in the long term behave well under that pressure. It came it's second. Kind of interesting to think about the account. idea that um that, that second, whatever. Second is great. I got more money than I had when I started, so that, you know... <laughs> That's definitely a win. That is absolutely a win. Yeah, second place actually Arch matters in the battle mode, so... Yeah, just because someone else <laughs> made more coins than you, that doesn't mean that you lost because you didn't get as many coins. Yeah, no, capitalism. Right. It's yeah. It's not a zero-sum game. You don't have to... yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> good for you. It could work. As someone said in chat, pressure does make diamonds. <laughs> So, I find it interesting to think about the idea that... Wait, you know, if, if you got the stream up, look what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then he rolled a back. one. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, unfortunate. Fucking warp piped to reach the same position he was already in. Oh, what a waste of, waste of money, Luigi. See, Luigi still lost, ultimately. <laughs> Oh, book squim, come on. Hey! Uh, EFAP, what do you think about the Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr.? 
I remember liking them quite a I bit, but I haven't seen them in many years. My memory is, I loved the first one, I wasn't as fond of the second one, I still think they're both good. Um, I'd have a lot more to compliment about the first one. I really loved how they managed to recontextualize a lot of the magic into grounded sort of just uh, advancements in technology and stuff. And trickery. It was cool. And I like RDJ's Sherlock. I think he's neat. Yeah, I think he does a nifty job. Do you remember the sequence where um, we see... Uh, I forget her name, but she's <laughs> meeting with Moriarty. And, like, a hobo turns up, and he's like, spare change, or something like that, and then Moriarty pulls out his gun on him, because he has, like, a little retractable gun in his sleeve. And then he's like, oh, sorry, sir, oh, Jesus. And then we get the scene repeats from Robert Downey Jr.'s perspective, and he, like, goes through the whole area, picking up lots of different items from different tables and different people until he's got a full disguise. And then it turns out he was the bum. Do you remember that? Oh, draw, nice. It was me all along. I think I remember, he, he like has a fake nose and all kinds of shit he pulls together on his little run through. Like a top hat and a scarf. And the way he's like pulling stuff off people while they're walking. Uh, just, it's quite smooth. It's, it's cool. And that's Guy Ritchie. It's probably my favorite Guy Ritchie film actually, outside of Snatch. I'm not sure if it ranks above or not. I'd have to rewatch it. Discombobulate. Do you remember the fucking, the intro where... Uh, Mark Strong has, like, a glass spike in his hand. And he almost fucking I kills. I totally remember that. Dude, I law, yeah. I remember thinking, like, fucking hell. Like, if, if anyone had stepped any closer... It's kind of an interesting idea, right? Because that probably would just cut right into you. And yeah, if it's sharp enough and thin, if it's sturdy enough, that's the thing. Maybe if it, if it was that thin, then maybe once it hit his skull bone... It would have just snapped. Well, it was going through the neck, right? I think was the intention. Oh, yeah. Maybe that would have done it, yeah. Would have done some damage. As they say in Le France. Le France Land. All of that was the second movie? Everything I've described is from the first one. The disguise sequence is definitely in the first one. He's chasing... Um, Who's the the girl? Uh, it begins with an A. Rachel McAdams. No, oh. um, the character. Oh, Amy. A. It's like I want to say Ariana. It's not that. Someone in chat's gonna know. Ad it's Adler. Adler. That's it. Oh uh, yeah, he's chasing her into the uh, carriage. Irene Adler. Yeah. Show the Dunning-Kruger graph. You start with low confidence, then peak in confidence, confident ignorance, then enter the Valley of Despair, then go to Accurate. I remember, because I think part that I was talking about was like, if you think about it from the perspective of somebody who wants to get good at like, for instance, art, you start and you learn a little bit and you're like, oh, god damn, I'm awesome. But you are so unaware of how much you don't understand about art that the more you do, the more your confidence begins to crater. And then that's like the point where you kind of figure out if you're going to give up or like try to get better at it. And then eventually you start to learn more and get better, but you'll mm -hmm. never quite be as cocksure as you were at the beginning. You sure um, Wow, I got a better memory than like reason. many people in chat. They're all saying I mixed it up that uh, Mark Strong isn't Moriarty. No, chat. Moriarty is in the first film. He talks to Adler in the in the carriage. It's, uh, that's who she works for. Oh, yeah. We don't see him until the second movie. Mark Strong is also in the film. Fucking, I haven't seen the in film the in film ages. For sure. Yeah. He was definitely in that movie. It's the hobo scene where he's like, "Oh, change, please," and he does the retractable gun because he's a technology expert. And it's like, "Whoa, retractable gun! It's so cool." I I really like the ending thing where they, they talk about how the real prize all along was sending radio signals. Cause we yeah. just sorta, of, I guess we just sorta of took that for granted when that's an incredible piece of technology, potentially at the time, like that revolutionized so many different things and we might not have even really thought about it. But then you're like, oh yeah, that's Wait, insanely what? important. Moriarty was in the Wait. first movie, but he wasn't played by Mark Strong until the second movie. Mark Strong's not in the second movie. He's dead. <laughs> like, he dies in the first one. Moriarty's I thought he play. was, like, 
Yes. Moriarty's played by the guy who was in Resident Evil 2. I forget his name. He was also in, um... Rags, you might know his name. He was in, uh... Chernobyl. He was the main character. I just can't remember oh. the fucking actor's name. He was Moriarty in the second film. In the first film, he's played Jared Harris, that's it. First film, he's played by Daniel Day-Lewis, I think. But you don't see him. You only hear his voice. I think. I'd have to check that. Mark Strong is, uh, Blackwood. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays, um... We playing the uh, Gaslight yeah, Mola uh... game? I don't know sometimes. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I don't remember MB in the movie. You don't Valeria see his face. Hog, you don't see his face. Valeri, yeah. I think they deliberately didn't show his face because they didn't know for sure who's going to be playing him in the second movie. Legas. Mark Strong dies twice? Maybe. Oh yeah, he does die twice in that movie, you're right. The first one's a bit of a fake out, though. Um, but I, uh, I'd be up for rewatching them sometime. That's another E-Fat movie right there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Soup, soup Cha, Time Experiment TK01, 25th of September 2021, 22... Oh, well, 10 o'clock, I guess. I don't know what that's about, but all right. Um, to the shaddest of versities, what would be the best way of purchasing your book in hardback? I have no idea what the answer to that question is. If Am is it on Amazon? I'm assuming that's the main way to buy it. I think uh, that's how I bought it. Amazon. It's probably probably one on is there. Is that not an option? A lot of the I times it will be an option, option there. So I'm I, would assuming... I would I would try and check the options. I'm assuming that because this person said where to get it from hardback, that it's not available on Amazon because that's the kind of thing that they must have checked. Yeah. You know? might be, yeah, they might be dumb though. So Sh maybe knows? check Shad's channel, see if there's something on there. Yeah. The links to it. Yeah, I'm not shizzle. The Sherlock movies are poor, but far from bad. They're poor, but far from bad. It's <laughs> a weird far way to say bad. it. I mean, I, you, think you, poor, I thought poor was adjacent to bad. Yeah, I would have said it's adjacent to yeah. bad. <laughs> uh, is there any right it, to... Oh, wait, sorry. What were you going to say? No, it's, it's fine. Let's go ahead. Uh, also, hi, Mola, Weekend, Fringy, uh, Shad... And IG, Owen High Rex, I guess. And go gaming, and hello, right. hello. Yep. Um, is there any writer who is better at world building than George R. R. Martin? No, Tolkien is not a correct answer. Damn. I mean, I don't know. Probably. Um. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't I, be able I'm to answer that question. I'm trying to think. Of, of, yeah. I can't answer that either. Like who the, yeah, I'm not familiar enough with Game of Thrones, uh, but I just, I don't know. I'm hesitant to call someone, anyone, the best at anything. Yeah. Uh, best at world building, better than good. The thing is, George R. R. Martin's tangled himself up in his world building, so it's kind of hard to compliment it right now. It's part of what people believe is the reason he's taken so long making the next book. He's got different things happening at the same time that he didn't account for. So Zack Snyder. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, that's, oh, that's you. funny. Oh, you. <laughs> Good uh, one. Oh, you. You funny man. Funny, funny man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as for... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know who the best world building around. I've... Heard a lot of good things about the world building for the expanse. I haven't read. Well, it I've been listening to the audiobook. It's um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, here's a super chat to say thanks for saving me from getting a Disney Plus subscription. Hope you're surviving quarantine, Shad. Also, hi rags. Hello to you. I think he's doing just fine. And as for that, obviously there's a lot of Disney Plus content that you won't see us cover whatsoever, but you can probably rely on EFAP at this point to guide you through the MCU when you don't want to watch it. Um, I think we're probably going to catch all the main events up until... I would be curious what it would take to knock us off wanting to see something like an Avengers movie, you know? Because you know, cause you know um, if they I don't said, know what they said, like the new Avengers starring, it's it's literally Bucky, Falcon, uh, Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and fucking Wanda. I don't know. I don't really care. But let's just say I it was those five. How much they terrorize Bucky? That might be fun. 
I was just going to say, if it were those five, and we know for a fact that Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and whoever else aren't in it, would you go see that? Uh, probably still, yeah. I think I would. I mean, just there's, there's an aspect relevant. of morbid curiosity that That's I have. literally yeah. it for me. I just want to... I'm very curious what they're going to do. Well, in that case, it seems like there's basically no line that, uh... Well, you say that. Or, no. But like, that's the reason I why I went care. with Avengers like, first, because I think that the, it right. gets much easier when we get to stuff like, will you watch Captain Marvel 3? I'd be like, hmm, that's going to be a question <laughs> I answer when we get closer to that. Yeah. For example, Rags didn't go and see Shang-Chi. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't give a Technically crap speaking, I didn't go see Shang-Chi. It went and saw you. It, 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 it looked for, it, it did the Soviet Russia thing. Funny. Um... So yeah, I don't know, um, theoretically there's already been one that qualified, so I think that going forward... Like, I'll go see the Eternals, probably. Rags, you gonna go see that? That's one that feels necessary, but... Um, am I gonna go and see it? Because obviously we could just... I don't think it's a problem mm. at this point to have it so that we just... We could just do the format of telling you the events and stuff. That wouldn't... That, that's not a terrible format. I like it for two reasons. One, I think it's entertaining and fun. And two, I don't have to do anything. So <laughs> there, there's just wins all around. Everybody wins. And plus, I guess we can, and, we can skip And plus, that, I don't... Right? Like, I, I will... It, it's... Dad, my, my dad doesn't care about Marvel stuff. So when theaters are back to normal, quote unquote... If. And we go out and see stuff again. I just... It probably won't be the ones that... Because I don't really enjoy going alone. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, so I, I could, I'm totally fine going on my own. So when um, we, when we go and see something, it probably won't be a Marvel thing anyway. Mm. I I think I told you that I've only ever I think in my life seen one movie on my own is Black Panther. I think I've seen only I think the uh, yeah maybe just a couple I've seen on my own. The last one I saw on my own was The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> the last one I saw on my own was Shang Chi. It's the last movie, that, <laughs> like. Well, that I saw. So, I'll do it. Like, the reason I did it with Black Panther was because I invited Smiler to come and see it. He was the only person who had the availability, and he was like, I do not give a fuck about a Black Panther movie. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I guess I'll go see it. So, he hates black people. Yes, 100%. But, uh, oh, what I was going to say was, it hit me straight away when I finished that film. I was like, I wish I had someone to fucking talk to right now about all this shit. Obviously, I could just wait until I get home. Yeah, I guess there's an element of that, but I mean,. I like for me it's a matter of I it's not I'm, it's not gonna stop me from going to watch a movie if I have to do it on my own but what's your preference uh, I actually prefer to go on my own but I'm uh, I'm, I'm one of those people <laughs> like, well but like I, I feel like it would be out of character for me not to point out like it seems to me that the, 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 the does it not make sense that it like from everything I know about you and all the stuff I've watched with you it's like it seems like you do enjoy it watching with people more so um yeah I guess I guess in that sense I I need the I guess I would need the type of person where it's like we're gonna have like a long conversation about this right like I, I don't want to I don't want to go if it means if the conversation is just yeah I kind of liked it yeah it was neat oh yeah of like, course you know that's <laughs> I need something more than that uh, well, so in if, terms of if I live literally on like on your street I'm assuming oh yeah we'd probably be watching like every movie yeah <laughs> in that case I like getting my <laughs> I like getting my dad's perspective on things and how he, well, he's, yeah, a, yeah. he's a lot more normie than we are because we're fucking weirdos. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's good to get his perspective and what he likes, what he doesn't like. And, you know, it's good just bonding well, and that I, sort of thing. I think I would have so. talked about it back in 20 fucking 19, 18. I don't even know. But I saw um, Us with my dad. My dad likes everything pretty much at this point, certainly. Uh, he doesn't really care. And, like, Us is a movie that I think I've told you guys, like, that would be a perfect EFAP movies movie. It is utterly fucking nonsensical and it's driven entirely by allegory like if you watch reviews of it they only talk about Ugh. what it means they cannot talk about what actually happens i fucking um, hate shit like that it's not like i'm thinking of ending things there is um a system like things happen that yes things happen and there is a oh. system they present and it is so hilariously fucking stupid and makes no sense at all like it's it's fun to talk about i'm sure but like when we came out of that film i, I remember just being like fuck me that made no sense at all my dad was just like yeah, you know, uh, like, um, is it, uh, he had no clue. Like, the, the, the commentary was just, like, dead, because it's just, that film is, anyone in chat seen it, it is a fucking ride. I went and saw 
Captain Marvel with my dad, and he said it was maybe the worst. He said one of the things he said was, he said rags. Um, and I said yes, rags senior, <laughs> and he said I've been watching movies for decades. I've seen I don't know how many movies I've seen over my, you know, 50, 60, whatever years of life, and whatever he said. I think that I could safely say that that is actually one of the worst movies that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, just wanted that, to make it very clear to me how much he hated that. Um, and I guess on that note, we have run out of time. From what I understand. Oh About more or less, yeah. More or less. Um, what we'll do, of course, is save the remaining Super Chats for Wednesday. We'll tackle these first. And then we'll go back to catching up with um, as much as we can for that day. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm hungry. We've been we've been kind of going at it. Oh no, no, no! Nine hours. You fuck. Oh no, nine hours. Oh ah, it's, it's over so a third short. of the day. That's longer than a typical work shift. <laughs> yeah. Just so we're clear. You have us to keep dancing. You we're like those people from you know the the Great Depression who had to dan dance, and you just want us to keep going. You hate us, chat. You hate us. You don't want us to rest or eat. You hate us. Short man, bad indeed. Well, it's been it's been a whole lot of. Oh wait, did we do we want to do the, the thing of showing the uh, the trailer for the Resident Evil stuff, or is it a bit too late for that? Uh, it's too late. We, for me. Maybe we can <laughs> maybe we can just direct everyone that way because I yeah. really enjoyed that trailer. I I thought it was really great. Well then, you know what? Yeah, there we go. Let me get a URL. That. Yeah, way okay. better than the trailers for the slop we've been getting normally. I was gonna say, yeah, so for those who Normal don't know, movies, yeah. it would be weird if you're like a super EFAP fan, but you have no idea this thing exists. In fact, you know what? I'm curious. Tell me in chat if you haven't, if you're unaware this exists. There is a trailer right now. It's the newest video on Moolah for the Resident Evil EFAP movies arc, which specifically is the Paul W.S. Anderson ones. Um, I wonder if that's worth putting in the title. It's in the thumbnail. You'll be able to see it's the Mila Jovovich ones, but there's a couple people were like, you doing the animated ones too? It's like, no, <laughs> like, is that we fucking insane. we don't care. Um, but yeah, the so check that out as soon as this stream ends and see all the little highlights because uh, you can be getting that across all of Spooky Ween while we spend Spooky Ween at least the days those are premiering probably recording the arc for next year. It's gonna be fun. And uh, the next time you see us, we should have our spooky avatars, right? Oh wait, Wednesday is that? Let me have a loop. Um, um, no, no, it will be next Friday is... Uh, the first, yes. The first. So, right. Oh, so then, yeah, it will be next week. But fuck, all right, that's that's a, that's a something to put on my to-do list. <laughs> yes. Make that. I already I got mine. I have a couple from last year that I, I, I enjoy quite a bit. I, I can see if I... I'm getting one new one made that I quite like. Maybe I can have them... I think I might be able to get them to do a... Um, a Halloween version of that one. That Do might it. be cool. I'll um, I'll change into my costume on the Saturday, October second, to show Rags live. I reckon he'll like it. Maybe. Ooh yeah. I, I always make I always make Mahler dress up for me. Mm hmm. So, I haven't figured out what I want it to be yet. I've got to make that decision. You want to be the very best, for me. That's what you want. Well, because I've already done like sort of a skull thing, and then I did Frankenstein. So. Number three has to be maybe uh something. yeah if you, if I, I you think, want I think I can make like a werewolf thing. maybe or, well I already got that so I don't I gotta do something a little bit well, different you can have fun here's with the it. thing you if you want to incorporate that into other stuff you could have like the like it's painted on the skull is painted on you know the, said your eyes are black that kind of fun that could be something oh a maybe. furry yeah. No, Chozo. <laughs> yeah, they're furries. No, that. Why would you say that? Cuz. Have you seen them? They're like bird people. Yeah, they are bird people. Why would that make yeah. them furries? They've got Cause. feathers. No, I, oh, no, no, it's all under the umbrella. Scalies, furries, the whole thing. Wait. There's a whole bunch of suggestions which are helping me out, so. Are Scalies under the furry umbrella? Yeah. So then, it just means animals, basically, of all kinds. Would if I if somebody yeah. dressed up as an ant, would that be a furry? <laughs> uh, there are there are bug furries. Okay. okay. I feel like furry they're, is not they're, a they're very... term here. It's well, just it's, it's a cover... that is a human being. Well, it's it's 
Well, no, not no, not goblins are not furries, <laughs> nor are why, or, are not furries. why are they not furries? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you what it is. I think it's because generally, these are the furries that they are based on some kind of a, a mythical or real animal. So, so if I dressed up as a unicorn, that's not a furry. Yeah. But if I dressed up as a horse, it would be. Yeah, they're both furries. You're telling me that birds count as... So, well, sorry, Chozo are fictional, mythical, like, they're aliens, so they're not yeah. furries. No, you, you you don't have to be real. They're not furry. You said that it... No, I said sorry, mythical. you can't... I, you, I, I, I didn't yeah, say that, mythical or real. You, that, unfortunately, it's over for you, Frank. Like, I said, I said mythical or real. I maybe didn't hear me. Mythical or real. So unicorn would count then. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm sorry. I'm pretty there are sure unicorn you furries, said no. So... I'm pretty no, sure you do. just said no. So goblins they definitely do count are. then. So not goblins. goblins count. You said goblins are like creatures. animals. Goblins are mythical. Not, they're not like animals, right? And generally, they take their inspiration or their traits from like an animal. Like uh, it could be a wolf or a unicorn or a dragon or a griffin or something like that. And those animal traits sort of put it underneath that furry umbrella. But if it's a like an orc from Elder Scrolls, those generally why would a Chozo be an animal then? If they're like a if there are species that are seemingly sentient and capable of creating technologies and stuff, then they're not birds. Well, because they point. have avian characteristics aesthetically. Okay, I'm pretty sure that goblins have characteristics of like mammals. <laughs> Does that make them furries think, at this I point think, and human beings well, too? Well, I think we generally were able to draw that distinction, like where a human is okay. an animal. I feel like I'm, I'm drawing human. a different distinction then. Chozo, they're, anyway. they're just aliens, all right? Yeah. Alien. So there are aliens that are, because if they had like like cat people from like Stellaris Wait, or is, something, those are. Is Star Fox like a furry to you? Furry umbrella. Oh, oh, absolutely. Star Fox is a furry. Jesus Christ. Oh, don't get me started on Crystal. Oh my God. It never ends with that. Well, Crystal was the original, right? She was like the. She uh... is generally regarded as the original. The I don't. The, almost the poster child of furriness. The same with like Maid Marian. I was under the impression that a furry is the person who fucking dresses up in those suits, not a, a animal. Or yeah, thing. the animal itself isn't the furry, right? No, it's just it's just an idol of a furry. The, yeah. Well, it's generally considered a broad term, but like a person well, so who then, wears what, so like a, a fur cat, suitor. Like if I if I just see a cat, it's like, oh, you're a furry cat. It's no. just out here. Well, a in cat the world. is furry, but a cat wouldn't be like a furry. What if it's okay, well, then now, if you wanted, now if furry, then. well, he is a he's a fox and he walks and talks. He's anthropomorph uh, anthropomorphic to a reasonable degree, so. He's generally so underneath it is, that furry it is umbrella. them talking. That's like the most important part then. Them talking, um, or at the hmm. very least, having behavior that is human like. Yes, that's the thing. It's wait, it's, it's, is it's King the... Shark a fairy? Uh, he I has think to he be by your definition. Falls Fuck under that. the umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> Stop making yeah, my exactly. <laughs> Stop making these awesome characters fairies. Hey, furries are everything. There, it is a very broad. Hey, I don't consider myself like the. I you have to furries. be, wouldn't you? Yeah, you're stuttering there. <laughs> like, you're yeah, stuttering. yeah, you've been you've been pretty sure about all of this. You must have lots of knowledge. Hey, yeah. I mean, doctors know a lot about cancer, but they don't like cancer, so. It... Yeah, I agree. That's fine. You know a lot about it, though. You said, you said <laughs> animals I know a lot have about human it, yeah. behavioral traits of furries. You are a dog that is like sentient. Yeah, boy. I guess you're yeah. a furry, Rags. There are some who have called me furry. I have been known to <laughs> That's be one way to answer that. that. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah, it was a great fun. episode. See you next time. Adventure. Yeah, everybody. Bye -bye. Toodaloo. Check out the bye -bye. Resident Evil Leaf Out Movies Arc Dianara. official trailer. And don't yeah. miss Black Widow in theaters near you. See the stunning mid thing of girl person ninja as she destroys a castle in the sky. Sweet. Bye -bye. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Toodle-doo. Cha-cha.